Studios secured by DFWSecurity.com. This is Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. Good morning, Metroplex. And what an early surprise to start off the week. Sean Sharif, RJ Choppy. We got Pay Pay. We got Ryan in the back and sitting in the parking garage. Giving me the old number one. Beating me here to work is Roberto Bell. Get a, get a few cowboy reports right. Over the weekend, and now you want to come in and brag about it. That's what it is, baby. I couldn't believe it. He came in. There was this car that was right behind me (laughs) in the, in the, in the, in the, by the, the arm that comes up, the security arm. I'm like, huh, that's a Nissan. Surely not. Surely that's not Bobby. And then sure enough, he comes sidling up a few seconds later. That's Bobby Bell. What's he doing here? Why are you here? Uh, I, it's ever since last week, I've had trouble sleeping. I keep waking up. I have internal anxiety about oversleeping again. And so I woke up at like four and was not about to fall back asleep. I didn't feel tired. And so once it rolled around to like four 30, I was like, there's really no point in just hanging around. I should just go in. Well, you did crush the cowboy reporting over the weekend. It would have been nice if it would have been for our show, but either way, Afterwards, later in the day, Bobby Bell puts out an article on the Cowboys wide receiver shopping. It absolutely blows up. People start losing their minds. Kevin Gray was an awesome Twitter follow throughout the entire weekend. Uh, You suggested a running back last week. The Cowboys are going to visit with him today. We'll get to that at 6. But the big news is a 5th and a 6th round pick for Brandon Cooks. He finally escapes the armpit. Finally, it seems like he's been there forever. Uh, so I, you know, this is a well for him. Forever is like two is a, years. It's two years. Uh, this guy gets traded every week. <laughs> um, I'm, I kind of like it. I, I, I don't hate it at all. Especially when the news came out about the money being paid. Yes, yeah, so like Houston's picking up like a quarter of his salary. Six. It's, it's a third of his salary, right? So it's a third Cow- of his salary. So the Cowboys are paying him twelve million dollars for a fifth and a sixth round pick. Now he's under contract through twenty twenty four. So how does that work for the final year of the deal? So on his final year of his contract, it's no guaranteed money. Okay. And so they're not picking up anything of that. They're just picking up 2023, which changes his cap hit from 18 million to 12 million. And cool. this was a discussion last year at the deadline. Last week, we told you the Cowboys were interested in Jerry Judy. We know how rich that would have been. And last year, Bobby, this was supposed to be for about a third round pick. They were going to, they at the deadline last year, they thought they had a deal in place to trade for, for Brandon Cooks for a third round pick. Like Cooks was under the impression he was coming here. And the Cowboys thought they had him. The Texans had then placed a couple other phone calls. I don't know if they got another deal or, or how they had come back to the Cowboys, but they came back to the Cowboys and said, all right, so Brandon Cooks for a second. And the Cowboys were like, no. No, a third. <laughs> and they felt like, okay, you're not negotiating in good faith. You have, mm. you know, you have altered the deal. Pray do not alter it again, sort of thing. And they ended, Cowboys ended up bailing on the deal. They're just like, all right, well, we're not going to operate under these terms. And now, hat in hand, uh, a few months later, Nick Casario and the Texans have to come back and go, all right, we'll 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 pay a third of the salary and uh, just just give us a fifth and a sixth, which a sixth the year in advance is basically considered a seventh, seventh by teams. So you gave up a fifth and a seventh five months later as opposed to a third, and they pitched hmm. in a third of the salary. Cowboys absolutely crushed this deal. These are two trades now that they've absolutely destroyed. 29 years old, choppy. Last year, 57 passes for 699 and three touchdowns in 13 games for the Texans. You got a legit real burner now. You got someone that teams should be terrified of when it comes to vertical speed. I know that we all tried to paint Michael Gallup in that light of 
Exactly. Thank you, Mike. Hey, down the field. Michael Gallister, down the field guy. Well, now you got different speed. You got 4-3 speed um, on the outside, on the inside, wherever you want it for Dak Prescott to have to throw to. So we're going to get into the DeAndre Hopkins regret. Does this totally mean that Odell Beckham is out? But Brandon Cooks, uh, in a text message to local media, said, Beyond blessed. Can't wait to go and be special for the star. Very thankful for the Jones family for this opportunity for my family and I. So the Cowboys can't. The Canton Cowboys strike again at the flea market. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. You know, the uh, you could say the Browns struck at the flea market with Amari Cooper last year. <laughs> you know, the amount of... I mean, they, gave up, they gave up more. That wasn't a flea market. That was when you go dunce, dumpster diving in Highland Park. Like the, yeah, the, well, the, the they Browns... gave up more for Brandon Cooks than the Cowboys got for Amari Cooper. No, you know what? You know what that was? It's more than dumpster diving. It's the uh, the the angry woman who's been cheated on, and so while the guy's out, <laughs> yeah. you're looking out on the sidewalk, somebody passing by, and go, "Hey, you want a car for a thousand dollars? You can buy it right there. Do you want uh, Do you want a TV in here? It's twenty bucks. You can come take it. It's that. It's the it's the angry, scorned. I'm just gonna sell it. I don't care that I'm getting a bad deal. But I mean, the Cowboys replicated it. They got basically what they gave to Cleveland last year. And now I, I would I would hope that this does not, and, and the same thing for the Gilmore deal, that this does not alter their draft plans. If there's a wideout available, take them that that they like, you know, or a corner. Don't change it up because you got a thirty year old. Don't change your draft plans because you because you made this move. It doesn't change their draft plans. What it does is so their their plan basically every year when they go into free agency they look to let's cover all of our holes yeah. with veterans whether we think they're up to snuff or not. Like we're just covering ourselves, giving us contingency so that when we get into the draft we can pick whoever the best player available is. Yeah. That's generally how they approach it. What this does in terms of changing their draft plans is if they did not have a receiver by the draft if they have, if they had not acquired one it may have caused them to reach in the first round and take somebody where it's like, eh, this is not the best player, but we really need a receiver. So we should probably just go for it. Which so that's in a good way. Like that year to year mentality, you know, like act like you don't have to win the Super Bowl next year and just take the best player for the plan. What was your report on Friday? So I had called around to, I'd gotten a call. One of the reasons it was not on the show Friday morning, Sean is because I got a call around noon Ask your uh, hook up in your source next time to respect the central time zone. You know? I should, yeah, you guys yeah, are going to yeah. be like Pat McAfee to Ian Rappaport sources where Pat was telling Rap the other day, he's like, tell your sources to please time give it. you this stuff a little bit before our show because it always happens right after you leave here. Uh, but I got a call and just chit chatting, catching up on some things. And in that discussion, they started talking about how the Cowboys were approaching the wide receiver trade market. And it made me want to place a couple other phone calls, check in with a couple a couple other people. And by the time I was done, I was like, okay, I've got a really good idea now of how they're approaching this, which is they like DeAndre Hopkins. They like Jerry Judy. They like Cortland Sutton from Denver. They like all three of those guys. The problem was that they were not going to give up draft capital and money for any of them. They weren't going to play ball. Now, Hopkins is somebody who would have been willing to make financial concessions for them, would have really wanted to be a Cowboy, but the Cowboys had not even, for all the discussion about DeAndre Hopkins, the Cowboys had not even called the Cardinals about DeAndre Hopkins. There was no phone call placed. They had not reached out at all. That's how little they were engaged in that idea. Because of the pick. Yes. And so one of the things that I had heard calling around talking to people was, look, they absolutely crushed the Stephon Gilmore deal. League sentiment all the way around is two different things. How did it only take a fifth to get Stefan Gilmore? And the bigger issue was how in the world did Stefan Gilmore get here without new money? That they thought that was, I had one person tell me that's agent malpractice that they didn't get new money for Stefan Gilmore in the trade. And so they said that's, they're going to need the wide receiver version of that deal in order to make a move. If they don't find that, then they'll go get a veteran free agent off the street or they'll draft somebody, but basically, as it was relayed to me, was they want somebody to give them the Amari Cooper deal that they gave last year. If they don't find that, it's not that they're hoping for that. That's not their plan. Their plan is address it this way, but if somebody comes to us with that deal, we'll take it, and then sure enough, Sunday morning, the Texans gave them that deal. They know they gave Amari away for nothing. They wanted somebody else to be as dumb as they were. Honestly, that's the thing is that I don't think they they did know, and they didn't care. I still don't think they care. 
I think they felt like, yeah, we know we lost the Amar deal. That wasn't the point. The point was we just wanted him gone. Yeah, we needed a reset. Personal. And that's the thing is that I think they went, we need to find another team that's disenchanted with a player that could use a reset. Amari could use a reset. We could use a reset. So we made the deal, even though it wasn't great. And they found it in Brandon Cooks. I was a little surprised just because I thought the Cowboys might have been a little, still had some hurt feelings over how things went at the deadline. But when you ultimately win the negotiation like that, they probably didn't care. We're like, okay, yeah. We'll take advantage of you now. How are y'all feeling about the Brandon Cooks trade? He is coming to the Cowboys. Back to it at 6 o'clock at 877-881-1053. 877-881-1053 for the truckwreck.com text line. But how are your brackets looking now for the Sweet 16 after last night's games? Bobby Belt may want to go back home and come back to the show for his usual start time after this. Plus, Mav Stars, how's your bracket looking now for the madness? Next. Coming up in the next G Bag.
are going to the Sweet 16. They take down Baylor, 85-76. The call on Westwood 1. Let's reset the brackets for the Sweet 16. Good Monday morning, Metroplex. Sean Shreve, RJ Choppy, and Bobby Belt in early today. We got Peyton and Ryan in the back running the fan cam, Twitch, and YouTube as Ralph James is going through the papers. Man, so many papers to go through. Uh, so much stuff going on. Uh, we got we got we got kind of a dogfight here. Uh, everyone has lost. Uh, let's see. Peyton has lost a final four. Sean has lost a final four and a national champion contender in Kansas. Bobby has lost a final four and national championship participant. And I lost a final four. We've all lost a final four team. Uh, but you are in the lead, Sean. How are things looking, Bobby? With your math, they're not great. It's not. It's not acceptable it's not exciting um it's it's pretty frustrating but right now sean sharif is in the lead he has 41 points through two rounds peyton has 36 i have 34 choppy has 33 now you'd think i shouldn't be so sad i'm ahead of choppy choppy's the seller dweller the problem is the futures market the futures are not looking good mm. i uh in the futures because i've lost a national champion participant in purdue screw you and Arizona, and then last night I lose an Elite Eight team in Indiana, then I'm pretty much screwed. The most total points I can earn throughout the entire, if my bracket is perfect the rest of the way, my winner, all the teams I have left win everything, I can earn a max of 65 points, which is eight fewer than anybody else left in our tournament bracket. Choppy's next at 73. You have 75. Peyton has the most wiggle room. He can earn up to 82 points. So the fact that he's trailing you by five isn't the worst. But you have a commanding lead Comfortably. right now. It's not about the lead, though. It's about the bottom. Nobody cares who wins. <laughs> it's you, you care who, who loses. Yeah. Uh, that's what this is about. I, I feel much better today than I did on Friday morning. Much better. So percentages, like, are you like 80% looking like you're going to lose? Uh, is it worse than that? Is it less than um, that? Like, I really need Bama to lose. Yeah. I need Bam. So Bam is. We all have Bama. I've yeah. got Bama in the Elite Eight, but I need Bama to lose in the Elite Eight because you guys all have Bama winning, and so that would clear out. I, I really need Bama to lose and Texas to ultimately win the title. If they yeah. do that, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. uh, it would really help if I, I made a, a gutsier call and said Houston being out in the Elite Eight or, or in the Sweet Sixteen. So if Houston were to lose this next one, that would be helpful because Chop has Houston in the uh, championship game. And really, I just don't want to finish last. That's all. Yep. And so Chop yep. is my main competition right now. I need Houston to go down in the Sweet 16. Hey, Pepe, how you feeling over there? Oh, I'm liking it. Because like RJ said, it's it's not who wins. It's to not lose. Yeah. And so uh, I was really hoping TCU could pull it off, man. I, I was thinking two more points at halftime there because I think TCU was up five on Gonzaga. Um, but I like it, you know. But, I mean, what the heck, RJ? You told me Tennessee wasn't going to go anywhere, so I picked Duke to go to the Sweet 16. And now, All look, right. your balls are going to go to the Final Four. Cakewalk to the Final Cake Four. Cakewalk, yeah, absolutely cakewalk. Uh, yeah, the one year I decided not to be a homer. Uh, <laughs> when did you pick them to lose? Saturday. <laughs> I had them losing to Oral Roberts. <laughs> I had I had, uh, I had Oral beating Duke and then going to the Elite Eight. I had them beating uh, Purdue. Dude, the South bracket is just destroyed for all of us. This, this weekend... We each picked one winner out of the entire South bracket, <laughs> and that was Bama. Other than Peyton, Peyton did have Creighton winning over Baylor. Kansas and Missouri absolutely screwing me on Saturday. Uh, screwing me. Kansas in the national championship. Uh, screw you, Bill Self, and that weak heart of yours. Oh, my uh, gosh. <laughs> uh, so morbid. Hey, uh. I met Bill wow. one time, so I could make that joke. I'm, I'm counting on yes, that. Yes, you guys. boys. Hey, Bill. That one hello at 610 Sports Radio in Kansas City for a year. I think he'd be all, all right with it. Uh, Missouri screwing me. And then yesterday, Michigan State coming up big. UConn coming up big. But my Baylor Bears. My Baylor Bears losing with that call in Westwood 1 uh, to Creighton. So that yeah, was you had them, yeah, you had them in the Sweet 16. I think we all had Baylor, except for, like you said, except for yeah. Baton, this this is a pretty this is a pretty bad bracket year for everybody. Uh, ESPN lost every perfect bracket before the first round was over. Well, yeah, I mean, I bet you nobody had FDU. Uh, no, that was it. Uh, I mean, there were a couple. Uh, I don't remember which one yeah. really broke it, but yeah, they they were broken by the time the weekend was over. Even in a year where brackets are awful. Yeah. 
Don't have, you have that lottery feeling at one point in time? You're like, oh, I should have just hit enter yep. on the ESPN. Mm -hmm. I should have submitted to the fan, 105 through the fan one. I could have had a chance. I could have won a million dollars. And then, bam, smacked by reality. Gonzaga, Gonzaga winning last night helped me a little bit. Bumped me up. But I just looked in ESPN. I knew I'd already lost the perfect bracket. I was like, what percentile tile am I in? I am in, in a year where everybody's brackets are screwed up. Mine is in the 33rd percentile. Oh, that's good, man. <laughs> There are 13.5 million people ahead of me, according to ESPN, <laughs> out of 20 million or whatever it is. We may have to change up the bet. Uh, I'm not feeling anything. I haven't heard from the bosses since we made this bet on air. They don't want. They don't want us. They, they don't, don't want, want it. Like Spittle's been ice cold. I'm anticipating a bad negative meeting today. Mm. I don't know what's going on. I don't know whether he was hurt. The Bobby left him out of the fan hang on Saturday. At Twin Peaks, I don't know. It's a ho that's a host hang. That's a host hang. That's that's that 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 that's that's colleagues. Yeah, that's colleagues. But we have to go ahead and change this up uh, because this is a loser mentality that we all have towards this thing. We don't care about winning it. We just don't want to lose it. But apparently, the bosses they don't want us to assist them. For an entire day, both of them. No. Maybe a little bit worried about seeing what they do all day long. <laughs> well, and that would be two Gavins that uh, Bobby left out of the fan hang. Whoa! Uh, oh, hey! Uh, no. Meanwhile, two game winners. Let's start with the Mavs on Friday in L.A. Got the ball to Kyrie. Under duress. Kyrie on the move. Darts to his right. And he makes a pass. Cleaver to beat the buzzer and win the game. Woo! He got it. Woo! For Maxi Cleaver. A spectacular win. He is mobbed. And Dallas has won it. What a call from follow -up. with Derek Harper in the background. Maxi hits the buzzer-beating game-winning three with the whip-around pass from Kyrie Irving. And the Mavs stun the Lakers in L.A. Anthony Davis taking responsibility for the loss. He missed a free throw. He fouled Maxi, a boneheaded, inexcusable foul while Maxi was shooting a three. And then he was late with the rotation, getting caught in the middle of the floor. And he was too late to get out there on the Kleba bomb that wins it for the Mavericks. So that gives them a 3-1 series edge and the tiebreaker over the Lakers. They move from 8-6 to six after the win over the weekend. And that's where they currently sit this morning in the Western Conference. We would take on the Memphis Grizzlies. Oh, who they're facing tonight in Memphis. So, big Mavs weekend. They're in the number six spot. You also so have Mavericks looking for some revenge today. They are, they are looking for some revenge. Hey, and that, I said that about the Grizzlies when I was 19, and it is the Grizzlies tonight. So. Hey, that's right. Uh, great, uh, great forecasting. I hate all of you. Mavs win the game winner on Friday. Stars decided to do it Saturday. Long pass to Robertson. Gets goes for the goal. Robertson. Nice move. Backhand. Scores. Robertson on the backhand. Wins it in overtime. Stars 6-5 over the Flames in Calgary. Flames TV with the call. And this Calgary team that's given the, you know, they, they, these two teams uh, have played some really good games over the last few years. And Calgary gives them fits. So that's a good win uh, on the road uh -huh. uh, for the stop it, Bobby. Just stop it. Okay, sorry. Good win on the road. They are they are home to Seattle tomorrow night. 877-881-1053, trotrec.com text line. So I guess that wasn't the final game that Kyrie played for the Mavericks before his foot injury, as some were speculating. Oh, no. Last time we'll ever see Kyrie in a Mavs uniform. Of course, maybe he just decided to show up for the bright lights and show off to LeBron what next year is going to look like. Yeah, boy, Mike's got to stop projecting Dallas Stars to never play again. No. Uh, th this has not worked out well. This, this, is twi this is twice now, man. Yeah, Mike, come on. <laughs> I hope he's not up on that bike. I hope he's not up on that Peloton because the RPMs just got juiced up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I'm, try I'm trying to give him some some energy for his workout. All right, y'all. Uh, let us know. The poll question is out for the Cowboys trade for Brandon Cooks. Do you love it? Would you have preferred that they just sign Odell for the money? Should they have given up the second rounder for DeAndre Hopkins? Or should they just never have traded Amari in the first place? The Cowboys at a receiver. I think we're all really excited about with the trade inside the star. And they're bringing in a running back that Bobby brought up last week. That's next on the fan. The latest.
Studios secured by DFWsecurity.com. This is Sean and RJ on 1053 The Fan. From news and notes to the coaches and players for America's team, let us go inside the stars on 1053 The Fan. Quick pass. It's Cooks. Blockers ahead. Cooks turns on the Jets. Cooks. See you later. Touchdown, Texans. That's the call on CBS. This is Sean, RJ, and Bobby live to kick off your Monday morning. Thanks for joining us on your home of America's team. Thanks for being a Tolo. That stands for turn it on, leave it on. The Cowboys trade a fifth and a sixth round pick yesterday morning for wide receiver Brandon Cooks. He was stuck in the armpit. Didn't want to be part of a rebuild. 57 catches, 699 and three scores in 13 games kind of like deandre hopkins jr a poor man's deandre hopkins in terms of all the production with the different bums that he's played with at quarterback bobby give us a scouting report what is he uh he is a vertical threat he is a really clean route runner he's somebody who you know is is so smooth with the way that he runs routes off the line of scrimmage that it is really difficult there's no wasted movement with him he is, he is just really difficult to cover because of the speed, because of the the preciseness, the the, pre the precision he has in his routes. But he has been eternally disrespected. When you look at how many, he's had 6,000 yard receiving seasons in his career. That is tied for the most thousand yard receiving seasons in a career without a Pro Bowl appearance of any player in NFL history. Wow. It's wow. him and Marquez Colston. Two Saints guys, actually, oddly enough. But he's somebody who is produced at a really consistent level now for the better part of a decade and you know I saw this tweeted about yesterday a lot of people who are like man he's already getting up there in age he's 29 he'll be 30 next season but he's younger than Hopkins all this stuff he's two months older than Tyreek Hill and nobody really thinks of Tyreek Hill as being old and speaking of Tyreek Hill since entering the league in 2014 Brandon Cooks has 58 receptions of 25 plus yards downfield only Tyreek has more over that span. Last year, the Cowboys struggled in this area. 10 catches for the season, mm. RJ, of 25 more, 25 or more yards down the field. Wolf. Only 10 receptions tied for the seventh fewest in the league. Wow. That's 10? You tell me that you're going to have a year? I mean, I'd be upset if you had 10 runs of only 25 or more yards yeah. down the field. This is passes. That's... That's very, very, that's, that's, that's troubling. It's from Ed Werder, so it could be wrong. <laughs> it could be wrong. Hey, come on, wrong. come and it's, on. And it's unsourced. It's unsourced. Because um, Jerry doesn't talk every day, so right. it didn't come from Jerry. I, I, I do, look, I do like the move. I, I do think it's a fine move. Um, I, this it, it was something that we talked about last year doing. Like, that, this is what they wanted to do last year. Yep. Uh, they got it at a very low rate. I'm totally cool with this. And there's a lot of people out there that wanted... Dell or wanted Hopkins instead. Did you uh, ever watch that show of uh, like the the coupon savers? 
I, uh, oh, yeah, extreme couponing. Extreme couponing. That's the high that Jerry and Steven are on today. Oh, they've cr- the last week, these deals they've made, they these are rave reviews across the league. It's like when I go to Costco and the freezer's already full, but I'm like, man, this is expiring tomorrow. Yep. Like these crab legs, they have to get rid of them. I, I don't even want them, but I have to, you have to get the deal. It's just sitting out there, you know, take me, take me. And that's the high that you get from the great deal and the great discount. Yep. And that's what they've gotten, not one, but two times with Gilmore and Cooks. Have, you, have either of you ever seen the movie Horrible Bosses? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is what the Cowboys did. They did the, the scene with Shots Jamie. fired. They, they, oh. did the, they did the scene with Jamie Foxx in the bar where they go in a second time and he goes, it's going to be another 5000 They're like, we're not doing that. And he's like, all right, just pay for my drinks. Yeah. Like, oh, wow, that was a terrible negotiation. That's what happened. The Texans, back in the fall, when the Cowboys thought they had a third, they were like, it's going to be a second. Cowboys like, we're, okay, we're not doing that. All right, well, okay, a fifth and a sixth. It's like, okay, all right, sure, we'll give you a fifth and a sixth. Are you going to pitch in $6 million too? Sweet. You'll take that. This is also an interesting note when you talk about stretching the field. This came from John Owning at PFF. Dating back to 2020, so just even in the last three years, when a lot of people have said, is Brandon Cook still the same receiver with nothing in Houston in terms of quarterback play dating back to 2020 Cooks has the second best PFF receiving grade on 20 plus yard targets behind only Justin Jefferson so now I'm not big on PFF grades but that tells you that people who are watching they still think that he's got some juice left and he's had a lot of success on you know route seven eight and nine on the on the route tree the posts the corners the the go routes, he's he's been really good there. So it gives them a true Z receiver that they can use. Let's get to the poll question now. How do you feel about the deal at 105.3 SS? I tweeted it out. Love it. Stole him for a fifth and a six. Option A. Option B, which I'm sure Kevin Gray has already voted on, preferred D-Hop for a second. Bobby Belt reporting on Friday that DeAndre was willing to make financial concessions. Should have paid Odell. Don't have to give up any draft pick. Should have paid Odell, who tweeted over the weekend, hey, where's this number? Where's this report that I want 20? All I'm saying is four ain't high enough. So he's insulting some team that may have offered four. I will take five then. And then option four, don't stop. Add D-Hop or Odell to this. And then option five is... Should have just kept Amari in the first place. Well, that's there. You go. I, I would have. I would have preferred option five. Uh, I voted for option one. Um, for the, I love the move. You know, th- th- this is a steal for a fifth and a sixth. I don't want. I, I, you know, the, with the amount of money, and they're paying six million dollars yeah. to eighteen. I, I was about to say you. You said you'd prefer Amari, but and I think Amari's a better player, probably. But do you prefer Amari and eight million more on your cap? You know, him and Dak had a good thing together they did so i, I there, there's no, there's something to that what worries me about the whole amari thing and i tweeted this yesterday you'll never convince me different i feel like the cow it, it reminded me of cuban thinking he was just smarter than everyone else with the new cba oh yeah oh, other people aren't on shark tank they're not going to be able to figure out any of these numbers i'm the only billionaire in the nba mm-hmm. i'm the smartest one I'm convinced that the Cowboys did not see as soon as they traded amari cooper the wide receiver market went to 20 a year and above you, above, know, you yeah. just with, now I know thirty Bob, almost. I know Bobby's going to tell me it, it wouldn't have mattered. They wanted to get rid of him, no matter what. Michael Irvin may say the same thing. You're not going to convince me that they did not because you can want to get rid of players but still have a great value. I just feel like they they did not see that the market was going to jump to the to the twenties. That's my opinion. That that may be part of it, but even now seeing it that way. Obviously, they'll tell you on the record. You can talk to people over there off the record, and they will tell you we have zero regrets about the trade compensation. We have zero regrets about the decision to move on. We just we needed a reset. We needed a fresh start. So they they genuinely don't have any regrets about that deal. And I mean, Jerry went on the bus in you, Indy. If, if you have a lot of people, mm. fifth and a six for Amari Cooper, fifth and a six for Brandon Cooks. People are people are going to vote for Amari Cooper, but yeah. at half the salary. Basically, the, the salad look that that plays into it, no doubt. Yeah. Um, but again, we know we it know been, it would have looked really bad if we got Cooks here paying him eighteen. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> it would have looked like you traded basically Amari for Brent Cooks. Look, I I, I and I, gave up a sixth with it. I like Adam Thielen. We talked glowingly about Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen is not in the realm of Brandon Cooks anymore. He's two years older. Adam Thielen just yesterday got 
10 million guaranteed. He's getting 2 million less guaranteed than Brandon Cooks. With he's Carolina. making Yeah, with Carolina, he's making 8 and 8.3 million a year. Cooks is going to make 12. But in terms of the guaranteed money left on the deal, it's 10 to 12. It's the same same basic pay scale and you're talking about a younger, better player. And I just I, I just love it. Some people are texting Amari and these others, Thielen, they, they may be better players. Cooks is a better fit. I just love pure, outright, frightening speed. That's yes. that, that's the first thing that jumps out to me. Just run run seven go routes a game. He hasn't lost a step either. He's still he is still a burner. This isn't one of these things where, well, he's not as fast as he used to be, but he's still fast. He's still he is damn near right where he's always been. Forty nine hundred votes are in. RJ's vote and mine leading the way. Love it. Stole him for a fifth and a six. 19% prefer the Kevin Gray category. KGC. Uh, prefer D Hop for a second. 14%. Add Odell or D Hop to this. Only 1.5% saying should have added Odell. Yeah, I mean, look, he's going to cost a lot of money, and you can't have two wide receivers in your team coming off ACLs basically two months apart. Yeah. Like what did that, Odell tweet last week? I was I, I was I was I was a little embarrassed to bring this up because I didn't know this socially. People want to pay for a a futon instead of uh, people want to pay for Franzi a box wine for a futon or a mouton. I I, I they want to try. You, you tell me, Nick and Sam's. I don't know what that it is. It says they want to try a mouton but pay box wine for it. What is a mouton, RJ? Uh, None of us know. Bobby, you know what a mouton is? Uh, oh, it's yeah, wine. it's like a, it's a crouton wine. without seasoning. Yeah. It's a chateau. Chateau mouton. Okay, so he's the mouton, and uh, apparently he was getting box wine offers, Franzi offers. Yeah, I think they saw that. I think the Cowboys saw him make that analogy on social media, and they went, this is so incredibly douchey. We need to trade for Brandon Cooks instead. <laughs> We're not signing this guy. We're, we, we can't have any of this. And so, so it appears like the majority of Tolos love this at 66%. With the vote wow. so far. It's a nice place, the Chateau Mouton Rothschild. Is it? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. All right, what would you have voted for for option two? Option two was get uh, DeAndre for a second, sign Odell outright, um, and then we'll just make it, well, your second option would be just keep Amari. What would your second one have been, Bobby? Yeah, because obviously I agree. Oh, that may have been your first. St stealing him yeah. for a fifth and a sixth, is this is by far the best end game. Probably, oh gosh. Let's get to the DeAndre thing because he was trending twice yesterday. D Hop and Hopkins, uh, Kevin Gray again, just going in like like D Hop's agent. Um, Bobby, you <laughs> reported that Hopkins would have welcomed a trade here, mm -hmm. and the asking price, according to Albert Breer, second round pick plus something else of value. Worth noting, he's due nineteen point four five million in cash. Kevin Gray said, if you could get a wide receiver with 121 catches, 1,350 yards, six TDs this past year for a second, would you make that? You'd be getting DeAndre Hopkins. That would have been his numbers over a 17-game span last year. Wait, what did he say the numbers were? 1,700 yards? If it would have been no, 1,300. 1,354 if he was playing over yeah, 17 yeah, yeah. games. Look, DeAndre Hopkins is a better player. What are you paying? What are you giving up? What are you paying him salary-wise, and what type of fit is he opposite of CeeDee Lamb and Michael Gallup? So DeAndre Hopkins is probably a better player. DeAndre Hopkins has shown more of a decline in recent years than Cooks has, though. So even though he's still better than Cooks, Cooks has not shown that he's in any period of, of sharp decline like Hopkins has. Hopkins, when he... when KG throws out those numbers and he's he's averaging it out and everything. Over his last two years, his last 19 games, it's less than that. It's it's fewer than 1,300 yards over 19 games. And so Hopkins is is not the same receiver that he once was. He's not the 1,500 just see ball, get ball, my ball kind of guy. Uh, but he would have been willing to to make concessions to get here. So what does that mean, concessions? That's, though that's exactly where I was going next because. That was not clear. When I would talk to people, they were saying on Friday, no, D Hop would be able to make finance or would be willing to make financial concessions. And two different people I talked to when I said, Well, what does that mean? They said, Don't know. That's what he said is that he's willing to do this. But financial concessions could mean 
that that may not even mean I'll play for less. Financial concession may mean, hey, I won't play on this deal for Arizona, but I'll play on this current deal for you. It may just a financial mm -hmm. concession may just mean I won't make you sign me to a new deal. And even still, you're talking about a second round pick, a a you know borderline top fifty pick, and paying somebody five and a half million more than you're paying Cooks now. The value is not equal. In fact, yeah. to, where I think Odell Beckham Jr.'s market eventually ends up kind of falling a little bit, you, I might say my second option would be Odell rather than a second and pay the contract to Hopkins. By the way, for those Ooh. wanting to add Beckham to this, Ed Werder said the trade for Cooks likely takes the Cowboys out, out of the competition for Odell. Quote from a source, hard to do Cooks and OBJ. So the Cowboys yeah. message was this. It was a very Jalen Smith, Zeke-esque message to the wide receivers. You're going to take a discount or we're moving on. You're going to you're gonna take our deal or we'll find the next flea market. And that was a message to Odell. DeAndre Hopkins apparently received it. Uh, and he was apparently willing to take less to some degree. Those didn't happen. So we'll go get Brandon Cooks. I, I, I like Cooks better. Uh, I know Hopkins a better player. Uh, but the other issue, and like you said, I mean, the decline and, and the type of player that he might be, you you get up there and he's never been, I don't think most people realize he's not that tall. Who? Hopkins. Oh, no, he's like 6'1". Yeah. But for some reason, think, when you watch him play, he does look he, like he's 6'6". He plays like he's 6'5". Yeah. Uh, and, and that's just not him. And, you know, it's going to be much more difficult to him to go up and get it as he gets older. And he is older. Let's recap the madness from the weekend. How are your brackets looking? Uh, we have Lamar Jackson rumors. Finally, two teams involved. Finally, two teams may be involved for Lamar. And the Cowboys are bringing in this running back that Bobby Belt mentioned last week. How is your Sweet 16 looking? If there's anything left, next.
brought to you by Window Nation. Inbound pass comes to Arkansas, Arkansas. bounce to Black, wow. no foul, and Arkansas survives. The defending champs do not. 72-71. They'll be calling the Hogs all night in Des Moines. Shirtless for Eric Musselman. Shirtless for Eric Musselman. Dumbest chant ever. Sorry, Hog fans. I know. Who pig? Uh, that, 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 don't like it. Yeah, dumbest thing I've ever seen, <laughs> but whatever. They got something. You know, every, every I, I firmly believe every school needs, this This really was a Texas thing. Just the only, the only schools that have a hand sign, they're te- Texas schools. They all have a hand sign. Uh, and then Arkansas is kind of cool. They got their own little thing, even though I hate it. I think it's stupid. Uh, but most schools don't have a hand sign. All these Texas schools wow. got one. I had not. Now I'm sitting here thinking about it. TCU, UTSA, UT, it they is all there. They all got no, and nobody else outside of Texas got one. I Big, mean, um, maybe, yeah, wow. maybe a couple. Dudes. Oklahoma. What an observation. Oklahoma didn't have one. Good well, job, well, they Chuck. Get, like the the one. They get the like one. the boomer with the thing where they go. No, it's not. <laughs> that was a fantastic observation. This just totally blew my mind. I didn't. I hadn't yeah. thought about that. It is all Texas schools. Holy yeah. cow. Some people were trying to compare this, saying, "Oh, here's some Nick Sirianni energy." No, this was absolute pure joy. Yeah. and happiness. There was no douchiness. Showed how ironic his name is, though. Muscle. Not, yes. not a lot of muscle there. Yeah, he needs some more pec development there. I need a bowl of cereal out of that sunken chest. It was awesome. Very cool. It was fun. It was great. Uh, that was a great performance. Not fun if you had Kansas in the final like I did, Ooh. but <laughs> good good for... Mm, Peyton with a little chuckle right there. Uh, but there it is. Kansas without Bill Self eliminated by the Razorbacks on Saturday. And then... You had, if you, if you want to know anything about Princeton, New Jersey, just follow RJ Choppy on Twitter. This one is over. It's official. It is history for the Princeton Tigers. For the first time in school history, Princeton is going to the Sweet 16. Princeton 78, Missouri 63. The Princeton Magic continues. The Tigers will play on in the South region. Princeton becomes the fourth number 15 seed to ever reach the Sweet 16 as they beat Missouri, it wasn't a typical upset either. The 15-point win was the most lopsided win by number 15 in tournament history. It's disgusting. Just the fourth Ivy League team Mm. to ever reach the Sweet 16 and the first since Cornell in 2010. And if you listen to RJ Choppy's cheat sheet, you would now know this is the third straight year in which a 15 has reached the Sweet 16 after St. Peter's and Oral Roberts. Yep, St. Pete, Oral Roberts, and now Princeton. Uh, and, and this is not the same kind of Princeton that used to have, you know, those uh, those backdoor cuts. They still do some of them, but not as many. Uh, I went to their basketball camp, old Coach Pete. Wow. You know, Coach Pete Carrill, he taught me how to use the backdoor. And <laughs> it, uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was a fantastic offense. And now they don't really run that as much. Uh, but it's still a great story. It is a great story that they're in there, but... Like now, let's see. They have. They are going to play. Oh my God! It's going to be them and Creighton. Them and Creighton. One of those two teams is going to go to the Elite Eight against Bama and preserve Bama for you guys. Which Some garbage. We need, that. we need that. You know, you shouldn't just you should just listen. No, just I Bama like. I, I'm not going to. I can't cheer for the Princeton Cinderella run. I can't do it because they took out Arizona. Screw Jason Garrett. Dean Kane can go to hell. All of you Princeton alum. Your boy on the uh, NFL Network. Since Who? the... Uh, not Kyle Schrager. Brandt. Did Kyle, Kyle Brandt, Brandt. Go Oh, I had no idea. Screw Kyle Brandt too then. Since the NCAA expanded the field in 85, only three times have multiple number one seeds failed to reach the Sweet 16. Before this year, 2000, 04, and 2018... And now you have number one seeds following. This is the first time since 1980. No Blue Bloods None. in the Sweet 16. No Duke. No Kansas. No Carolina. No Kentucky. No Carolina. Yeah. UCLA is there. UCLA is there. They're Blue Blood. Uh, they're, the, they're, they're one of the bluest of Blue Bloods. But I think when you think Blue Bloods, for some reason, we no longer think UCLA as much. Um, just because they're so far out in the West and... You know, we see all the... And nobody from the West wins the title. And nobody from the West wins the title. And how about the shortest team in the tournament? The shortest team that wasn't even supposed to be there taken out. Purdue, who chokes again. Scooped up by Roberts, and that'll do it! The Knights have slain the Dragon for the second time!
time in NCAA tournament history, a 16 has beaten the one, and the FDU Knights are that 16, knocking off number one in the East, Purdue, 63 to 58. It took me 10 minutes last night to find Fairly Dickinson, Fairly Dickinson on my bracket. I'm like, where's FDU, FAU, whoever they're facing you? I, mm. I couldn't even find it. I was like, did, did the bracket mess up here? Look, they, they weren't supposed to be here, literally. No, Merrimack should have been there. Merrimack is... <laughs> they won the NEC. Yes, Merrimack won the tournament. They, they were the best team. They were the number one seed. They won the tournament, won the regular season. But there's an NCAA rule, dumbest rule in the world. This might be the dumbest rule in sports. They transitioned from, like, D2 to D1. Mm. And... Yeah. And in that transition period, you have to wait like four years to get in. Stop smirking. It was like four years to get in to be a real D1 team where you can make the tournament or make a bowl game in, in, in a sense in football. So the winner of the semifinal game that FDU played, they knew when they took on Merrimack in the finals that they were already going to the NCAA tournament. And they still lost the game. They that, shouldn't even have been here. That's nothing. That's, that's nothing. nothing. Someone sent me Fairly Dickinson's director of media relations. He's a junior at the school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> look look yeah. at the kid. Here he is. Oh, that's wow. him. It's just Alec Medford running their... Uh... Alex, according to Bassick. <laughs> yeah, Alex. <laughs> uh, he's a junior at the university. If you want to get a hold of Fairly Dickinson's head coach, or one of the star players, hit this guy up on IGDMs. Unbelievable that that they made it this far or made it that far until they lose to FAU. Uh, but like you said, the smaller, their, their average height is 6'1 on their roster. 6'1. Oh, that's that's awesome. their average height. I love it. They're, they're, they're 6'1's the average height. They weren't supposed to be in the tournament. Uh, Jake Trotter from ESPN with the note that Fairleigh Dickinson doesn't have a band, so Dayton's band had to step up. Oh, and, yeah. the, and the UD Dayton, Dayton, the Dayton band learned FDU's fight song minutes before tip on Friday. And then over the weekend, they were waving around plastic swords that they bought from Party City to root for the Knights. <laughs> and so, like, I mean, this is the... This is, this Fairleigh Dickinson is the cool runnings of NCAA teams. <laughs> like, there's no business being here. Yeah, I was going to say that, like, the, 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 the madness GoFundMe here uh, with all these <laughs> donations. And Purdue is now, like, Kansas light. They lost to a double-digit seed now in three straight tournaments. Virginia lost... To a double-digit seed in three of their last four NCAA tournaments. Arizona lost to a double-digit seed in four of their last five. Bobby, but here is Purdue now. Three straight, double-digit seed out. Yeah, and, and they had, you know, they had, you know, Zach Eadie's just a, a force for them. And th this is a team that should have gone much, obviously much farther than this. I had them not get knocked out much earlier than, you know, than than Bobby did, who had them in the finals, uh, or paid the final four, <sighs> but... I, I mean, no, you can't predict this. You cannot predict that, that a one beat, you know, loses to a 16. It's very difficult to predict that a one loses to an eight or nine. Like, you, would, you wouldn't go that far. These are the four best teams in the country all year. I was at the Eagle's Nest on Friday night, Sean. Whoa! Wonderful spot. Great energy out you there. go home Packed. ever? Mm -hmm. I did. I went home and then I went out to oh, Eagle's Nest. Because uh, Get Right was doing a, a remote out there. And I got there just in time to see the last minute of Purdue losing and, and totally upsetting me. And Reggie just couldn't stop laughing because Reggie says, look, Fairleigh Dickinson, yeah, you can't predict that. Nobody would have thought Fairleigh Dickinson's going to win. It's a 16-1. He's like, but you're dumbass putting Purdue in the finals. He's like, you should have known better. No, like, I, he's like, I wish you would have let me see your bracket because I would have told you there's no chance in hell Purdue's going deep. I thought Reggie was going to be talking about the women's side. <laughs> my hey, my women's bracket is in a better percentile than the men's bracket. Is it? <laughs> I'm, I'm the 52nd percentile on the women's yeah, bracket. Just, just outside of the Stanford, you know, Stanford, the one seed lost. Outside of that, uh, you know, just just pick the higher seed, you're gonna be fine. So you're pretty confident and happy right now that you're not gonna finish last. You're not gonna lose the show back. Oh, I'm not out of the woods yet, Sean. No, not 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 uh, not even close. Because I mean, I still lost an elite. Eight. I've got a couple of elite eights that are down. Um, that's really it, though. All my other Elite Eights are, are still in play. Uh, so I feel okay from that standpoint. My my liability is Texas. If Texas wins it all, um, and, and Bobby has Texas, then I'm then I'm really cooked. And, and I'm in trouble because my issue is that there's no real challenger to Bama, and I had Bama going out in the Elite Eight, and you all have Bama winning. 
Now my challengers that were supposed to take them out are all gone. Creighton and Princeton are not beating Bama. San Diego State's not beating Bama. Man, Bama's not, hang on. Bama's San, into the Final Four. San Diego State's but is a top fifteen team all year outside of the rankings. The rankings have not put them there, but the numbers have put them there all year long. And our guy Bama, old Pat Down, he's not playing great. No, that's my worry. He was scoreless in Game One, and then he he was like limited in Game Two. I don't know if they sat him because they were winning big. Uh, what's his name? SEC Player of the Year? Brandon Miller. Brandon Miller. He's not a very good shooter. But he's not ball. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, Cowboys make the big trade for Brandon Cooks. They're also bringing in a running back, Bobby. That Did you know last week they were bringing him in when you brought this up? I didn't know they were bringing him in, but I knew they liked him. Like, I knew they, they had positive feelings towards him. But uh, Ronald Jones, old Rojo, uh, a McKinney North product. R-O-J-O. Rojo. Yeah. Rojo. Is, is it Rojo? That's what people will call him. Okay. I'll call him Rojo, Rojo, either one. Ronald yeah. Jones, former USC product, uh, and a guy from McKinney North who they showed some interest in when he was coming out of the draft in 2018. Uh, 38th overall pick. Has has had a couple decent years, but ultimately probably been a disappointment. Uh, spent last year a little bit with the Chiefs, uh, and so he's a free agent. They're going to work him out, but he's somebody who, yeah, sure, bring, bring him in here. I wouldn't be mad if he was part of a a tandem uh, at the running back position. So we'll see how that workout goes and today. We finally have two teams calling maybe about Lamar Jackson, the Tennessee Titans and the Minnesota Vikings. Ooh. This makes sense though, right? Like, doesn't it make sense yes. that it would be them? Cause the Titans love running sense backs. Oh. Mike Vrabel likes wants oh, to play, God. you know, Bronco Nagurski football. Like he wants nothing but, run the ball 600 times a season. So it makes total sense that you'd want to pay $50 million to Lamar Jackson. So, man, this is... While like, getting rid of Derrick Henry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, this. The, here's the thing with Minnesota. Like, Kirk Cousins has a $48 million dead cap hit this year. Mm-hmm. Um, how? What if how? it's part of a swap? You would Baltimore. have to you would, Yes, but wouldn't, wouldn't most of those... I, mean, I guess the guaranteed money comes in. But if you, Kirk work. Cousins is not... Fit. He's not a Baltimore. He's not allowed in Maryland. He's not. He's not a. <laughs> he's not a Baltimore type of dude. I yeah. would not think. It, it makes much more sense for he Tennessee. Needs to be on the West Coast. You saw he was wearing the chains. He has street cred. Yeah. <laughs> it he, makes much he, more he sense. He can go up in them towers now. It makes much more sense for the Titans. Um, if you wanted, if they wanted to do it, I mean, they have to move on from Tannehill's contract, but. It, ma it makes sense in the sense that Minnesota has shown they're one of two teams in the NFL who will give fully guaranteed contracts, though. Well, that's, to a good point. that's a really good point. But then, like, again, the Kirk money really kind of throws a wrench into it. But you, you're right. They would have to swap. They could get out of they could get out of Tannehill's deal with an $18 million dead cap hit, but they would wind up saving $18 million off of their regular cap hit. Do we have another reason in the AL West that the WBC should be canceled after the United States advances to the final, get your USA chance ready for what happened in the World Baseball Classic and the huge injury news that could help the Rangers after this. But look, we know what time of year it is, and we have your bracket.
And and then yesterday, the United States beats down Cuba 14 to 2 to advance to the championship game tomorrow night where they will await the winner of Mexico and Japan, Trey Turner is absolutely on fire. This is Sean, RJ, and Bobby on the home of the Rangers. Good music, Peyton. United States advancing. Trey Turner on fire, but another huge injury in the WBC with Jose Altuve, apparently out eight to ten weeks. Eight to ten weeks with a uh, with a thumb uh, last night. Fracture. Nolan Arenado hit by a pitch on the hand. Uh, don't know what uh, the status of that one is at the moment, but that uh, Altuve injury is big. And now you've got, you know, somebody, two players on World Series contenders, the Astros and the Mets, uh, who are going to miss quite a bit of time. Obviously, one's missing the entire year, and then one Diaz. And then Altuve, you know, eight to ten weeks. I mean, that's, I mean, look, you know, shoot, the uh, the regular season starts in, in, in what, two weeks. Uh, so he's going to be missing, you know, at least a month and a half, two months of the regular season beyond that. Uh, so we'll see what, what this does for the Astros. I mean, they're so loaded that it probably won't do much. But still, this is a big loss. Who runs the WBC? Who's in charge of all this? Well, you had the to Illuminati. ask that question. I, 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 I assume Major League Baseball. That's my assumption. I don't know. Okay, we I, need I, to find out who because... Who runs the World Baseball Classic? Thanks for reading it slowly out loud versus just typing. That's what I do. I'm, uh, I'm trying to signal to you that I'm actively trying to get the answer for you, Sean. Uh, Sean. Uh, I said the same thing you did. It's that, run by Major League Baseball. Okay, well then, if owners... First off, this this recent run, this, this last weekend proved to me... They need to keep it. If I'm Rob Manfred, it has to stay. Uh, it's great for the sport. It's fantastic. People are really, really involved and invested emotionally. Now that we're sitting here in the quarterfinals, the semifinals, it, it hypes up the excitement that much more. Uh, tomorrow night, I bet. I mean, I think RJ gets the ratings, but I just think this is such a great thing for the sport. It shouldn't go anywhere. If I was an owner, I still would not want my player playing. Uh, I don't see any way they're going to get around that. If the owner is good enough or important enough, you're not going to stop them from wanting to represent their country. It is what it is uh, yeah. with these guys dropping like flies, these stars getting hurt. But if I'm Rob Manfred, man, I, I want this thing. I want this thing to stay. You absolutely want it it's to been stay. A, it's, it's, this one has been a hit. Yes, no it has. It, it, no one's <laughs> dying. Uh, you absolutely want this thing to stay if you're if you're the owners. Uh, it majorly, and since Van LB runs it, um, they probably will mandate that the owners can't keep their player out of it. Now, if there's an injury, you could probably if, if the player has uh, an injury or coming off an injury, like like with Degrom, right, coming off an injury, the, the Rangers. I, I I bet there's a, there's protocols where you could say you're not playing in this because you're coming off an injury. Now, is it just me or is it? I don't know what the United States has done in the past. Does it feel like this year's tournament has been? Much it, more exciting, much more in the news than in the past. Because this thing has been around. It's been around. We have not talked about it to this degree. Now, the injuries play a part, but the, it feels like the excitement level has not been there. I, I have to, Bobby, why don't you out loud Google what the United States has done in years past? So, what this? has the United <laughs> States <laughs> done in past world baseball <laughs> class? I bet that doesn't six. come up easily. So, that's what she like, said. Th it, this is not a new. The U.S. posted a ten and ten overall record through the first three WBCs. There you go. In your face, Ken Griffey Jr. <laughs> played I mean, I right in one of these. Point. Ken Griffey Jr. played in the World Baseball Classic. That's how long it's been going on. Has it? Yeah. Did uh, you see everyone? Man, it was an awesome video of the whole American team watching Griffey take batting practice the other day. You'll you'll you won't be able to sit down after oh, seeing man. it. I don't know. What, not, not with this Emmy. Just watch him swinging. Just watch the smoothies. Ken Griffey oh. Jr. <laughs> <laughs> now you got. There, there are two great videos. There was that one which he homered during BP apparently at however old he is now. What he's probably 51, 52, something like that. How old is? <laughs> so, no, the the other great video. Well, that, he was nineteen in nineteen eighty nine. It so. went it went super viral yesterday because everybody's like, "Gosh, it'd be nice if we had audio with this video." You can't hear them. Some guys just film with a cell phone. But fifty three. It's, it's Trout and Griffey. And they're talking about things and Trout's doing stuff and Griffey's stopping him. You can hear him go, no, 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 look. And like 
and everybody's just like, man, I would Coach love, and Trout. Yeah, and it's like I would love to hear what Griffey and yeah. Trout are talking about. I mean, it's that that's really cool. I'm watching this video. You got hit the hat backwards. How smooth. Oh, it's so smooth. How freaky. It looks like everyone is going out. It does. It's, it's so smooth. Doesn't and, that bring up great childhood memories uh, right Buck there? Buck Showalter's probably rolling rolling around in his grave, even though he's alive. They're, oh my god, he's got his hat backwards. <laughs> Can you hang <laughs> on? Can you hang <laughs> on? Uh, but like this is a you you're right. This is a hit. Yes. This, this is a hit. They've they've drawn in the pool play alone. In pool play alone, 40 games, 40 games was pool play. They drew over a million fans. They drew over a million fans in pool play. This is on TV? No, no. This is in, in attendance. In, in attendance. The, in the, I was like, that's a low TV number. This is attendance in the stadiums. They drew, they drew over a million fans in pool play alone. That's more than the Marlins and the A's drew last year for their entire season. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. They drew 1.01 million fans in pool play this year in the WBC. The Marlins drew 904,000 and the A's drew 722,000 for the entire year. So in half as many games, they had 25% more fans than the A's did. Oh my for the gosh. Entire year. That means the A's averaged 9,000 fans a night. Yeah. So oh, like good rude. good for the WBC. It is, you know, there's I still don't know what winning the thing means. Right, I, st- I I know the value of an Olympic gold medal. I know the value of the World Cup. This doesn't have the same value in my own head. Now that's 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 my problem. That's something that that's my problem. It's not baseball, so that's my problem. This is basically, you know, this is like an Olympic gold medal to me. Yeah, I guess it is. And and you know, it's the, the longer this goes on, you know, there was a time when the World Cup was was a was a new tournament. You know, like the longer it goes on, the more value it gets for generations. Well, you know, Nelson Cruz was quoted the other day, and this is not going to make people happy uh, given his history with the World Series. But Nelson Cruz was quoted as saying there's a large handful of guys that would prefer to win the World Baseball Classic over winning the World Series. That, that that's, their country, yeah. that's something that means more to them than the World Series is. Yeah. Maybe that's why he threw game seven or game six. I mean, because, you know, to, let's just say you you play for team, you know, team you know, Latvia, Cuba, team, team Venezuela, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, sure. Same thing. Let's say you play for Team Venezuela. Oh, like, do, does the uniform of the Kansas City Royals mean anything to you? But the flag of your country means a lot because yeah. you grew up there. So yeah. I get it. Four home runs and ten runs batted in for Trey Turner. He is on fire. Goldschmidt gave him some help yesterday as they beat down Cuba fourteen to two. And Philly fans will boo him his first three strikeout game. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, yeah, that's right. All right, uh, hopefully everyone enjoyed their St. Patty's Day weekend. Um, we don't know whether they were enjoying this, but this went viral from Philly News, WPVI, with the viral St. Patty's Day <laughs> moment. Wednesday, mild, some sunshine, 60. Thursday, partly sunny skies and 57. And to another woman who likes to be double-fisted in a different way, I think Jess. (laughs) She means beer. She means beer. Uh, Guys, she means beer. Don't put me on YouTube. My God. Yeah, we're going to take a pause. We're going to keep going. Uh, We're on ready right now, guys. We're watching Route 202. Chop and I do that every uh, every 9 o'clock. We we do the double fist. Yep. We yep, double fist bump. Yeah. We do. Yeah. I I I, I could couldn't believe this. I could not believe this. It's so much she knew that. what she was doing. She right? had to have, right? I don't know. That the first girl, she looked real innocent. Uh and yeah, she, she did. She'd met, you know, she met the two drinks. Obviously. Yeah, but she was holding the two uh controllers, right, for the for the weather or for the traffic. i and ne- she was talking about the beer, obviously. But Nobody thought of it like that. At least I didn't. Literally, I, I don't think you can hear that in any context, and I don't think anybody is going to jump to go like, oh, she means beer. She means beer. Let's hear uh, it. Let's hear it one more time, Peyton. <laughs> Wednesday, mild, some sunshine, 60. Thursday, partly sunny skies and 57. And to another woman who likes to be double-fisted in a different way, I think, Jess. <laughs> she means beer. She means beer. Uh, guys. All right. that's she knows even- what she's doing because she said who likes to be. Yeah. She didn't yeah. say who likes to. That's not or, even a term, though, in the naughty sense, is it, RJ? Y- yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. Oh, yes. Double. I can pull up some videos if you like to. <laughs> <laughs> no. Where's that drum, Peyton? <laughs> I, don't th- I don't think so. All right. Uh, headlines at <laughs> 7 o'clock. Our giveaway this week, $50 Sonic money. Okay. Mm. Good. 
So there it is. $50 worth of Sonic. What's going on with this wrestling mom? This wrestling mom who I was dying laughing at yesterday. Wrestling. For losing her mind. So this is the Iowa wrestler's mom. So Spencer Lee. Spencer Lee lost in the finals um, in, in the, whatever, the NCAA Wrestling Championship. And she loses, he loses in the finals. And this petulant child of a mother. Yeah. This is this woman's what's wrong with youth sports. And this isn't even youth sports. He, by the way, is a three-time NCAA champ. Yeah, he got his. He got his. He was going for four in a row. He's a three-time champ. It's not like he had never won before in his life. He's a three-time champ already. And he gets pinned. Huge upset. Uh, massive, massive upset. And she starts throwing a fit. She rips her eyeglasses off. Breaks him in her hands, throws him down, stomps on him, and then, like, falls into the arms of somebody else there as if she just realized that her husband died. Yeah. And, and she got the bad news that he died. Uh, Crunched up those fold-up glasses. Crunched them up. Like, Crunched she needs new up. glasses. I hope she has insurance. Actually, I hope she doesn't. This gave me such joy. Such joy. I, I, was, I was laughing so hard. I was so happy. Uh, that she was so miserable, freaking out like this. These yeah. types of things give me such such great pleasure. It did too. Uh, me too. It's like you know, and, and and you know, here's the problem. I I hate Spencer Lee now because of his mom. Yep. Yeah. I have I have no idea who this guy is. N nothing against him, but his mom has made me not like him. It's fair. It's like how I like I'm not gonna like anybody that Peyton dates because I hate Peyton, right? <laughs> like it's wow. like the Twin Peaks waitress. Uh, no. Nah, he he had no shot with the Twin Peaks or waitress, Aww. bro. No. There, there was no game being put on. We did establish over the weekend, by the way, that we are going to do take Peyton out on the town soon. Derek yeah. Collins in. We're all going to we're going to take him to a country bar. We're going to him. I just said a country bar. Yeah, you're literally get taken out. <laughs> Steve Bellum. All right, let's get luck. let's get to headlines. The Cowboys make the Brandon Cooks deal. We all love it. Does it mean Odell is done? The Eagles lose someone else. Our buddy from the Super Bowl signs in the NFC, and how is your Sweet 16 bracket looking this morning after the madness over the weekend? Headlines and a Sonic giveaway after this. But first, I want to tell you about...
Fan Studios, secured by DFWSecurity.com. This is Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. Good morning, Metroplex. It's a great offseason so far. I had a Tolo hit me up yesterday and say, set all debate, me and my buddy. Is this the most active the Cowboys have been in the last 15 years? Mm-hmm. And I was like, RJ and Bobby have better memories for that than I do. Uh, is the bar that low? We're talking about fifth round picks being dealt for Stephon Gilmore and Brandon Cooks, and this is the most active that they have been, or most productive <laughs> that they have been this early on in free agency over the last 10, 15 years. I mean, you have to go back, you know, Brandon Carr was our last big signing, like big, big signing. Uh, that was about a decade ago. Yeah, that was 2012. Carr, probably. I, I mean, they, they honestly haven't, it's it's not been splurge spending, but the difference here is what they're doing is they're, they're dabbling in the trade market early in the offseason in a way that they haven't before. And it actually, when you look at the history, the last decade or whatever it is of teams that win the Super Bowl, and we'll talk about some of this at 840, uh, is that when you look at the way teams build, they use trades pretty consistently to help flesh out the roster. And so the Cowboys, it's like, okay, here we go. Baby steps. Are, are they out there giving out giant contracts to the best free agents? No, not so much. But they are now playing in this trade world and getting really good value on these first two trades. And I, and I like I like this world better than the fr- you know s- splurge on free agents early on. Uh, that's a that's a recipe for disaster. You know, when you just go and be the team that out- outspends everybody else in free agency. Mm-hmm. Now, I get some teams have to. Like the, you know, the, you got to you got to spend a certain amount of your cap every 4 years or whatever. Um like Jacksonville. Jacksonville last year, the Bears this year. The Bears had like 50 million dollars of cap space. They had a ton of cap space. They had to spend it. They were going to give money to somebody. And I prefer the Cowboys not, you know, kind of live in that world, but this is the much more preferred way to go. In 2012, like you said, they when they got Carr, they also, that was the year they also traded up for Mo Claiborne. Yep. In the draft. So far, the Tolos are loving the deal. A fifth and a sixth for Brandon Cooks out of the armpit. Uh, the only weird thing about this, Landry Locker is going to join us from our sister station in Houston, 610. They were celebrating. They had a lot of news yesterday. Altuve out eight to ten weeks. Laramie Tunsil got his deal done with Houston, representing himself. And they trade Brandon Cooks to us. There's some weird Jack Easterby tie-in with Cooks that we need to ask Landry about in the expressway. Here were his thoughts. Kind of seems like the Cooks deal should have happened last year. Texans had a better deal, and they got greedy. And right, they thought they had a deal done. The Cowboys thought a deal was done for a third. So now you wait and you lose it from a third to a fifth and a sixth. Landry continues. I wish everyone, including Cooks, the best when they leave and go on with their lives. Well, let's be honest. The Cooks thing was weird as hell. The fact this that his happiness was tied to Jack Easterby and he tried to spin it any other way is just weird. Who's Jack Easterby, RJ? The charlatan of the NFL. <laughs> he is the uh, former, what did he, he was the president of the Houston Texans. Yeah. Just a charlatan of a human. He was with uh, the Patriots before. He was their team chaplain. Yeah. Uh, but everybody always said he was a fraud. Like yeah. He was a fraud at everything he did. He didn't really believe any of the stuff that he, he preached. Uh, he was, he was he wa- he had a wannabe comedic career uh, at one point. Uh, and then he basically torpedoed the Texans organization. Everybody wanted out. Everybody wanted out. Apparently, Landry said, like, Cooks never won out of Houston. All this stuff about getting me to a contender, it was only after Easterby left. He had some weird tie, allegiance, and love for Jack Easterby. He was more than content rotting there with his career. Then when Easterby left, Brandon Cooks wanted out. That's according to Landry. We'll ask him about it in about 30 hmm. minutes. So that's weird. But in terms of the fit, Bobby, you're reporting. What a what a what a great, great weekend of reporting for Roberto. On Friday, he said Roberto. the Cowboys, they're gonna have to get a Stephon Gilmore type trade done if they're gonna add a receiver. And then bam, yesterday morning it hits for another Stephon Gilmore type fifth. Well done. Yeah, this is a thank you. This is the exact deal that they needed. Um, because their whole perspective on it, I think, when they looked at the trade market is CD Lamb is our one. That's our guy. That's our number one. Mm. Nobody we bring in here is is going to take over C.D. Lamb's spot. Uh, this West Coast offense scheme that we're going to put into place, a lot of times the tight end is going to be the second read for us. And if that's the case, we're talking about 
in a lot of instances, we're going to trade for the third read in the progression. Do we want to give up a second round pick for DeAndre Hopkins to be the third read? Do we want to give up a first round pick for Jerry Judy to be the third read? No. We'll go acquire a free agent veteran and we'll draft. If something falls into our lap that's just too good a value to be that third read in the progression, we'll do it. But it's got to fall the same way that we we gave Cleveland the Amari Cooper deal. We need something like that. And that's exactly what they got in both Stefan Gilmore and Brandon Cooks. Interesting Stefan Gilmore tie-in I heard this weekend when we talked about they haven't spent since 2012 when they traded up to get Mo Claiborne. I heard Gilmore was devastated in 2012 when they traded up and got Gil and got oh, Mo really? Claiborne because he really thought he had a shot to go to Dallas. And when they traded up and got Claiborne, he was just so bummed out. I um I think the fit for the offense is really good. I don't know how good the fit is for Dak. Uh, <laughs> just just cause, no, because throw it deep. Well, just heave it because you know in you know Bobby brought up the route tree that he shows the route tree that he mm-hmm. has run and the majority of his routes the highest percentage uh, come on these short slants. Dak seems to love to throw to guys that are that are looking at him, stationary targets, mm-hmm. and now that he's got to change that in this offense. It makes sense though that they would though then go acquire somebody like Brandon Cooks because 2021 when he was with Robert Prince. The most common route he ran about 20% of the time when he'd run a route, it was a slant, and that's what they're going to run. They're going to run slant, flat concepts. A lot of slants, a lot of flats. The most common route he ran in 2021 was the slant. The highest success rate he had on any route was the flat. And so when you couple those together, he gets to work with Robert Prince again, who was his receivers coach in 2021. It it seems to make some sense. You like this better than our boy uh, Adam Thielen, who signed with Carolina yesterday? Yeah, that was that was pretty heartbreaking to see Adam Thielen go. Uh, hopefully, we can talk to him before the 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 invited classic. The invited classic, and and find out well, what's the deal, bro. I, I thought we had a deal, but uh, no, I like this a lot better. I think Cooks is a Cooks for a fifth or sixth is about as good a deal as they could have swung. And Ed Warder says this takes the Cowboys out of the Odell Beckham sweepstakes. It does. Yeah. No, I talked to some people over the weekend. They said that this is. What if Odell says I'll take eight? No, it would have to be Odell says, hey, I'll come there and I'll play one year, two million to get my reputation. And then they go, OK, because they view it as we just traded for cooks. We're going to pay lamb. We just paid Gallup. We just drafted Tolbert. This is you're putting five people in the mix. Too many cooks in the kitchen. Filthy has lost another one. I mean, you could argue up to 10 key names have left, including coaches this offseason. CJ Gardner Johnson agrees to a deal with the Detroit Lions. Uh, so there you go with your NFC East update here on your home of America's team. Sean Sharif, RJ Choppy, and Bobby Bell on 105.3 The Fan. More NCAA magic last night. Ball will pick it up at midcourt. Let it fly. It's good. But really, it doesn't matter. It only matters maybe for some. 84-81 exactly. is the final. For the eighth consecutive year, Gonzaga has made it to the Sweet 16. Eight straight years for Gonzaga on Westwood One. RJ, give us a little recap of the weekend. Uh, well, that was uh, you know Drew Timmer, Timmer with twenty eight. Timmer, uh, but uh, Gonzaga wins. They beat TCU eighty four eighty one. Uh, from the rest of the world, two number ones are gone. Two one seeds are out. Kansas is out. Uh, Purdue is out. You've got one uh, number two seed. Uh, two, two two seeds out. Marquette lost yesterday. Uh, that was a that was a uh, a bad game. Uh, by Marquette, they had one of their one of their best players had a thumb injury, uh, and he just wasn't himself. And Michigan State moves on to the Sweet 16. That East region is a mess right now. You're going to have Florida Atlantic and Tennessee against K State, and then Michigan State at the bottom. So you get the three and four seeds still there, but the seven and the nine are the other ones that are left remaining. Uh, Texas still in it. Uh, Baylor, they have been ousted. They got beat by Creighton. Peyton, how are you feeling? Who do you think right now is going to be the intern for the bosses? Who's going to end up losing this morning show tournament? I think if Vegas had odds, it would be Bobby right now. Yeah. A good minus 200. Um, yeah. It's not looking good. Oh. I, don't, I don't think Bama's losing. Um, they're, gonna, they're at least going to make the championship game. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, I mean, his only, his only hope is Texas. And I mean, I'm a Texas fan, so I'm rooting for Texas, obviously. But like, I mean, my bracket says they're out in the final four. So, you know, here's the thing. In that video that Carter put together, yeah. you had Texas winning. But That's on right. your bracket, you went with, let's see here. Who do you have? You have winning uh, Bama. 
And you don't even have to actually make it the final. He treats his brackets like he treats his women. There are like ten of them, and none of them are very good. <laughs> Someone's got to win, you know. That's that's what I. That's how I do it. Bobby, how you feeling? What hurt uh, you the most over the weekend? Who hurt you? I mean, uh, like half my final four is gone. Purdue is the one that really hurt Friday night because I was thinking, okay, I can survive Arizona going out because Chop lost three Elite Eight teams at the very beginning. <laughs> on Thursday. And so I was like, <laughs> I, I, I can survive this. And then it's like, nope, Purdue goes down. Crap. Okay, maybe I'll have a better second round. Nope. Indiana Elite Eight team gone. Kansas Elite Eight team gone. I'm... I need you guys, I need all of you to lose Bama, I need you to lose Houston, and I need Texas to win the title. Yeah, so w one thing you learn from this is, and remember, like, Thursday is the day that everybody overreacts. All my brackets already busted. Yeah. This is a marathon, man. This is an absolute marathon. Things will stabilize themselves. The only one who hasn't had a bad, really a, a crippling day, Sean hasn't had a crippling day yet. No, Saturday was crippling. I lost Kansas in my final. That's true. You did. So I lost Mizzou. I lost Missouri. That was big. You had them going. Oh, yeah. You had Elite Eight. You had Elite Eight for them. Yeah, that was. It's, Kansas is, is a. I mean, Kansas is a tough one. Kansas it it tough flipped. One. Sean was in control the first two days. Saturday, after Saturday was done, Sean was in last place on potential points for the entire tournament. Mm. Now it's reversed and he's back at the top again. Meet John Smoltz. I thank John Smoltz. Yep. My brand new friendship with him from last week here on the show. The whale alert mm. caused me to pick Michigan State. Ooh. Mavs, Memphis, tonight, are we getting Ja and Luka? We got Maxi against the Lakers. Got the ball to Kyrie, under duress. Kyrie on the move, darts to his right, and he makes a pass. Cleaver to beat the buzzer and win the game. Woo! He got it! Woo! For Maxi Cleaver, a spectacular win. He is mobbed, and Dallas has won it! What a call from Followell on Bally. Kyrie return, put up a monster night, and Maxi hit the game-winning three because of some help surrounding them. Your Dallas Mavericks are now the sixth seed. We're a half a game up on the Warriors. In the West, we're one game up on OKC. What a season for OKC. Yeah. After losing Chet Holmgren just like that, the Lakers are in 10th at tonight. And if the playoffs started, we would face tonight's opponent, RJ Choppy's Memphis Grizzlies who continued the best rivalry in all of sports by beating the Golden State Warriors. Tonight, John Morant's out. He's eligible to return. The Grizzlies say the earliest he's going to come back from the suspension is Wednesday. He could come back tonight, and Luka and Kyrie are questionable for your Mavericks, right? Yep, Luka and Kyrie both questionable. Kyrie, it's the foot again. Uh, Luka, it's what's been keeping You're him out Luka now for Donovich. the last yeah Luka Donovich is, is questionable which is good because they've been ruling him out pretty early in a lot of the last several games so now that he's questionable there's actually a shot he could play basketball will say Kyrie only came back for the Lakers show them what they're going to get next year and then he'll sit out the rest of the regular <laughs> season God, that'll be Bassey's day he wanted come to come on. he wanted to come out and perform in front of <laughs> the Lakers front office and LeBron sitting there um but great win for the Mavs but tonight, we're not going to get Luka versus Ja. Can we possibly get Luka versus Dylan Brooks, who basically oh, called spare me. Luka soft? The league's new Dennis Rodman trash-talking the Warriors again. He's got four rings. And that's all he was saying. Clay Thompson. Um, his motivation to us. You know, we want a ring as well. Um, but we need to go through the process of steps that, you know, we did last year. And keep going and learning from it all. Um, you know, it's friendly trash talk, but, you know, I just hold a lot of real estate over there in, in, in San Francisco. Where's his voice? I can't uh, hear that guy talk. Uh, Holy uh, cow. Yeah. That was nails on a chalkboard listening to his voice. Yeah, I know. He was going for the whole ASMR thing or whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm out. I'm, the, the Grizzlies to me have a big bag of nothing. I know you say it's the best rivalry. It does nothing for me. I, they have, they are, they're a relevant franchise. What? They have never done anything. Ever and their friend, come talk to me when you do something. I I am so out on the Grizzlies. I I, I could not care less about anyone in the Memphis Grizzlies. Him refer he referenced it there. By the way, what Clay Thompson did over the weekend, where he counted to four yeah. from the bench. I don't like that. I don't like that either. You're swagger jacking Kobe's famous counting to five, and you're yep. not even getting up to Kobe's number. Yep. The two most corny trash talks in sports is a score one scoreboard and two the ring count. So corny. Like, just find some new material, man. Let's get to best and worst of the weekend next here on Sean, RJ, and Bobby. 
Choppy got some support with the chicken wing test. Bobby went nuts again at a bar. I may have seen the uh, next George Lopez with a comedy show. And Peyton inspired a date night for me. Ooh. Best and worst of the weekend. Let us know who had a horrible one or an awesome one. And our Sonic.
is the expressway right here on the fan, and it's brought to you by Rockwall Ford. The horn hits three ball at the buzzer and air ball. Tennessee staggered into the NCAA tournament, but is out of the Sweet 16. The Volunteers down Duke 65-52. Call on Westwood One. RJ Choppy began his Saturday morning with us at Twin Peaks in Irving. And this was the main entree for the day as you rolled on out yes. to watch in your house. Yes, I did. Oh, listen to that song. Listen to Rocky Top in the background. Oh, baby. What an awful first half this was. Well, I, I kept looking up. I was like, is this game like are they, is this game have stopped? No one was scoring. That's, that's our game. <laughs> I was like, no one. I'm like, it's like 15, 13 forever. Yeah, that's our game. Uh, we will. We want to play in the mud, Sean. Okay. We know that we don't have this offensive uh, firepower of a unit. We're without our point guard who uh, tore his ACL in the second to last game of the year, uh, which, you know, so we haven't had a good opportunity to play without him. So we need to play in the weeds. We need to play in the mud. That's what we did. Did Boy, you talk it, trash to Kevin Hagelin at all? I, he did no. not show up to our boys' day. Uh, the boys' day attendance, no Corey Majors, no no, no KMC no. whatsoever except for Reggie, no Corey Majors, no Hagelin, no Bassick, and with his feelings especially hurt, no Gavin Dawson. Well, you know, it's you say except Reggie. Reggie does so much get right now. Number one. That realistically, you got to say Joey's part of it. Yeah. So I invited Joey. Joey said, oh, yeah, I'll be out there. Did not show up. Corey had uh, Great Wolf Lodge with his kids. Bassick was in College Station watching LSU. And uh, Hagelin never even replied to my text. Wow. Because mm. he hates you. That's just disrespectful right now, there. Now, Mikey did answer because we, we found out one of our, our sales guys, Alex, who showed up. He's a, He used to pitch in the major leagues. Yeah. Mike did answer my call because I had a I was relaying a baseball story. I was like, dang, I need to remember what Mike said. So I called Mike and he answered and we put him on speaker and he told the story. So Mike was there more so than anybody else from KNC. Nice. Okay. Uh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't talked trash to Hagelin. Uh, I, I don't really consider him a Duke fan. You know, he's, <laughs> he's an A&M guy. Yeah. So I, I don't really consider him a Duke fan. Uh, my neighbor, uh, I brought my neighbor along, Crespo, and he um, he had his Duke gear on. He And he was not allowed in the house. Uh, during the game. Now he he just so when you went back to the neighborhood, y'all went your separate ways. Yeah, we live right next door, so it's obviously and these houses are eleven feet apart, so yeah. it's not like it's a hard thing for him to come on over. Uh, halftime, he just barges into the house and he's like, "Oh, are you guys playing football?" Because we're we're just like we're just like a, a, a dirty team. I'm not gonna say that. we're a dirty team. Yeah. Okay. We got that Plovsic guy. I mean, he just he's throwing elbows. He's throwing his butt into Filipowski. He hated Duke. He hated Duke. You could tell how much he hated Duke by the way he played. He was targeting Filipowski, and he targeted a man, and that flopper was flopping everywhere. Duke was flopping it. They had nothing. They had no idea. And I said this. I, I said this on Instagram today. Uh, I posted a video. Duke had no idea what to do because they have never in the history of the NCAA tournament had a player with four fouls ever. <laughs> They've never had a player get in foul trouble, and their best player got in foul trouble. And did you notice what they did at the end of the game, Sean? Did you notice Bobby and Peyton what they did at the end of the game? There's like 11 minutes to go, and Roach has had four fouls, and he fouls one of our players, and they foul him out. And then one of the other refs comes by and goes, oh, no, 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 that was on Proctor. That was on Proctor. They changed the call. They ch they tried. They tried to steal it for Duke, and it didn't work. And now we're going to Madison Square Garden. And we're gonna take on Florida Atlantic. What are they, the Owls? You were searching for tickets. Yeah, I was. I was to get someone Boy. to get, get your garden ticket. He's get, he's giving me big Howard Dean energy right now. We're gonna go to Florida. Oh, we're gonna go it. to Madison <laughs> Square Garden. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we got we got the uh, we got Florida Atlantic, and if we get by them, if we get by Florida Atlantic, you will. Uh, we've got. Uh, let's see. It's Michigan State uh, and K State. I want no part of Michigan State. Tennessee cannot beat the Big Ten, period. We've never beaten the Big Ten. We, 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 I have no doubt if we play Michigan State, I won't even watch. This is I won't even watch. This is ridiculous. Like, the one year Choppy is shutting it down is like, no chance. We got no chance. Like, this is setting up to be such a favorable bracket to potentially put Tennessee in the Final Four. Which we've never been to. We've never been to the Final Four. Should have lost to Louisiana. Never? Hey, never. We've never gone to the Final Four. No, you the only thing missing from this is if Coach K was there. Oh, or yeah. if they beat Sister Jean. That oh. rant would have been even better. Oh, yeah. Eliminating Coach K and his stupid bird commercials or whatever. How come your basketball team's good enough to overcome serious injuries, but not your football team? Uh, well, that's a good question. 
It's a good question. Well, we had a, we had a, we had a quarterback. <laughs> it was the quarterback that got hurt. That's so, the point guard. That's, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that was, I, I was excited, man. RJ starting off his Saturday at Twin Peaks. You guys were the early crew with Derek Holland. Uh, who else was there early? With the uh, Bobby. The first four of us that were there were were, were Bobby and, and, and Derek and me, and then my neighbor was with me. Okay. That was the first four. And then Peyton showed up pretty quick. Wolchuk. Uh-huh. Uh, and then... I think Reggie was there. Reggie was there early. Chia followed. He sidled in a little bit late. All right. Who wants to start with the highlights or lowlights? I have a few, but I'll let you guys go first. From Twin Peaks specifically? Yeah. Uh, the lowlights. Um, well, without getting into the details of why, uh, the lowest of lights is probably Sean straight snitching to the wife and getting me in legitimate trouble. Did you, dude? I felt horrible. He did. did. You see this? He texted like three different times over the weekend. <laughs> said, "I'm really sorry, by the way." I was trying to make. I can't a, say why. I was trying to make a joke. Uh, over, She's like, not mad at you. Over some guy. I know, but it doesn't <laughs> matter. Like it was some guy talk, and I and I tried to use this as a joke. To me, obviously, I'm a I'm a ball buster. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm gonna rake you over the coals. You know, I, I'm going to push you and push you and push you until you fire back. Like, I was going at Broadus, uh, being relentless. Like, oh, way to make our show bets look soft and weak because you guys have to sit there and electrocute yourselves and raise the bar on G-Bag. And he goes, well, that's how you uh, that's how you uh, get out of uh, third place in the station for the numbers. You know, and that was, like, oh, so I respected that. But if I'm sitting there busting your chops like that, you know, I like you. And I went up to Bobby's wife. And I whispered not one, but two jokes violating oh, no. the sanctity and the trust of the studio in the commercial break, thinking that she would laugh, and she did not. She straight dog cussed Bobby up and down. It was legit uncomfortable. She was going off. Bobby's laughing the entire time. You can tell <laughs> he's like he, he, he's like Mahomes with one minute left in the fourth. He's not sweating at all. He'd been here before. <laughs> he, is, he has been, been here, here before. before and he was not freaking out. He was not mad at me whatsoever. And I was like, I'm so sorry. Uh, and Amanda's like, shut your mouth. Why you got to sit there? You think you can just joke with everybody? <laughs> and uh, it was it was bad. It was really, well, really she, bad. She started. She was about ready to leave. She was collector. She's like, I'm, I'm getting out. And I was like, well, come on, come on, come on, come on. And I, I, I apologized. And, you know. Do you know what it was about? No. Oh, I'll no, tell you in the break. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So that was that was my worst moment by far. Uh, now, is she, is she aware of the... Yeah, she's aware that I tipped $200 yeah. at the start because you, again, you snitched on me a second time where I was telling you what I tipped and she was in front of me and I held up two behind her and you went, why are you doing bunny ears over your wife? Oh, you're saying you tipped $200. Like Sean, jeez, yeah, bro. Know. Bad, oh, man. bad. Wait, why, why did you tip that? You don't need to tip that much. We were all going to tip anyway. Um, no, he, he was because, anticipating a packed house, so he wanted consistent service. That's what you do when you're going which, into a madhouse. Yeah, which the my problem was doing you, it at you, 11. You, yeah. as, as we were leaving, it was fuller. Yep. And so if we would have walked in at that time, I would have, it would have been, but that has helped me. If you go into a bar that is packed and you tip at the very beginning and you tip well, yep. They then make sure to remember, they do not ignore you. And to be fair, I know it wasn't a packed house, but she also did not ignore us. She was on top of us yeah. all day, yeah, like coming over. Do y'all need anything was. else? Do you need anything? She was, she was there. You, I thought, pay, I, I you thought, went a little bit overboard. You didn't need to go that high. You, 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 you could have you could given her 50. You could have given her 20 off the top, but she'd have never left us alone. Yeah, I thought that Bobby's most uncomfortable moment was going to be when his wife walked in and it was just, this is just random luck. It was just him and the Twin Peaks waitress, like, by themselves. <laughs> it was a long conversation, <laughs> too. Was long, and I was, like, looking at her, like, uh-oh, uh-oh, oh. oh, oh. I was be... ordering. Oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. When she walked in, that's right. I was ordering it first, yeah. and then we were talking about they misspelled her hometown on her name tag. Yeah. And then they you asked her what time she got off. And yeah. Like just no, saw... I did not. Okay, stop that. <laughs> that dad, is not what happened. What's your dad's situation? <laughs> he is asking all these. So I thought that was going to be the worst moment, but no. I trumped that easily twice, not once. But twice. I was surprised she wasn't upset with it, but I was surprised like right when she walked in the door, how all of you started going, uh oh, security's here, security. I was yeah. like, oh crap, she's gonna be bad at that. Uh, she, she was the only she was, she was the only female. That. She was the only female that uh, that, that rolled mean, up. Well, never mind. Um yeah, never mind. I know I gotta and then we did, taught me not to do that. And then we did yeah. the RJ Choppy 
chicken wing test. And this took over with a viral video as uh, RJ Choppy showed me how to eat a chicken wing with the bone at the end being mm. taken down. And he got support from Reggie, uh, Lucius, and Brian Broadus. They all said, oh, no, I eat my wings this way as well. And the 60-40, 65-35 split on social media supporting the way RJ eats the cartilage at the end of the bone, I was shocked. Peyton, were you stunned? Were you I stunned was. to hear the support? I had never met a single human that did that until, and now I've met like five or six, just, five just, or within six. The, just within the station too. Yeah, look, I, now I RJ said there's bone marrow in there. There is. There's good bone <laughs> marrow in there. I think it's easier to do it on, see, I had a, I had one of those, uh, the flats. Flats. I think it's easier to do it on a drum. Because I think there's a, there's a big there's a big ligament chunk at the top of the oh, drum, God. but also on like these on, uh, the small wings you don't really get it on the bigger wings where you get like a not a, not quite a turkey leg but the you know the bigger ones that you would get like where you would just grow them yourselves or whatever at home the bigger ones you get a much thicker cartilage piece that, that that's fantastic. Well, Chuck was going big time with the order. He man he he bodied me he big dog me out of a shot. I was like. Hey, you know, some people in there are ordering like $20 shots and I go, I call it the extra value menu. And I was like, pick one out, Zach. I'll let you pick out. I'll get this round of shots, the three ninety nine dollars shots. And, uh, he's like, well, I'm going to do, I'm going to do my own round over here. Like totally elbowed me, <laughs> barkley me right in the face. Uh, by saying, I don't want to participate. But then he felt guilty and included me in that shot. And, uh, people, Lucius sitting there, we're having like. $40 drinks, $30, $35 drinks for the big dogs with all these ratings that they're Bro, getting. We, and I'm off the dollar menu. I am really starting to find out what type of inebriated each one of the hosts is. And I have mm -hmm. figured out Zach. Zach is a, like, wrecked with guilt drunk. Because oh, he, he starts apologizing. He just, uh, apologizes oh, for things that. and just, like, wants to, like, hash things out. It's yeah. like, dude, there's not even issues right now. What are you? And so that's the thing is that you caught him. And so then he felt bad. It's like. Come here, come do a show. And then, like, I was having him tell a story to somebody. He's like, "Hey, come here, tell them about how this happened." It was about us fighting an Oxnard when when Wolchuk and I got into it. When he called me a little b, Ooh. and he realized that was my trigger word, and he immediately like turned around and was like, "We hashed that out." I I was so I it makes me sad to this day that that we had the fight. So but sweet. He just gets so like down, and so he's uh yeah he definitely probably listens to a lot of uh like Keith Whitley. When he drinks, is, so? is the sense I get. I was like, Zach, these are like $30 shots. He's like, I don't, I don't, I don't care. I don't, I don't care. I was like, okay. And then we got into bonus structures and everything. <laughs> 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 uh, so that, that led to that conversation. But uh, a good time uh, had by all. A lot of people rolled out. Peyton, you were just kind of sitting there in the middle. You were, you, were, you were a nucleus in this situation. Yeah, and you can't be in the middle and be the quiet one. Yeah. And that's the problem, Peyton. You yep. you, you, you bit the wrong oh, seat. I don't think I was the quiet he one. Was, he, was, he was chatting up Kristen for a, an extended time. Kristen enjoyed well, talking with you. Uh, they, she was giving her and him her perspective on the dating stuff. Oh. So she was chat. She was. They talked she said, for a do not bit. listen to Bobby ever again. Yeah. She did tell him that. What's your uh, top observation or observations? Um, what, so just the whole hangout and stuff? <laughs> what, what, what have you been talking about for 15 minutes? Call Landry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, I've got some, uh... I enjoyed got... it. I'm glad I could hang with the boys. You know, yeah. you guys called me out last week, said, uh, I don't know if Payne can hang with us and stuff. I took all the shots I was given, drank three or four beers, and I called it a day. Uh, we got some best and worst of the weekend off of the Twitch. Uh, Texas size rips best of the weekend. They didn't sign Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, Andy Tetford, uh, worst of the weekend, lost 5k gambling. So that's oh. no good. Uh, Steve from Tyler Best, the Cooks trade. Worst, a really bad head cold. Uh, EJ Viking, uh, the best was Arkansas taking out Kansas. Oh. Angry Tim, best, Maxie's Prayer, Cooks for $12 million and not OBJ's $20 million. All right, uh, we're going to have Landry Lacron from Houston, who's been covering Brandon Cooks at her sister station after... We send you to get some grub and some drinks. That's right, Tolos. Call the number 10 right now at 877-881-1053. Wins a $50 gift card to Sonic. You can use it to try the new Sonic steak and bacon grilled cheese. Savory steak and grilled onions topped with bacon and melty cheese all on Texas toast Ooh. for a limited time. Only at Sonic. That's call the number 10 at 877-881-1053. Sonic. Mm. Good. We'll do it all week long during the Expressway commercial free from 720 till 8 o'clock. 
on DFW Sports Station. Then Derek Holland popped in. He FaceTimed me Friday night. I'm sitting there in bed. I'm FaceTiming with Derek Holland to talk about pork butt in bed. He's like, are you up? Are you up? Uh, I was like, yeah, we just got home. Uh, I went to see uh, rising comedian Ralph Barbosa, uh, who is in a little feud with George Lopez. More on that another day. But Holland showed up early with you guys and then went and golfed, right? He was out. Yeah, he had a golf. He had a, he had a round of golf. A little windy. A little, a little windy for my taste on the, on the a links. cold. It was chilly. Freezing. It was, it was chilly. It warmed up. Yeah, in the mid-50s, I think, by the, by the uh, you know, in the midday, which is fine. But uh, yeah, that wind, I'm not playing in that wind. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Did he come in and big dog it with a round of shots or something? Round no, of he, uh, yeah, he did a few shots he with us. Up, uh, he picked oh. up the first round. Total. Yes, he did. And so uh, we, we hung out there. He was really upset that you were not there when he was because he was like, I wanted to see if Sean would at least take a shot with me when we're not at a, an arena where there are lots of people to witness him <laughs> taking a shot with the lowly Derek Holland. My goal now for the rest of the time is just to never take a sh one shot with Holland. Just appear oh. too good for it. You want Above you, him. You want to treat him. League. You want to treat him like Walchuk treated you? Wow. Screw you, man. Let's <laughs> bring in Landry Locker, someone that I'd prefer to socialize with over you fools here Damn. on the Diamond Factory hotline uh, from our sister station in Houston. Good morning, man. How are you? What's up, guys? How you doing? Doing well. Uh, your last uh, social memories. When's the last time we partied together? Maybe, maybe the Super Bowl? Uh. Somewhere at Milo's, I'm sure. I think probably Milo's. <laughs> Milo's, yes. Do you, yeah, have Milo do, you, do you have a dirtier bath? Do you have a dirtier bathroom in all of Houston than Milo's? No, nah, but it, it feels good. It's endearing. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, the Milo's days for sure. I think that was probably the last time. <laughs> uh, all right, Landry. How do you think we should be feeling about this Brandon Cooks trade? The Cowboys deal a fifth and a sixth for the disgruntled receiver. Tell us about Brandon Cooks and the value that you think Dallas may have gotten. Uh, I think at best it's a it's a uh, make right with the Amari Cooper deal. I know that's kind of a sensitive topic there, but I would say at best it's kind of a make right with you know giving up Amari uh, for the fifth. Cooks has some stuff left. I think he can be a good number two receiver uh, out there, and I and I think he's he's got a little bit more a little bit of explosiveness that they they probably need. Uh, so he does have some stuff left in the tank. I, I would compare it. To like kind of the last time that a big trade was made between Dallas and Houston, where you know Christian Wood might not have been right for the Rockets situation and where they were in, and Brandon Cooks uh, is is kind of the same way. So I think I think he'll be fine. He's going to be a good player. Uh, it was kind of weird here after a while because he was bought into the rebuild, uh, but his entire happiness was kind of tied to probably the worst front office guy and one of the bigger creeps that you'll ever meet in uh, Jack Easterby, which was kind of a weird situation. If he says it was anything other than that, then he's just flat out lying. But as far as like the actual player, I think it's kind of a get right with Amari and uh, it'll be interesting to see how him and Dak work together. What was that? Why were they so close? What was that relationship about? They had, it was about, I mean, it was a religious thing, which I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a religious guy. So I don't want people to think I'm like knocking it, but it was, uh, they knew each other in new England. And, uh, as soon as Easterby got here, we were actually saying on the air, okay, he's going to trade for Brandon cooks. Cause there's like quotes about, you know, they them liking each other and all this type of stuff. And sure enough, as soon as they trade Hopkins, they trade for Brandon cooks. He comes here and, I think it was just kind of a spiritual thing. I, I don't, I don't really get it because it, he's going to say probably now that it's about winning, but he, he's he's not telling the truth. Like if it is now, that's fine. But I sat, you know, a foot from him, and he was he was completely down with the rebuild. And then as soon as Easterby left, uh, you know, it was like boom, clockwork. He wanted out. He was like tweeting cryptic stuff. I, but I think their to answer your question, I think their whole thing was it was one of those kind of spiritual things. And I mean, y'all will hear him. I'm, I'm sure Proverbs will be quoted when y'all go there at least like a, a few times. Uh, it, it was just, it was weird, honestly, just to, just to be quite blunt. It was weird, but I think it was uh, centered on uh, spiritual and faith. What is his out, outside of that potential tension or, or whatever else, which again, nobody's saying there's anything wrong with being religious, but just in general, the tension that he may have had with teammates of checking out when Easter be left what is his locker room presence like? What is he like with his teammates? Is he somebody who gets along with guys? Is it does he have a history of button heads? What, what's he like in the locker? 
nobody in the locker room will say anything bad about him. Like, even when, you know, he wasn't at the game, I talked to multiple guys in the locker room after the game. And, I mean, there will – I mean, it, it was weird, but it was respected as business. So, I mean, even guys now have come out and defended him. Uh, Titus Howard's defended him. Tavier Thomas has defended him. Um, even the quarterback, Davis Mills, was defending him. Damian Pierce was defending him. So, like, anyone who says that Brandon Cooks is, like, a locker room cancer or something like that, that's, that's not true. Like, his teammates – his teammates love him. He's a good guy. He's not a bad guy or anything like that. Like I said, it was just a weird thing with Easterby. But as far as, like, being a locker room cancer or teammates not liking him, like, that that couldn't be further from the truth. He's going to fit in fine. The guys are going to like him, and that, that'll be perfectly good. There's there's nothing to worry about there. Uh, it is weird, though, that a guy that's pretty pretty good player, I would say, that's 29 years old has been traded four times. So there's, there's something, I know, I know the first, you know, the first few times there was a lot of value. So maybe front office guys would be able to answer that type of thing. But as far as like the locker room, nah, he's going to fit in fine. Landry Locker from in the loop, 10 to two at our sister station, sports radio, 610 in Houston. So describe his game a little bit. I just think of outright speed burner, send him on verticals down the field. What else can you tell us about his actual game? Yeah, that's. I mean, that's really it. You you pretty much just nailed it, and I think it's going to look really good with uh, with CD too. I think it's gonna. I think it's going to be. You know, not necessarily like he's not really going to take the top off a of defense, but he's always going to find a way to wiggle past those guys. He's actually a lot better uh, intermediate routes than than he gets credit for. But he's just going to be you know kind of the explosive guy. But I don't know if you're just going to run like go routes. Uh, with Cooks, he's 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 a pretty precise, but more more of a precise route runner than he gets credit for. But it, it's more he's he's definitely going to be he can take the top off a of defense every once in a while. But it's it's more sometimes it's a little bit more deceptive. Did it surprise you that the Texans are picking up six of the eighteen million dollars on this deal? I think they had to. I mean, and that's another thing. Like the deal, the uh, I guess that was part of the holdup last year. I I was expecting them to do that, but I wasn't. Ex- I was expecting them to maybe get like a fourth or third if they were willing to do that. So the fact that you know you're getting just a fifth and a sixth, and you're doing that, is a little bit surprising. Although I might be kind of just nitpicking, um, but it, it seemed like that was something that they had that they had to do. And as as soon as they didn't trade him last year, I mean, it was I. The, the the stupidest thing of the whole thing is that you tra- you didn't trade him and then you played him so that you could lose the first round pick. I mean the number one pick. That was so stupid. Like <laughs> I, I don't even I don't even know. Like he should not have been active. Yeah. Because it's not it's not like you improved his trade value. And this is not hindsight. I was saying this. I told this to the general manager like before well. before the press conference. Like it that was stupid. Like you. <laughs> You, you didn't improve his trade value. You didn't trade him. He obviously wants to screw you over, so he scores the go-ahead touchdown against Tennessee, and then he goes out there against the Colts. So that that was, like, actually probably the dumber the, – that's probably one of the dumbest things. The result could end up being fine, but that's that's the dump, one of the dumbest things I've ever seen the GM do. <laughs> Landry, when you, – you guys are obviously very familiar with DeAndre Hopkins. I'm sure you still have nightmares about the David Johnson trade. Um, but there are a lot of people here who say, man, the value that's being reported out there for DeAndre Hopkins is a two plus something else. So let's say a two and and a receiver, maybe like Jalen Tolbert that the Cowboys have, which would you say is, is better value just from your knowledge of Hopkins and what cooks is at right now, a second plus a a player for Hopkins or the Cowboys doing a fifth and a sixth and getting 6 million off of cooks. See, I like Hopkins. Like, if you were just asking me, if you were just telling me that I didn't have a receiving room and I needed to start with one, I like Hopkins from that perspective. But if you told me that I have C.D. Lamb, who can kind of do Hopkins-like things, uh, and and maybe even better at this point, and I need speed, which I think I think I've heard Broadus say that the team needs speed yeah. mm-hmm. uh, and someone that adds another element, then I would de- I would go with the Cooks thing. And the other thing is, like, I think eventually Hopkins, I know he's kind of playing nice right now. I think eventually Hopkins is going to be a guy that's going to want a new deal. That's yeah. just kind of how he's doing it. Yeah. So, uh, Cooks is not going to not gonna be that guy. So, you have a guy for two years that can do something uh, different than what CD's already doing. And, and I think we think CD's best ball is ahead of him. So, I, I think I think you – I know people are probably – does it seem like people are wanted Hopkins now? Uh 
I, I would I would rather take Cooks at what you got him for than the Hopkins thing and keep that second round pick, especially with how they pick in the second round there. I mean, good God. So now Cowboy fans are looking in Austin. And this is for you and Bobby to team up oh, on. No. It's probably not going to happen. Well, you're on crack on this one. I already know where this is going. <laughs> you, you, you're on crack on this one. Go Sean. ahead. Take it away. Take it away. Show us the host skills. If, if there, was, there was a time a long time ago where, uh, and I remember I was sitting in my living room where Steven Jackson fell to the Dallas Cowboys, and the Dallas Cowboys passed on Steven Jackson. There was, and it was, it was, there was a little bit of frustration. I think you ended up getting Julius Jones, and yep. people tried to sell themselves on that. But had you gotten Steven Jackson, I think he would have been uh, – I think, I think it would have been completely different for him in Dallas, and I think it would have happened. If B. John Robinson falls to 26 and they don't take B. John Robinson, then – I think that y'all's listeners should be as upset as possible. I think the running back position has gotten so devalued that we look at like little examples of like running backs being found at the end of the, at the end of the draft. And we say, well, you know, you can find this guy here. You can find this guy here. The top eight rushing running backs in the NFL last year, their ADP, their average draft position was 28th, I believe. And that, that is, I mean, that's, that that says enough right there. You had five second rounders and three and three first rounders. The 49ers, like you always hear, like, well, you know, they had Elijah Mitchell and they had this guy. They still traded half a draft for Christian McCaffrey. So as much as we sit there and we say, well, you can find a running back, you can find a running back. Well, San Francisco had running backs, and they still traded half a draft for a guy that a lot of people were thinking, you know, was always hurt and not ready to go. And because they did that, like we talk about Brock Purdy and we talk about you know, their quarterback play and say, well, San Francisco got to the uh, championship game. They got to the championship game because they traded half a draft for Christian McCaffrey. They didn't get to the championship game because they drafted Brock Purdy with the last pick of the draft. Without Christian McCaffrey, uh, the San Francisco – I don't even think it's a possibility because I don't think Bijan goes to 26. But if Bijan Robinson is at 26 and the Cowboys pass on him, then they just don't want to be great. Mm-hmm. Like that, that would be – that would be – silly if they passed on him here's how bad it would be landry in my opinion this, this is where i'm gonna take it if he's at 26 and they don't take Bijan robinson we will never again hear people complain about tj watt versus taco <laughs> it'll be you didn't pick Bijan, you morons are you going to interject and, here? I, I, I'm just, I, he just, just stay in Houston, Landry, please. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad you're down there. I, I love you to death, but no, I just hate the running back position so much. Uh, I get it. You know, I, I don't. I don't like to look at the you know the, the total yards rushing because a lot of that is on if you're know, you're game winning situation. games and stuff. Game situation. I get it. Like you know, you are getting a better player, but I, I just I would much rather just find somebody in the second round, third round. I, I don't want to give up one. I can't because to okay. me, a first round pick. I need to have 10 years out of them. Otherwise, they're a bust. That's it. Yeah. I mean, 10 years, good Lord. I mean, if, if you're, if you, you need can't 10 get years out of every first round pick, then you've never made a good first round pick. Or you're, you're, if you need 10 years, yeah. that's the thing about the running backs is we start like treating them differently. And it's really weird. Like they get screwed. I, I almost feel bad for them because. Kansas City drafts Clyde Edwards Alaire in the first round, and everyone's like, well, that's why you don't take a running back at that position. No, if they would have taken Jonathan Taylor, we wouldn't be saying that. <laughs> and we hear about all these guys, we hear about all these guys that go to the second round and we're like, you know, well, this this guy well, someone should have taken him in the first. Like yeah. that's 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 the problem, is that it's just it's su- it's such a disrespected position. And RJ, the way you eat your chicken wings, I don't want to hear you tell me a damn <laughs> That's how you I get more bone I get more beef, all the bone. I mean, you've gotta have it all. You're waste you're wasteful. You are wasteful, Landry Locker. You're Land- wasteful. Landry Locker from six ten in Houston, bringing it here. Uh shot on RJ via the Diamond Factory hotline for someone who's Never watched football in their entire life. Bijan Robinson is who? He is what? Uh, Bijan Robinson is like, I mean, he is, let's say, I, I, I would say he's Christian McCaffrey like, and I think he has unrealized potential uh, as a receiver. Like, he wasn't, you'll look at you'll look at his slot numbers and you'll say, well, he lined up like under 20, 20 times in the slot or something like last year. Um, I think he has unrealized potential as a uh, as a receiver, so I think he helps you there. Uh, and I think he's kind of like a uh, he's kind of like another Christian McCaffrey. So what are y'all thinking at two right now with Carolina trading up with Chicago? 
Bryce, it, it seems like a majority is Bryce Young, and then there are some CJ people, and I don't acknowledge Anthony Richardson people because uh, those people just need to go start a Madden franchise. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Why? Why do they need to start a Madden franchise? I uh, just, I mean, come on, let's, let's, let's be serious about this Anthony Richards thing. I think it's, he should have gone back to school uh, because, you know, you keep comparing him to Josh Allen. I even heard like Jalen Hurts, uh, Lewis Riddick said, Jalen Hurts completed 70% of his passes and developed at Oklahoma before he went to the NFL. Um, and Josh Allen, actually, like, I know we don't know, we, we don't really talk about it because he went to Wyoming, but I mean, he had like anxiety uh, and almost came out a year early which I think is kind of like the equivalent of what Richardson did. And Josh Allen went back to Wyoming, lost all his receivers, didn't have a great year, but he said that that was a big, important year for his development. Like Anthony Richardson needed to go back to school. And I don't know if you ever – I don't think you can replace, like, the value of actually being the big man on campus and trying to develop. Uh, so, yeah, Anthony Richardson at two. Y'all talk, you talk about the reaction with Bijan. It would be crazy here if that happened. Landry, uh how surprised are you in covering him? Um, we had you on to discuss the trade. How surprised are you that Jason Kidd cannot stand Christian Wood? Not shocked. Not shocked, but... Uh, but Is this uh, fair? I mean, we're, we're looking at him as, before Kyrie, easily the second best offensive talent. Maybe this is a broken record. He's scoring a point a minute, but he only gets 18 minutes a night. <laughs> Jason wants you to play defense, man. Like that's, I mean, that's, that's just, that's just what he wants. Uh, I mean, that was, that was kind of one of the knocks on him here. I, I, it doesn't shock me that Jason gets a little bit frustrated by the occasional defensive effort by, uh, or lack thereof with Christian Wood. Thank you, brother. Great to hear from you. Appreciate the time. Keep, keep uh, killing it in Houston. All right, fellas. Appreciate you. Landry Locker in the loop, 610 Sports Radio, Diamond Factory Hotline. Does this change the Cowboys draft? What do y'all think of that running back possibility? And is Dalton Schultz coming back? Let's take some phone calls on the Brandon Cooks deal. 877-881-1053. 877-881-1053. You prefer this? Hopkins for a second? Just sign up Odell without giving up any draft capital? Let's do some Brandon Cooks phone calls to celebrate after this. But let's get you over to the greatness of...
Sportsman Studios, secured by DFWSecurity.com. This is Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. Quick pass. It's Cooks. Blockers ahead. Cooks turns on the Jets. Cooks. See you later. Touchdown, Texans. The Cowboys and Dak Prescott have a new weapon. Brandon Cooks, that call from CBS, as a member of America's team. CD, Cooks, Gallup, mm. Pollard. Woo. Got some explosion. You got some juice. Possibility of Dalton Schultz coming back. What's happening in the tight end market, especially after the Mike Gusecki deal before the weekend started, Roberto? So there is there's some people starting to wonder, starting to ask. And I know Broadus has brought this up before on DallasCowboys.com about the idea of, hey, if the tight end market's not there for Dalton Schultz and – he would cost less. Why not bring him back? Why not entertain that? Why, why not give him another one-year deal, have him play for cheap, and take advantage of that? And there's a report from Jeremy Fowler over at ESPN. ESPN. He, oh, that's Jeremy. Yeah. No, Jeremy mm-hmm. Fowler, the most mm-hmm. famous Fowler at ESPN uh, in sports media, really. Uh, Jeremy Fowler said on Sports Center on Sunday that Dalton Schultz is a guy that teams right now really love. The problem is... No one wants to pay for tight ends right now. No one wants just the that study. Was a tight end league. Nobody wants the steady production. Nobody wants because that's what what Dalton Schultz is is steady, reliable. You know where he's going to be. He is. Is he going to stretch the field the way Kelsey will? No. But if he he is a reliable chain mover, you know that's a, like that's as reliable a first down as it gets in the NFL these days. But that's not exactly what teams are wanting to spend on right now. So there's not a strong market from him, for him. Jeremy Fowler suggested, hey, why don't you go to Cincinnati? One-year deal in Cincinnati. Build back up your your value with Joe Burrow. Go back in the market next year. But some people are wondering, well, why can't that just be here in Dallas? Why can't you build it back up in here? I don't think Dalton Schultz would be too keen on the idea of, well, let me do y'all a favor. I'll come play for under market value. Build back up my brand that you guys arguably probably drove down by franchise tagging me and then not letting, you know, not using me as much as you did in 2021. I don't think Dalton Schultz is out there to do any favors for them. And so I would still find it very unlikely, even if he was cheaper, that Dalton Schultz would necessarily want to play here. The poll question this morning, how do you feel about the Brandon Cooks trade? Love it. That's the way we all voted. 60%, 66% of the Tolos voted that way. Kevin Gray's category preferred DeAndre Hopkins for a second. Tolo, baby. Or three should have just paid Odell Beckham, who they are now out on, according to Bobby and Ed Werder. Robert in Burleson, are you celebrating this Cooks deal this morning? Robert, you're live on the fan. Yeah, I'm actually celebrating this. This is a good move for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Brandon Cooks has been reliable. If we want to talk about Dalton Schultz being reliable, so has Brandon Cooks. He's had two off years in his career. Other than that, he's pretty much a thousand yard receiver. That's something that the Dallas Cowboys need. The one problem that I see in this, guys, is something exactly what Bobby Belt just said is that we need four of those premier pass catching uh, talents. And right now, is Tony, Tony Pollard going to be that? We don't know with the broken foot. History says yes, but if he comes back healthy, he's great. But if we don't have Dalton Schultz, then Brandon Cooks is just going to be double teamed and he's going to be, you know, back in the under a thousand yard receiving ways. I celebrate the move with cautious optimism. We got to do some more. Brandon Cooks is one key to the cog uh, of this entire championship run. If we're going to go for it, trading for Gilmore, trading for Cooks, we might as well go ahead and find D Hop, find a way to get Schultz back, find a way to make sure to get another good running back behind Pollard. Maybe that's Fournette. For now, I celebrate the Cooks deal, but I'm keeping my eye out for the other wire. That's a lot. What do you do? Uh, what do you do for a living, Robert? He's oh, gone. he's gone. Oh. He hangs up phones. I was very, <laughs> I was very impressed with the delivery I, right there. He was uh, ready. He was very good. He was ready. Uh, he was ready. It, you know, look, you keep, they, they obviously can't keep getting more guys. I mean, you can't go after everybody. You're, you have, you're going to have cap liabilities, and yep. uh, so it's a numbers game at this point too. I don't, I don't know how you you hate the move. I mean, if you hate the move because you wanted, you know, Hopkins or Odell, I mean, you're that that means you're just kind of out for a name. You're out for you're out for a name at that point. You're looking, you're shopping for uh, for a label. That's all they are. I mean, Hopkins is older. Uh, He's a better player, no doubt. Like he's a little bit better, Uh, but he's he's not this super elite guy that he was five years ago. Yeah, and the skill set I think is really particularly something Dallas needs. 
Mike sure. in Fort Worth. Mike, you're live on the Diamond Factory hotline on the home of the boys. Go ahead. Hey, I think it's a great move. I love it. You know, we have to stop the people that don't love it. We have to stop with the, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a move, but it's not the move I wanted. It's not the guy I wanted. We have to stop that. We take the guys we get. We're making moves. We usually don't make moves, so let's be happy when we do. That's what I feel. I like it. Um, I was. It's amazing how different social media platforms react. Twitter was optimistic. Facebook was not. And people are like, oh, those are the old heads. The, the, those are still the Zeke lovers on Facebook. Because people are insulting. Instagram was not as happy. you think that was a younger medium. But Twitter, with a ton of celebration and support for what the Cowboys got done. Brandon and Boyd. Brandon, you're next up on Sean, RJ, and Bobby. Good morning, fellas. I would say... I'm anxious to see how it's going to help Dak. You know, he hasn't had a whole lot of help uh, in the past. So now you have a really good back. You have two good receivers that you can rely on. And I think Schultz will be back. And then you're going to have a really good group on offense. So I think it's a good move. And that the Cowboys are actually making moves in the offseason to try to make this offense better to help out their quarterback that they love so much. There you go, Brandon. Great call. The, the dumbest call so far. <laughs> I, 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 he's never, he don't know what silver spoon means. Uh, hasn't had help. Here comes. But you got to have, you got, look, I mean, every quarterback, for the most part, outside of Patrick, you got to have help. I mean, yeah. you got you to give your quarterback weapons to throw to. Yeah, and he has had help. He has, yes. Sandler, I'm going to read this. Uh oh. Hang on. Now, Jared's going to end up probably being right on the Kyrie deal. He was not a fan. Jared, uh, listening in surprise after attending the. Taylor Swift concert. My lord, those ticket prices. Uh, did you see where the city of Glendale said they were going to make more money off the Taylor Swift concert than the Super Bowl? What? Yes. No. The, the restaurants projected more money for the Tay Tay concert. For than one night? Than a whole week? Well, it was a, it was a two night two night thing two night thing. Wow, I think it was two nights. I'm pretty sure it was two nights. Sandler rolling deep. He said Cooks is washed up and won't play more than eleven games. Whoa, dang, J Rod. Uh, no, I need to find some. Uh, we got to find some bet here, Jared. Games played throughout his career: 10, 16, 16, 16, 16, 14, 15, 16, 13. You need to do a games played bet or like. Stats. Let's I mean, do some statistical both. bets. I'll do both. Man. We'll we'll figure it out. Jared Sandler. Jacob DeGrom makes one start and surprise, and now Jared's on top of the world, crapping on everybody else. Yeah, Jared, Jared who who was critical of, of Choppy's DeGrom take, now uh, pot calling the kettle black. He's doing the same thing. <laughs> T- I know, but Brandon Cooks has a better, in- better uh, history of health. <laughs> it's T- true. TJ in Dallas. TJ, you're next up on the fan. Go ahead, boss. Hey man, it's, it's Brandon Cooks is a good pickup, man. It's it's it, it's not a lot of draft capital. Yep. It gives Gallup uh, Gallup uh, another season to try to come back from the injury and maybe get back to what he was. Yep. And it's a security blanket for Dak, and and it helps free up CD Lamb. But don't be surprised, Bijan to Dallas in the draft, man. All right, let's talk about this, Landry. Real quick, by the way. Yeah. And people are could say the fan text like. Who's, how could you call to say this is the Cowboys going for it? This is yeah. This nobody thinks that picking up Gilmore and Cooks is the Cowboys going all in. That's no, not going all in. No, it's tremendous value though. It's very good value. Not all in, but win now moves. Sure. Oh yeah. 100%. Minnesota selling. Yes. Um, Tennessee is selling. The Cowboys are buying. Yeah. So they're trying to win. This is win now. They're never going to sell with Jerry here right now at this point in time in his life, and they're not going to sell with Dak Prescott getting this money. Right. Real, real, quick, real quickly, Chop. Yo. Who starts more games, Jacob DeGrom or Brandon Cooks? Oh, man. Wow. Come on. Oh, man. So, <laughs> 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 that's a really good question. Yeah. I don't have a good answer on that one. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, like, Cooks is capped. He's capped. Yeah. He's capped at 20. No cap. Yeah. Or well, is it 21, right? He's capped at 20. If they go all the way, if, yeah. they, if they go to the Super Bowl, but they only play, they're, they're a, they play first weekend, he's capped at 21 games. So, he's... I'll say Degrom. Now, I'll say see, DeGrom. now I got to look and see who started more games over the last three years. Well, Degrom start well one year, the COVID year, Degrom only had twelve starts because of that, and I think he's had eleven and thirteen. So he's twenty. I'd say he had like thirty-five starts for the last three years. Yeah, I mean three years in a row. Brandon this? Cooks. Brandon Cooks three years in a row has started more games than Jacob Degrom. Dang, Degrom's. man. 
This is Monday, it's bad juju. <laughs> Yo, and you, Neil in San Antonio, change up the tone, Neil. You're what's live. up, Neil? You're live. Hey, hey, what's going on, fellas? I'm going to give you a couple of reasons why I like the trade. The first reason is the Cowboys maintain their draft picks in each round. Second reason is you got Brandon Cooks for $12 million a year, and that's a perennial thousand yard receiver. Third reason is he gives a different aspect to the offense than what B Hop does, because honestly, let's be real about it, and no one's talking about it. Hopkins is 30 years old, but he was suspended last year for PED. For me, that leads me to believe that he is on the physical, the physical decline, and one more suspension is going to get him um, suspended for at least a year, correct? And yeah. then lastly, Everyone keeps talking about OBJ. I'm not an expert, but when I see the videos, I see no explosion whatsoever out of his cuts. Mm. And then he said he's going to need about maybe five more months. So kudos to uh, Steven and Jerry for um, getting a good receiver, and I'm out of here. Tolo. Good call, baby. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's actually a really good point that I don't know that there's enough discussion around is the fact that it's not just, oh, yeah, DeAndre Hopkins, he got suspended for steroids, but he's fine now. You don't have to worry about that. It's like, no, but think about what that means. That's not a bad point to think that DeAndre Hopkins may have felt like, hey, I've, I've got to come up with another edge that I don't have right now. Yeah. Or what do they say about guys who use that sort of stuff? They say that they typically do start to break down with injuries later on in their careers, and he's been dinged up more lately. Look, let's not disrespect DeAndre Hopkins. Let's not disrespect DeAndre Hopkins or act like Brandon Cooks is on his level. DeAndre Hopkins has also been playing with Kyler, whose stock we've now all sold. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins never had a quarterback. Uh, uh, Deshaun. Cooks hasn't, yeah, they, Cooks hasn't had a great quarterback the last few years. No, no. He has not had a great quarterback the last few years. I just agree with Hopkins better player. Cooks may be a better piece. He's sure. a better piece yes. to, to the Cowboys offensive puzzle. Man, he's a legit burner. He's a better piece for the offense. I wonder if he's a good fit for Dak, though, because of, you know, we haven't. You, know, we, you said Dak's a good deep ball thrower. Yeah, 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 but like a lot, most of what Cooks does is the slant, and Dak doesn't, I mean. Well, then Dak doesn't need to be the quarterback what, here with this offense. What's uh, what what's the the speed on Cooks? Like four, it's in the four threes. Yeah. Well, who knows J what it is today? Jalen yeah. Tolbert ran a four four nine mm -hmm. at the combine. I believe this still holds up. I'd have to look. In the last 20 years, I believe Jalen Tolbert is the fastest combine participating receiver the Cowboys have drafted. What? They've ne all, go back and look through all the guys they've had here. Dez, Gallup, Lamb, they're all four or five guys. They have never had that four three type of speed. Our biggest down the field threat come stretch time last year was old T.Y. Hilton. That's how sad it was. They refused to put Turpin out there just to like run a go route. I never mm -hmm. understood that. Uh, Jay in Dallas. Jay, you're next up on Sean, RJ, and Bobby. Go ahead, brother. Good morning, boys. I think we're all excited about what Brandon Cooks can bring from a speed element, but McCarthy just wants to run the damn ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what type of a run blocker is he, Bobby? Yeah, well, no, maybe they want some jet sweeps in there, get some speed to the edge, yeah. you know? But you see, that's the thing. McCarthy doesn't even like running to the edge. He wants to run it uh, not even between the tackles. He wants to run it between the guards. Go so. ahead, Jay. The floor is yours. Or was that just hey, one other question. Hey, going back to just the offensive philosophy, Bobby, Mm-hmm. How come nobody's talking about the offensive line and the concerns? We just there's some players out there in free agency that we should be looking at to address specifically what's going on. Terrence Steele with the knee, Tyron can't stay healthy. We lost our left guard. I mean, I know we're excited about Cooks, but still, all these weapons really don't matter if we can't block up front. Good call. That's fair. Uh, I mean, the blocking's got to be better, and I think that some of the conversation coming out of Indy was they want to make sure that their pass protection is as good as possible. You remember when Jason Peters started the playoff game against Tampa, and that was kind of a surprise. And when you were talking to some people after the game, they're saying, yeah, the, the biggest thing for us is we want to make sure that we're protecting for the, for the pass and that pass protection is the number one priority for them. It's going to be interesting to see, Look. What the combo is. I, I know Sean is of the opinion that there's no guarantee Tyron's starting at left tackle next year, but there's like, I mean, no, there's not, not. No, forget no, no guarantee. There's no way. There's no reason. No for way. It. Not, there's there, no there, reason. There's for no it. way. They're not that dumb. Well, they're, they're, wow. uh, they're not. They're not. Be. Tyron Smith is not going to be starting at left tackle. You're like the only person saying this. Right? I, I I would be. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see if you know the uh, offensive line as well as you know the bracket, Sean. I'd be <laughs> very, very disappointed if he does. There's no way. Just fix left guard. All right. Don't worry about the offensive line. I'm not guard. worried about the offensive line. Zach Martin age and left guard. There's, they're not dumb enough to start Tyron Smith at left tackle. 
Unless something happened to Tyler. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> Sean, RJ, and Bobby here on DFW Sports Station. Everybody seems to be a fan of Brandon Cooks to the boys. We are too. 877-881-1053. RJ wants to know if you actually are enjoying this NCAA tournament. Brackets aside. RJ has the March Madness question of whether you're actually liking the way this is going down next. But did something go down this week?
$100 garage door tune-up special. 469-909-0956 or visit ColbertGarageDoor.com. Hey, and it's back to Sean and RJ right here on 105.3 The Fans segment here brought to you by the personal injury lawyers, Frankel and Frankel. There's a reason you need a special license to drive a big truck. So companies that hire drivers and put them in a big truck should be held accountable for what happens when one hurts you. Frankly, you need Frankel and Frankel. Visit truckwreck.com or call them 214-333-3333. Rebound Texas. And for the first time in 15 years, the Texas Longhorns are going to the second weekend of the NCAA tournament. 71-66, the Longhorns win. Are the Longhorns proving RJ's point that coaching is overrated? Uh, well, not in the college game. Well, there's because, coaching versus recruiting. Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, like in the college game, I think coaches can work the officials a lot. And uh, the toughest thing about the tournament in the college game is your the turnaround. It's not the first game that's the problem. It's not the Thursday Friday game that's a problem. It's the next one, the one where you got to turn around and adapt. You know, in 48 hours and play again with a new game plan. That's the tough game that, that coaching matters in this tournament. But obviously, this is about recruiting. I have no idea what kind of coach Rodney Terry is. Not a clue. But I do know that these are Chris Beard's players. And Chris Beard's a tremendous recruiter, even though Bobby hates him. Um, He's so, a punk. Well, he may be, but he can recruit like crazy. And Ole Miss is going to be in the top 10 in about two seasons. Uh, maybe even if it doesn't take that long. So, yeah, is, is, is coaching over? No, not in the tournament, I don't think it is. How are you assessing this tournament overall in terms of liking it or not? So, like, that's my so, question. So, I don't know. Do we like two one seeds going down before the end of the first weekend? Do we really want a 15 in the Sweet 16? I love upsets. I love upsets in the tournament. Do I want the ones and twos losing, though? Like, I don't mind when a three loses to a 14. Do I want... The blue blood's gone. Um, you you could say you want that all you want. I'll tell you what. I was at the I was at the Final Four show. Wow. Oh. The Kentucky Butler VCU UConn Final Four in Houston. I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> like you don't. Some of those are bad games, man. Yeah. Some of those are bad games, and you don't want that. Like no know, blue bloods. For the first time since 1980 in the Sweet 16. Two number ones knocked out, as you said. Two number ones knocked out. Uh, you know, these are tremendous teams. Those, those, like, like so for example, like San Diego State's in the Final Four. Or is, is in the Sweet 16. And they've got a real legitimate chance of going to the Final Four. Um, they're, they're, they're a good team. They're, they've been a good team all year. Florida Atlantic is in the Sweet 16. Their road to get to the Final Four is... Tennessee, who can't score, Michigan State, who has been inconsistent for much of the year, and what Creighton? Is that is that it? Oh, sorry, K State, K State. Now K State's been good, but also at times inconsistent this year. Do we really want that? Like, do we really want? I, I, Look, this I, I, always comes down to a question of enjoy now, suffer later, or suffer now and enjoy later. Mm -hmm. I love the upsets. I do too. I want to see the upsets. Um, now, do I want to see teams getting smoked by 20 in the Elite Eight or the Final Four? I do not. Oh. I'm going to come at this from a very casual point of view. When when Purdue is the one seed or uh, Marquette, like... Yeah, they, they I, don't I have the name recognition I, of a dude. Yeah, I want to see... This is a bigger problem for, for me when, when there's powerhouses that are waiting, right? You want to see the mega matchups towards yeah. the end. But because of my college basketball ignorance, not caring about the regular season, I don't have that anticipation. I don't even know if those studs are even there to be waiting at the very end. I know these programs are really different from what we're used to. Alabama sitting there as the overall number one seed. Houston has been good, but still a number one seed. So I don't have like that big time matchup or matchups that I'm looking forward to. So give me the chaos early on right now. I'm happy with it. I love the upsets. Chaos until the Elite Eight. Okay. I think is generally the happy middle ground. Like, the fact that we're setting up for Alabama to play Creighton or Princeton in the Elite Eight is a little... Yeah. That's a little bit of a, a beatdown. I think you want to see 
Okay, fine. If uh, if UCSB beats Baylor and you get a 14 and three, that's great. That's exciting. As long as along the way, then Arizona manages to beat them in the Sweet 16, and then yeah. we get Arizona, and you get good games later on. Or if you get a Princeton, the only way a Princeton is acceptable is if they just they the Cinderella story doesn't end and they play at a high level against everybody the whole way. That's yeah, it. But that's not realistic. Game. No, the ch- and, and look, we saw this with Florida Gulf Coast. Remember Dunk City? They had uh, they, you know, they beat Georgetown. Uh, you know, they as as a 15, they had a really good run, and they ran into Michigan. They played here at, at AT and T Stadium, and they I think they lost to Michigan. Uh, and they, they played a good game, but they finally ran into a team that had great guard play, that was loaded, that had really really good talent, uh, and, and they lost. To be and to be fair, the most intact bracket by far is the Midwest. And these are the, the, you've got four of the top five are in that Sweet 16 right now. This is the Midwest bracket, though. Houston, Miami, Xavier, Texas. Like, is that a thrill? Like, the top seeds won and got there, but is that? Well, I mean, you know, uh, obviously Houston is, they were a great program in the early 80s, then they kind of went away for a while. Now they've been back. Texas has never really had a basketball tradition of, of success. You know, they've been up and down. And they haven't made the Sweet 16 in in, in quite a while. Uh, Xavier is probably the most recent best program of the bunch. And even still, they don't have the national recognition. And they have no that. national recognition. But those Obviously, are, Houston's the most recent. But like Xavier, over a decade and sure, a half, sure. has those been are really, really good. Two through fives. Like, yeah, can't ask for much more than that. Can't ask more than that. Yeah. Uh, so I'm satisfied with it so far. Talk to me when it's a 17-point beatdown. Um, but... Is this as likely as the lower seeds are to pull off these upsets with the state of college basketball? To me, I picked a lot more upsets this year because I'm like, well, there's more parity now than ever. Yeah, that's why you've got a you got a lot more players that are good playing at all levels. B the NIL money allows for everybody to go wherever they want to. C the transfer portal allows players to leave at, at a whim, and and I think most importantly, like let's just let's just say let's take Tennessee and Duke. Duke is so much more talented than Tennessee was. The difference in that game is that everybody on our team is like 24 years old. Yeah. And they're 18. And, like, that was the difference in that game. We just beat the crap out. We bloodied them up. We were in the mud. That's what we wanted. Like, we knew that these 18-year-old kids, you know, no matter how much better they are, like, they got they, – they played against men. Yeah. It was like a high school team going to the YMCA and playing against the old man who's like 25, 30 years old – and it's just a physical style of game. So guard play wins in this. And when you get a lot of these teams that are that are senior laden teams, juniors and seniors playing against eighteen year old kids. And remember, these are not these are not normal seniors. Mm-hmm. These are COVID year seniors. So they get a fifth year of eligibility. Mm. So even this year, it's, I think it's even more pronounced. Meanwhile, Charles Barkley on the CBS coverage. Are we making fun of Charles as much this year for not? Knowing anything about college hoops as years pass, he's been he's been good this year. He's been, really? he's, he's he's known that he's got he knows a lot more. Okay. Uh, it seems like, um, and you know he was he when he is able to talk about it from a basketball standpoint, and I have to bring up yeah, he's always going to talk about pace and tempo, pace tempo, who's bigger. Yep, uh, he was you know he was talking about a lot of defensive stuff over the weekend. Uh, yeah, it was pretty good. He was also talking about showering. I'm so old. We used to take a shower in our uniforms because, you know, because we, we, we flew commercial my first few Wait, years. Wait, time out. We, 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 there's no era where you did. <laughs> yes, it is. Stop, you're making this up. <laughs> no, I'm not. There's no way that you you were supposed to wash your uniform with your own. <laughs> when I first... You're making this up. I'm not making this up. Let him finish. I've no, never no, heard. No. no one in the right uh, mind has Kenny, ever done let that. Let him finish. Kenny, please when do. I, let when him I, when I first... And soap. They give you soap. Let him no, finish, no, no. Kenny. When I first got to the NBA, we flew commercial. Yes, I, that's, that's I, accurate. I, I'm not that's disagreeing accurate. with you. So, that's so when that's you played the night before and flew the next morning, when was you exactly going to get your uniform clean? You had to wash your uniform yourself. So after the game, when you got to your room, you took a shower in your uniform and dried and dropped on, <laughs> on the commercial airline the next day. Who are you with, Jed Clampett? No, that's, please. That's, 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 why, that's, why you let him, that's why you had to let him finish. Come on. No. I, yeah, have you ever heard this in your life, Clark? No, I, well, how are y'all cleaning y'all uniform? Y'all playing in funky no, uniforms? No, no, somebody. I'm washing the dryer or when, someone else. Yeah, when, you're, when you're flying I, the next you, morning. You can clean your uniform without showering in it. Well, that well, is that is that is possible. You can what, actually clean it what, without showering in it. In it. You don't have to have it on. Yeah, yeah, no, no, but it's easier to do it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
It's not. It is easy to do it that way. Wait. Yeah. Uh, is Charles Barkley trying to tell us yes. that NBA teams did not have an equipment guy yes. who yeah. would wash the jerseys after the game? In Which 1984. Is- that's lunacy, right? <laughs> Which is why Kenny, Kenny's a, telling him there's zero era where this ever happened. You're making this up for TV. Yeah, right like, now. and then do you know how? Do you know how Kenny may possibly know? How? He played the same era because he played in no. the same era. I thought there, I thought there was some story here. No, and I was Kenny like, was, oh, what? He was on, on the roster. Kenny's Kenny, older, I think. No, Kenny was 1987 rookie year. Rookie year. So okay. three years later, they developed laundry they developed for laundry. NBA teams. He, his his face does not look like he's kidding though. Charles looks like he's like, why are you guys not believing me? He looks yeah. like he's selling it pretty well. I, I, and I'm thrown by, like, it didn't dawn on me because when he said they didn't fly commercial, it didn't dawn on me that these NBA teams. Would have to wait till the next morning to travel out because they're not chartering. Because they're not and chartering. The games are over, so the flights are done. The flights are done. Yeah. It's ten thirty at night. These flights are done. They're not. You're not, not going to get a flight that late so, to some of these cities. <laughs> it didn't even dawn on me that they were going to be traveling somewhere and, and have to get up the next morning and go. How do you play it back to back? Newspaper. Oh, rather than Nikes. That's the way they ran up and down the floor too. Yep. Same thing in Charles's day. Yep. 1984. Court was uphill both ways. Court was <laughs> uphill. <laughs> by this, man. Uh, by the way, St. John's looks like they're stealing Choppy and Chuck Cooperstein's idea. They're talking to Patino. We wanted that for my Texas Tech Red Raiders. St. Yeah. John's is talking to old Ricky P. I, uh, I, yeah, I was listening to some some uh, college sports uh, analysts over the week, college basketball analysts, and they said... Oh, Eric and Zach? Nice. <laughs> no. Nice <laughs> back QL support. <laughs> no, um, and they were talking about how Patino's not a fit in Lubbock. They're not going to go after him, and he wouldn't want to go there anyway. He's not a fit. They need a Texas guy, whatever. Uh, Rick Patino can can win anywhere. He won in Louisville. He won in Lexington. Rick Patino will go to the highest profile job that will take him. Now yeah. St. John's it does it just to Rick Patino. What's a higher profile job? Texas Tech or St. John's? I don't know the answer for him. Yeah, probably uh, St. John's. It, it, it could be. Um, you're going to have more money. Uh, you know, you're going to have like you know maybe the facilities are better. In Lubbock because you're, they're newer and you don't have to pay New York City, you know, fees to get uh, you know for the land for these new facilities. But I mean, maybe for him it's better. Are the Cowboys finally spending like a Super Bowl contender? A look at how recent Super Bowl champs have built their rosters in below the belt. Next, well, let's get you over to Zero Res. Let's get that car.
Don't make me take off my belt. Does it matter how you spend? Not just that you spend, not just that you acquire talent, but the way you acquire talent. Because the Cowboys will tell you it does. That we build through the draft, we sign our own, that's just it. Is that correct? Because there's a lot of people who push back and said, you got to dabble at least somewhat in free agency. Yeah, some people, I think Clarence Hill came on, he said, you got to bring out the salt shaker sometimes. You got you to gotta add. You got to add a little bit of seasoning here and there. RJ Choppy for, for, for a couple years has had me uh, against adding and we just sit here and say no to everybody but i've broken away from that and it's time to add and time to sprinkle a little bit uh because they're not good enough to win a super bowl as is and that's why i've absolutely loved what they've done so far in two great value deals in gilmore yeah. and brandon cooks i like the value deals too i mean there's 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 an easier way to to become a great team, and that's just getting a new quarterback, Sean. But we're not going to talk about that. Here. I don't want to do this. I don't want to. What are you, do, what are you doing here, man? I don't want to do that during his segment. The full heel turn for RJ Toppy. I'm so proud. I'm so high five, proud. High five. High five. Emphasis yeah. on heel. Oh, he, he slapped. He slapped it. He slapped me away with those hands. <laughs> so, <laughs> when you look at, for instance, the Chiefs last year and how they built their team, because a lot of people say, hey, Play in those waters at least a little bit. Spend a little bit. Consistently, I think the only year where it wasn't the case was 2021. But over the last 12 years, every Super Bowl winner spent more money in guarantees on one free agent from outside the building than the Cowboys spent on their entire free agent class. What? Say that again. So every super bowl winner other than the rams and the rams made trades they just yeah. didn't sign they made trades and they signed odell beckham jr for cheap but every super bowl winner for the last like 12 years other than the rams in 2021 in that season they won the super bowl they spent more in total guarantees on at least one outside free agent than the cowboys spent on the entire free agent class that offseason wow. <laughs> so the cowboys which by the way that only means that you had to sign just one guy Basically, like you said, one good player, they're going to get more guarantees than the Cowboys have doled out. Right, because the Cowboys, the most the Cowboys have given out since the Brandon Carr deal in 2012. So since 2013 on, the most they've given out in guarantees in one offseason, I believe, was 2020. They gave out $30 million that year, and that's by far the most they've given out. Uh, it was actually $32 million by the bye week. The Cowboys had cut $24 million of those guarantees, wow. cut or traded them. And so the one year they spent, it, it kind of went sideways. But... Spending money is one way to do it. I wonder if we just haven't talked enough about what the Cowboys are doing now, which is building your team through trades. There's this sense, this was a discussion point a little bit in Indy that you would hear. And I know Albert Breer has written about it recently. This idea that more teams are paying to keep their own, just like the Cowboys are. And because of that, it's watering down free agent classes. And guy, you're, you're not getting really big stud free agents anymore because teams are locking in their guys early trying to yeah. to adjust for the cap make their savings I, I wonder a little bit how much COVID had to do with that when COVID threw off their cap projections for future years if they said man we can't spend outside we need to make sure we're retaining everybody here in house and so in that process the wide receiver wide receiver market at least right now has been slow. Yeah. It's been a slow yeah. starter in free agency. Yeah. And and most, I'd say, if you were to compare the rumored available receivers for trade versus the receivers that are on the free agent market right now, you would take the trade class all day long in terms of just talent. You take Hopkins, Cooks, Judy, Sutton. You take all those guys over Juju Smith-Schuster. Odell. And, and the guys who are signing there. So, the Chiefs last year in 2022, they did not trade for anybody uh, they traded Tyree kill away mm -hmm. but they spent 40 million dollars in outside free agent guarantees which again is more than the Cowboys have spent in a decade so you look at that and go okay well that's an outlier we already know I told you they everybody spends more than the Cowboys do in their Super Bowl winners but how did the Super Bowl winners handle trades and real quick I know and I do it too mm -hmm. it is dangerous to bring any comparison to Kansas yes I, right. even though I do it it's still dangerous because they have they have the one guy there is no you can make any mistake you want as a front office. Yep. As long as you have Patrick Mahomes and you don't trade him away, yeah, you're still going to win twelve. I dismissed these conversations more if it was the showing the Chiefs did not spend because you have Mahomes to make up for it. But this is about them spending. Yeah, and it's not just the They're Chiefs. They're in a better situation than us and spending. And it's not just the Chiefs. We're going to look at 
all the teams that have won the Super Bowl recently. Mm. So this is not this is winners. This is the teams that win football games. 2021, the Rams trade for Matthew Stafford before the season. They get almost 5,000 yards passing, 41 touchdowns, turn the ball over a lot. But they they got better performance out of him than they had gotten from Goff. Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. That's right. right mid season, <laughs> mid season, they then ante up again and they trade for Von Miller. And these, by the way, this is just addressing trades that were made the year they won, yeah. not even including the Ramsey deals and guys like that who came earlier. They trade for Von Miller the last twelve games, playoffs included. He has nine sacks in twelve games. Really ups his game. For those two guys, the Rams give up two first rounders, a second rounder, and two third rounders. Really strong performance from a trade. 2020, Bucks obviously signed Tom Brady. They signed Leonard Fournette, all those guys. But they had also made a trade. They traded for the rights to Rob Gronkowski, who ended up with 14 yards per catch. He had nine touchdowns between the playoffs and the regular season. And he was a security blanket in Tom Brady's transition to the Buccaneers. Another trade. Pays off big time there. 2019, the Chiefs. We're bringing it back to the Chiefs again, who do have Patrick Mahomes, but who they also had is the guy that they traded for before the season started, Frank Clark. Frank Clark, between the playoffs and the regular season, played 17 games. He got 13 sacks. And in that three-game playoff stretch, he had five sacks in three playoff games. He was huge for them. He was absolutely critical to their playoff run. 2018 Patriots. They made several trades leading into that season and in the middle of that year. They traded for Trent Brown. He stabilized the left side of that offensive line. The team sacks dropped by 14 from year over year. So they had given up 35 sacks the year before, went down to 21. Nate Solder, who had been the left tackle there the year before, had given up four sacks in the first four weeks of 2017. In 2018, Trent Brown, who they traded for, gave up three sacks all year, including the playoffs. They traded for Jason McCourty before the season. He was really strong in coverage all year. The stats weren't gaudy. I think he had one interception, but he was pretty locked down for them. And when you couple that with Stephon Gilmore, who he was not as good as Gilmore, but he was pretty close. And that made it really difficult to throw on the Patriots. That's why a high-flying Sean McVay offense went in there and scored three points in the Super Bowl is because McCourty and Gilmore were that good. Middle of the year, they trade for Josh Gordon, who Gordon got suspended right before the playoffs. But it's a deal they went after. Brady, who, Chop, you know, 2018, was Brady pushing the ball downfield a lot? He, he has basically done quite a bit. 2018, was he pushing it? Was he just chucking it all over the yard for 40-yard? No, probably no. not chucking it all over the yard. No. no. Josh Gordon comes in there, has 40 catches on the year, averages 18 yards per reception with Tom Brady. Shows you that he was stretching the field vertically in a way that they hadn't been able to experience before. 2017, move back. The Eagles win the Super Bowl that year. Before the season, they traded for Timmy Jernigan. They had had issues with their run defense in 2016. They ranked 16th in yards per attempt allowed. Jernigan was one of the best run defenders in football that year, defensive tackle. And they went from 16th in 2016 to 6th in 2017. Middle of the year, they recognized some vulnerabilities in their pass coverage. They trade for Ronald Darby from the Bills. Ronald Darby in the final eight games of the season gets three interceptions. Almost led the team for the year playing in eight games. And he had six pass breakups in the three playoff games was really, really good for them. One more, we can just go back. This could go back far forever, but just one more. 2016, Patriots make a trade for Martellus Bennett, who Rob Gronkowski, some of the injuries starting to pile up, some of the availability questions. Martellus Bennett comes in, has to step in and play a lot when Gronkowski gets hurt in the second half of the season. He ends the season with 55 receptions, seven touchdowns, had five touch or five catches for 60 yards in the AFC title game, another five for 60 in the Super Bowl against Atlanta. So what you're seeing here is I know people have complained before about the Cowboys and are they spending enough in free agency? Are they doing enough to acquire talent? Maybe the key here, because this is every Super Bowl winner, we're talking about them making trades. And the Cowboys have not consistently dabbled in the trade market, probably even less so at times than they've spent in free agency. And it's is trading the way to go. Find guys who are disgruntled or who there are issues with, yeah. give up some capital so that a team is willing to part with a better football player? Because just think about in recent history some of the trades the Cowboys have made. Who are some of the ones that stand out? Robert Quinn. You traded for Robert Quinn. You bought low on him. He played really well for you. You traded for Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper came in here and totally reversed your season in 2018. And so maybe this is the avenue. Maybe that's what the Cowboys are showing here with two trades now this week for really good value pieces that they recognize, 
look, do we want to play in the free agent waters? Do we want to give out a bunch of guaranteed money? No. But what if we evaluate a player who we say is good, is under contract, and we just are willing to trade capital for a sure thing? You know, my, my issue here is if you look at all these teams, mm -hmm. now, like, you know, Kansas City this year, they sold their biggest guy, right? They sold Tyreek Hill. So, like, I... Do we even count them as spenders? I still would because, again, they didn't dabble in the trade market, but they did spend. Okay. They saw it, They spent $40 million guarantees. They brought in Justin Reed, Carlos Dunlop. They brought in Juju Smith-Schuster. Marquez Valdez-Scantley got $15 million guaranteed from them, so they did Traded spend. Traded for Kadarius. The, yes, the, middle the of the season one trade issue, for Kadarius, Tony. The one issue is all these teams that you mentioned, Yep. with the exception of the Rams and the Eagles, mm -hmm. they were all quarterbacked by Brady or Mahomes. Right. And those two teams, the Rams and the Eagles, either one, missed the playoffs at the Rams, or two, had a rebuild shortly after because they had to. And I would say this. I, and, 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 so you're selling your soul for, for the one run. Um, Would you have traded? Would, would, would you trade places with the Rams right now? Absolutely not. With the ring? No. No. Although, hang on a second. Although, hang on a with second. With the ring. The Rams have been... Over the last six years, basically since, you know, since 2016. Well, they, they that was the Goff and Dak, Dak, Dak draft, 2016? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So since the since the draft, the Rams have been a better program. I call it program. They've been a well, better And franchise. that's the thing. Everybody talks about them as F them picks. Like, yeah. that's their reputation. They became perennial contenders through their team building through the draft. Right. That's how they became contenders. Yeah. Even the year they won the Super Bowl. Who were the two best players on the team? Aaron Donald and Cooper Cup. Two guys they yeah. drafted. Yeah, so like when I trade places with the with the Rams, no, because I mean, would you rather make the playoffs every year for ten straight years, or make the playoffs once, win the Super Bowl, but miss the other nine? I mean, right now well, in a twenty-seven year drought, people would probably say the Super Bowl. Yeah. They're not gonna miss. I mean, they might miss nine. They but might miss now also, because they're so they're so. Uh, but you can uh, rebuild thin. in the league. Too. You can, yes. Like they're still going into this year with Stafford, Cup, Donald. You know what I mean? Yeah, like if you no, if you go in, like I don't think Stafford, I think Stafford's arm is going to fall off. But if it doesn't, like they're like, not yeah. eliminated. Like obviously, if you go in and you know what's going to happen, if you go back and use hindsight, yeah, you obviously take the title. But that Rams title was kind of fluky. They were a four seed going in. They, you know, there was an upset where they didn't have to go. Uh, what was it? I guess they didn't have to go to Green Bay for the NFC Championship game. They got to play a home game against San Francisco. Like there were, and, and they got lucky in that game too. Like there was a lot of flukes to that. I will say where the margins are small in the playoffs because these are not when you bring up the Brady Mahomes point. These are not just running rough shot over everybody into the playoffs. Where the margins are small, I think Von Miller getting you nine sacks in twelve games matters for the margins. Even Frank Clark with Mahomes being what he was, Frank Clark picking up five sacks in three playoff games, including two in that Super Bowl where they had to come back against the Forty ers That matters, even though you had Mahomes. And so I think those margins still matter. Are we getting Luca versus Ja tonight? Someone calls Michael Jordan's career mediocre, uh -huh. and is this the most interested you've ever been in the World Baseball Classic? Final hour, Monday edition. Next on the fan. But let's get you over
Studios secured by DFWSecurity.com. This is Sean and RJ on 1053 The Fan. Got the ball to Kyrie under duress. Kyrie on the move. Darts to his right. And he makes a pass. Cleaver to beat the buzzer and win the game. Woo! He got it. Woo! For Maxi Cleaver. A spectacular win. He is mobbed. And Dallas has won it. What a call. What a shot on Bally. It's fist pump time, final hour, Monday edition of Sean and RJ. By the way, a pretty frightening situation developing in Arlington. Lamar High School is on lockdown after two people were apparently shot. So we got a shooting taking place at Lamar High School in Arlington. So just be wary of that. That's developing on national uh, national news broadcast right now. Which Arlington police did tweet out about an hour ago. They say the scene is secure and the suspect is in custody, but it is on lockdown. All right, so that's what you need to know. Tonight, the Mavericks are going to take on Dylan Brooks and the Memphis Grizzlies, who just trash-talked and beat Golden State. I think Memphis has won five of six now. John Morant is not returning tonight. No. He's eligible to return. But the team says earliest he would return is by Wednesday as Luca and Kyrie are questionable after Kyrie came back and gave the game winning assist to Maxi to beat the Lakers. Man, that foot was good for a day. Good for a day. And now it's right back, right back to it. This will play into Bassick's theory that Kyrie just came back to show the Lakers what they can get in the offseason by signing him and then go back to quitting on the Mavs, baby. Uh, so. We'll have some fun with Bassick over that. But they go out there. They beat the Lakers. Anthony Davis screwed up about three different times. Took responsibility for the loss. Mavs are six in the West. Memphis is three. And as we await, by the way, some totals were really zooming in and studying Luka running to the maxi pile. They're like, look, he's running 20%. He's running 30%. See if you can search Maxi's game winning three and try to find Luca and see if you make anything of his movement. Well see that what it was interesting was I saw there were people talking about how how excited was Kyrie. He jumped up and he looked like he was head in the pile, but then some people were like, was he actually in the pile? I did see some of that. <laughs> really? So they were trying to they were trying to to figure out if Kyrie's pile celebration <laughs> was indicative of anything. Like Corey Seeger? Yes. He's a nice yeah. Corey Seeger around mm -hmm. here. Meanwhile Stephen A. Smith Says, yeah, he may be out of his rehab, his treatment, his counseling, but there's no way Ja can be fixed. It was his statement that alluded to bigger issues combined with Taylor Jenkins and them saying this stuff that's been going on for quite some time that left us saying, what the hell are you talking about? What's going on? And that question was still not answered. And so what I'm saying is, is that the reason I bring that up is because of what you two just said. Mm hmm the fast forward, the fact that, you know, 10 days later, here we are, like problem solved. It's not going to happen again. That's not what we were. That's not the indication that we were given. We were given through the combination of John Moran's statement, along with that of Taylor Jenkins and the Memphis Grizzlies, that there was a lingering issue or lingering issues that needed to be addressed. And in that, if yeah. that's the case, you damn right, right. 10 but days in mm. By the way, people went and did some digging on, <laughs> on Jaws' old Instagram account. Uh-oh. The sleuths were out and found the profile so exclusive 12 underscore Ooh. in which Jaw posted to 50 times over the course of a couple of weeks in 2013 when he was in eighth grade at the time. We got some cringeworthy stuff, apparently, where a young Moran brags about being high, claims he can make cocaine, and channels his inner... I don't know what this other phrase is, so I'm not going to say it on the radio. So, they went and dug up his high school Instagram. He said he can make cocaine? Yeah. Like, the whole process of... Or was it's, he more, it's very Pablo Escobar. Or was he saying more like, 
I know how to like mix it with water and do other stuff. Don't know. Don't know. Uh, by the way, Luca's not playing tonight. I'm not announcing that as news. I'm watching the video that RJ found. Oh yeah, he's not playing. <laughs> Where did you find that? Uh, I just, I just, I just put in Luca in the search box. That's it. Just what Luca. A perfect video. I'll, yeah, uh, he I'll, looks uh, like he looks I'll like he's running this. like Zeke. It's rough. <laughs> he's limping on out there. No way he plays tonight against the Grizz. So hopefully Kyrie gets out there. Uh, but Mavs against Memphis. It'll have to be Dylan Brooks, the number one reason to watch. Dylan Brooks, the new Rodman of the NBA. All right. Um, Colin Cowherd, mission accomplished. He went viral for saying this after the news came out that Michael Jordan was going to sell the Hornets. So he tried baseball. He failed. He tried ownership. He was awful. He tried the Wizards. It bombed. Everybody understand that take out Scottie Pippen and Phil Jackson, this whole Michael Jordan mythology is sort of just that. He's arguably the greatest basketball player of all time. Michael was always a bit of a selfish player. He's a bit of a selfish guy, and he's not great at building community. He's great at building wealth for Michael Jordan. That's fine. It's not a criticism. It's a reality of who Michael is. So that absolutely caught fire. Michael, uh, Colin Cowherd uh, has the guts to call Michael Jordan basically mediocre without Phil Jackson and Scottie Pippen. And I just, I just, I, I, I just launched into a tirade because uh, uh -oh. of personal disappointment. Cowherd was one of these guys I really liked and respected when I first got into radio. And he is sold out uh, just like everybody else, basically. In sports, in sports entertainment, sports TV. Uh, Skip Bayless Jr. Um, but, you know, all the inconsistencies of his takes, putting Matt Stafford as the best quarterback in the NFC, he turned into a fraudulent, desperate troll, just like everyone else who makes six million a year and vacations in Utah every single weekend. So there it is. Um, Michael Jordan playing baseball. Failure. Michael Jordan yeah. Wizards. I looked at those two things as successes. The baseball thing was a success. Yes. And him going, yeah. what did he average in, in D.C.? Well, he, he averaged like 18 to 20 a night. So he was 23 a game in 0102. At what age? 38. His Now, his shooting percentage was not great, but he had also been on on the bed, you know, away from the away game for the three game years. Away from the game two, three years. Because yeah. the very next year, his shooting percentage went up to damn near 45%. Yeah, and, and look. So he and, he just, averaged, and he averaged 20 a night then. He, he became a, a, a double-A baseball player at 31. Now, people will tell you if you could play double A baseball, you could play in the major leagues. Like that, that's you could you, if you could make it to that level, you could make it. The you may not stay in the major, but yeah. you can make it. And was he gifted a roster spot? Yes. Yes, he absolutely was gifted a roster but spot. But I, I, I remember, sorry, Choppy. I remember Terry Francona talking about his numbers and his at bats. I remember Terry Francona, who was his manager at the time, being very, very impressed. Yeah. Like Michael has surprising baseball numbers, if I remember correctly. Okay, so he he hit two hundred. He hit I think he hit two hundred two that year. Yeah, he wasn't great. But, but, he, but he had but, not played. But, but in the context, I'm saying he was not great in a vacuum, but in the context of what he was doing, it was insane that he did what he did. He had not played in a minimum of 14 years. <laughs> okay. So like, he, so I'm just going to say he played senior year of high school. I don't know that that's the truth. I, he may have not played in high school at all. Right. So he may not have hit a fastball ever above 70 miles an hour. And he goes to double A. Yeah. And he hits 200. Like, I don't think we realize how incredible that is. Yes. To go from not playing organized baseball in a minimum of 14 years, rolling out of bed, completely changing the strength and the workout and the muscles that you need to succeed in baseball versus basketball. Yeah. Completely changing it up and then going out and hitting 200 yeah. in double A. He had 30 steals. He had six assists from the outfield. He like had I mean, 30 he, steals? I, I, I'm going to go check. I think, I think 30 steals would have led baseball this year. <laughs> but 30 That's six six 30 steals yeah. uh yeah i mean his, his batting average was not great it was 202 but his obp was also 290 because he drew a ton of walks he had 50 walks so this is your okay. boy what the league leader in major league baseball this past season had 41 steals in how many games in in 162 because uh, michael did 30 and 127 yeah so it would have been 100 and yeah it been 162 it's just it's just it's just stupid it's just disappointing. I'm, I'm more so disappointed because this is sports broadcasting. Uh, there's two types of people, in my opinion. One, Men and women? One, you... No, that no. would be incorrect. No. Don't, be, don't be insensitive. 
uh, you you go to sleep worrying about some things, or you go to sleep and you don't lose a wink. If I was like Skip Bayless, if I was like like they care about getting retweeted and the hits, it doesn't matter if people are talking about you like you're a damn fool. That would like keep me up at night. That would torment me. I, I, you can tweet anything, a hot take, and get a lot of retweets. But if people are calling you a moron for it, like that would really bother me. But that's uh, that's the formula nowadays. It's just disappointing. Mm -hmm. So he's stealing Nick Wright's bit that Michael Jordan is overrated and he's just mediocre without Phil Jackson or Scottie Pippen. And did you did you feel bad for Nick Wright last night that uh, his Marquette team lost? I swear he's Shaka smart. Oh, he is Nick Shaka Wright. smart. Yeah. So Shaka. there you go. Meanwhile. Michael keeps winning because his son is officially dating Larsa Pippen. Oh, yeah. Of OnlyFans fame, Pepe. <laughs> is that what she's from? That what she's famous for oh, now? Oh, I know. Can you... Okay, so are you still subscribed to where you can access her page? Uh, Yeah, I believe I have one more day. Bobby? One more day? Give him one 15 bucks. We need a wish list. We need 15 more dollars, Bobby. All right. Well, we... Okay, I didn't know we had talked about this on the air already. Yeah, I don't know. We <laughs> I don't think we did. You see, we talk uh, about so many things. They get brought up. Yeah, I think, I think I think we just took an off-air conversation. <laughs> That's my fault. That's my bad. It was a show bit. Show bit. Yes, yes. It was show a, content. Really. Know. It was a it was a show bit. Um, but Larsa Pippen announced the other day on Bravo uh, that while married to Scotty, she was having relations. Was it Quattro? It's four times a day for twenty three years. That's what she said. That's a lot. And my first question was, with who? And the internets as well. And I'm sure the internet thought the same thing. That old gif of, what'd you do on the road? Glasses down. <laughs> what'd you do? What'd you do when he was out on the road? On the road. I and know, she's right? like, no, we were never separated. So Never. No. Cool. The Doug Christie of the uh, of the NBA at the time. Was yeah. Pippen. Good reference. Thank you. Uh, so there you go. That just, that seems unreasonable. Four times. More, you're, more than you're eating. More than you're eating or more going to the eating. bathroom. More than you're eating, more than you're going to the bathroom. I, I think it's, you know, it, it's it's not really plausible from either person's uh, standpoint. I mean, could you imagine that being demanded of you four times a day? <sighs> no. We're not pieces of meat, What ladies. would you need? We, 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 we have feelings. We have uh, limitations. That's just not reasonable to ask that of us. A lot of blue chew. A lot of blue chew. A lot of blue chew. Meanwhile, more magic last night. For old U.S. of A. Chopper to short. Six, four, three. And Team USA heads to the championship. They advance to the WBC championship game for the second consecutive tournament and will try to defend their title on Tuesday night against the Japan-Mexico winner. Wait, did the U.S. win this last year? Mm -hmm. He just, what's he talking about defending their title? I don't know. Ch well, because I don't think they had one because in the COVID. the best country stuff, in the world. What'd you say, Peyton? I, I don't think they had one because of COVID. So I think maybe it went back. Oh. Well, let's let's I'll check that. Up. That was the call from... World Baseball <laughs> the, Classic. Good, good call back. <laughs> uh, that was the call from Fox. They beat down Cuba 14-2. to two. Trey Turner continues to be on fire. He hit the epic, the epic... Grand Slam against Venezuela mm. on Saturday. What? They yeah. did win in 2017. What? Which, by the way... Uh, 17? Yeah, 17. It's supposed to be every four years, but then, yeah, COVID threw it off. Oh, okay, because I was like, I don't remember the hoopla for any of these World Baseball Classics approaching anything like this. Yeah, it was this been, six years ago, man. Right? Dang. This has been fantastic for the sport. The bad news is, now, you have an argument to be made. Cancel it. Altuve. Hurt. Eight to ten weeks. We already have the injury to Edwin Diaz. Full year. And someone else got hurt as well. Well, Arenado got hit in the hand last night, um, and you know I, I don't. We don't know the status uh, of of that injury. If it's even broke, we have no idea. If I'm uh, Rob Manfred, I want this to continue. If I'm a baseball team owner, I want it stopped. I don't want to yeah. send my star players to to mess with any of this right before. We start our regular season. I, I love the ba I love the World Baseball Classic. I wish uh, this again. Baseball just failing here. It uh, it's it's getting great attendance in the in the stadiums. They've gotten over a million people in the pool play, which is forty games. A million people showed up, but you can't find it. Does anybody know where it's on? When it's on? It's on FS1. All right, some of these games went on Fox, but for the most part, the average fan I'm sure has no idea this is even going on. That's baseball's problem. 
they need to put this on Fox. Fox. On Fox 4 tomorrow night as they await the winner of uh, Mexico, Japan with Shohei hitting 438 in this tournament. But it's been a hit. It's great. Great energy, great emotion. It's, I mean, when I've caught it, I've only caught it in like bits and pieces and obviously a lot of the highlight stuff. But, you know, I wonder if that's part of the popularity because, Chop, you've talked about this before about how your kids consume in such a like sports TikTok yeah. quick bite sort of way. And I wonder if that's just the thing is that it, this is more ripe for some of that quick hit consumption and things like that that they've been taking advantage of well, on Twitter. Well, look, I mean, you know, you could talk about changing the time frame of it, putting it at the end of the season. Well, then you're in the middle of football. No one's going to do that. So now it's the best time of the year for it. Does Brandon Cooks change the Cowboys draft? That's next on the home of the Rangers and Boys 105 through the fan. But let's get you over to A.
weight loss, that's soda. Brandon Cooks ties an NFL record in terms of times being dealt and traded. Uh, who's who did he tie? Okay, let's see. Um, tying blank as the most traded player in NFL history since 1980. Fourth time Brandon Cooks has been traded after breaking in with the Saints in 2014. Mm. This is a, don't look it up, Bobby. This is I'm a, not going to. This is, the other guy's a Hall of Fame player. Hall of Fame player. Okay. Local ties. Local ties. Hall of Fame player. Well, uh, can Jim you Jackson. Me, can you give me the years ish? Um, I'll, I'll give you the position. Running back. Oh, I think I know it then. Running back. Uh, let's see. Oh, can I guess? Go ahead. Eric Dickerson. It was Eric Dickerson. Yeah, I was Eric, just like Frank Gore. He got Eric traded a Dickerson. lot at the end of his career, I think. Yeah, so most traded players of all time. Brandon Cooks is right up there. Now, why? That We should answer that. And we're all going crazy. We're all celebrating. We love that the Cowboys only gave up a fifth and a sixth. Why does Brandon Cooks keep moving? I, I, look, I don't think being traded is necessarily a bad thing. Everybody looks at it as, oh, why is he traded? It must be a problem. Okay, maybe he is. But... Guys get traded also because other teams value them and they want them. So I don't think it's that big a deal the first two trades of his career. Because one was the first two trades of his career involved the Patriots. The Patriots are always just bringing people in and shipping them right back out. It's kind of the way they do business. So that's two of his trades right there. And then the other one was to Houston from the Rams. And I'm trying to remember what would have been going on there. That would have been going into the 2020 season. That was probably just relating to what they had at the position with receiver and what they were wanting to do. This one clearly was things had soured. There's definitely a souring here. Um, but I think the initial ones with the Patriots, that's a little bit different. He was also looking to get paid by the Saints. And I think the Saints were just not wanting to get into a long-term deal. Uh, and so that's why the initial trade to the Patriots happened. And the Patriots are kings of, we get it, now we trade it, or, or we let them sign somewhere else because we just want draft picks back, whether it's for the player in a trade or with a uh, a comp pick, and that they've always operated that way. So I think half of those are, are not a big deal. The Cowboys last year only had 10 receptions of 25 or more yards down the field. 10! That was tied for the seventh fewest in the league. Since 2014, Brandon Cooks, has 58 receptions of 20 plus, 25 plus yards himself. Only Tyreek has more. You want to go a step further on that one? I saw this thing flashed up on the TV. Of catches of 30 yards or more, the Cowboys only had four last year. Huh. And Cooks had four himself. Damn. And, and he has 41 since 2014. Only Tyreek Hill has more. Uh, so, like, this is this is not a team that has gone downfield particularly a lot. Uh some of that's the offensive design. Some of that's the quarterback. Uh, you know, the quarterback dictates where the ball goes. And some of it's the talent. Who's the burner that we've had? It's supposed to be Michael Gallup. Everyone told me he's the great deep threat. He's the perfect, you know, he's the deep ball guy. Who else has it been? Seth. Coop. Amari Cooper? Coop was, Coop was a guy who ran a lot of stuff downfield. When, I mean, look, they're oh. not trying to throw the ball downfield anyway, right? They just want to run the ball. They, that's how they so want to yeah, win their, their damn championships. How's, how's he as a blocker? What's up, Brandon Cook's blocking? I mean, see, that is the funny thing here is that we're talking about, like, he's somebody who can stretch the field. And, yeah, he can absolutely do that. But that's not what they're going to do next year. They're not looking to stretch the field. That's not how they want to play They're the going to run game. deep routes. They will occasionally. But I'm telling you, it's not going to be the, uh, the entire West Coast system and, and a lot of what McCarthy likes to run is the whole slant flats, and that's all stuff 10 yards and shorter. Go fine. Yak, catch him run. Go 40, go 50, go 70, because uh, he can with that speed. And to make things better, the Texans are going to pay six of the 18 million. So the Cowboys are going to pay the rest. They're paying 12 million, not 18 million dollars. Cooks is signed through 2024, has a base salary of 13 million with a roster bonus of three next year. The poll question is, do you love this deal? Would you have preferred DeAndre Hopkins for a second? Should have just paid Odell or never should have gotten rid of Amari? And 66% of the Tolos were at now 5,300 votes at 105.3 SS. 66% agree with us. Stole him for a fifth and a sixth. So Brandon Cooks is a 
cowboy. Now, we take this to the next level. Does this impact the draft? If so, how? So yesterday, Bijan started trending. Go ahead and take the Texas running back. And I responded as RJ Choppy slowly just rolled his eyes. Landry Locker from Houston joined us two hours ago. In fact, he was so heated over me and you saying you don't draft Bajan Robinson. He said, if y'all pass and you and RJ celebrate, he's a Longhorn fan, Landry is, then I hope Filthy takes him right after to pour the salt in your wound. And my response yesterday when people were like, oh, finish your piece, get Bajan Robinson. I said, you just got rid of that practice mistake you thought Zeke Elliott was the finishing piece and if you could go back and do it again I would draft Jalen Ramsey going back and doing it again Zeke had a nice career here um, but I expected a little bit more so now you want to add another finishing piece you want to repeat the same exact Zeke thinking now Tolo's responded with a great point 26 is way different from four Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so it's totally different than from four. I, I just not gonna. There, there's a phrase that that that, that these uh, draft people love to use. This guy's different. No, he's not. Kyle Pitts. Nobody's ever different. I was he, the only one speaking you know, out he, against he, Kyle he, Pitts. I was with you. I was speaking out against Kyle. This Pitts. guy's different. This guy's different. You know, a lot of guys. You have were been on the radio. No different. one knew who you were. A lot of guys have been. I was different. on with the nosebleeds, and no one knew who you were. And no one, yeah. <laughs> This guy's this guy. I re- I'm not gonna say it. Uh, but uh, like you know, like that's that we always hear that this guy's different. He is. Okay, there's been a lot of guys that have been different, and and it, they're not. But you know, the- it, it, now if you tell me that he's Barry Sanders, and I literally I don't mean like yeah. he might be Barry Sanders, but I have to go 20 years into the future. Yeah, and then he's Barry. Okay, he's got to be. You you have to have, in my opinion, me and you are together on this. You got to have a LeBron James type confidence level. Like yeah. we all knew LeBron James was gonna be a stud. Yeah, and guess what? Barry Sanders never won a damn thing anyway. I wouldn't have taken him in the first round. Oh, Lord. Chopper. I would have taken Jim Brown in the first round. <laughs> All right, I would have taken any of them so in the first Barry's, round. So uh, would Barry's father. Barry's yeah, dad right. always said, you're you're pretty good. You're not How, better than you Jim Brown. better than Jim. How much are they they paying Tony Pollard right now? $10.8 million Too or much. whatever it is just for the season. If Bajan Robinson gets to 26, and I'm t- there's nobody on that board that's going to be higher graded than Bajan Robinson at that point. So you're passing over the best player available. If you don't take him at 26, you're at the back end of the first. It's about as cheap as you can possibly get. And look, to me, I would make the argument that... The other good point people brought up, you've run out of first rounders in this draft. Most drafts have 15 players anyway, so but that's drafting a yeah, second rounder I, I, at 26. I, I know, and that's an old scout thing that I hate because we all know the drafts is weighted darts. And, you know, it's a little like, bit more than that. It is, but like the odds that the... The chances that the guy that you pick... In, at, you say there's 15 first round picks or whatever. The odds of the guy that you pick is better than the other guy is not very high. It's better than the next guy on the board. It's not very high. It doesn't work out that in a way. vacuum, right? But I like think Josh that's, Allen like was like the third quarterback take. But I, I think you know. that's why teams trust their scouting staffs and why the Cowboys have been good at it for a decade. Like like it does matter. I, I, I sure, think it's, it matters, I think it's a little it's a little bit more scientific than just a dart throw. But and this is never going to happen, by the way, right? This whole scenario, he's never going to fall to 20. Probably not. Who is he? Give me give me a comp. Barry. That's the comp. He's Barry Sanders. He's he's bigger Barry Sanders. Wow. I'm t- like when you watch him play, you see it. You know what and you know what's funny is probably the last person who got bigger Barry Sanders and to Choppy's point, this didn't work out well. The last player who got a similar type of comp was probably Reggie Bush. Yes. Yeah, so NFL.com says his comparison is Josh Jacobs, who was taken the late first round, too. He was, he's, like, he was like 24. He's better than Josh Jacobs. But here's the thing is that if you are going to – if you're going to pay a running back, the time to do it is in their first five years of their career. And if you can do it at the back end of the first round and lock in those five years, Tony Pollard's making $10.8 million. If the Cowboys took Bajon Robinson at 26, his entire – Contract guarantee for the first four years is thirteen point nine. Okay, but here's the problem: you're going to pay him after that. And you if you know, don't, if you don't, then you just willingly took somebody in the first round that you were not going to give a second contract. Well, that's to, that, and that's my problem. You want to take Taco? 
Oh no, here, that's I don't want to I'm just saying we're talking about tw- pick 27, pick 26. This is the that's the range you're talking about. You are not necessarily going to get one of these guys for the next decade type of player there at 26. That's the, just not going to happen. You also have to go and get a guy that you're going to cut in two years. But obviously they didn't know that. But I'm I mean, saying I, that's the level of player. That's the type of chance you're taking at that pick. Did they not get Travis Frederick late in the first round? Which no, they was like, but I mean he was he was ready. They did, but when you talk about the dart throw, it is much more of a dart throw when you're talking about at 26 than if you're picking somebody at 10. If you're picking at 10, I'm not. Taking I'm probably not taking Bajan Robinson either. But at 26, I am. I need the average lifespan of a first-round pick. If you're telling me it's five years, for that'll any, be below the belt. Any position, anything, then maybe you can convince me that my first-round running back is going to play the same as my first-round corner and my first-round DN and my first-round D tackle. The lifespan of it. I have more hope that those other positions give me a second contract after I run my running back into the ground for the first four or five years. But we, we did this whole thing with Zeke. Finish in peace. Final piece. It is t- very different from four to 26, but it's still a first rounder. It's still a first rounder for a position that should not be getting a second contract if you run them into the ground. What are the Tolos saying? 877-881-1053. Now I'm going to be watching Bajan Robinson. I'm going to be watching the highlights of him the whole rest of the morning. I'm going big. I, I better see bigger do Barry it. Sanders. Don't do it. Brian Broda said it. Uh, and now Bobby Belt has said a bigger Barry Sanders. I can already tell that that's not the case. I'm looking well, at 810. Bobby, you're right. Uh, Austin. Number. Now, now he's going to scroll down another 11 no, people. Nope. Well, I only got to scroll down because you've unblocked that number. Uh, 940. Uh, you, Bobby, got him. Uh, let's see here. Somebody else says, no, Bobby, he's absolutely not Barry Sanders. See, I'm letting you, I'm, I'm reading all of them. Uh, 810, again, also it's a huge need. Who's the running back next year and the year after? Uh, 940. The huge need can be filled in the fourth. It can. The huge need. Where, you, where, just, you just got Tony Pollard in the fourth. Just give me legs. Just but, fresh legs. But, That's it. But as, as, That's Land, it. as Landry pointed out earlier, you can find somebody there. Absolutely. You can probably more easily find a really good running back in the fifth round than other types of positions. Sure, yeah. That's the understanding. It is still not as sure as finding a really good running back when you take them. And so it it is more of a gamble than if you just take him there and say, I know this guy's going to be really good for the next four or five years. Nobody, not B. John Robinson, not uh, not, not, not Jonathan Taylor, not Derek. You get what you're blocked at the running back position. Unless you're Barry Sanders. Unless you're Barry Sanders. And even him. Even him. You get what you're blocked. And that's why I'm not wasting a pick on it in the first. All right, let's rub... It all in Kevin Hagelin's face. Mm. Oh, baby! And cross talk with the KMC Masterpiece next. But let's get you over.
The Horde hits three ball at the buzzer and air ball. Tennessee staggered into the NCAA tournament, but is on to the Sweet 16. The Volunteers down Duke 65-52. I didn't know uh, that was going to happen. Listen to it, Hagelin! <laughs> Westwood won. Listen to it! <sighs> Congratulations, they, they, RJ. Is that Woo! why you didn't show up and hang with us at Twin Peaks? You don't want to hear it? Is that why you ditched us? I don't do well watching sports with others in public. That is a fact. It has to be your team, though. Yes, exactly. If it's just like a, a big matchup that I don't have an yeah. invested stake in, mm. that's fine. But yeah. What's I, your top three of like you got to watch it in private? The uh, teams you care about the most. Yeah, I, I think Duke basketball and AM football are definitely in the top three. So you can watch the Cowboys publicly? The Cowboys, the Cowboys might be third, but. Yeah, I could see that. I just, yeah, I guess I get the pre I, I get the premise, but I didn't know where they were in the hierarchy. It's, it's so upsetting to him to watch it in public that he had to ghost me on a reply and not even yeah, tell me he wasn't going to show I'm, up. Yeah, Greatest sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Bobby. <laughs> Please accept my forgiveness for being You're a jerk cool. across. You the can board. ask for it on Friday. Yeah, that's okay, all Friday. right, yeah, that's fair. But y'all whip the crap out of us, so we uh, we, we like to play in the mud. We like, we like to, we God, were, what an ugly style of basketball. Oh, we're a dirty but it's team, effective. Man. We are it was a dirty very team. Effective. We got so many guys out there where the like, other country just, just like Plovsic out there, just you know, body blowing Filipowski. Oh, it's great to Plovsic watch. is about how I would describe y'all style of basketball yeah. too. Yeah. I'd be like Plovsic. <laughs> that feels the name. That, that yeah. feels yeah. about Perfect. right. Yeah. The G Bag Nation today is gonna be broadcasting from the Rally House. Preston and Forrest today. G Bag Nation starting at 2 p.m. Well, this is on just a loop here. This song, I just love it. Corey Majors, what's coming up? How it's going to be. The choppy just sticks around for the rest of the show <laughs> no! and just does this to Kevin all day. He'll be here for a full <laughs> day. Baby. When he comes in last place in our uh, show bed, he'll be here all day long for all the shows. Hey, that's okay. As long as Tennessee even cuts the nets down, I'll be in all day. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I if, can see that. Actually, that's a that would be a very fair trade. If they win the title, 100% chance I stay the entire day. Okay. There you go. Hundred percent. If if I'm not if I'm here, Mark will you come in with a cigar like that guy after the Alabama football win? Uh, can I smoke in here? What do you mean if you're here? Sure. If they make the final game, I'm going to Houston. Oh. I'm not coming. I'm not coming in the next day. Oh, it's in Houston. Yeah, I'm not coming in the next day. Okay. We have a studio in Houston. Oh, I can do the show from there. Fine. You can do it from there. Yeah. Yeah. We know people. Also, we have Isaiah Stanback joining us for the entire noon hour today. So even mm. during the lunch rush, Stand the expressway. Back, stand mm. back. What are the standings for y'all's? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Sean is in the lead with 41 points. Uh, then Peyton at 36. Bobby at 34. Me at 33. Bobby, though, is in trouble. I am. He's lost already a uh, title game participant. So have I. Did you so have Arizona? Kansas? I had Purdue in the... I, I, oh. lost, I lost the entire Final Four on that side because I had Purdue and Arizona. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Just keep this on a loop, Pate. Listen to this. And then All I right. had Indiana in the Elite Eight, and they <laughs> lost last night. All right, you guys answer the poll question. You love the Brandon yeah. Cooks trade. You would have preferred a second rounder for DeAndre Hopkins or just outright sign Odell and not give up any draft picks. Or number four, should have just kept Amari in the first place. Oh, how did that do in the poll? I added it later. It's okay, not because result. I don't. I did not remember I seeing that. Forward. The first one. Every time somebody texts, I got a thousand texts this this weekend about this trade specifically. And every time somebody texted, it was my reply was, "There are still people that are going to be pissed about Amari. Yeah. Like that's still going to happen." Who's the other athlete or transaction we we still don't let go of? We can't let go. TJ of and Taco. Well, right now Jalen Brunson's one that's hurting uh, the Mavericks pretty darn yeah. good. Chan Ho Park. Uh, what? We still talk about that to this day. Jalen Brunson is going to sting more than Amari Cooper. People still talk about letting Nash go. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Yep, you just looked at me surprised. No, right I just that one I still don't. It sounds crazy, understand. but Jalen Brunson is going to, I think, have a better rest of his career than for the better next three to five years than even Amari Cooper, who's a damn good player. Holy crap! Are we giving away Steve Rangers Nash? tickets? For opening week? weekend. Oh, every day during uh, baseball nuggets, 1040, we're giving up open, uh, opening weekend. You can weekend see Mr. Baseball. Grand Slam Trey Turner oh, yeah. here in Arlington. Mm. Whoa. Sorry, I, I I just saw the note on that. He again. needs to win the MVP of that World Baseball Classic, even if they don't win it. Do you think they are going to win? Yeah. 
Japan's the favorite, right? Well, as long as Japan tonight, I'll talk about it in Baseball Nuggets. They're pitching a dude who he's 21 years old yeah. tonight against Mexico who's believed to be better than Otani as just a pitcher. Not Obviously, he's just a pitcher. but So I'm excited to watch tonight to see this 21-year-old who will come over to the United States here pretty soon. And they say he's the best, like, He's more prospecty than Otani is. Otani's more refined, but you get to watch the best Japanese prospect who's probably going to get millions upon millions of dollars in the next few years from an MLB team. And I do want Japan to win in this. I don't really, I'm rooting for the United States. What? But I want Otani to face that all star lineup oh, yeah, on cool. Tuesday night. Yeah. So I want to see Otani versus the oh. United States lineup to see what that looks like. And then he'll root for America. And then you'll root for America. I'm wearing my United States jersey tomorrow. Oh, yes. Will you wear your bronze medal your that medal. we got you? Wear okay. the medal. I'll, 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 but bronze? Yes. For a championship game, you want me to wear a bronze bad luck, medal? Corey. A Is bad it? Luck. I've never, wow, we can't get the bronze. We, can't get the bronze. <laughs> we can only get gold or silver. <laughs> we, won. we won in Cuba. Supposedly, there were medals for us there in Cuba. But once we beat Cuba in Cuba, there was no medal ceremony and no medals were given out. Why, right. why is it bad? I've never heard that wearing a medal is bad luck. Well, it's like, uh, oh, you're wearing a third place medal. You're like, you're, you're forecasting. You're putting that energy out there. It motivated the redeem team in 08. Yeah. All right. You weren't there for the display in person, but way more people than I expected eat chicken wings like RJ Choppy. Did you see this? I guess not. Does he, he mash them down? No, he eats the bone, the hard part. Uh-uh. At the very end, the cart, the cartilage, mm -mm. is it cartilage or cartilage? Cartilage. Cart Cart cartilage. He eats cartilage. the cartilage, Kevin. At the very end, he just takes it down and crunches it up. Like what? he's seeking out the extra crunch, that, that hard bone piece at the end. Have you ever it heard of this? And Basic, have you ever done it? I don't yeah. think so. You know I saw this. About. I saw you know, I saw your your Twitter. I don't know, you probably put it on Instagram too. You're a big IG guy. Yeah. Um <laughs> But additional revenue slide. streams. I didn't right. know. I didn't know that you could do that. I thought you might choke on that part of it. Well, it's yeah. I mean, it's it's not like so on the smaller chicken wings, you don't get as big of a piece of cartilage. You get those bigger wings with the turkey legs. You're getting a huge chunk of cartilage, man. So much, so good, so much flavor. And Reggie, you do this on. A, you said you do this on a turkey leg too. Oh yeah. So you just Maybe sit there and those gnaw are like, on it. Those are. Monsters. Your body, yeah. your stomach breaks that down. Looks like a know. kneecap. Someone said that's why you're screaming for your life every morning and Man, you're in the restaurant. It rest might room. be. You never know. But I'll <laughs> tell you what. I suffer the consequences for good food. It's a bone. Yeah. It's a chew toy. It's a dog treat. It, it made me uncomfortable, too, when you looked in the camera to do it. Like, that was the part that I, mean, I was like, was that the, necessary? You know, that's Sa Wednesday night. Sarah, Sarah gets on me because when I eat, I, close my, I generally close my eyes and I take a bite of food. She just the first the bite or all bites? All bites. She hates the way I eat. She thinks I'm just an absolute disgusting human being when I eat. But I, I do. I, I guess I do. I right. close my eyes when I eat. I don't know why. Uh, I just assume that's how Fascinating. all kings of the jungle do it. <laughs> uh, Corey, you, Not you a never, big eye contact never guy. done it. No. Okay. No, that feels like it. Did you know people did it? Uh, yes. I've seen people like Choppy do that. Like, I've heard of the shrimp tail. Yeah. But Lucius brought us and Reggie. All in agreement. Yeah, I've seen. I see. You see people cleaning bones like that yeah. all the time on like Instagram. They'll they they're like, oh yeah, because they'll mash the bone down and get the chicken, and then just peel it off. I'm like, why would you do it like that? I'm just looking it up to try and figure it out. Everybody, everything on the internet says yes, it's okay to include the cartilage. Just stay away from the bone because you could choke. It has to say, don't eat the bone. I mean, on the internet, that is concerning, <laughs> right? But yeah, you can suck the bone Maybe marrow just, if you want to. Yeah, Pull depends on how down. brave you are. No, there's bone marrow. Michael, there's how bone, was there's uh, definitely bone marrow in there? How was College Station? It's good. It was cold. It was cold everywhere. It felt like in the United States of America. I'm glad my kids weren't playing in a tournament. Were your kids playing in a tournament this weekend? No, we uh, we <laughs> we have laid the law down, man. We do not start till April now. Okay, Ooh. we have laid the law. Well, down. it was um, it was a cool place, but. I did get to watch two of the top five picks in the draft play Whoa. for LSU. The center fielder is supposed to go number one overall, Dylan Cruz. He looks the part. I don't think he'll get to number four for the Texas Rangers. And then the kid who pitched for LSU on Friday was completely dominant. His name is Paul Skeen, so I'll talk a, bit, a little bit more at 1045. But he was 99 to 100 every pitch. Huge kid. Top five pick. So he, will, he has a chance to be there at four if he doesn't go you know, top three. And I think Ranger fans would be very happy uh, with that. I get that they keep drafting pitchers, but 
when you look at baseball in general, man, when you have great pitching, you can pretty much guarantee yourself a 500 record. And if you have average hitting, you can get yourself to 90 wins. Yeah, and I mean, their last two pitchers they took in the first round aren't ever going to make the majors. So. Stop. Wow. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Jack, Jack, it, ask Kyler McDaniel. Uh, Jack looks pretty good. Doesn't like from Doesn't, I think Jack will have a good. good. I think he'll, I mean obviously we'll get to watch him in Frisco. He needs to have a good year this year. I think he'll have a good year. Uh, it sounds like Kamar Rocker is going to start an A ball, and he's a guy that's a huge risk reward guy. He might he might just have injury after injury. He might not, and and. You know, they love Brock Porter, obviously, out of that draft, the fourth-round pick. He's going to take four years because he's a high school kid. As much as Bobby likes Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy's pretty great. For a backup. Okay. (laughs) I didn't get you guys to vote on the Brandon (laughs) Cooks poll question. I love the trade. (laughs) I I love the trade. Yeah, I'm how, a big fan. How many, uh, yeah, I just want to know when you rebooted it, how many people still vote for Amari? I heard something this morning while I was right, going to the gym, and I guess it was like 6, 15. Uh, Bobby said whenever they saw the wine tweet, and I'm, I still don't know what that wine is, by the way. I haven't heard of oh, it. Oh, yeah, the Odell wine tweet. Yeah. And you, Mouton? Yeah, Chateau Mouton. you said something along the lines of maybe the Cowboys saw how uh, D-ish it was, mm-hmm. and they were like, yeah, let's move on from that guy. I think leadership when it comes to when it comes to Cooks is a factor. Like, I think the they, they really like the personality they put in the locker room huh. over Odell. So the guy who threatened to quit <laughs> on his team last yeah. year is well, the, the I, guy and that's, that's hey, also really Robert Prince loves him. Robert Prince, does, like, if you, if and Robert who, Prince, that? the Cowboys receivers coach, and he was in Houston with him in 2021, Robert Prince thinks he's a big-time leader. Yeah, for the most part, man, you never really hear teammates really hate the guy. They love the guy. And, Kevin, I Why understand what was going on. traded so much? But, I have no clue. Okay. That's that like Kyrie. Sense to me yeah. Because he's talented, and they're just like, I don't know, keep giving. But, like, the, the nobody... Nobody really hates the guy. It's but last year with Houston, it was this team stinks. I don't want to yeah. be here anymore. I really do like the trade. I think it's great. This is our sign, so Choppy, why don't you throw it to the next show on this <sighs> fine oh. radio station? Coming up next on 105 through the fan, the KMC masterpiece featuring Corey Majors, Mike Bassett, and that loser, loser. Duke Blue oh Devil fan, loser <laughs> Kevin Haglin. Oh next. wow, so hurt. a part of the show. Text us on the truckwreck.com fan text line.
Fan Studio, secured by DFWSecurity.com. It's the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Have where, you changed your passwords lately? I mean, for the love of God, I cannot log into this computer. How often should you have to change your password in a company? Maybe like once a year at our company. You have to change your password about once every three weeks. And now they're like, well, your password has to be at least... 12 characters long because we've done a poor job oh, at cybersecurity. Yeah. Oh, that's right. And I'm right. like, why is that my fault that y'all can't control the cyber terrorists? Mm-hmm. But yet here we are. So I'll let you know. I'll probably never be able to log into this computer, but I've got that's my laptop. So we'll I tell fun. people I don't do our company email. <laughs> so like, did you get the email on whatever? Don't do this. And I'm like, no, I don't. Because if you send it to the company email, I quit. <laughs> I quit. You the, say you'll quit because I, no, the, I quit the company oh, email. Okay. I mean, I might quit. I'll get fired or quit at some point. Eight seven seven eight eight one one zero five three. What do you think would happen first? Mike quits or gets fired in the world? I don't want either of those to happen. I'm just saying. I'm just. I want to know like what the Tolos think. And Kevin, since it's definitely he's going to quit. Will he walk out and light a match on the way? Because that's how I see Mike doing it, is matches burning. Yeah, see, I think fired is logical just because he'll get to the point where he won't care. And he'll, like, (laughs) actively dare the company to fire it. He's like, you know what? What are you going to do about it? And, like, then he'll just end up getting fired. I gave you a plan before the show started that could get me fired. (laughs) You did. Yes. Yes, you did. And so, you know, it's really a matter of do I want to execute it or not in 2024. I think you should not. (laughs) I think I want to see it happen. I kind of do. I really like, I like his plan. <laughs> Please don't actively try Thanks, to execute. <laughs> All right. I'm a supporter. So, okay. So here's here's the latest. Here's what's happened. Uh-huh. Is almost every time I put in my password, it was like, no, that's wrong. And then finally, twice, I was like, ooh, maybe it's this one. And then it thinks forever. And then it was like... Now, yeah, that's still wrong. Twitter wants me to do that, too. There's something up with Twitter. Elon Musk has done something that I'm supposed to. And then they're like, put in your password so you can. And I'm like, I don't know my password for Twitter. I'll never Twitter again. Well, and if our IT department is listening now, the reference account is currently locked out and may not be logged on. Just, too, so. just email from your other email. I mean, yeah. Our guy. I, I need some help. Uh, and just say, hey, I, I need a little help with this. Yeah. Somebody will come by and help you momentarily. Or they'll send you a new password. Um, then everything will be fine. Hey, what was your old password? Yeah, that's a great it question. Doesn't matter. Well, if I knew my old password, I guess I probably would have been able to get in. Did Just, you try restarting the computer? Uh, that's yeah, a good it's question. not. I I am on the computer. Right, hold it's on. just said the password is wrong. Let's try this. Why first. should I restart? <laughs> Let's try this first. Are you gonna Kevin? do your IT thing? Point your finger in the air. That's not. Dude, no. Listen, dude. I worked in IT for uh-huh. six years, maybe. And she a follow. If you're listening, tell me your password. And I knew how to do. I know how to okay. do this. All, all right? right. Point your finger in the air. Swirl it around three times. All right. Now you got to bend over and push the button on the bottom that turns the computer on and off. Man. And whenever it restarts, it's not like a jerk. Everything's IT, gonna be just fine. Eight seven seven eight eight one one zero five three. What do you think Kevin's password was? And I know, yeah, no, my account's locked. All right, so <laughs> no one's dying. To, no one's uh, dying. Yeah, I'll no have dying. to work on that. Point. In the meantime, that's a good point. No one's dying. What's the big deal? <laughs> the Cowboys, they made another noteworthy trade. You know why I changed it to noteworthy from big? Is our, the fan account on Facebook put a big trade? There are so many complainy people on there. It's like, I don't think I'd call this a big trade. And they were like really upset about it. So. It's significant. I changed it to noteworthy. and Noteworthy and significant, kind of the same word? Uh, don't you feel like significant's better? Man, I never thought about the ranking of those two yeah. words before until today. I think I think significant goes above okay. noteworthy for sure. All right. I think it is definitely noteworthy. I okay. definitely do. All right. Is everyone stoked about it? Is That's what my initial thought. And then I saw a whole bunch of people on social media complaining. And then I saw the people push back that said some people just want to be miserable. Where do y'all fall on this trade? Because I dig it. I, I think this is a, a a good addition to what you have. Uh, you needed another playmaker. This dude has speed for days. He, does. he is an explosive receiver. He's only 29. A lot of us probably thought he was 38 based on how many teams he's played for. <laughs> uh, and mm-hmm. so like, being under 30, I think, is a, a deal for the Cowboys, too. 
the he he can make plays downfield, and I think that's what they're like. Okay, can we alternate a little bit of this? Can he replace some of what Michael Gallup does now, Mike? During the right before we got on air, you said, "What does this say about Michael Gallup and how the Cowboys feel about him?" And I thought that was a really intriguing question. I also think that they think he can do different things than Gallup can. I don't think that they think that they can put Michael Gallup in the slot and just say go. I think they think, Michael Gallup, you're on the outside. This is where we like you the most. We don't really want to do anything else with you. I think they can all. They feel like they can alternate CeeDee Lamb and they can alternate uh, Cooks now. And uh, this also it doesn't put as much pressure on Tolbert to have to be you know, the third receiver or whoever the next guy is. So it puts you there where you have a veteran that you trust in that position. See, okay, just real quick, Corey. You have not been going to the Cowboys PR school. I'm going to need you to rephrase some of the things that you said, okay? okay? Is you have a dangerous weapon in Brandon Cooks. You got that part right. Yes. But then you were like, oh, it'll take pressure off. No. Here's how the PR school goes. And then when Michael Gallup is another year removed from his injury and Jalen Tolbert continues to get better, <laughs> like we saw all last year. And don't forget about Dennis Houston. Yeah, then, my gosh, what a stacked core of wide receivers we have. What if for the next two years they talk about and Dennis Houston and we're like, we never see that dude line up. And then in year three, he Dorrance Armstrong. Yeah, that's what kind of, I could see that. <laughs> absolutely. But in all seriousness, like PR spin aside, I do like the move for another really low bit of compensation. The other thing I think that's why the Cowboys like this so much. I could see that. Is people are like, but DeAndre Hopkins. I think the Cowboys look at it and go, no, no, no. We're not giving up our first or second or third round pick for kind of trade value free agents type of deal, especially if they're 29, 30 year old wide receivers. So he looked at it and said, we're giving up picks that we know have a small likelihood of making our team. Yeah. And so if they only have a 20%, 33% chance of making the team, we took picks that we're not even sure we'll have guys that can make the team, and we got a for sure number two, number three wide receiver. And so I think that's why if you're like, I wanted DeAndre Hopkins, or I wanted this guy or that guy, I don't think the Cowboys are in the mode at all of trading their first, second, or third round pick. Man, I think Mike is dead on with that uh, that analysis right there. The, the idea, Kevin, of what happened with Amari, now aren't the Cowboys sitting here saying, hey, look at all the things we get for fifth round picks. And you thought Amari wasn't worth a fifth round pick? I understand, Kevin, where the value comes in. You want to get more out of your players. But they're they're like, no, we're resetting the market. Fifth round picks for veterans is the is the going rate. Man, the way the Cowboys do business is wild. So like there's a couple of things that we could throw out, like either or trade scenarios and see if it's any more palatable to you. Is essentially, and I know there was other compensation, but for the big part of the compensation, you traded Amari Cooper for Brandon Cooks. Yeah. Do you think people could live with that or they're still going to be upset? I think Because you did lose that year. I think that people will bring it up all the time. Okay. I think that, and, and nobody is ever going to accept that there was a bit of a grudge. Yeah. Like, w whether you like it or not, the somebody in the organization didn't like that Amari Cooper didn't get the jab. Yeah, and and, no, and right. missed some games you're right. uh, due to it. And, and then they said, you weren't a team player in this instance. It was selfish for you. So we moved on. And people will never accept that that was the reason or that it was a legitimate reason. I don't think it's legitimate either. Other than they saw him for a while and decided we're going to move on. We don't even care what the price is. Now, here's the part that people might like a little bit better is... You got fifth round comp picks, and, and again, I know it's not exact for exact, but you got fifth round comp, comp picks for Connor Williams and Randy Gregory. Yep. So think about that. If you traded Connor Williams and Randy Gregory for Stephon Gilmore and Brandon Cooks, wouldn't you be like, oh yes. my God, we're the best at footballing. Yeah, and then you continue to add your core essentially in the draft. And if you're hitting on the Micah Parsonses and the Trayvon Diggs, uh -huh. uh, if you're hitting like on it. those players throughout the year <laughs> or do. throughout your draft, and then you, you get lucky uh, in a couple third rounders hit really well. Now your second round, hey, look, man, nobody really knows what's happening there. <laughs> I guess you got to that why? That's why everybody wanted to trade for Stephon Gilmore. You you saw the <laughs> same message Hopkins. I have. Like, are, yeah, not Stephon Gilmore, hey, DeAndre look, they Hopkins. Can't they can't draft. Yeah, in second I round. saw the same text a million times. 
Well, you know our second round pick's gonna be garbage anyway, so might as well trade for DeAndre Hopkins. But the the like that's uh like that's one of the things is I think you know they're looking at it going we keep at, we keep keeping guys that we draft in the first round because we're good at this. Yeah. We'll keep doing that part of it, keep adding that, and we'll add the veterans this other way, and there's gonna be this good mix. I know if a guy falls in your laps at 26, he falls in your laps at the wide receiver yeah. position. But at this point, if you've invested, you're about to invest 25 plus million dollars into CD Lamb per year. Uh, that's yeah, coming I think up you're here right. very soon. Yeah. Now you've invested in Brandon Cooks. There is quite a bit of money there that the Cowboys are paying. It's not peanuts, right? How much is it? It's one year, twelve million. That's and something. You just got a yeah. discount. Yeah, like that. Like you got to love the discount part of Michael it. Michael Gallup restructured his contract. He's approximately thirteen million per year on a multi-year contract. So I'm guessing. I don't know this. But I'm pretty sure wide receivers almost off their board in the first round. I, I think you're probably Because I don't think he right. could play. Like, as in, okay, maybe he's your fourth wide receiver? Do you think they would try to make a trade at that point? Like, I'm not saying there's going to be... If somebody these, loved a wide receiver, yeah. somebody's falling. They'd... Like, let's just say Smith and Jigba, and they're like, oh my God, we have to have yeah. him. I don't know how. I fell at 26. Then I would wonder if the Cowboys would try yeah. to trade down. And maybe they take them and go, you're going to be our fourth wide receiver your rookie oh, year. Man. And then the next year, you're going to be possibly our number two because yeah. Brandon Cooks will be gone. Uh, Brandon Cooks is still under contract, but none of it's guaranteed in 24. So yeah. that's the good thing is you have the flexibility. If it works out, you can figure it out. Yeah. And if it doesn't, you can be like, see, and it, it hits not yeah. literally zero dollars. I'm just thinking, I don't know, but I'm just thinking now wide receiver. I'm not saying it's totally off yeah, the yeah. Board, yeah. But I think first round, I don't think the Cowboys are pretty much like, look, we can look other places. Now, the question that came up, Corey, and I see this is where I do believe you took the Cowboys PR okay. school is you said that Brandon Cooks has been traded so many times because he's so good. Now, I actually I have, guess I don't know. I actually have evidence to back you up on right. this. He is now tied for the most traded player in NFL history. Really? With? Yes. Hall of Famer Eric Dickerson. Oh, there you so, go. Only two, <laughs> I actually do think you might have a right. point right I only there. know Rams and Colts. Who else did Dickerson play for? All the teams. Once yeah. I'm allowed to log back onto my computer, oh. I'll, I'll oh, I, I got with. you, Mike. Uh, we'll, we'll look this up real quick just to just to confirm. Gee, he also listen to my email. He right. also played for the Raiders and the Atlantas. Do you know who that is? Yeah, Falcons. There you go. I, do, I do not remember him playing for either one of those That's teams. That's because he was 32 and 33 years old when he played for those teams, All respectively. Right. Wow. So Brandon Cooks is already three years ahead of the curve <laughs> yeah. for getting traded four times. So yeah. props to him for that. And I, I know that's the concern is because the Cowboys were looking to trade for him last year. It would have taken higher draft compensation and you would have been on the hook for more money during the trade deadline. So obviously yeah, these are better things. You got a $6 you million dollar coupon Absolutely, on you did. Kevin loves coupons. I do. And here's the other thing I love about this is I do not believe that you have any guaranteed money on the hook in 24 for Gilmore or Cooks because Gilmore is essentially a one-year 9.9 .9 million, I believe none of which is guaranteed right now. And then Cooks is one year 12.3 this year in terms of cap hit and then no guaranteed money after that. So this is an example of it feels I'm not saying you went all in, but it feels like you're going more in and it costs you little to nothing for the future. Like if you love the draft rock on, I get that. But I think giving away two of your three fifth round picks, not the end of the world. Yeah, the the all in conversation, you're all in because when you have Micah Parsons, right? Like yeah. they, you feel like you're pretty all in in that respect. And all right, how do we build? How do we make it better around these guys? How do we make, you know, Dak's offense better? Uh, when we didn't bring, you know, we don't have this option. We don't have the T.Y. Hilton, the Odell Beckham that we wanted to add to it last year. How do we bring it in and implement it into the system? Can Turpin be anything in the offense as well? Like that's a the question I think we all want to ask ourselves and try and figure out. So, man, I I think that the Cowboys said let's keep as much as we can of the core of this team, not have too much turnover, and roll forward with it. I wanted to add this, Kevin. I you know how I feel about the uh, about catch percentage. Yes. 
catch percentage for me is is a very important thing because I want to know when I throw the ball in the air, you're not going to Chris Chambers it. That I'm just oh, basically is going. Chris hey, Chambers it's always going to be the Mendoza line. Yes, fifty percent so. is kind of where Chris Chambers is. Last year, CD Lamb was sixty eight percent, sixty eight point six. Let's round that up. That's what sixty nine percent. Nice. And Michael Gallup was at 55% career. Oh, dear. He was at 52% last year. Oh. Uh, Cooks, in the last three years, 68, 67, 61%. And last year, he was playing with who at quarterback? Yeah. And, so and he didn't want to be there. Yeah. So he's a career 65, 65.5% uh, pass catcher. So more often than not, the ball goes up. He's coming down with it. That's something that you want on your team. And he tweeted this out after the trade, or this was his comment after the trade. Honestly, I just feel blessed for this opportunity to contribute to something that's already special. For the Jones family to believe in me, I look forward to joining something special, and I bring that mindset everywhere I go. By the way, it was split 50-50, Kevin, that Mike would uh, get fired and or Wow. Quit. So it was right down the middle. I want to add an option. Yeah. Stays employed here for 10 years. Like, what, <laughs> what do you think? Where do you think that percentage would fall? If you're on that team, I've I've already hit 10 years. Got 10 more years. So oh, 20 geez. years in radio. <laughs> Come on, at Mike. This station. I've been here for 10 years. You know how many championships have been won in Dallas over those 10 years? Zero. Yeah. We're the KC <laughs> Yeah. Coming up next, is your bracket destroyed? And if so, what was oh, the Baylor game won a championship that one really did, <laughs> did it? 877-881-1053. Plus more non sequiturs from Mike. We'll do it next right here on The Fan.
This segment on the KNC Masterpiece is brought to you by Window Nation, as well as Franklin Frankel. There's a reason you need a special license to drive a big truck. So companies that hire drivers and put them in one should be unaccountable for what happens when one hurts you. Frankly, you need Franklin Frankel. That consultation it is always free. Visit truckwreck.com. For the first time in school history, Princeton is going to the Sweet 16. Just the fourth 15 seed ever in the history of the tournament to advance to the round of 16. Princeton 78, Missouri 63. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105.3 The Fan. Did you? Is we all knew it. Is your bracket ruined? And if so, what was the game that really did it? By the way, The Fan is dominating our building's March Madness competition as Reggie and Gavin Spittle are tied for first place. That's interesting because I should be tied for first, Kevin. I have a perfect bracket in my hand okay. as we speak. First of all, obviously, I'm going to dispute that. Secondly, did you submit a bracket? Because I got a reminder when Purdy was like, hey, it closes in 40 minutes and we we're going to the hotel as a family together. And you couldn't. And I just was like, click, click, click. Oh, okay, I was going to say, you couldn't fill it out fast enough? Well, like, no, I did. But you're the expert on college basketball at this station. When, like, th listen, dude, Mike. I said had, as a former pro, I wasn't allowed to enter. I've had so. tech. That makes a lot of sense he because said that, of connections. Once the email said there was prizes, uh -huh. I was like, oh, yeah. Click, click, Just click, in click, case. Yeah, click, of click, course. Click, click. Yeah, I like that. I went, I went really <laughs> chalk. So if we get down to Alabama and Houston anyway, I'm going to be looking good. But you say you have a perfect bracket. Is that who you would have really chosen had yes. you not? You would have yes. you would have chosen those two. Okay, all right. Yeah, man. Uh, currently, Alabama versus uh, Estesu, uh, and then uh, Creighton <laughs> versus Princeton. What? <laughs> San Diego State is what we were looking for at that one. Flat what? Atlantic what uh, against uh, Flat Atlantic against Tennessee. He was just. It's Florida Atlantic. Are you just reading the abbreviations? Kansas Street versus Michigan Street. Um, State Houston, Auburn, Miami, Flo, uh, Indiana, Pittsburgh, Xavier, Penn Street, Texas, Kansas, Arkansas, St. Mary's, Yukon, TCU, Gonzaga, Northwestern, and UCLA. Th that's the teams that I got. Oh, hold on. That was the next round. But yeah, the next round, I got all those teams too. I don't know how I did this, but I'm on fire right now, bro. This is nice. A did perfect, the ESPN thing, is it down to zero? Percent? It is perfect down, bracket. Down to zero. Oh, I didn't fill mine out for That's that. That's just a printed bracket of what's going on. I don't know about that, man. Y'all, I took a picture and posted it on Twitter. Y'all can look at it when? and let me know. Just when? now. Handwriting checks out. Yeah, it's on Twitter. 877-881-1053. Well, the games are done. I even tagged you in the tweet. Uh, so, uh -huh. yeah, and it has the bracket in the picture, and mm -hmm. it, it is perfect. All the teams that are supposed to be in this round, mm -hmm. I picked. Or I have uh, selected Good in that job. round. Thank you, Mike. I'm proud of you. See, Mike believes in me, Kevin. You've always been like, you know what, Corey? You can't live your dream. You knew it. Because I watched Arkansas play, unfortunately, like four times this year because of Anthony Black. Yeah. Even though, like, he's, I don't know. There's kind of, I don't know. It's not his reason that Duncanville was out, but kind of, you know, yeah. type of deal. Because he went to Duncanville for a year from Coppell. Is you can just say that they cheated and they got caught for it multiple cheat. times. Other teams cheat too. But that doesn't mean it's not cheating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just have to do better cheating. If everybody's <laughs> cheating, if yeah. everybody's oh, cheating, is, is it not anybody cheating? cheating? Yeah. The UIL just doesn't like Duncanville. Wasn't that Lance Armstrong's excuse after he was busy burying everyone? He's like, oh, well, that lady does massages. You know what that means. Like, that's a real thing that he said. Is he goes, everybody does it. What's the big deal? Every time I watch Arkansas play basketball this year, which is about four times, and I did not stick with it from start to finish, I was unimpressed with Arkansas. And I still don't think that kid's Smith. I have no clue how that kid's a lottery pick. And maybe a very high lottery pick. But he's, I guess he's good at pro basketball, but really bad at college basketball. But I'm like, I'm not impressed with this team. And then they beat Kansas. So I'm like, when you watch a team and then you're like, they're not impressive. Yeah. And you watch Kansas. Now I did watch Kansas a little bit versus UT and they lost both those games that I watched. But I thought, oh, Kansas is going to be great, and they lose. So I don't know. I don't even know if watching college basketball gives you an idea of what's going to happen in the tournament. Man, there are times that I felt like that. It's only eight of my Sweet 16 teams made it in. The first round, we, we, we did super well, 26-6. and six. The second round, it came crumbling down. And you know why, Corey? Because I was too much of a coward to pick Gonzaga and UConn in my Elite Eight. I got scared. And I moved Kansas through to my final four. 
And I was a coward, and that came back to haunt me. Man, that's that that's is that's the tough one that really stings. Is because I was gonna pull the trigger on UConn beating Kansas, and instead I got scared. Where? What is? What is Adam Sonogo's future? Because uh, he's a big for UConn. That I was like, dude, he is just bullying this kid. And he looked like he just knew exa- all he wanted to do all day. Yeah. And I was like, is he actually good or is this where the- This is the thing. The tournament will make you start believing that players are good, that you're like, never, this guy has nothing. Well, and- but then he gets a great matchup and you're like, oh my God, I'll do that every day in the NBA. And that's why, like, if you look at Gonzaga, Drew Timmy keeps coming back and it's people, because people are like, yeah, I don't know how that's going to work out in pro basketball. And I'm like, well, yeah, but it's really fun to watch him now. And that's the thing that came up about this is Zach Ely with Purdue is he is gigantic, but I don't know what people think his. And it's so rare now to get a guy like Drew Timmy, who's good in college basketball yeah, yeah, yeah. his freshman year, but nobody wants him to play in the NBA. So yeah. he actually goes for all four years. Yeah. And so he's it's like, you back. know who he is. Yeah. I still don't know who any player is on UT. I even watched UT play against Kansas before like the tournament. I watched him play a little bit during this tournament. Uh, and I still can't name you one player on UT, but I know they're good at basketball overall as a team. That's right. Absolutely. They are. Was there, so for me, it was that, those, those games that really hurt me. And then the other one was Arizona losing. But with games like that, I feel like that probably hurt a lot of people because I had Arizona into the Elite Eight. And that one really stung. I know it's tough for you, Corey, because you're doing so well. Because I was well. believing in Princeton and Chris Young. That's really smart of you. Yeah. yeah. For Jason Garrett. And you know what? Princeton's really smart. Think about it. Do you yeah. not? Or do you no, not agree? You're yeah. right. No, you're right. Did you get into Princeton? No, I did not. You're not really smart. Okay, that is true. You know what they call Princeton? The Texas of the North. The Vanderbilt of the North. I don't know. I, I don't know because I've heard so Princeton. many. People Are they the tell Tigers? Me. Yes, they, that okay, is true. Because they're orange and black. Is <laughs> what other? I want you to ponder this for a minute. What other mascots or animals do you think that could be? Orange and black. It's really weird because Memphis is the Tigers, yet their tiger is gray and blue, and I've never seen a gray and blue tiger. I they need to, to change though. their colors. Yeah. What other animals are orange and black? Yeah, like a puffer fish or what is it? There's a clownfish? No, clownfish. Clown fish. Orange and white yeah. and black. Okay, so, so maybe. it could be yeah. clownfish. Yeah. And that would be way cooler. Like, everybody would remember if it was the Princeton clownfishes. There's a clownfish mascot fish. out there. I is, swear I've heard of it. So Darren Ravel pointed out the 10 most bet on teams to win the tournament. Are you well, sure he's telling the truth on this? That, you know what? That's a fair point. Like when he said pickleball had increased like 60 kajillion percent, people were like, well, that means every person in America would have to play pickleball. TCU had 20,000 yeah. tickets go unclaimed for the national championship game because nobody wanted to go to the game. Sometimes he has difficulties with facts. So take this for what you will is the top 10 teams that people voted on were or uh, bet on to win the tournament. Alabama, Kansas, out, Houston, Texas, UCLA, Duke, out, Purdue, out, Gonzaga, Arizona, out, and UConn. What about so, the losers bracket? Can they get back in through the I losers bracket? Need, it's just not like the state wrestling tournament where you can make your way back in there. Ask me if I have any of those teams in my final four. Okay, Corey, what is your final four then? We'll find out. What does that mean? Uh, you'll have to wait. We'll know. You're not going to tell next, me? Next uh, Monday, we'll know who yeah. is Final Four, who he picked Thank a you, week Rick. ago. Hey, see, Mike? I appreciate I it. Hold on. So I totally are you just, what Are you just going to tell me the teams that win and those are the teams that you picked? All right. So I have a new way to do college basketball. Uh-huh. Just like how it is somewhat, uh, I don't even know if it's the same way when it comes to select baseball, but I got picked up by the Dallas Mustangs after we lost to the Dallas Mustangs, and so then I played for them in like the regionals and then the Connie Mack World Series. I think when you beat Duke, when Tennessee beats Duke, Tennessee gets to pick up a Duke player for the next round, and he has to go to Tennessee (laughs) next year, Uh too. So like, if you lose, you actually, the team can pick. Now, you know, obviously, if you're... Farley Dickinson or whatever their name is, like Fairly, yeah. they get to pick up a player from Purdue <laughs> who has to play <laughs> for them in the Q, tournament, right? and then you that dude has to now not go to Purdue next year and play for Farley <laughs> Dickinson. 
are fairly Dickinson. Fairly. But I think that that should, because there's all this transfer portal, like they mm-hmm. should make it where if you win, you get a free pickup for the next round. And then that guy, hey, too bad, you lost. Mm-hmm. Now you don't have to pick up anybody if you played Texans, Southern, A&M, Corpus Christi. Well, look, what do the schools get if they win the championship? Get a hefty pat on the back. They don't get any, like, well, do they get money the for Coach it? usually gets a big bonus. Yeah, I... I don't think so. Wow. I believe I'm sure like if you're a Nike school oh, or you're an Under Armour school. Yeah, they'll like, figure they, it out. They they are very excited because your logo got to go longer in the tournament. Now, well, that's bad. <laughs> that's bad news for Purdue, Virginia, and Arizona in terms of losing players. If we go down the mic track of what yeah. we're going to do is Arizona has lost to a double-digit double, double digit seed in four of its last five NCAA tournaments. Virginia has lost to a double-digit seed in three of its last four. Those fart NCAA knockers won. Tournament. The one year that they decided to win, <laughs> they, did, they got I, a three-pointer in the corner. DeAndre Hunter, you fart knocker. <laughs> knock like out it could Texas have been Tech. Texas Tech. I know. I know. Champions. And then Purdue has lost to a double-digit seed three straight NCAA tournaments. But this is a notable one. Because since the tournament expanded in 1985, there's there had only been three years in which multiple number one seeds didn't make it to the Sweet 16. It was 2000, 2004, and 2018. And now you can add 2023 to the mix where obviously Purdue and Kansas don't make it. So this tournament's already been crazy. I'm proud of you for doing so well. I can't Corey. wait. Yeah, I can't wait for the next uh, the next round. Do you want to give us any tips? When I will reveal... Hints? Uh, the the hold on. The are you revealing your I think, winners? Yeah, I after? think he has a Big Twelve team in the Final Four. I just have a feeling. I don't know if it's K State or UT, and we'll find out on Monday. I like the way that Mike's thinking. <laughs> By the way, a state will make the make the Final Four, right? <laughs> and Corey, I'm just guessing you have a state team, yeah, or street. You're there's, calling them streets, street but I think team. there's a street state somebody, that will make the Final Four. They texted in and said, "Corey, are you sure it isn't Street Mary?" That was like, well, oh my I spelled it out St. Mary, so that's why. And Sudasu is what you're saying for <laughs> should San Diego be Penn State? Saint. Penn Saint. Penn Saint. Yeah. It By used the way, to thanks be. a lot, They A&M. had to change that. I'm mad about that, too. We got to How mad are you by really, Penn though? State. My son was making so many excuses for A&M. Man, they screwed him over. If they would have been like a four or five seed like they should have been, okay. they would have made the next round. I'm like... You know, they just got beat by a 10 seed by 20 points. Yeah. So I'm not 100% sure this would have gone well if they would have ranked them a little bit higher. I think that all the time about college bowl games. Because I know, like, and the joke is, did the SCC win the bowl game? Then they cared. And if they didn't, then they're like, oh, we didn't care. I think that all the time. And they're like, oh, Alabama got screwed by not being in the playoff. And you're like, well, you know what? You lost the Peach Bowl, so shut up. Is that's the same way I felt about AM. I also think we got jobbed on the seed line. It should have been a five. But guess what? When you lose to a 10 seed by 20 points, you don't really have a good argument now, do you? I still don't know what the schools or the kids get for winning the national championship. They get nothing. They get a ring. Yeah, they okay, you're right. And they pay for Jostens or Balfour or whatever when they come to your school and they're like, which one of these rings but designs? Like do you I feel want? like now, Mike, shouldn't shouldn't people start going, all right, this NIL money, this is gonna start rolling in and incentives. No, 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 to do that that's the weird pretend thing that yeah but we've the done. nil can sit there they can sit there and sit as a booster yeah uh, and they can yeah. go hey look if y'all win y'all can win this amount yeah, of money i'll give you a, every I, round you go that's what i would do i'd be like i got a prize pool of two million dollars if you that's win the championship alabama to become a basketball school they take all the <laughs> nil money they've been given all the football kids say you guys lost we're now nil in the basketball team we're the KNC masterpiece. Don't turn NIL into a verb. That feels weird. In the nine four oh, the conferences get the money when the title when they win the title. Yeah. Not the not the team directly. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that nice for them? It's the same thing. Like the Big Ten got two schools into the college football playoff. And you know Northwestern is fist pumping. And there's so some like, yes. There's some guy that runs the conference that's like, oh, my bonus this year is gonna be amazing. It really is. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next, it's time for Baseball Nuggets with Mike Bassett. I can't wait to hear when we come back from break. Trey Turner hitting a grand salami against Venezuela. And we're going to give away Rangers opening weekend tickets.
Coming up in the next G-Bag Nation.
This segment on the KNC Masterpiece is brought to you by Classic Chevrolet. Don't miss the Grand Champ Truck Month at Classic Chevrolet and Grapevine. 63 acres of discounts, more than just Silverados. They got Equinox, Tahoe, Traverse, Malibu, all of your favorite Chevys. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Relax and enjoy the difference. Find new roads. The 0-2 to Turner, and he throws this one. Deep left field. Trey Turner. Grand slam home run on an 0-2 pitch. Seven and with that, it's time for Baseball Nuggets with Mike Bassick as the United States is in the championship. Democracy beats the, 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 the wait, demo, we're democracy. What is Cuba doing right now? Uh, Cuba and Venezuela, they're dictatorships. You we did have it. beaten dictatorships again. Take that. No, that was, it was really fun Saturday. Is that to the Cuban people who are listening right now? I to take know. that? Yeah, they're not listening. They're okay. not allowed to. <laughs> Um, same with, in, if you're in Venezuela, if you're Venezuelan, like if you've moved here from Venezuela, congratulations. And they got out of Venezuela for a major reason, but Cuba has an ath authoritarian regime where political opposition is not permitted censorship of information, including limits to internet access. So they can't even listen. My, uh, yeah, they can't even on listen right on there. the Odyssey app. Yeah. Because if they signed in, everybody hmm. else can. You don't, have to, you don't have to just be in Cuba to go through that plight. Okay. So. I hear you. <laughs> Is that not okay? Here's the thing about the first game on Saturday, because yesterday wasn't much of a game. There's not much to talk about. Just the United States yeah. dominated Cuba. There was a moment. I'll, I'll start here. There was a moment, Corey, in the first inning where it was an oh-no moment as Adam Wainwright wasn't throwing strikes and forgot how to catch a baseball. Yeah, he, he <laughs> uh, he's going to – he said it with uh, Rosenthal at, after the game. It. You have that one? Uh, immediately after the game, yeah, he said with Rosenthal pen. that he had to work on this. Luckily, I got a good curveball. You know, I, I could spin the ball well tonight, Ken, but, um, you know, other, everything else is coming along. We are, we're, in sp we're still in spring training mode a little bit, but also playing for our country, playing for our team right now, playing for – playing baseball we're not playing for money we're playing because we love this game we love this country it's a great feeling man i'm so proud to be out here and and that was a great win for us he said pfps on the beach is what i need to work on tomorrow and i was like man just feel them in this position but there was a moment where the bases were loaded Nobody they had out. a guy who's hit 458 career home runs and many five different foot leagues. seven 360 pounds no he was <laughs> oh my god it's, he might he be was, right no no he was five seven i think it was like five seven 250 or something like that and and it's then you i don't know if you saw derosa he winks at pettit and says no you go talk to him and pettit said i didn't know if i needed to go out there because we both experienced this moment so many times in our careers that like a, a thousand games between the two pitchers he's like he knows what he's doing but he they he went out there and said look we don't have any other pitchers calm down in this moment gave him a few pieces of advice and then Wayne Wright's able to get out of a bases loaded inning with no outs with only giving up one run. That's awesome. Yeah, Arenado makes a not a not a spectacular play, but a ground ball throws a perfect strike to Will Smith to get the out at home. Then he gets a pop up to second, which it was infield fly rule, but there was a little bit of miscommunication. Tim Anderson took his eyes off the ball thinking, well, Goldschmidt's going to catch it. And Goldschmidt's like, you take it. <laughs> You're the second baseman. Yeah. Pop up priority, dude. And luckily he found the ball again and caught it. And then you got the ground ball to short to end the inning where only one run was scored so a lot of momentum was lost by Cuba having the bases loaded with nobody out and they got the walk they actually got the walk so yeah. bases loaded nobody out they already have a run in and weren't able to come up with another run are you saying throw home in that situation just to get so, it out and stop a run I think John Smoltz I think is great at broadcasting a game and I forget who hit the ground ball but he said Cuba has a lot of speed and if you don't think you can turn a double play on that the other thing too is you are in a do or die game so just to get that out at home if you're not sure you can turn a double play to get the out at home there was huge so now it stays hey now there's one out bases loaded and 
Adam Wainwright, really, I'll tell you what, I don't know what his stuff's going to look like this year in the major leagues, but it does. It did not look good last night. I get that he got out of it, but he wasn't throwing very hard. His curveball, yes, he does have a good 12 to 6 curveball, especially against, you know, for the most part, Cuba's a triple A team. Yes, they do have a few major league guys on there uh, in Mancata and Luis Robert, but for the most part, he's facing minor league guys and I just watching Wainwright and he got out of it ended up having a good game in four innings but watching his stuff last night I'm like that doesn't look like Adam it looks like he's fallen off a cliff to me honestly did that concern you at all about I know it's a different scenario but about Martin Perez who got knocked around straight away to start that game not really because of this we have the lineup of death yes and it took 16 pitches Okay. So it wasn't like Adam Wainwright couldn't really find the zone. Martin Perez was finding the zone, but they were also finding bats. And I totally, like, in that game, you have Martin Perez starting for Venezuela, Team USA. And this goes into, like, I root for Slovenia. I don't care about the United States basketball team. Like, if it's, if Luca's on the other team, I'm rooting for Slovenia. And there oh. might have been, I don't know this, there could have been just diehard Texas Ranger fans going, there's no Texas Rangers on the United States team. I'm rooting for Martin Perez to have a good game. Oh. And 16 pitches in, he was taken out of that game uh, because they were just hitting him. I mean, there is just, is one of those things, is one of those days. And Martin Perez can have those days. Yeah. But the good thing is, it wasn't like he was throwing balls. Okay. It was just that he okay. wasn't throwing quality strikes. Yeah, I hear you. And so it, it happened in a hurry. He gives up five hits. Uh, to his six batters faced. But Daniel Bard, uh, he was horrible. I mean, and, and I know that Derek Holland texts me, and I wonder about this too. Luckily, the United States won, but he was so bad. And remember, he got the yips so bad in his career, he had to quit. So Daniel Bard's career is injury, yips, I quit. Yeah. He's part of, I believe, the Rockies front office or something. I can't remember what job he took, but he's done. And he's like, you know what? I think I can mentally come back. And so he mentally comes back and has been a very good reliever for a few years now. And I wonder if you've had the yips before and they kind of come back, what happens the next time you take them out? I don't think there's any chance in hell that Mark DeRosa puts him in tomorrow night versus Japan or Mexico with the way he pitched. The other thing which he did, which, hey, it's up to you to like or dislike as a Ranger fan, he took Jose Altuve out until June. Because Jose Altuve yeah. hits him with a 90-something mile-an-hour fastball, breaks his thumb, and he's out at least two months. So you're looking at Jose Altuve probably coming back in June for the Houston Astros. And we were having that conversation off-air before the show about how injuries can happen at any point, and injuries definitely happen at spring training, and people are... Yeah. Some people are like using this as an example of why yeah. you shouldn't do I mean, Willie Calhoun's class. career is kind of ended the day he got hit in the face by Julio Urias that yeah. was in a spring training game uh it, it was it's a competitive environment unfortunately guys might not have the best command in March as they're working on their stuff to get good command so that they have better command when the season starts uh but in this game as you heard the highlight it ends up being uh, Venezuela is up seven to five going into the eighth inning. And it's just not looking good. If you look at Venezuela's relievers, you're like, dude, they're just going to bring in the Philadelphia dude. I'm sorry, I'm forgetting his name. The lefty who just throws flame and this thing's going to be over. Instead, in the eighth inning, they're like, look, we're going to save them for one inning. The other thing, too, is if you're on Venezuela and you're the manager, you have to watch when you have a Philadelphia Philly closer guy that's this good. Philadelphia Phillies can dictate how much he pitches because if you do them wrong, then they're like, then he's off the team and we're never sending enough. If, if there's a Venezuelan oh. in Philadelphia's organization and you pitch him wrong and you pitch him uh, a way that we told you not to, we're never sending another player that's Venezuelan to the world baseball classic again. So I don't know how restricted they were in using him, but they used a triple a guy in the eighth inning, and that's where the bases got loaded, and Trey Turner got a hanging breaking ball on an 0-2 count, and that was just so exciting. He added what is it, two more in the next game? Yeah, when against Cuba. He's just so the the and you my, get to see him opening day here. Yeah, are we giving tickets away yet? Uh, I mean, this is your segment. So let's give them away right now. Since you just said Trey Turner, and he's on the Phillies, and they're playing the Phillies the first series, do your giveaway thing. Let's get something away! 877-881-1053. Caller number 10 Currently. will win a four-pack 
of tickets to go see the Rangers play the Phillies on Saturday, April 1st. All right. So we'll be doing this giveaway all week long. You get a four pack of tickets and the Rangers replica cap giveaway presented by Comerica Bank. 877-881-1053 all week long in baseball nuggets. Are you April fooling them? I am not April fooling okay. you. And don't you only do that on April Fool's? I don't not... know. If you say April 1st, you could be April fooling this them on March 20th. This is a real giveaway. Oh, man. Okay. That would be so mean if Joey picked up every line and he was like, hey, you won April Fool's. And he then should. Hung up and then on got the 10th one, you in. say, not April Fool's. You're going on April Fool's. In your face. Yeah. That's, <laughs> and weird. then when they're sad, just yeah. My wife really Nobody's doesn't done. like when I say that. She says, please stop saying that because now the kids say that all the time for no reason. And please don't say that you're getting screwed over by the contest to win a free thing. It is interesting how many messages we get about, like, I was caller eight. I got screwed, and I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. I never, growing up as a yeah, kid. there's nine people right now that are losing on the line. I never a lot won more when I would call in. Yeah. And I would call in. It was 105.3 was Young Country back then. Awesome. And I would call in all the time, and I never won. I was this like, was a country why? station. Yeah. yeah, and it was Stewie Dokes, top eight at eight back in the day. I always wonder, why not me? And uh, I guess because I just didn't, it's just luck, man. You just luckily get through. So, By the way. Good luck. The emotion in these games is pretty incredible. It's awesome. And, and then you see my favorite Trout's part. like, yeah. It's if you played this game like football, that's the thing is like if, and I get people probably are watching more of the tournament than the World Baseball Classic. It kind of stunk that last night it was on Fox Sports 1. I'm like, come on, Fox, it's pick insane. up your game, dude. Like the first, the game against Venezuela was on Fox, but it just like, so this is what baseball can be like. The problem is, is you'd have to play 20 games a year. And I don't think most people <laughs> would want that, but you can have the same emotional feeling as football in any sport. You just have to limit it to 15 to 20 games a year. We're the KNC masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next, heading into Memphis. Are the breaks finally going the Mavs way? 877-881-1053. Walking in Memphis. Next on The Fan. We have you.
Command Studio, secured by DFWSecurity.com. It's the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. KNC Masterpiece. Pretty little thing, waiting for the king. <laughs> Down in the jungle room, <laughs> when I was walking, walking in Memphis. Memphis. I was walking with my feet 10 feet off of Beal. What does that even mean? And are we sure he just said the right he thing? He said feet and feet off a of Beal. I okay. Knew, what does so, that mean? No, because sometimes Mike just says words to songs that right? are not. Taking well, lots of drugs and lots of pills. <laughs> you know, is that how it goes? I don't think it is. I'm going to look at But heading into Memphis, are the brakes finally going the Mavs way? And what I know Mike wants me to say, <laughs> and is if they don't. No well, it's not dying. like anybody died or anything like that. Is that going to be your thought every time Jason Kidd oh, speaks? Oh, Beale Street. Okay, yeah, Beale so Street, Beale yeah. Street. Gotcha. Yeah. Like My feet Beale. 10 feet off of Beale. So he's like, he's not even walking. He's just kind of floating through Memphis. This is great. Back to you, Kevin. Sorry. And don't forget, if you didn't win our Texas Rangers giveaway, we'll be doing that and baseball nuggets all. Just text in and complain to long. Kevin about it. Look, I hope that you do win somebody asked how do i win i don't i've oh, never God. won a contest from here so. like you know the mavs won in la buzzer beater yeah do you want to play that audio instead sure all right let's go back to friday and then we'll talk about tonight and how john ja moran's still not gonna play walking this is cut number three i swear if this is walking in memphis again i might flip out <laughs> cut number Lakers three find kyrie irving with the basketball with three with two irving they're gonna get a shot away All right. I love LA. Oh my God. You can he love suck it, it LA. We, I'll Hate tell LA. you this. I was nervous for that shot right now because what I thought was going to happen is I really thought he was going to be like, the Mavs got a, a shot up. And then before it went in, he was going to be like, Walking in Memphis. That was, that was, and then I yeah. might have flipped out and smashed my keyboard or something like that. Yeah, so I, I get it because I would have laughed really hard if he'd have done that, Joey. I would really would have. But. I was afraid that that shot, A, wasn't getting off. Uh, B, it was getting stolen. Uh, it looked like it was almost swiped away before it even got to. And we to... tried our seventh inbounds play, but <laughs> Theo Penson checking in. So it, sh it does show, Jason Kidd's like, I screwed up. It wasn't Maxi Kleba's fault. I should have never put Maxi Kleba in a position to inbounds the ball to try yeah. to win the game. I got to put in somebody who's passed the ball in their life in the NBA. And he looked down at his team and he goes, all right, I can't put Kyrie in to pass the ball because I need the ball to get to Kyrie. And they had to call timeout because they couldn't get the ball in bounds. And like, all right, Kyrie, can you just run in circles as fast as you can and at some point get open? And he did. And luckily he got the ball and Theo Penson inbounds the ball. And then we hear Maxi Kleba hit the shot. It was just awesome. like we always knew it. Just, yeah, you definitely <laughs> thought that was going to happen. So the Mavericks have won two in a row. And tonight against Memphis, maybe Luka, as he got upgraded to questionable and no Ja Morant. Now, Ja Morant, and this is why I was asking if things are starting to go the Mavs way, like in a smaller sense, you are still in the top six and Luka is on the verge of coming back. Like whether or not he plays tonight, I think we'll hopefully find that out during the show. But Ja Morant could have played tonight and Memphis is like, no, we're going to take one more game to check the medicals and everything like that. So... Do you feel like some things are starting to... What's wrong with Jaws Medicals? They're just mental, right? I think they were like, because you haven't played okay. in a minute. We kind of want to run you through the paces and make sure everything is okay. And so he's not going to play tonight. Do you feel like maybe some things are starting to move in the Mavs direction? <sighs> I wish I could say yes, but I just don't trust this team. They can't play defense. And they can't really rebound the ball well. I know Lucas is in yeah. a weird way. Lucas is going to help the most when he comes back with the rebounding situation. Uh, but I just, if I look at the next two games, yes, tonight at Memphis. I don't know the spread. I haven't looked at it. I'm assuming what, Memphis is favored. What, what do you think? by how much? Memphis by three and a half would be three my guess. Okay. And then you play at home against Golden State. Now, Golden State is miserable on the road. They, they're terrible on the road. But I feel like that game is like a pick em game. And then you get a couple of easy ones against Charlotte, but I just, I look at the schedule and I go, I don't know. I don't, there's besides like Charlotte and San Antonio who are left on the schedule, which I feel like those are three easy wins. I, 
I just want to say now, like before we get too close to it, we you're gonna win that Golden State game. Okay. They're seven and twenty nine on the road, and I believe they've lost like twelve straight road games or something preposterous. So yeah. we better win that game. So I just look at tonight and go, I don't know. I, I guess the Mavs can win, but I don't feel I just don't feel good about okay. this team. And okay. it's nothing against Kyrie. Like Kyrie played great uh against the Lakers. Uh it's just that this team there just doesn't seem to be the gel or the chemistry that needs to happen to really go on a run. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope Luka comes back tonight. I hope Kyrie plays the rest of the games, and so does Luka. And we see this team gel and chemistry and all these things. I just don't – I can't believe it until I guess I see it. Okay, Will, is that point conceivable? Because I'm going to throw out a scenario to you that I think is reasonable. Are they done sleepwalking is my question. I mean, you. you would think that you would have to be, but I guess we've – find ourselves back here so often is let's say they win their next four. So that would put the winning streak up to six. And honestly, this is the pivot game to me is you play back to back. Like you mentioned against Charlotte. I think you should win those golden state is abysmal on the road. I think you should win that. So if you win this game and they don't just win, they look like you're seeing the progress that you want defense and rebounding. I don't know what to tell you. I, I hope that progress comes along, but they just, they win. They're winning these games by 8, 10, 12, whatever the case is. And then they have a six-game winning streak, which, by the way, if you have a six-game winning streak, that could very well propel you up to fourth or fifth. Is that something that would change your mind, or do you think there's anything in the regular season that would really change your mind going into the playoffs? I guess, Corey, if they do exactly what Kevin's saying, they win these games and win them, win them handily where they're beating Charlotte by double digits. They go to Memphis tonight and they win. Let's just say, I don't care if it's by two points or yeah. 10 points. Like they win at the Memphis. Dog, yeah. They beat Golden State at home, which like you said, Golden State seems to be very beatable when they're on the road. That would make me feel better going into the last six to seven games of the season. I would go, wow, this is something we haven't seen in a long time. In fact, we haven't seen it all from a Kyrie uh, Luca Dallas Maverick team. They've barely played together yeah. as a duo, so we really don't know what we're going to see. So if all that happens, I'll say, man, this looks better than I could have ever imagined. Memphis is actually the team I decided I want in the playoffs. Uh, oh, to match up yeah, with? I kind of want you to finish at like six. Uh, okay. Six puts you against Memphis, like in that. It does it right now. Right it's, now, you know, but Sacramento, right now, they're tied record wise, right? Yeah, Don't they yeah. Have the same and record. Denver is they're in cool. Sacramento at home. They're pretty good. Uh, oh, Memphis yeah. at home is not, and, or uh, at, on the road, yeah, is Memphis not. Memphis at home is Sa not. Sacramento on the road. Actually, I, I think they're they're, very good. they're pretty good there too. So, like, I I don't know why I just decided. You know what? That's the one where Dylan Brooks has talked enough trash that it'll motivate Luca to be ticked off. And that's the one where I, I marked as, all right, I, I think Luca will try to destroy them if they do in the first round. Now, the question is, do do the, does that team go any further? And I still think, Mike, they have the same deficiencies they've had all season. That's not changed in that they're still a bad rebounding team and they're bad defensively. And I don't know how that changes that much. I think Luca and Kyrie can win you a series. But I think when doing the rest of it, it's going to take so much dirty work from so many other guys that have limited skills, and we still have to get to that point. Did you see in the post game the kind of unprompted thing that Kyrie said about having the grown up meeting? Is he said we had some real conversations, grown up conversations, mature conversations. We needed to get some things out. Now I'm assuming this okay. is the first like big Kyrie post move meeting just because obviously he hasn't been there a whole lot and I know we've had conversations about how many of these meetings you can really have in a season well when you add a new element to the team I assume you need to yeah exactly so with that combination of things again I know I'm projecting because I'm looking for something positive because this Maverick season has been really frustrating is if you start to roll right after Kyrie said, hey, we had the big boy meeting. We had to get some things out on the table and figure it out. Does that combination encourage you as well? Or is it just the winning? You're like, that's no, fine. It encourages me because at this point, I 
I, I'm still 50-50 if I want Kyrie long term just because I'm nervous okay. about his history. And I get Landon Thomas, if I have his name right, who I follow on Twitter. I think he just did an article on like, hey, Kyrie's been misunderstood his whole career. He's actually a great teammate, this and that. I'd be like, don't interview Jason Tatum and, and Jalen Brown about that because <laughs> yeah. I think they'd have a lot of different words yeah. to say uh, about playing with Kyrie Irving in that situation in Boston. But I asked my buddy who was right about the Jalen Brunson thing. Uh, who he he's like, dude, Jalen's not going to be on the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah. That was right after the Dinwiddie trade. That's why they got Dinwiddie, because they knew they were losing Jalen Brunson. And I was like, dude, they're not going to. I was like, you're wrong, man. And so I had to ask him over the, you guys were talking about it on Friday on The Athletic. I believe that they said, look, he's, the Lakers aren't interested in Kyrie. Yeah. So I asked him. I found it to be pretty surprising. I said, hey, uh, so the Lakers don't want Kyrie. He said, uh, right now, no. They like their role players. Like, they kind of like what they're seeing. So I said, that means he's going to sign with the Mavs in the offseason? He said, nope. And I said, dude, like, but he, if he's not going to L.A., why wouldn't he come to the Dallas Mavericks? And he said, there might not be the chemistry that we would love between Kyrie and Luca that we're hoping for. Now, things can change. LA can change their minds. He told me LA can still change their minds. It's not an absolute that the Lakers and Kyrie aren't going to have a marriage at the end of this year. And it's not an absolute that Kyrie's not going to sign with the Dallas yeah. Mavericks. But I was thinking, all right, well, this means like Kyrie's kind of limited in his options and he's going to be a Maverick on a three or four year contract. He's like, don't, don't think that that's the case just because we're hearing, you know, kind of stuff out of L.A. that he's not going to be a Laker right now. And I think that's another reason outside of just I'm a fan of the Mavericks. Yeah. That I and believe me, this isn't my opinion. If people are like, Mike, you're wrong. I'm like, dude, I'm just getting information yeah. from a dude who is connected in the league. And that's why I would love to see them start winning and start to see that cohesion where, you know, it's been five seconds that he's been working with Luca, right. like in the grand scheme of things. And so hopefully they find their rhythm and you're like, you know what? We do get to keep these two elite players that know how to play elitely together. Like, I think that's the dream when they made the deal. And so when I hear these behind the scenes things, I don't like them. Just like I didn't like your friend when he said Jalen Brunson is leaving. And I was like, well, you know, your friend is dumb. Yeah. Even also, Joe, like, yeah. They're not going to let him leave. They're going to just max him out. If they have to max him out, they're going to max him out. And he's like, well, guess what? Mark Cuban doesn't want to max him out or get anywhere close to the max, and that's why that they know that they had to pick up Dinwiddie in a trade to have another ball handler. And somebody texted in and said, did you see Luca quote-unquote run after the celebration on Friday? It didn't they, look good. Yeah, exactly. And so I, I hear what you're saying on that. I will just tell you, yesterday it seemed like a step in the right direction because Luca got upgraded from doubtful yeah. to questionable. And so he's been out for since March 11th. And we've talked about this off the air. He fakes so many things. He looks like he's dying after every play that doesn't yeah. go his way. And then the ball gets back in his hands and immediately he's cured. And there's a lot of players that are like that in the NBA. Somehow the ball has healing powers. And then when the ball's not in their hands, they're once again hurt and they don't yeah. want to play basketball until the ball gets back in their hands. I know a bunch of nine-year-olds that are just like that. Yeah, and so <laughs> that's the tough thing about Luka. I do believe Luka's really hurt. I think he wants to play. But at the same time, it's really tough to ever know if Luca's really hurt or not because he pretends he's hurt all the time. And so it's like the boy who cried wolf. Well, if you pretend you're hurt all the time and you're not really hurt, then yeah. when you're really hurt, we don't know how hurt you really are. No, I'm uh, absolutely with you now. You say they win tonight, yay or nay? Nay. Two and a half Luca point played dogs. or no? I, I say there's a 51% chance he plays. Yay. Okay. You give me the 1%. That's all I need. So that was, if he, even if he doesn't play, I think they get tonight too. Okay. I think uh, until I think when Jav comes back, then Luca finally comes back, and Luca is just going to shred him. He's going to be like, I'm I'm going to show you guys. And Kyrie, I really do think he he has a grudge against that team. Kyrie said his foot is still bothering him, so maybe Luca would come back and Kyrie would play. Yeah, and they'll play. just alternate it like that, and oh, each one of them will just finish out the season and never play night. together. I like it. No, I do not like it's that. It's not a bad all. idea. Look how many titles Brooklyn won by never playing regular season games together yeah. and trying in the playoffs. Which Brooklyn? They zero. They won zero. Yeah, don't but they that. made it to the NBA Finals. No. Zero. You don't know that. Yeah. I do know that. I remember in the conference finals, they just got unlucky. Yeah, that's always the way. We're the KNC masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next, 
Let's do some spring training showcase. There is no platoon. The Rangers have a left fielder. How will he work? Full time. 877-881-1053. We'll do it next right here on The Fan. All right, Tolos, let's talk about...
This segment on the KNC Masterpiece is brought to you by State of the Art Weight Loss. The 3-1 is hit high into the air, deep into left center. Martin goes back. He's turning to look, and it is gone. Just over the wall in the gap in left center, an opposite field home run for Robbie Grossman. It's his second of the spring, and he gives Texas a 5-2 lead. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105 Through the Fan. I want to talk about the Texas Rangers and Robbie Grossman in just one second, but... Have you seen the news, because I don't think we got the chance to talk about it, that logistics might be the reason that the DFW Metroplex gets the World Cup final? Um, Yeah, I mean, logistically, we have the airport, the international airport. No, uh, We also that. have dart rail. Not that. Um, We also have, uh, oh, remember the mayor of Arlington told us a while back there were going to be flying shuttles. That's true. Not that. Um, Restaurants. Nope. Rally House. Nope. Whataburger. G bags at Rally House, though. That's right. They <laughs> are off of Preston and Forest today. They'll be giving away not one, not two, but three Texas Rangers jerseys. Nice. And then tonight on the Get Right, Clarence Hill. Chill. It's nice. Out at seven twenty. Man, no, I I don't know this other than the DF Dallas is the best, the number one ranked like uh, sports city in the world for business. Yeah, I don't know what the logistics are, Kevin. Tell me. The field at SoFi is, there's not enough space for the soccer field. Oh, yeah, it's pretty tight. So, per the Times in England, wow. which I always read, I don't know. You've never read the Times. It's the London Times? You just said the Times. Now you're changing the it. the Times. Yeah, I think it is just the Times. Is... Like Michael Jackson. Do you remember the time? The That's, time. The independent. Magic Johnson in the video. Is they would need SoFi Field, which is thought to have been the favorite. Like, I thought all along it was going to be AT&T and MetLife get the semis and then <laughs> relax. Get it together, Corey. It's Monday morning. Nobody can sakes. see what, I, what face I was making when you said semis. And SoFi would get the finals. But here's the deal is the field would need to be widened by as much as 63 feet. And that means they would have to remove seats from the lower level. And then that would thus fall below the threshold that FIFA expects for a World Cup final. And so, so if I seat 70,000 with standing room, you can get at least 80,000. Well, if you have to take some of these seats away, mm -hmm. then you would have less than 80,000. Like, it's not a guaranteed it has to be this rule, but now... Some people are thinking that would that mean that MetLife in New York would get the final or would it mean AT&T, which has shown that they can put 100,000 people into that building and they could fit a soccer field onto that field would then get the World Cup final. So I think AT&T is going to get at least a semifinal and now this might put them in position to have the biggest sporting event in the world. At their building. No. It's not Morris Day in the Times. <laughs> no to the 214. It's not Morris Day in the Times. That is not a publication that I'm aware of. <laughs> I was going to say, what if it is? Do you know I all the publications? I would probably read at least one issue of Morris Day in the Times. I would read both of them. Um, this is really kind of cool. But, and the other thing, too, for MetLife, Mike, you were around the stadium. i never seen it. Y'all weren't around it? Okay. Doesn't it feel like New York's just so jam packed? It's in New Jersey, right? Isn't it? Yes, yeah. technically yeah. it is in New Jersey. I do. I do wonder not close if close to wherever Shea. Well, Shea Stadium's in Queens, Flushing, so it's not close to that. I wonder if the space or the space that you have here also allows for more, and and just like more creativity with the things that you can do around the city, and if their pitch could be better because of that. And Kevin, you don't have to worry about ice, you know, during that time. Like that could be great. You would think, but if if there's any city or area in America in which you would get a weird ice storm in the middle of summer, I think it's here because you'd just be like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, I see that, man. I I like this. I I really am looking forward to whatever is hosted here. But if that's the the reason that we could get it. I'm totally in. So we can cross out L.A. Well, now. look, and it makes sense because SoFi has been weird already. The whole reason people are like, Tom Brady is the first team to get there at his home field with a Super Bowl is because it rained too much in Los Angeles and they couldn't complete Brady construction Brady. on SoFi Stadium in time. Turned into an 80-year-old woman. So that, hey, 80 for Brady. 
So there's your connection. All right. Now on the Rangers front, Robbie Grossman is your left fielder. Bruce Bochy said, that's the plan right now. He's playing great. No platoon. That's true. Robbie Grossman's the guy. But then he also said, I know what the splits say. We'll get into that in Josh just Josh Smith starting in center field this year, or this today, I believe. Okay. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. I'm, I'm assuming this. If they're not comfortable with Bubba Thompson being the starting center fielder, because Leody is out. Leody's going to miss at least a week of the season, and I'm, I'm being super optimistic there. It'll probably be way more than that. But if they don't feel comfortable with Bubba Thompson being their center fielder on opening day or early on in the season... I don't think they'll put Josh Smith in center. I think they'll move Adolis to center. I think that's a lot to ask of Josh Smith, who is an average left fielder. Yeah. He works his butt off, right? I mean, he is trying hard. As a guy who went to LSU as a middle infielder and has had to move a little bit to third base and now move to left field, I think they'd put Adolis in center, Robbie Grossman in left, and then they would work really hard to figure out how they're going to, to do right field. And maybe you put... I don't know if Josh Smith is a right fielder. Like it's when the field changes on you, the best way I can put it is, you know how when football people talk about, dude, moving from right tackle to left tackle is not easy. Everything changes. That ball changes when it's hit to right field versus left field. And so you have to get used to the ball moving a little bit of a different way. So good for Robbie Grossman. The Rangers, we knew that was one. They had one weak outfield position, yeah. right? Robbie Grossman is going to fill it. Hopefully he does a great job. Uh, I guess I'm always forgetting Brad Miller. Brad Miller can, I guess, pop out there and play a little bit of outfield the if you The thought was it. that you'll see a lot of that combination outfield and DH yeah. from him. Then. And I'm sure Mitch Garver, who's a better hitter than Brad Miller, will DH the some as the long time. as they yeah. have a third catcher, right? You can't, you can't really use Mitch Garver as a DH on a consistent basis and not have a catcher on the bench because all it takes is a foul tip, a hit by pitch, whatever it is. You're like, dude, we got to get Jonah Heim out of the game just for precautionary reasons. And you're like, well, who do we put at catcher? If you're like, well, you put Mitch Garver at catcher because he's your only guy. You lose the DH the rest of the game, and that could put you at a disadvantage. So it'll be interesting to see when this roster is complete uh, where Bubba Thompson fits in, where Ezekiel Duran, possibly Josh Smith fit in what the outfield is going to look like. Because the other thing, too, is I do think that Evan Carter has a good chance to come up to the major leagues after the All-Star break. But before that, you don't really have a minor leaguer who you're in love with. To move in there straight yeah, away. Unless you're talking about Ezekiel Duran and Josh Smith. And at that point, you are moving an infielder to the outfield. Yeah. Now, Bruce Bochy said, I know about the splits. So I decided to like get the specific information about the splits is obviously Robbie Grossman is significantly better against left-handed pitchers than right-handed pitchers. And you're going to see right-handed pitchers about two and a half times to one ish, give or take maybe three to one. Yeah. Most starting pitchers, it's about 70%. Okay. Okay. So last year he hit 320 against lefties with an on-base percentage of 436. I accept. Yeah, which is, that's tremendous. Here's the thing. Against right-handers, which again, he faced about two and a half times as much. 163. Figure it out. With a 253 on-base percentage. Get better. And that carries over. In 2021, it was 279 against lefties, 221 against righties. So pretty consistently, he is a good bit worse against right-handed pitchers, which obviously you will see a lot if you are full-time, as opposed to just being a left-hand pitching, hitting uh, specialist. That was Napoli, right? Well, Napoli yeah, was Napoli. a left-handed hitting specialist. But he was better. Remember when you got him, you are like, oh, he's going to be a platoon guy, but he was so good. That you're able to use them every day in your lineup. Which, it just mattered where you put them in the lineup. You'd sometimes drop them down to seven or eight yeah. against a pitcher that you're like, oh, I'm not 100% sure, but he's so hot, I can't take him out of the lineup. And I think that's what I'm really hopeful for. As he turns into Napoli and I mean, can play the outfield. Hell yeah, that would be amazing. Because when the Robbie Grossman move got made, I got to say I was like, 
really surprised at how quickly everyone goes, well, this means there won't be a platoon. Well, and I was like, really? The re this dude? No, I think the reason, the idea there, Kevin, was because of the contract that they signed him to. Okay. And that kind of put him in that, like, he can't, they, they yeah, couldn't yeah, yeah. do things with him, whereas they could do other things with the other guy. I think it was more that than it was, like, he's the guy. Uh, so I think it was the contract. And those things happen. But I mean, if he's if he comes in and he slugs for you a little bit, then you're gonna feel confident. If it doesn't, then you're like, okay, we still don't have an answer at that spot. And I think the Rangers are still struggling to say they have the answer there. Yeah, they're just like, look, this is the best option we have right now. You're probably right because even then he was like, for now. Yeah. And so he didn't say, which again, this is how most positions work. Like I know Seager and Simeon, as long as they don't get hurt, they're safe. But how many times on a team do you look at and you're like, it doesn't matter what happens all well, year. You're not going to get replaced. Like that's not a ton. I think what Bruce Bochy is saying to us is for a minimum of two weeks, we ain't messing with it. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, really yeah. that's too short of a time too. You're really saying... He's our outfielder. He's our starting left fielder pretty much on an everyday basis except for rest until May 1st. If he's batting 150 or 160, same thing with Josh Young. I know we're not talking about Josh Young here, and Josh Young hit a home run yesterday and everything, but if Josh Young as the third baseman is batting 165 in the month of April, then now you start yeah. going, maybe he needs to go back to AAA to do this or do that. It's not that we don't love him anymore, but he's maybe not ready to be an everyday third baseman in the major leagues. And if Robbie Grossman is batting under 200 after a month in the major leagues of giving him an everyday deal, because he batted 207 last year, I'm going off I the top of my head. Like it, was, it was a low batting average. Is 209. If, 209. So if Damn. he's batting 209, then you go, hey, we're going to play Josh Smith more out there. We're going to maybe play Ezekiel Duran more out there. Maybe Leody comes back to Varis and we bump Bubba Thompson, who's doing pretty good. We bump him over to left field and we have more speed and athleticism on our team. Like, There's a lot of different ways to go, but I do think what, what Bruce Bochy is saying is that pretty much for the month of April, Robbie Grossman will be playing every day, and we'll see after the month of April if we need to make an adjustment. I had a momentary like uh, chest tightness over the weekend, Kevin. When I saw that Josh Young was in an accident uh, while he was driving to Mesa, I do believe. Oh, no. And I was like, and in my mind, I was like, this, no, this can't be. This is supposed to be his opportunity to finally do it. And I was like, it would just be his luck for something like this to. That would suck. It was, they said he was okay, though, and that uh, he, they were holding him out of the game for that, for the, just, you know, kind of shaken up by that. Call the Frankles. But like, <laughs> immediately, my mind was like, oh, my gosh, I need this guy to have a good season. Now, Corey, I have a surprising update to the World Cup story. We have multiple soap operas on our TVs That's right. right now. This That's right. You know I love the Sports Business Journal. You do. Well, guess You're what? You're always like, man, it's my favorite. It's the SBJ. Stop what you're doing. My goodness. I'll never call him out for that. Is they put together the ranking of the top... 50 cities for sports business. Took seven months. They analyzed more than 400,000 data points. Second on the list, New York. Screw them. That's your competition now for the World Cup final. Good news. No, it's not. You're number one. You're number one, baby. Because the Sports Business Journal has said that Dallas is clearly the star. I see what they did there. Mm -hmm. We win nothing. Mm -hmm. We don't even win anything. It is amazing. Well, it's for sports business, though, Mike. Like, think about this for a second. They just brought, what, the PGA Tour headquarters yeah. to Frisco. Uh, you have the star. In addition to the stadium, the star complex is so much more than just a, like, uh, a, a business or a sports complex. The National Soccer Hall of Fame. Yes. You have FC Dallas with everything that they have going on with the, with the Soccer Hall of Fame the Rangers and their whole place, plus you added Texas Live to it. And then that's just the high levels. We're just talking about the professional levels of sports. Take that down even further. And Renegades. All the, what's that? Renegades. Yeah, the Renegades. Well, and the, I, you, we forgot the Stars and the and the Mavs there too, but yes, I guess also the Renegades. Hey, as long as we're throwing that out there, the professional bull riders yes. move their world finals to the new Dickies Arena. Well, it's still pretty new. I know it's not like brand, brand new anymore, but it's still pretty new. I talked to a guy who does the field for the Texas Rangers, and he they did the rodeo. Jake, I didn't talk. I don't know who I talked to. Oh, wasn't Jake from spring training? No. Okay. But they're like, man, does it does it smell horrible for a long time? Because there's a lot of bull pee and also bull crap. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not talking about words, but they're like, guess what? 
that seeps through those things and kind of gets into your, uh, you know, turf. Yeah. And so they're like, it is not fun trying to work really hard to get bull pee and bull crap uh, out of your fake fake grass. The Professional Bowling Hall of Fame is in Arlington. Have you Yo. ever been there? I've driven by there I a thousand not. times. I've been to it I've... once. Yeah, I, I went to it. It was amazing. Okay. Do they sell bowling balls in there? I didn't see any bowling balls All for right. sale. So. The I've been king. thinking about getting a custom bowling ball. Oh, I got a guy. I know a guy for you. You do? I actually do. Huh. Coming up next, it's time for Gridiron Gravy. Well, maybe not having an NFL-sanctioned agent isn't so bad after all. We'll do it next right here on The Fan.
CNC Masterpiece back here on 105 through the fan right now. Let's go around the entire NFL and dip into some gridiron gravy. Deep. Dip with Cooks. And we start with, do you want to know? Because we got Brandon Cooks. That's true. Adam Schefter's version of the lead up to Aaron Rodgers saying, lose my number. Sure. sure. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, oh no. Is All right, It's Aaron Rodgers. So that's a good The way point. you feel about Tom Brady is now the way I feel okay. about Aaron Rodgers. Okay, fair enough. Is Adam Schefter said he had Aaron Rodgers' phone number for a while, but never used it prior to last week. And he said, we're on air for two hours. I call the Jets. I call the Packers. I call Rodgers' advisors after Trey Wingo's like it's a done deal. No one's saying anything. So I'm sitting there with Diana Rossini and said, should I text Rodgers? She said, yeah, text him. So at 3.35, I texted him. I say, basically, have you informed the Jets that you'd like to play there? I wanted to open it up to you. He didn't respond for maybe 10 minutes. So then I called the number, got sent to voicemail. Then he texts me, lose my number. Good try, though. And that's all. And then Schefter's defense was, he's the one who says the media is getting it wrong. So I wanted to go to the source and get it right. I was just trying to do my job. I agree. Yeah. I mean, like, isn't that what, like, ultimately, all right, I'm not getting any information from anybody else. I got to make this call to this person. If I don't get anything from them, then I really don't have a story. I can't yeah. make stuff up. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think that that's, uh, I mean, he's he's dead on there. All right, let's go from that to, well, the whole big thing about Lamar Jackson is he doesn't have an approved agent. Yeah. So you can't sign him. Well, then Laramie Tunsil signed for... What interestingly, some people still don't believe, which shows how important it is to have an agent, is St. Omni, a non-certified agent who tried to negotiate for Roquan Smith last year, told Ian Rappaport that the Texans have signed Laramie Tunsil to a three-year, $75 million deal with $50 million fully guaranteed at signing. Now, and a fresh gas mask. Yeah, I don't. I mean, why the hell not? Remember is, that? Yes. Oh, he, yeah. He was smoking something out of it. I don't know what it was. He marijuana a gas mask. Maybe. Yes. We don't know that for sure. What else we? was it? Yeah. Could it have been? Luka? Okay. I mean, if we're going down, it could have been crack. Yeah. I mean, nobody knows, but I'm pretty sure it was marijuana. Could have been one of those water cigarettes. Uh-huh. You ever see those? The water? Do you mean like a vape? I don't know. They used to have these cigarettes that were like water. They were like, yeah, there's a small amount of nicotine. Oh. But it's mostly just water. It's only a little so addictive. It's a little, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. I appreciate the honesty. From Text in if you ever smoked one of those water cigarettes. Yeah. I don't remember the name. I, I have lots of questions about whether you're accurately describing that or if that's a thing. Is So he gets signed. So that's an excuse off the table for Lamar Jackson. Although the Panthers have come out and said... Hey, Lamar Jackson's great, uh, but we're focused on the draft. Mm. So nobody has mm -hmm. given him an offer sheet yet. The thought continues to be that the thought continues to be. I heard it too. Don't worry. The thought continues to be that the Ravens are just going to let some other team do all the work and they'll be like, yeah, no, I'll agree to this. And that's terms. why nobody's doing any of the work. Yes. I can't yes. remember who told us this, but it was on like ESPN or one of the shows. They're like, look, the reason teams are out is they're like, we're not going to do all this work for the Baltimore Ravens because we're not going to sign them to a deal that we think is really bad. And the only reason that Baltimore wouldn't match is if we sign a really bad deal. So like if we, we'd like them, we're going to have to give up two first round picks, do all this work to sign a horrible contract to try to get Baltimore not to match. And we're just not going to do that. So he's, it looks like he's going to have to play on the franchise tag, honestly. Yeah, no, I, I could definitely see that. All right, let's talk about the Cowboys. They are bringing in three free agents today to work out, including local product. Running back Ronald Jones, McKinney ISD zone. I want to say McKinney North. McKinney North. Is he good at football Graduate. Uh, that is a question. That, uh, for two years, I can't remember Ronald Jones doing anything. I'm yeah. sorry if he has, and I just haven't heard. Well, we need to root for him because he's local. All right. Does Ronald Jones do anything for you as the backup running back or maybe even the Let me oh, can I ask you this will he back. be better than number 34 Malik, Malik Davis Davis oh, I don't know 
Ronald Jones just hasn't clicked as well as I would have guessed. You really football. had high hopes for Are him, didn't I you? I really did. Next question. Do you think that Tony Pollard will be 100% and the same guy that we saw last year for week one? No. Mm, I'm going to say 85%. And it sounds like the Cowboys need to draft somebody in probably the first, let's say, four rounds? What about the first round? I don't mind that. I, at 26, I don't mind if you think you're getting a super stud. Yeah. But the, it seems like guys that have been drafted in the second, third, or fourth round. I know the kid Hall was having a great year till he got hurt yep. for New York. Brees Hall, yeah. And then Traven Howard, the linebacker, and Chuma Idoga, the offensive lineman, are also in town. So keep an eye potentially on those names. Kevin. Do you have big news? The Cowboys lost somebody. No. Jake McQuaid. Oh, really? A long snapper. They now, did? Yeah, he's with the Detroit Lions huh. as of moments ago. I will say this and I'll keep saying this, which is amazing. When I was a kid, let's say the 80s and 90s, every week in the NFL, somebody had a bad snap. They'd snap the ball over yeah. the punter's head. It would happen. It happened in the Super Bowl. It would happen in a... I swear, I watch football and I never see a bad snap anymore when it comes to punt snaps. Now, every once in a while, you'll see maybe not the best ones, yeah. field goal snap. Yeah. But for the most part, like you never see... Like, I don't know. I feel like they don't matter. I feel like there's 32 guys that perfectly snap the ball on every team every time now. You never see Are a bad punch snap. Are you saying that Corey's somber tone was unnecessary? We'll be all right. It seems like there's 32 guys that are perfect snappers. There's not a bad the snapper in the NFL. Yeah. I, Unless you lose, like the Cincinnati Bengals had a fake snapper in week one and lost to Pittsburgh because they had to have like a tight end do it for man, a game. What a freaking catastrophe that game was for them. All right, let's talk about some people who did get signed. All right, so you told us Jake Quaid's going to the Lions. Also, the Lions picked up C.J. Gardner-Johnson, a one-year, $8 million deal. Are you smiling because you love the Detroit Lions? Who's going to be better next year, the Lions or the Cowboys? Are you, well, uh, Cowboys. You better say Duh. that. Or Isaiah uh, Stanback's going to punch you in the face. I, I hope not. Um, the I was telling you, and I think we had this uh, topic on our run sheet for about two weeks, that the Eagles were going to lose everybody. And yeah. like looking at their team now, how how right was I, Kevin? Oh my gosh, uh, they've lost a lot of people, and I think we, it was kind of they went all in, and then they said, "All right, now we got to re reassess where we are." And so it's less about me liking what the Lions are doing, and more about me liking seeing the Eagles not have all the pieces that they had in the Super Bowl team. And we'll see how good they are whenever they try this year to make that run at it. So once the Panthers draft C.J. Stroud. Good news for him. That's right. I'm just going to go ahead and say that right now. Do you want to see here Chris Sims? Uh, I don't have the audio, but okay. here's his uh, here's his his take on C.J. Stroud. Blown away by the film. Makes tons of powerful pinpoint game-changing throws. Over and over, it's 15 to 30-yard throws on the money. Decision-making is not only awesome, but aggressive too. More movement and improv than he gets credit for. That's C.J. Stroud from Chris Sims. You love to hear it. Kevin is all about C.J. He Stroud. can throw to Adam Thielen. Do you Adam. think that's who the Carolina Panthers traded yes. up to get? Because they already, when you'd go from nine to one, they had, they had evaluated I, yeah. somebody. I don't like, buy that who. just now they're doing their due diligence. And they're like, well, we got to look at Levis and Richardson. Like, I think that decision's been made, yeah. even if it is one yeah. of them. Let's trade from nine to one. Do we know who we're taking? Have no clue. No. Yeah. They, at some point. Is quarterbacks any good? They're like, this is the guy. Him. Let's go get him. Yeah. So that, CJ Stroud would be my guess, though I, I do know there are a lot of theories out there about who could go number one. Adam Thielen gets the three-year deal to go to the Carolina Panthers along the Sean way. and RJ are beat up by this, man. They expected, because of that they great thought he was going to be part of the show. They were like, man, he's coming to Dallas. He's going to be part of the show. They were excited. I'm interested to see how, you know, what all he does have left uh, and see how that works out with whoever he is quarterbacking with. I mean, it takes a special kind of show to attract former and current athletes into studio on a regular basis. Mike used to pitch. That's true. We have Derek Holland every Wednesday. I predict Isaiah Stanback will be coming up in minutes. I think so. But only if he doesn't punch you in the face. I honestly didn't know he was here moments ago. And so when you said that, and then I turned around, I was like, oh, crap, there he is. Yeah. I'm glad we, I didn't say We shared a rude. look, and he was like, pretty much. <laughs> is We didn't get a chance to talk about this earlier in the show, but Odell Beckham, I love this style of negotiating. Okay. Is he goes, I'm just so confused on Twitter Saturday morning where the quote is for me that said, I want 20. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is four ain't enough. All right. So this is, you got a wide 
negotiation window, all mm -hmm. right? You don't have to give me 20, but I need more than four. All right, so there's a lot of negotiation still to be had. I probably think he should have put this out sooner because everyone heard 20 million and he was like, well, no, but four Yeah, but when you say everyone good. heard 20 million, do you think that's the first time that general managers around the league heard that? Or, or I think the most of them kind of already are understanding what they're dealing with. That's a good question. Maybe I'm wrong. Odell Beckham fascinates me and I wonder what level of straight communication comes out through all of I these. I think he mostly, though, needed Jerry to stir the market up. And I don't I think that's there anymore. And now I'm interested to see what happens next. And by the way, just as an aside, if you're watching what happens next, there's buzz building that maybe Zeke goes to the Bills. So I think we'll all be invested in that what happens. where we said it would be the best it. place for him last Thursday. week. Yeah. 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 Oh, the buzz can Kevin was out all last yeah, week. Yeah, that's right. So. Kevin, I like, came in on Friday. He was, no he was ha at the house by himself while Jess was at the hotel with yeah. the kids. No, we were all at the Weird. hotel. I hope everything's okay, Kevin. <laughs> everything Hopefully is got fine. got everything resolved over the weekend. Everything is fine. We're all at the hotel together. There's a couch over here if you need someone to sleep on. <sighs> we're the KNC Masterpiece. Right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next. I'll make extra for dinner tonight if you need it. Oh God. Let's Bring reflect. It in tomorrow. My marriage is fine. Coming that's, up next. That's always the word people use. I'm you would fine, say that. Right? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Fine doesn't mean good. You slam a door Usually and go fine. fine. Fine means something else. Yeah. You should have said everything's great or we'll something. We'll talk during the break. Hey, you know what? Isaiah Stanback is going to come on to talk hopefully mostly about the Cowboys. But also my question is going to be, when did fine stop meaning fine? Oh, yeah. That, all question. of that coming up next right here on The Fan. All day.
Command Studio, secured by DFWSecurity.com. It's the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105.3 The Fan. And right now in studio for the next hour, we bring to you former Dallas Cowboy Isaiah Stanback. How's it going, man? Man, it's all good. How you doing? Is it all good <laughs> or is the Cowboys season over because we lost... <laughs> Jake McQuaid, because Corey was somber about it. Yeah. I think you might be concerned about it. Absolutely. I thought we were doing great with these moves for Gilmore and Cooks. Are you here to tell me it's over? It's <laughs> over. It's definitely not over, but they need to get a dog on long snapper. They already got rid of the best long snapper ever a couple years ago, and now you're going to let the guy who replaced him go. So that's an area they need to address is an undervalued position group on the field, much like the kickers are undervalued until you need them. You need a doggone long snapper in two-thirds of your special teams. Corey, my question to you now is what are you going to do in the fall to occupy your time now that you've heard that the Cowboys season is over. It's not over. It's, it's, oh, Isaiah, I appreciate you trying to have some fun with Kevin here. <laughs> but he's, Kevin, you can't make that face and go, mm, and just be right about it. That's not the way that it works. Long is very important. in an argument. That's totally how it works. <laughs> Long snapper is very important. And we were spoiled for years by not even having to think about it. And I guess last year when Anger dropped that one, we were like, oh my gosh, uh, special teams. But it, you're right. You got to have a good one. Who's in charge of finding the good one? Is that Bones? Is that Bones his job awesome. then? Yep. All right. And we trust Bones? Uh, you have to. I mean, with the kicker. Hold on a second. Year. Wait <laughs> just a damn minute. He didn't say you have to like he's so great. He said you have to like that's your only option. Fact. Did Oh my God! Right, right. <laughs> so we have to we have to trust that Bones is going to do it because we don't have any other options. <sighs> I was joking at I first. Like now I've officially crossed over into concerned territory. <laughs> Jerry Jones said we're not planning to kick field goals anyways last year. So if we're not planning to kick field goals or punt, <laughs> don't we don't really need That's a guy. good point. I'm in on that. All right. I, you know, I would rather never punt, never kick field goals, and just say, you know, we'll just throw an interception. Go style. Yeah, just okay, throw an I'm interception uh, 50 yards down. How far can Dak throw? Uh, About 40 yards. You can throw it 40 yards. Dang it. 30, 35 yards. Dude, don't use that last play as an example. That was a problematic One of the worst when Jalen Hurts slipped. Was that in the Super <laughs> yeah. Bowl? Threw it 15 yards for the Hail Mary. It's like he slipped. Like he throws the ball further than that. He doesn't have the strongest of arms, but he can throw the ball probably 55 to 60 yards in the air. Yeah. All right. So we need to get a new long snapper. Maybe a yeah, we're gonna, that's, coach. That's I don't on know. the list. That's I don't on, know. I'm sure they have the money slotted for him. All right. So before everything fell apart in the last 20 <laughs> minutes, it feels like, well, the example that I used, and I know it's not exactly like pick for pick like this, but the comp picks you got were for Connor Williams and Randy Gregory. And right. if I would have told you last year, if you had to trade Connor Williams and Randy Gregory for Stephon Gilmore and Brandon Cooks, I feel like everyone would have thrown a freaking parade. How are you feeling about these two like primary trade moves that the Cowboys pulled off? I am elated that the front office has become aggressive. Uh, I think that over Everton, uh, these guys have been very tentative, and I've always been beating the dog on table, saying that I'm, I'm hoping that they're more aggressive in free agency. I'm, uh, instead of waiting to get the discount double check, guys, you know, for the low, um, go out there and get the guys that you really want. And I think this is for the first time it feels like the front office is doing that. It feels like they're going out there and they're saying, hey, these are the areas that we want to address. We don't want to leave these up for question. We don't want to wait and get leftovers, right? We want it fresh. We want the guys that we want. And if we can get them, we're going to go ahead and do so with within reason. And I think that they're doing so um, very strategically in terms of their finances. Man, you, you say the, the leftovers part. That's what I think drove people nuts was that first week or whatever of free agency. They just sit there and say, no, no, we'll wait. And that felt like a Parcells kind of mindset. For me, was always like Par Stephen learned under Parcells. That's kind of where they both started working together. And Parcells was always like, no, 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 don't get that first wave. The second wave is where we can get some some guys. But they're getting talented players for reasonable, what I think is reasonable assets oh, yeah. in the fifth round picks. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. I, the thing is, you can take the, the Belichick approach when you have systems in place that you can plug and play guys. When you can take guys and you can put them into your system and you know that, hey, 
this is the way that, you know, kind of like the Mandalorian, right? Yes. This is the way, like, this is, <laughs> like, we can develop you or, you know, what you do well, we're just going to ask you to do that within our system and you're going to be amazing and our, and our whole system's going to work well because of that. Dallas hasn't historically had that in place over the past, I would say, 10 years, right? So with that, without that being in place, I think the front office has finally came to the realization that, hey, okay, now we can't afford just to wait on whoever's left over. Like, okay, we need the guys. If we need another shutdown corner, okay, let's go get another ball hawk. So now mm -hmm. they have three ball hawks at the cornerback position in Deron Bland and Trayvon Diggs and obviously in Gilmore. You got three dudes that if you throw the ball up, there's a good chance they're going to come down with it. Those are 50-50 balls. So they've addressed that. Now you're going to go out there and say, okay, now we need a three-headed monster at receiver. Okay, well, obviously we know, um, we know that Gallup didn't have the year we wanted him to have, but we were also kind of rushing him back. So now he'll have a whole offseason. We're hoping to get a glimpse of what he used to be. Yeah. So we're going to have Gallup. We're obviously a, we'll have, um, obviously, um, Cooks. We're freaking Cooks now. Now you, and then you got the, the, the boy C. C. Lamb. out there. So yeah. you got the three headed monster at receiver now. It's like, okay, we're good. Now, what do you look at next? And that's my biggest question for Dallas now is like, long what snapper. do you look at next? And <laughs> yeah, long snapper. <laughs> but the offensive line for me is, is still a, a huge area that they have to address. And obviously, they have time to do so. Um, they're just not going to spend the money that some people and like myself were hoping that they would have spent on it. Can I ask you a question about that then? Is it because it pivots on the health of Tyron Smith? Because like in theory, you look at it and you're like, okay, that offensive line will do just fine. But I feel like it's impossible to discuss Tyron Smith without being like, yeah, but what chunk of the season does he miss? Yeah, I hate having to talk about guys in that, yeah. in that regard, but I mean, I was one of those guys, right? So, I mean, I was a guy who had a ton of injuries that I didn't sign up for any of them. They just happened, and you just kind of deal with, you know, deal with the hands that you're dealt. So, um, I understand the position that he's in, and that's a sucky position, but as management, you have to take that approach. The what if, right? And, and there's a high probability what if when you're speaking about Tyron Smith. But now, it seemingly, it looks like they're going to put Tyron at left tackle, bump the young fella back down again, um, back to guard. And now you're going to just roll the hands and see if Terrence Steele is going to be what he was. Or if you're going to have, hey, hey, well, let's go. All right, let, well, it's time to go. Well, let's go. Uh, <laughs> man, you know, and you, you're banking on him over at the right tackle. So that's what it sounds like they're going after right now. But I still would like to see some reassurance at that position. And competition is never a bad thing. Would y'all's would preference, and I know this kind of went out the window when Tyron restructured with yeah. a like play based contract. So I realize that's not viable, but would your would y'all's preferences have been you keep Tyler at left tackle, use Tyron as your swing, and then you go find a new left guard? It's a lot of money to sit on your bench. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel about that's for have one. Have you seen what the rework deal looks like? I've I keep searching for like specifics about yeah, that. don't just wait on that. You know, wait okay. till the cowboy wait till Jerry tells us. Okay. Uh, we'll just wait on that. The other thing too is Tyron Smith as nice as he is, does have an ego. You tell him, hey, come on back, and you're going to sit on the bench unless we have an injury. Yeah. Like, good luck with that going over. Yeah, I, I think it kind of goes back to the Zeke thing, too. The, all the questions when you had Zeke sitting behind Tony Pollard are, you know, not ego, but leadership, all those things that go into it. And with Tyron, it's kind of the same thing. You want that money sitting there. Do you want the player just kind of wilting away? Yeah. So I think that the they want to – Try and roll that out on paper, uh, and then we'll see how many you know weeks into spring training camp he can go, and if he can be ready. If he's ready to go, then you rock through the season and just fingers crossed. But have a backup plan. That's the like that's the biggest deal is don't have a backup plan is like, and we don't have we don't really know. You got to have a backup plan that you think is going to be a solid a solid move. I think you have to put the relationship. This is when business gets hard in football, right? Because you're passionate about guys, you have loyalty to guys, but at the end of the day, you still have to do what's best for your organization. And I think Dallas is now in a position where they know that they need to go out and get a left guard. They know they need to go get yeah. a left guard. They have two tackles, right? But they, yeah. they're expecting one rookie or now a second-year player, you know, and, and Tyler Smith to be able to bump down and play left guard as well where he's not as strong. So I think that they need to aggressively go out and either draft a left guard if okay. there is one out there. And I, my understanding is only like one interior lineman that's, that's worth a high pick, okay? Or... They need to go out there and get a free agent. And what I'm sorry, but uh, the man out there in uh, in Denver Bronco World went out there and, and shirt up two of the best linemen 
uh, day one. Yeah. So um, you saw where his point of emphasis was in terms of Sean Payton. Where does where does linebacker fit in the hierarchy? Because like I know people have been putting out like, hey, here's what the Cowboys roster can look like, and we can definitely talk about that. Is Leighton Van Der Esch and Damone Clark. And I know you don't see like a whole bunch of your yeah. three linebacker sets anymore, but that moves Micah or keeps Micah almost exclusively at the front. How do we feel about that? And do you think linebacker is still a spot where, with all due respect to Jabril Cox, you probably need to go do something else? Yeah, I mean, that sucks. He's in the same situation too, right? I mean, he was balling out, made some great plays, made a goal line stand, and then blew his dog on knee out. So he came back and he wasn't the same guy. Um, Unfortunately, when you sustain a major injury like that, the organization has to start planning to go forth without you. And that's just, it's the unfortunate side yeah. of the game. But in terms of linebacker, so much of the linebacker play is dependent on what's going on in front of them. I don't care if you have a madman at linebacker. Yeah. If you have a, if you have an interior defense alignment that can't hold the fort, yeah. those 330 pound guys are going to be working up and blocking those 245 pound line, uh, linebackers. So I think that, you're, you have to figure out what you want to do defensively on your front line first, and then that that then tells you what you're going to do at your linebacker. Do you want fast flow linebackers? Do you want coverage linebackers? Do you want some box guys that are going to come down and be sure tacklers? Well, obviously you got Van Der Esch. He's a sure tackler. Um, you know, and they, you, what are you going to put on the side of him? Obviously, Damone Clark is a he's a running run and shoot type of guy. Those guys are both sure tacklers. But what are you going to put on the other side of them? Do you need somebody else that can cover? Do you need somebody else that can run sideline to sideline, or do you want another big guy like you went out and got in, um, in during you know right before camp last year? Yeah, I'm looking Kevin right now at the names, and you had Van Der Esch and Clark. You got yeah. those out of the way, and then we got Cox, Devin Harper. Devonte Bond and Malik Jefferson is still on the uh, on the rlads.com depth chart. I don't I don't I didn't know Bond honestly. I'm sorry I didn't really know that guy still. So I think that draft wise or you know some sort of depth wise you have to add something there. But the I think the key factor and he was talking about it a little bit here is man I think Dan Quinn loves speed. You give me somebody, you give me fast people, and we can we can cut down a lot of the angles on the field. And that's one of the things that he wants. Give me length and speed, and I can do a lot with that. So that's where I'm looking. The Jabril Cox one kind of still bums me out because I remember after the draft, we had him on from the star, and I was joking with him. I was like, hey, I pulled a score autograph rookie card of yours. Do I sell it? Do I keep it? And he goes, keep it because it's going to be worth all of the money. <laughs> and you brought up the injuries and stuff. I was yeah. kind of curious because – we don't always get this opportunity is was it the physical or mental aspects of coming back from an injury that you feel like i know different person person by person yeah, but for, sure. for you what was the bigger struggle it's mental it's absolutely mental and i think i remember on number numerous times speaking about the the risk of giving michael gallup the yeah. contract that he that he earned right he earned that contract but there's risk that, that you take on as well when you sustain a major injury because the physical, that's the aspect that the organization can take care of, right? They have, they have the Dallas Cowboys have the best training staff hands down in the league. Trust Brett Brown's me. pretty good. Huh? Brett Brown's oh, pretty yeah, good. Yeah, Double B's really good. All right, Jim's, Jimbo's really good. All those guys are amazing. So Dr. Cooper, the surgeon, I mean, all those guys are amazing. So they can control that, right? They can look at the diagnosis. They can see what's going on. Dr. Cooper's gonna gonna you know suture you up, make sure that you're good, and Britt's gonna handle the rehab, and you're gonna be back on the field. The one aspect they can't control is the mental. That's the one thing that they can't put their hand on, and that's the one thing that the player is responsible for. And it's and obviously as we're getting into this mental health segment aspect of things, that's it's, it's a curveball, right? You just don't know how each guy is gonna handle that um that type of pressure. Myself personally, I faced a lot of it. Right? I had seven surgeries over my over my whole career, right, from college all the way through the league. So, I the mental adversity side of it, I look forward to overcoming those battles. Everybody's not built that way, right? Um, and we saw last year Michael Gallup. I think even though obviously he didn't have have to have another surgery, all those kind of things, I think that he was more fighting himself more mentally than he was physically. Um, and that's where I think he's going to grow substantially this off season and overcoming whatever hurdles and walls that he had up during the season. Um, and I think he'll be a much better player for that. All right, especially since we have Isaiah stand back in studio, I'm really excited about this next segment. I'm going to throw out some no ideas for you guys. It's where the Cowboys cap stands now, and I have some options about what maybe they could logistically do next if everybody wants to know what comes next. I got some options for you. Let's break it down. We'll do it next right here on The Fan. Are you ready for some commercial free?
The Expressway on the KNC Masterpiece is brought to you by Rockwall 4. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105 Through the Fan. We have Isaiah Stan back in with us for this entire hour from the 254. This guy's great. You need to get him on more. I feel like we've tried to have you on quite a bit <laughs> yeah. because you're always fantastic when you're on the show. So thank you very much for Appreciate joining it. us in studio today. It's good to be in studio, I always man. say I don't want Isaiah stand back because he knows way more than I do. <laughs> sure. So instead <laughs> of going the Henry Ford before. direction and yeah. surrounding yourself with good yeah. people, you're like, pass. Yeah. yeah. All right. So like, I hope they don't sign anybody good. Like when you're out of position, right? Isaiah, you're like, <laughs> like right now, Jalen Tolbert's like, son of a B, man. They trade up for Brandon <laughs> Cooks. I, real, real quick on, on, on Brandon Cooks. Do yeah. you have... A lot of people are like, oh, man, in Houston with the contract situation. And and, and I, I heard from – I've heard that he is – he is a good – he's good for leadership. He's good, he's one of those good teammate kind of guys. Yeah. Have you heard anything different than, than he's a good teammate? I have not. I haven't heard anything. And even if I had, it would just be hearsay, right? So, okay. I mean, we won't know until he gets in the building. Um, I think it's always – it's definitely a, a flag, uh, whether you want to call it a red flag or not. It's a, it's a flag that you have to – that you can't look past. When you somebody's been traded four times, yes, um, that's always something that's a little bothersome. Tied with Eric Dickerson, yeah, who's in the Hall of Fame, <laughs> exactly right. Um, and it is good, good people. So, um, yeah, that's not bad company to have. But I think what people fail to realize is guys will be a shadow of themselves until they're where they want to be. And I think that's what's happening with would be Cooks right now. I think what you saw last year with the almost trade yeah. uh, really going down. Um, he was frustrated by that. He was yeah. super frustrated by that. Um, and they knew they weren't going to get anything else out of him. That's why they just shut him down. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Um, I think it's a testament to how his morals and what he stands on. Um, what he says is what he means. Um, but now he's where he wants to be. Okay. Um, this is where he wanted to be last year. It wasn't a secret. And now he's here. So I think you're going to get the best version of whatever he has left um, here in Dallas. And I think that's what people are excited to see. I want to thank all the fan texters who directed me to a Tata Archer tweet, kind of given the breakdown of the Tyron Smith updated contract. And with the help of Spotrack and Over the Cap, I have pieced this together. <laughs> all right. So I got some questions for you guys about how to create more space and what you want to do next. So the Cowboys have $9.8 million of salary cap space. You need about $3 million to get all of your draft picks, assuming they stay where they are now. And Mike, I know you thought people would be curious, and this is a great point, is the Cowboys still have picks in every round and two picks in round seven. So they've got their picks in one, two, three, four, five, six, and two in round seven. And you might be like, but they just traded all those picks. Well, remember, one of those picks was for 2024, and they had three fifth round picks because of the comp pick. So you're still loaded up with eight draft picks. All right, I'm going to do some quick math here, Isaiah. 9.8 minus three, that's about 6.8, correct. correct? All right. And during training camp, Steven told us you need $14 million to get through training camp. That's what he said they did with the money for uh, Amari Cooper. So, Kevin... We're about eight million dollars okay. short. If that, well, if first Steven... of all, I that really I need to sit down with him. Restructure and ask more Cooper questions. Rush. He just signed. You can restructure him now. I can create you another twelve point two million dollars in cap space, but I need to know how you feel about these four moves. All right. Also, I really wanted to ask Stephen, but I was just kind of blown away by what he said at the time. Is why do not why do? Let's try that again. Why does every team in the NFL not do that? Because I feel like I don't usually hear they're like. Hey, the Falcons have $14 million in cap space, but don't forget the practice squad and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like I don't hear that a lot. Well, it's so, the cowboy way. Okay, great. And that's different. Yeah, that's going awesome. <laughs> Is And I do love, look, I, I love the Cowboys. Right? It's been about? 27 years, for God's sakes. Yeah, no, I get you. You don't have to you. comment on it. He was just waiting Isaiah. for the right time. Is Okay, well, the right time a has come NFC. and gone a couple of times. Here are the four players I'm going to ask you about, and here are their savings. Move on from Keldon Joseph. I can get you one point four million dollars. Okay, I I am okay with that. Okay, I think adding Gilmore, you added, you're good as far as your starters go. Uh, I am. I think you're going to throw another name out, and I'm not okay with moving on from that name. I will, but we'll get with, to that with player. Kelvin. It's for me. It's less about off field stuff and more about on field stuff. I wasn't in love with what I saw on field. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see much. Okay. So I'm, I'm okay with that. All right. Malik Hooker, 3.4 3. million. 
No. No, you don't want to move on from him? No, I do not. Okay. No, I want to keep him. Okay. The, when the ability to, and Isaiah, maybe you can back me up here. The ability to go to uh, Donovan the way we do makes this, because you have what you have with Curse and them, okay. you can say, all right, Donovan, we're taking a linebacker off the field. Now we can cover everybody. Okay. I, I, I like having Hooker. I don't want to break it down to just two two safeties back there. Fair enough. But Neville. then again, Israel Mukwamu, like, he's I an do option. like him. He's an option, but it's great depth. So I'll just leave it there. Neville Gallimore, get you $2.7 million for that. I think that one might need to happen. We don't all have to agree. I would need to know what's available in the draft at the time that they're drafting. Okay, I, I agree. I think he is a impact player for what they asked him to do, but I think you could probably get somebody to do it for a third in a call. Okay, and that I think that's why I'm going in that direction If you start well. talking coupons, he's all about oh, it. Oh, for dude. sure. <laughs> yeah. I think... I think that's why I'd be great at this because I'm all about not paying anybody anything. I would be hated across the league, but that's because I want to build the greatest football team that's ever been seen. Like, I wouldn't fall into this, oh, well, then you need to give them 13, not 12 million because of X, Y, and Z. I'd be like, nonsense. I do not because I want to build the most talent you've ever seen on a football team. Now, this is the one that I think you do not want to move on, but I just want to throw it out there. $4.7 million if you move off of Jordan Lewis. I'm I'm unwilling to move on from Jay. Lee. Okay, all right. Okay, we're we're a tandem on this yeah. one. Then I mean, when healthy, he's solid. Yes. No, absolutely, he is. How? I like having somebody that's tough too okay. and willing to put their nose in it. And that dude will. He'll get in there and he'll tackle. He doesn't make many business decisions. He's that's a, something he, I like. He's about. a versatile cornerback, right? He could play into the slot. Obviously, Deron yes. Bland filled into that role once he was gone, but. Um, J. Lou, he's feisty. You already mentioned that. He's going to stay in your hip pocket. He's not going to do anything over the top, but he is a sure thing. And I think at that position, that's hard to find. You can't just go find corners. It's just not something that you that you, that you you do, do. I don't know the stats on this. Do cornerbacks get hurt the most in the NFL? I always feel like you need about eight of them during a season. And I know who's in the training maybe it's just room the, the Maybe it's just the Cowboys that cornerback seem to get hurt the most. But I feel like that's like the most hurt position. Maybe not major injury, but a hamstring, a quad, a something. About, okay, you're talking about okay, like, soft tissue just, stuff. It just, well, and, and yeah. maybe like everything. It just feels like throughout a season. Yeah, I think they're you, more susceptible you, you, you to soft tissue injuries. You go into your fifth, injuries. sixth, seventh cornerback yeah. because of injuries. You're more susceptible to soft tissue injuries for sure at the cornerback position because of what you're asking them to do. I mean, nobody else is running backwards, turning, planning, cutting, full speed. I mean, they're they're asked to do a lot. And I think people take it for granted what, what their skill set right. requires. Um, but... Yeah, J. Lou is uh he's a dude. He's a dude. And I don't think that okay. uh, you, you roll well, the dice every time you go to the draft trying to draft a corner. Real quick, because my dad got to work with Tom Rafferty, who is a Pro Bowl center guard for the Dallas Cowboys, and he said every cornerback is a failed wide receiver. Do you believe that <laughs> is the case still in the NFL? Is that like you can't catch, but you are fast, so go to the other side. I don't think so. I don't think so. I couldn't play cornerback. I can tell you that. I can't run backwards, and those guys can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So We'll say we'll keep Lewis and Hooker, but I, I'm i sorry I took Neville Gallimore okay. away from you. All that right. was just part of the deal, and you lost Kelvin Joseph. All right, so basically, okay. okay, fair? We're halfway there, right? Okay, okay. So I gave you $4.1 million of cap space, mm -hmm. and after you take out the draft picks and everything, you had 6.8. So you're at about $11 million. I know $10.9 million of cap space. And I wanted to throw that out there just for the people who are still asking about your Bobby Wagners and the like. I'm not anticipating that, although I would be all freaking well, he's about making a face. that. What are you making that face for? I'm a Seattle. I'm from Seattle. Oh, okay. He Seattle wants Bobby guy. Wagner on this Bobby. team. Bobby's my dog. Bobby's a beast. He's still one heck of a player. I think he really would love to play with Dan Quinn. Uh, and I I don't think it's off the table. Does he, does he love money? He's made a lot of it. And, and, and he's made a lot of it, and he's at the point in his career where he doesn't spend any of it. You don't talk about somebody oh, wow. who doesn't spend money. Bobby doesn't spend money, so Bobby has a pocket full of money. And here's one thing that he's chasing right now: he would like to have. He wants a ring. Yeah, 
And he wants a he wants and the Cowboys are in a really good position to do that this year, dude. The NFC is just so it's there for the taking. Maybe it's rare, but I've never heard of a person going, That's too much. Please give me less. <laughs> Man, I bet we can find some person out there, but you're probably right. That's a small crew. So are you sure you're gonna be able to pay everybody else? Yeah. I mean, hold on. With a couple of other moves, essentially my point is I think the Cowboys could still have eleven million to operate because if you're talking about your full you know, practice squad, you can still offset some of that with the Zeke savings. And like, I think you still have some money on the table. Now, will that end up being more like your Anthony Barr? Not that player specifically, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, let's go and grab some two and $3 million players as opposed to Bobby Wagner. I still think that's the route that they go. Okay. Well, I, that's just my opinion. <laughs> you don't have to be defeated. Uh, I don't want to turn this defeated. into a Jake McQuaid situation yeah, that where was, I've broken your spirit. That was a McQuaid. time. That was a definitely don't a time. Don't get LP out of retirement. Do I, so some, I've seen a couple texts saying still the offensive line's their big concern, just yeah. like Isaiah yeah, said yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm, I guess I'm just trying to figure out what the plan offensively is with McCarthy. If he's saying he wants to run, do you have the pieces to do what he wants to do offensively, or do we need to spend some money in, uh, in on the offensive line? Go ahead. If you're asking me, I, I, I need an offensive lineman. I need an offensive guard, left guard specifically. I think that you need somebody who that's what they do. That's not something that they can do. Mm -hmm. That's two different things, right? I, I can play this position, but no, I'd want a guy that's a dog at that position, right? Um, so I think they need to address that. I think they need to address the interior defense alignment, like a big boss hog, you know, Jonathan Hankins type of guy. They need another one of those. I know they shot their shot last year. Ridgeway didn't work out. Right. He worked out somewhere else. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but they need that type of guy too. You know, what so. about skills? Like Tony Pollard's coming off the injury and then uh, B. John is the name. Like that's the one that everybody is just Robin. Go draft B. John Robinson. If you, if you draft him, then you're not extend, you're not going to ever get to a r real contract situation with TP. Do you need to? If you're looking at this year and you're saying, you know what, I can have Tony Pollard on the franchise this year, and I'll run him and, and B. John out there, or I don't I don't even know what. There are lots of other options at running There's back. There's no way they're going to get that dude. So you you would rather do. A, a Ronald Jones type player at running back. Some t Tony Pollard being the guy. So, and so this is what I'm worried about right now. Yes, they need to be able to run the ball. When you lose Zeke, you lose the ability, the ability to protect Dak at all costs. Because Zeke picked up more blitzes and more yep. unblocked guys than any other running back that you can mention. He was a security blanket for Dak, and that's what people are forgetting to realize. People are like, oh, you know, he lost a step, and he's not as quick and explosive. Okay, that might be very well to be the case. But what Zeke did is the stuff that people don't see on the stat line, and that's what they're missing in that part of the, of the offense right now, and they have to find that. What is – what did – Kellen Moore's offense not do that you think that Mike McCarthy's offense will do this year because that's that's there were some philosophical yeah. differences nobody heard about really until after the season whenever there was some conversation about it Maybe there were some other people that heard about it interiorly but is that a word Kevin interiorly I'll allow it. Um, no. but the, the, like what is the what do you think is going to be different from what Kellen Moore just couldn't accomplish with Dak Ooh, that's a loaded question. Yeah. Um, oh, well. Kellen Moore drastically improved over the past few years in my eyes. I've been probably been the hardest on Kellen Moore over the past few years. And I think he, he two years ago, he emptied out, as I always refer to, you know, you get all your all your toys for Christmas. He just emptied the bag out, mm. right, too early. First couple of weeks of the season, ah, all my toys are out. And what happens to the defensive coordinators? They're like, oh, those are all the toys you have? Yeah. Okay, I'll figure that out now, right? Okay. Last year, he held back a little bit. Last year, he pulled back and he really fought himself in terms of letting the cat out the bag, right? So he had, he had more plays later on. What I found it helped that, that Cooper Rush was your quarterback it definitely for a little helped bit that too. Cooper Rush was there. Um, I think that Kellen Moore was unable to unveil what he really wanted to do here in Dallas because of, let me use the examples. Earlier in the season, you remember there was a lot of uh, miscommunication between Dak, CD, right? Mm -hmm. Whether Dak was throwing the right ball versus the right coverages yep. or CD was reading the right coverages. That Those read concepts are what I really feel that Kellen Moore wanted to do. And he couldn't do that because the guys were seemingly unable to execute it the way that they needed to. So with that, he pulled back from the passing game. He dumbed down the, 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 um, the scheme, right? Had a lot more simplified concepts and he ran the ball. 
right? So he almost always was forcibly had to run the ball. And that was more what Mike McCarthy likes. He likes it streamlined. But that, that's not necessarily what Kellen Moore liked. Okay. So I think that they finally had a parting of the seas. And what you're going to see now is a lot more consistency in terms of running, right? Time management. You're seeing these guys have a big, oh, they're splurging on defense right now, right? Mm-hmm. They want a dominant defense, but they don't want those guys on the field long. So they want to control the ball. They want to run the clock out, right? And then when defense gets out there, they're so fresh that you can't do anything offensively, which leads you to winning ball games. Okay. I don't know if this name interests you at all. If we're obviously, I'm Bobby Wagner, bust. But if you're talking about a left guard, is Dalton Reisner from the Broncos is out on the market, second round pick. Some will say that they believe he's been disappointing, but. The particular part of his game that I think is intriguing that we've been looking for is he was 10th in the league last year in run block win rate. Mm. And so his pass block win rate is more mediocre, kind of middle of the pack, but he is at the higher end in terms of run block win rate. He will be 28. He has been steady. I think he's never played less than 15 games in an NFL season, which I realize is not every game, but like if you're looking for somebody who can be out there and he is still out on the market. Now you talked about Denver making moves to upgrade their offensive line. So I think you can look at Dalton and be like, but does that mean he was not good enough for them? I think that's fair, but if he excels at run blocking, that is an intriguing aspect to his game. It very much so is. And I think that with the new offensive line coach, the new old uh, offensive line coach for Dallas, um, you know, from my conversations with Nate Newton, the tenacity and the run blocking is not going to be a question mark at all. Like that's going to be a okay, that's going to be demanded, right? That's going to be that's going to be a requirement. By and the way, just looking at a mock draft right now, picks twenty four through thirty one, they do have four offensive linemen going okay. in that now, mostly offensive tackle, and obviously we saw last year Smith pushed yep. into guard. So I mean, it could be at pick twenty six you address this with that pick. And with Reisner, he's K State product, which means he only wins games that you don't expect him to win. Isn't that kind of how oh, K State is? It. You're like out of nowhere. You're like, where the hell did that come from? Rolando Blackman. But I, I do have questions. If Sean Payton doesn't want to sign an offensive lineman back, I have questions. Yeah, I have questions because that's something that he values like deeply. Even in my time in Seattle, after I left Seattle, they went back in and, and got Max from the center position, right? And that was like the the cornerstone of his offense. Like we need a dog at center. And we're going to build everybody else around it. Drew Brees is the last thing he's going to have to worry about is protection. And I think that's his, uh, side, you know, his philosophy there. So if he's if he's willing to let you walk, concern, have some concerns, you. yeah. Uh, and and I know we probably will get into this more tomorrow, but this is another thing that I really like about these moves is the draft is still there, but it feels like you've already taken steps Huge towards steps. being best available team. Correct. You know, I, I know you won't look in every round and just be like, yeah. eh, who the hell cares? Let's just take best available, sure. but. That's a good spot to be in because it means you're grabbing talent. Yeah, you're in a. I think Dallas is in a great spot. And they were in a great spot last year. I honestly thought that they would have made some moves before the trade deadline because they have so much equity at the defensive line position. They have so much yeah. equity at the defensive line position. Now, that's not to say that they want to part ways with any of these guys, but when you're looking at some, you know, some draft equity and some capital to be able to trade some guys away, they're in a good position to fill some holes that most teams still need. Um, so you can acquire some draft picks. You can acquire some leverage there to be able to go out there and execute some of these moves that you're hoping to, to achieve. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105 Through the Fan. We got Isaiah Stan back with us for this entire hour. And now, okay. he said he's good with shenanigans as well. So let's do a little Mike Likes It. Well, Isaiah Stanback, if people don't know, was a quarterback at the University of Washington. Is it Wash? Is it University of University Washington? Of Washington that's Thank right. you. I always Huskies. get confused. Yeah, no, don't, get like, it, don't get us confused with the other guys. You okay. guys win the Apple Cup pretty oh, yeah, consistently. That's what we do, man. Yeah. Okay. So this is going to be interesting because I'm going to bring in a little bit of baseball talk here. As I took my boys to the LSU uh, Texas A&M uh, uh, series, series. Uh, down there, and we saw Friday and Saturday. We didn't stay for Sunday, but on Friday so the game night, you left is the game they, that they, they won. won. Yeah, in fact, LSU dominate they're number one in the country and they have the number one college pitcher in the country right now in paul Skeens. and i want to talk about this to you isaiah because this is an interesting guy because he was a dual threat at air force this is his first year at lsu and i looked up his stats and i was like wow i didn't know he was this good at hitting so at air force he had an ops of over 1.1 he was a catcher designated hitter and pitcher at air force the last two years he was freshman of the year in his conference He was considered one of the best hitters in the conference, and he decided this year 
to transfer to LSU and to just be a pitcher. He has zero at bats this year. They're not planning to bat him at all because he has a chance to be a top five pick. The center fielder for LSU right now is considered Dylan Cruz. He's considered the number one overall pick in the draft. And watching him, the Rangers have the number four overall overall pick. He looked the part. He uh, To start the game, he was two for two. He looked every bit of like a major league center fielder. It'll take him a few years to develop, but sure. he'll probably go number one or number two in the draft. So won't be there for the Texas Rangers. But this kid, Paul Skeens has a possibility of being there at number four. His first two innings, he didn't throw a fastball under 99 miles an hour. Easy. He was six foot, he, he is six moly. foot six, 250 pounds, and his butt and his thighs, I mean, he is the perfect build. Mm-hmm. He is everything you would want. It's tough to compare him because he looks like Leighton Vander Esch. Like he is, <laughs> you're like, dude, this Sweet. dude doesn't look like uh, a baseball body. He is, I guess, if you ever saw Noah Syndergaard up close and yeah. personal, like he's a beast. Um, and you look at him like, this dude is a beast. And he dropped down, but not much. After the second inning, he started throwing more 96 to 99, but then held that throughout the whole game. And every once in a while would touch 100, but had a good breaking ball, throwing great. And I'll get away from him for a little bit because, Isaiah, I want to know a little bit about your story at Washington as you were a quarterback for four years there and you get drafted in the fourth round as a wide receiver. I saw your freshman stats, and I believe you had 10 catches as a freshman at Washington. Was there ever a point in your career as a junior or senior that you started hearing, hey, if you go into the NFL, it'll be at a wide receiver position, not at a quarterback position? Did you ever think about – Maybe I should give up quarterbacking my senior year to concentrate on wide receiver. Never. Um, I didn't start hearing those conversations until I got injured, until my college career was done. Um, So for myself, I fought my whole college career trying to remain at quarterback because of a bunch of other things that was going on internally there. So, um, but I was the best guy. I worked my butt off to become the best guy. Um, I became a, they said I couldn't pass right at the time. They said I was a running quarterback, so I worked my butt off to be one of the best passers, right? Um, I, I mean, hell, I, Lamar Jackson won an MVP, and people are still like, I know, he it's can't ridiculous. throw the ball. Um, I think I had the lowest interception ratio. So all the things that people said that I couldn't do, I really addressed. Um, and then I wanted to be the fastest quarterback in the nation. So I went and ran track. Um, and I placed, oh. and placed fifth in Pac-10s um, in 100 meters. So I try to check all the boxes in terms of things that people said I couldn't do and the things that I did well. I try to take them up a level. Um, but I didn't start facing those questions until after I got injured and blew my foot out. And then it was like, okay, now I can't run at the combine. Uh, I wasn't supposed to throw at the combine. Um, I couldn't really do anything on my pro day, right? So I, I couldn't do anything at the senior bowl I, at all. Right? I couldn't go. So there's all these things that I couldn't do to can, to disprove everything that everybody else was saying at that point in time. So when I got drafted by the Cowboys, you know, obviously Jerry wanted me at receiver, but the next phone call I got after being released from Dallas was by Bill Belichick straight to my phone. And he was like, can you still throw the ball? And I was like, absolutely. And he was like, well, I was about to draft you at quarterback before Dallas did. So I went wow. out there and I backed up. I was backing up Tom Brady at quarterback after I left Dallas. Okay. Was there any part of you just real quick along those lines that hated Tom Brady? Like, <laughs> well, that's fine. I, I, lo- if you do, let's talk about that. Is that made you kind of regret the Cowboys drafting you because maybe you would have gotten that more like streamlined experience, and who knows what would have happened? I don't regret any of it. Um, had I, I wish I had have been drafted at quarterback. I yeah. think I, I wish I would have had the opportunity to play more quarterback. By the time I had a real chance, I had been out the position for three years. So um, I wish I could have continued. I think I would have had, I think I'd probably still be in the league had I been playing quarterback because I was asked to play receiver and I literally was just out there as a freshman in college. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And then by the time I came back to the receiver position, it was my rookie year in the NFL um, coming off probably the worst foot injury you know, that you can sustain. And I don't know what the heck I'm doing and I'm not being helped out. My coach wasn't helping me out. There was a whole lot of things that were just kind of against me. And I was just literally trying to figure it out. Um, so I didn't feel like I started becoming a real receiver until after my time in New England. Okay. When it comes to your Dallas Cowboy career, I remember you having to play special teams. Yeah. I'm assuming as a quarterback, you never had to play special teams. <laughs> no. That's my, no. my assumption. Not That's great all. touchdown okay. drive. Now get out there. Jersey on over here. I'm going to be okay. Was there ever a moment, and I know you're trying to stay in the NFL and yeah. make a team any way possible, like, this sucks, man. Like, I do not <laughs> like, I do not like this part of the game of football. Man, I like having impact. 
and I've been I've probably one of the most selfless players ever. I, I as long as I knew that I, as long as I was having fun, as long as I was still passionate about it and I was having an impact on my team's ability to win ball games, I was game for whatever. I really didn't care. Um kick return, punt return, punt coverage, punt block, whatever. Like literally I played it all except for uh field goal on the field goal team. That's the only thing I didn't play was field goal and field goal block. That, everything else I was on the field and I loved it because I knew that team that my team was relying on me. I wasn't gonna be in a stat line. I didn't care about that. I just wanted to make sure that I had an impact um, on on the victory. You know, that's interesting you say that. I have a, two boys right now, 13 and 14 years old, 7th and 8th grade. And because my 14-year-old loves sports and loves watching sports too, he's all into stats. And I try to tell him so many times, stats are very important. But, you know, it's like, Dad, I had 10 points and 3 assists and 3 rebounds. And I'm like, did you win? And it's it's like sometimes I think kids now, because we look so much into stats mm. and individual things, I'm like, sometimes you don't need to score to help your Correct. team win. Sometimes in the game of baseball, there's this thing called sacrifice, where if you have yep. a sacrifice hit or sorry, sacrifice fly or a sack bunt, like that helped your team win, yet you don't get any stats nope. for that. So there's so many times where I love what you're saying because I have to try to explain to my son sometimes. There's a lot of things that aren't stats Correct. that help teams win. That And that's, I'm, I know I'm over at the Cowboys platform, I'm always talking about, I don't really care a whole lot about stats because it doesn't tell the whole story. Um, and there's so many aspects where, you know, you look at the offensive line, there's so many combo blocks that guys will never get never get credit for, yeah. right? There's so many chips that guys will never get credit for. There's, you know, talking about Zeke, right? His contract, you know, what Zeke's asking for, he's going to get, somebody's going to pay him. Yeah. You know, he's somebody's going to pay him because of what he does that does not show up in the stat line. Um, those are the things that are important to and, and obviously you take all of it into account. You need your stat players. You need your guys who don't don't care about stats. But, you know, it's the reason why I like guys like CJ Goodwin are still sticking around. You know, he's not showing up or having a thousand tackles. But guess what? What he does for that team in that locker room and on that spell on those on those core special teams is something that you can't replace. And and it's I, hard to describe sometimes. I think it was Zeke made a big block. And then on the next play, CD like barrels over a guy as he makes his catch a big block can be a huge moment for everybody that sees it happen they're like that dude just did it now i have to go do absolutely. it absolutely yeah absolutely and in those sometimes we see the block here's things that we don't see sometimes i'll tell my son in basketball like you clearing to the corner opened up that driving lane and in football there's things we yes. never talk about on monday where a receiver because we don't know how well he cleared that space right. to open up that space for the next guy but if you do your job correctly it opens up an my, area for another guy my job when i got to new england obviously i was backing up tom brady um it was myself tom brady brian hoyer we're, hoyer, we're at the quarterback position okay well half um, half my time was with the quarterbacks and i'll go to special teams meetings and then i go to receiver meetings like i was at all three meetings well, when I was playing offense and I started starting at the receiver position, it was myself, Wes Welker, uh, Randy Moss, right, and Ed and Julian Edelman. And it's my good room. It's not a bad room. <laughs> so my job solely so was to talent. clear things out for Randy Moss. Like that was my job. Whenever they put me in the slot, I was either blocking somebody, you know, for or I was going and I was running a streak while Randy Moss was running his 18 yard in. And I was the only person that was fast enough to be off the ball and clear it out for Randy Moss. But that's not going to show up, yeah. right? But it it enabled him to run his route and enabled TB12 to be able to throw the ball and get it over to Moss, you know what I'm saying, inside, that, inside the coverage. So to your point, there's a lot of things by a lot of players that don't show up in the stat line. So when we talk about long snappers. <laughs> don't go back to that. It's <laughs> taken really me mean. like 35 <laughs> minutes to recover from the never, James McClain. It, 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 it had been too long. It had been too long. I know. I was pumped about Brandon Cooks, and Isaiah's like, well, hold on. The hell, who's snapping the ball in case you don't score? Well, now, real We're quick, screwed. back to Paul Skeens, the pitcher for LSU, who right now in mock drafts is going three, four, or five. There's a kid, there's a, there's a center fielder for Florida, also in college, who's supposedly going to go one or two, along with the kid Dylan Cruz at LSU, but this guy right now, just to give you an idea, and he is in the SEC, and this is the first time he's ever just concentrated on pitching. He's 5-0 and with a .59 ERA <laughs> in 30 and one-third innings. He has struck out 59 guys <laughs> while giving up 12 hits. Wow. My no. God. So he's every bit of the part. When you watch him, Take if it. if there's Ranger fans right now going, hey, we've already drafted Jack Leiter, and we've drafted Kamar Rocker, and we've drafted so many pitchers lately in the first round, I get it, and you shouldn't stop drafting pitchers. My point is, is 
if you have a great pitching staff, you can pretty much play 500 baseball. Now, you do need defense behind them, and this dude strikes out a ton of people, but if you get this guy, if the Rangers end up with the fourth overall pick, not taking a position player and taking this kid, Paul Skeens, I'm going to tell you, watching him, he's every bit the part of a future ace in Major League Baseball. And the other thing, too, is I always wonder this, how much better can you get when he's been concentrating on catcher, hitting, and pitching? This is the first time in his life he's actually just concentrating on pitching and doing it in the at the hardest level. That's not obviously minor leagues or MLB, in the SEC. And then my last thing for you, Isaiah, is this. Because the the fans at AM, they'll do certain things that you won't see at Major League Baseball games. Like when you walk a guy, if you throw the next pitch, they're like, ball five, ball, <laughs> ball five. five. Yeah. And so they're going, they have different chants and yeah. everything to try to get into the other team's head. Where was the toughest place for you to play college football? And how much different is playing college football environment than playing NFL football environment? Oh, good question. Uh, toughest environment was University of Oregon. Hate those doggone ducks, but... Yeah, that that environment was crazy. Um, obviously, they they hated the dogs and the dogs hated the ducks. So it was always a, a serious um, encounter at that at that field. Um, and then in the NFL, I would say Philly. Everybody yeah, Philly. Them. Everybody. I mean, Philly is Philly's amped. I mean, like we would get there the night before, and you had time to go walk around and eat. And you you, you walked around for about five minutes. You're like, you know, we should probably get back to the hotel. <laughs> Let's go get. We some should room probably service. we should probably go get some room <laughs> service. <laughs> Yeah. Are cheesesteaks in Philadelphia overrated? Do you feel like they're better in Philadelphia than in other you know places? I didn't want to be on the streets long enough <laughs> to actually sit in line and get one. Plus, you so, know someone at one of those spots would be like, oh, I know him. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Here's no, my special sauce. Right through there. Well, yeah. to your point in Philadelphia, we had a kid, John Lannon, came up to the major leagues, hit Chase Utley, broke his hand, just like Jose Altuve now out, out a few months after getting hit in the hand during this weekend is – the Philly fans knew where the family section was and my wife was there. And at the time, my two-year-old daughter, and they tried to fight everybody in our family Fishes, section. Yeah. And I just told my wife, just, oh my don't, just, just don't go to the game yeah. tomorrow. I'm not pitching. And these people are crazy. And the ushers could have cared less. They're yeah. like, if they want to <laughs> fight them, fight them. <laughs> yeah. uh, Kevin, by the way, Isaac <sighs> Alarcone, I don't know if you've seen this, according to Todd Archer, is be good news. he is the international player from the Pathway program. Yep. Moving to defensive line this uh, training game. Oh. They like what they saw uh, in practice, and they said, let's see if he has a chance there. But they, they're, or do you think they heard our segment? Yeah. They're like, well, hold on. We yeah. need hey. some more depth here. That's exactly like, what happened. He's a large human being, by yeah. the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Man, that's a great point. He well, likes cake. I, that's great. That's <laughs> a good point as well. Man, Isaiah, thank you so much for jumping on with us. We always have fun with you when we get to talk to you. Having you in studio and for a longer period of time is absolutely phenomenal. Thank you very much. Thank you all sir. for having me on, man. I appreciate it. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105 Through the Fan. Coming up next, it's time for the C Block starring Corey Majors and maybe another special guest. Yeah, Jared Sandler's going to join us for a quick But hit. not in studio. And then we got to talk about how old I am, Kevin. I think what? it's time to hang it up. What? Next on The Fan. The Fan is...
Secured by DFWSecurity.com. It's the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Don't forget all the big things happening on the station today. Clarence Hill coming up on the Get Right at 720. And then G-Bag will be doing their show at Rally House off of Preston and Forest. And I heard they'll be giving away three Texas Rangers jerseys. That's what you have to compete with, Corey. Three Texas Rangers yeah. jerseys? Yeah, so Rally it's time. House. Rally House. We got every team. We're going to name them in five seconds. Do it. Rangers, Cowboys, Stars, don't mess with SMU, TCU, Dallas, Baptist, UTD. Don't forget about Texas Tech and maybe Texas and Texas and Rally House. You said Baylor? And Baylor. You forgot Baylor That's in, in the next commercial. You said UNT though, right? Uh, Sure. I don't think you said UNT. I said UTD. Did you say uh, Texas A&M what? Corpus Christi? I, no. I, that's when we need more time for the commercial or budget the very first part of the commercial differently. <laughs> now it's time for the C Block starring and Corey Majors. Now it is time to talk with our good friend from Arizona. Well, he's not from Arizona. Oh, he's great. in Arizona right now. It is Jared Sandler, thanks to Sonic. Mm. Good. Good. Jared, how's it going, man? Hey guys, what's going on? Is the base is the World Baseball Classic turning into everything you thought it would be? Or- well, I love the attention. I love the the passion. Um, I I'm still like trying to get into it. Um, I thought you know the Trey Turner yeah, home run moment. Left. Okay. <laughs> I, know, I know, I know, I know. Are I'm you not. Keith Overman <laughs> in this thing? I, no, I'm not. I I love that they do it. I I still I wish there's just not a perfect time to do it. I think this is probably the best of all the options. I love that they do it. I just still have a tough time with like the fact that Brady Singer is starting a big game. The fact that honestly, like I know he got out of that jam in the first inning, but Adam Wainwright, who has had an an incredible career, but right now it should not be representing the U.S. as one of their best pitchers. But it is what it is, uh, and they're in the finals again, which is awesome. But I just really love, you know, I've, I've read stuff about the numbers in terms of viewership and attendance and whatnot and that's great i mean whatever to grow the sport of baseball uh i think is is incredibly important right now and obviously the wbc is doing that well i'll tell you this they may have not have gotten all the like the greatest pitchers for the team but they were like we'll get the best lineup and we'll my god we'll settle for that and that's worked out for them so far jared 
Yeah, no, the lineup is great. And you, you look at, like, who's not able to crack the lineup, it uh, kind of <laughs> highlights and underscores that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's I, I did go to one of the games. I went to the U.S. Great Britain one, uh, and it was packed, and, you know, the energy was great. Um, did you and, think those and, Great so, Britain you know, uniforms look really cool in person? <laughs> they, I mean, in a in a – in an ironic way, they were also. I'd go and get one. I mean, I thought it was, especially when I forget oh. who it was, it was Vance Worley who the T fell off. So, they, like, it really looked like the most, like, shoddy, like, <laughs> you know, eight year old. Let's, uh, everyone gets the same uniform and then we'll, like, iron press the. Yeah, the iron wasn't hot enough. The day before. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was interesting. But, uh, yeah, the, the, the lineup's great and uh, it is cool. You know, if the U.S. can repeat, we'll uh, definitely watch the semifinal. Uh, tonight, the other semifinal, and then uh, tomorrow we'll uh, watch the championship. I, I think it's funny that Jared said I would get one because he knows he could go get one at Walmart, just oh, the shirt, sure. and then just iron on whatever he we wants. We should make, make him one. one. He wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> yes, we should make one for Jared. <laughs> All right, uh, Jared, I'm, I'm I'm curious two things. How A, how did Marcus Simeon feel after he got his first uh, home run of, of the spring? <laughs> Marcus pretty much feels the same way no matter what's going on. He's uh he is about as stoic, even keel as uh, as I've seen. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know that he was tremendously moved by it, but it was it was nice to see. It was cool. I looked down. I mean, Marcus and Nathaniel Lowe, Corey Seager, all these guys are having really good springs. And then you know, Dolis Garcia's. You know, I, I don't know if we'll carry over. Um, we'll have to wait and see. But you know, the plate discipline he's demonstrated has been really impressive. So um, again, it, it doesn't mean anything. Unfortunately, you don't get any bonus points or anything for spring uh, spring success, but I guess it's better that these guys perform well than the alternatives, so uh, that was definitely nice. You know, you talk, we talked earlier about Robbie Grossman being the left fielder, as Boach talked about that, and we know that Leoti is out to start the season and Adolis is having a good spring training. What's your bet on the center field position for the first month of the Texas Rangers season? So Boach earlier today said that he thinks Leoti is close. Um, oh, I, I don't. I don't know that. that mean, I don't think that means ready for opening day, but hopefully not. Uh, you know, too deep into April, um, and I think maybe what you're alluding to, or maybe I'm, I'm misguided, Mike, is you know would they consider a Dolis in center? Uh, yeah. And yeah, I, I think that's a fair question, especially because it would be short term. You know, what I don't think they want is for a Dolis to be in center for a long period of time because I just don't think they want to wear him out. Uh, but for a week or two. You know, Bubba Tom, Butch has consistently talked about how Bubba's got to make more contact. And he's done it in a way, you know, very gentle, but like wanting to make a point and done in a way where it's like, yeah, we're not, we're not ready to just hand him the keys. Uh, could they, but he also emphasized the importance of defense, which I think gives Travis Jankowski, a, you know, an advantage of making the team what they considered platooning Jankowski and Bubba, um, or would they, you know, some nights have Jankowski in center, some in, with the Dolis. Uh, you know, I think the question then you got to ask is, all right, who's your right fielder? And, uh, you know, how do you, how do you fill the corners? Robbie Grossman maybe goes to right. And then Ezekiel Duran goes to left or Josh Smith. So they have options. Uh, but I don't think based on what Boach said this morning that they expect at this time Leody to be out for an extended period once the regular season starts. All right, Jared, we really appreciate your time, man. Uh, we will get back with you tomorrow, and we're getting closer and closer mm. to the most important game of the entire season, and that is the first game. That Oh, I thought Can't you were talking wait. about Japan versus oh, United Mexico. States tomorrow night, oh. man. Yeah, Are you already is moving? That your prediction? I, that is my prediction. I am very interested tonight, Jared, to see the 21-year-old Japanese guy pitch and just wondering how yeah. quickly he's going to make the jump to the major leagues. Yeah, it will definitely be fun for sure, especially seeing him on a big stage. Bye, Jared. Love you, man. Yeah. See you guys. There he goes. Ouch. What? He didn't say he loves you back. He does. I'll, you know what? I'm going to text him that. Hold on. I was just also through, thought through the logistics of I'm sad on Friday. We're going to be at Loop 9 Barbecue. Yes. On a day I can't eat meat. You can eat meat. Oh. You can eat meat. You choose not to. Oh. That's your choice. That's fair. Based on how you feel about That's things, fair. I believe. And Kevin, like, do you, are you gonna have eggs on Friday? Look, we'll get into that discussion. <laughs> All right, there. All right, Mike. Here's the yes. deal. In the C block, where are we gonna be Friday? Loop, Loop Nine, Nine Barbecue, Barbecue. In Grand Prairie. Can't wait to be there. It's gonna be so good, dude. Oh my gosh.
in your face, everybody else. Well, I they, mean, they can everybody come else join can come us. out there, Mike. Okay. They, they can be with us, too, if they want to. Remember G-Bag's at Rally House today. Well, G-Bag, I guess, they could be there, too. So that's something else I didn't think about. They they're could come all, by and say hi. They're also going to be in a barber college later this week. What? Are you serious? True story. I want a haircut. Stay focused. Old yeah, man. what's in your blog? Guys, when is it too old? When are you too old to go on water slides? Because I think I have got... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's a great question. I've been, to, I've been to Wet n Wild Hurricane Harbor uh -huh. recently. I didn't go last year. But I've been on whatever it's called. I call it the Jimmy Fly Snooker. What? Uh -huh. But I know that it's not it. What is the one called that the kind Geronimo? of the Bombay, Geronimo? the Geronimo? whatever it's called? For some reason, I've always called it the Jimmy Fly Snooker. And I know that's not right. Super and I know fly. it's a, <laughs> so weird. Yeah. I might have murdered somebody. Oh God. Um, <laughs> I won't do the one where they where you're like in a tube and it just dr at some point. That's the, the Bombay. Drops. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not doing that. But. I think I'm too old for that now. Okay. I'll do other water slides, but I don't want to do the one that goes somewhat straight down. That one, that one I'm done with. We, uh, all right. So last year in Mexico, we, Carter went on that one. They had that at that park in, in Mexico. I can't remember the name of the park now. It was, wild. it was awesome. It was like, just like Wet and Wild, but they also had the family ride. That's kind of like the Bubba Tub. All right, oh, but, yeah. but different because when you go down, then it sends you all the way back up another slide, and then you kind of swirl until you go down. Similar to the Great Wolf Lodge, you, you yes. know the the, the the tornado. Oh no, is this what this is about? Did you get hurt at Great Wolf so Lodge? So last year in Mexico, I went with Lucy on that ride, uh, and I got scared. And this happened too with Avery okay. once. We were on the pirate ship, and he started floating, and I was like, I can't oh ever do this gosh. again. So we're I, I got scared while I was with Lucy, and I grabbed her. And when I grabbed her hand to make sure she didn't fly out of the tube, yeah. which she has the greatest death grip ever, by the way. I, I hurt my back. Mm. And so the Lord, because you're kind of being moved around and stuff. Yeah. And so then we go on the Texas tornado or whatever it is at Great Wolf Lodge this weekend. By the way, you're right. There are some times where you're like, maybe, maybe I didn't have enough money for that place. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> but like I, I love Great Wolf Lodge, but I remember the first time I ever stayed there is my mom was like, oh, here, I got you a $300 gift card to Great Wolf Lodge. And I thought, good Lord, I'm going to buy everything there. And then I realized you're going to buy part of one night. Yeah. And and so we we end up going, we get on the slides, and it was that, it was the the green one, actually, that got me. Because I it was my neck at first. Because I was like, oh, like straining. It's not like it's going to help. If I fall out, I'm going to land in water. That's, that's all that's going to happen to me. But then we get on the red one. All right. <laughs> And so a great here's point. the here's the weird part. So, but you're really not sure. You're going down the slide. <laughs> you, when you get scared, you're hoping for the best. Oh yeah, I I think <laughs> you don't no think I'm of falling going, into water. In the end, it'll be just fine. Yeah, yeah I think I might die. Right yes, now. I'm with you on that. So me and Carter <laughs> and Lucy go up to get on the Texas tornado thing. All right, and when we get up there, there's this little tiny kid all by himself. And he has nobody to go with on the slide. Oh, no. And so his parent, his, not his parents, the, the guy who's running the thing up there is like, hey, he can ride with y'all because it can seat four. And I was like, I don't know this kid, but that's fine. We're, we're going on a slide. I'm sure his parents are at the bottom. We get on this slide. And then I realize, like, I can't sit the way I want to because now we have four people. And whenever it was just me and Carter and Lucy, I could spread my legs out a little more, have a little more space and everything. This little kid... As we're on the slide, Kevin, I, I like sort of falling back off of it. Oh, no. And in order to balance myself, I stuck my foot up and kicked this kid in the face. Oh, my gosh, and Corey. I was like, oh, my gosh. He didn't complain about it or anything. He was just giggling. So it was, I guess that's fine. But that's when I hurt my back, Kevin. That's when everything started going wrong. And now Are you more this, concerned about that or that kid's face? I am not concerned about that kid's face. That His dad should have gone up on the slide with him or something. Like, he, he, seriously, oh. dude, what are you sitting in that kid? Up hey, on a four person what, if slide. He, what if he didn't have a dad? He did. At the end of the slide, oh, I saw him with his oh. dad. They high five. It could like, have been a friend. Like You're right. Kevin. Yeah. 
the stepdad trying to impress Kevin, his inner <laughs> child, right? Yes, there. I my dad was never around. Yes, that is fair. So there was so there was this moment where I have now hurt my back, and I know we usually have that foam. Is that foam thing the foam is that roller? What you're looking for is the foam roll around here, Mike? It's, isn't it right there? Oh my gosh, I need that thing. I don't worse. think you look very hard for that at all. <laughs> it's like right freaking there. Uh, and no, I'm not rich. I got the stay at Great Wolf Lodge uh, on a very for a very good price. A very look, reasonable price. I'll okay. tell you this. I don't, I don't think I'm going to get an endorsement off. You of take this. your water tester to see how the water <laughs> the pH uh, Mike, balance. Mike, there were moments when urine. I saw bubbles coming out of the you know the kid park where yeah. the big bucket is. I saw bubbles like reach flowing into the the <laughs> yeah. lazy river. Yeah. Water turns blue, and I was like, that has got to be where the pee comes from. <laughs> I mean, look. Great Wolf Lodge is awesome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I loved it. Both times I went, I loved it. The kiddo I loved still it. still smell chlorine. It is very expensive. But, like, also they're smart because they're like, look, we have these restaurants and bakeries and shops. Their goal, mm -hmm. it's like Las Vegas. Yeah. Their goal is to make sure you never leave that facility and you're like, oh, man, I don't know. $12 for a muffin is a lot. But what am I going to do? Go outside? Yeah. Why would I we do that? In a non-pool environment? Yeah, think how much Vegas is going to charge when we're there for the Cowboys Super Bowl Oh, this my year. gosh. The expenses yeah. on that are going to be outrageous. Right, Mike? Yeah. They are. Yeah. But I won't do them. I'm just like, <laughs> it. this company, it just it's miserable. <laughs> That's not what money. I was trying oh, to do. Anyway, like, so I think like, that just I'm- Just charge me money. Just I'm, say it's over. I might retire mm -hmm. from water sliding. And I guess that means so I'm- You're telling Lucy says, why won't you go on the water slide with me? Because you're you're young and I'm- Are you mad old. at me? No, you need to go on that slide with your brothers. You have brothers who are old enough to go on this slide. Or she's big enough now, she can go by herself. Now that's what I'm going to start telling her. And then some other guy on their radio show is going to tell the story about how you weren't with Lucy on the <laughs> water slide. Happens, she got kicked in the face. Back in the day, parents just drop you off at Six Flags. Yes, for sure. Well, like, Good luck. I'll be back here at nine o'clock. Yeah, here's three dollars for food. You I'll see self, you in yeah, eight we have hours. Cell phones. Yeah. It's like I'm going to be back here at seven p.m. or eight p.m. And I expect right you outside here. <laughs> And if not, we'll call the police, I guess. And yeah. be like, I dropped them I off at 10 a.m. and it's 7 p.m. and they're not back. What did our parents do the whole time while we were at the water park? Man, I was dying. Yeah. I, well, you know what? But you never know. I'm starting to think that when my mom told me she had to go to like a financial planning meeting that would boyfriend. take all day, that like, yes, a little bit. That is a little Hold bit. We've never had these talks. That's what C Block is tomorrow. We get in deep with Kevin. Do you think I yeah. should ask my mom about this first? She listens to the show a lot. Did you ever go to a bar and be like, are you my dad? <laughs> no, I knew who my dad was. He just chose Dude, to do other things. I was at breakfast life. with my roommate once, my, my really good friend. And we we're just sitting there and this kid walks up to him and just goes, dad. <laughs> and he, he looked at this kid and he was like, I am not your dad. Man. And the mom walked over and was like, that's not your dad. He could be. And then, walked oh, off. my gosh. OK, so I know we got to go. But real quick, was that was cute. one of my favorite things. My freshman year at college is my roommate. It told me about some gal that he broke up with <laughs> and she sent him something in the mail and it said, happy Father's Day. Oh, my gosh. And I thought, oh, my God. He freaked out. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next, from game-winning goals to franchise records to an ass-kicking sister, the legend of Robo grows again. We'll do it next right here on The Fan.
This segment on the KNC Masterpiece is brought to you by Frankel & Frankel. There's a reason you need a special license to drive a big truck. So companies that hire drivers and put them in a big truck should be held accountable for what happens when one hurts you. Frankly, you need Frankel & Frankel. That consultation, it is always free. Visit truckwreck.com. Hinson Robertson. Off pass to Robertson. Hintz goes for the goal. Robertson. Nice move. Backhand. Scores! Robertson on the backhand. Wins it in overtime. Stars 6-5 over the Flames in Calgary. Jason Robertson and the Stars are awesome again. However, I need to talk about something else first. Corey, this was the text I got in the break. Who do you think the text was from? Me. Jess. Noah. Your mom. It's from my mom. About her dates. She does listen to the show. Yes, Kevin Michael. I am listening to your show. I got the last name dropped on me, too. So we better. That's all that she said, though? Yes. She just. That was it. She just threw Kevin Michael out there. Yes. Which I don't know if I ever knew your middle name was Michael. Well, now you do. This is weird. I've known you for almost 17 years. I think this is the first time I've ever known your name. Your middle name was Michael. Because it only gets used when I'm Let's guess Corey's middle name. I mean, I know what his middle name is. Pori. <laughs> Corey Pori. Corey Kevin. <laughs> Corey so Sean. What did, did she didn't like she didn't go on about whether or not she, when she dropped uh, you off if she went to go yeah. to financial meetings or didn't she? I think when it says Kevin Michael, I am listening. That tells you all you need to know. That pretty much to me is translated as so watching. I'll tell you this. Because of the the son that she raised by by herself, also with I'm sure, assuming she had a community with her, uh, but the son that she raised by herself, yeah, that's right. all alone, that's right, along with Mookie Blaylock and Garland, <laughs> turned out to be a pretty fine guy. All right, pretty fine man. So she did a good job. Oh, I thought you were talking about Mookie. I will credit. <laughs> I mean, he did well too. I will credit well, uh, your then. mom. <laughs> For you. Okay, thank you very much. Your sister, on the other hand. <laughs> for a while, Mookie Blaylock was doing well. When you went to Garland basketball games, you're like, is that my dad up there, Mom? <laughs> no. They no, I Mookie. know. I told you I know who my dad was. That was not a mystery. He is just like, I'm going to go do some other stuff. And they didn't hang Mookie Blaylock up there. They just hung his jersey. Uh-huh. Which was really, I'm going to be honest, when we were at Duncanville and we went to Garland, we're the like, hell is happening that is right really now? cheap looking that you just took a New Jersey Nets jersey and just hung it up there. <laughs> like, it looks like somebody threw it up there on a coat rack and luckily it stuck. We're like, you can do more for Mookie Blaylock. <laughs> So we're talking Where about the stars got here. Do you think they got it from like Kmart? I, like I think they got it from Rally House. Yeah, I they think went they to Rally, Rally House, House and they're like, throw it up there and see what happens. <laughs> you can see the G-Mag Nation there today. Boom. All right. Luca's out tonight. That means Kyrie's going to play. <laughs> Hold on. Stop. <laughs> Stop what you're doing right now. Oh, crap. Markeith Morris is also out. Okay. Oh, no. I don't care. Tim this Hardaway Jr. and Kyrie remain questionable. Okay, I do not like this little thing that y'all have started in terms of, well, if Luka won't play, then Kyrie play. And then Kyrie can't play on Wednesday, and you know Luka's going to be back. Well, stop is that. Luka playing tonight? No. Is possibly Kyrie? It, yes. How then come we there haven't you go. got an update on that? I know Luka will never do this, and there has to be somewhat of a commitment to Kyrie. And Look, I get Kyrie can't negotiate a contract, and he doesn't want to negotiate a contract yet, but... If Kyrie is a future Dallas Maverick and he signs in the offseason with the Dallas Mavericks and we know that we think for the next three years they're going to be together playing basketball. I wonder if they could have it's a totally different game, but I wonder if you could have Kyrie being more of like I am the point guard and and Luca goes more to like a Larry Bird role. Larry Bird handled the ball quite a bit, yeah. but Larry Bird ran down the court. At times, he would run a fast break, but Larry Bird played more off the ball and worked off the ball, but I just don't think Luka wants to do that at all. But it might be best for the team if Kyrie is a future Dallas Maverick that if we're going to play, I don't know, 55 games together yeah. a season – that maybe there's a little bit more defined roles instead of like, I don't know, are you the point guard? I don't know, I'll be the point guard right now. Mark, you want to be the point guard? Mark Stein did say that the Mavericks want to re-sign Kyrie, right. but there's just still so much uncertainty right. with him. So there's I, that to continue, Kevin. And I think anybody who says they definitively know what right. he's thinking, I'm like, no, you don't. Right. Are you Kyrie Irving? Then you don't. Yeah. 
I agree with that. That's why I try to put out there. It's not that I know. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah. have a person who's oh, for very sure. connected for sure. in the NBA. Now, let's talk a little hockey. I know yes. we have moved around a lot. You know what I say all the time because of you, Mike? Stick and puck. I'm like, you know what they say about hockey? It's played on ice. And Facts. I've never seen hockey not played on ice. Well, that, what about roller hockey? What about field hockey? Man, that argument <laughs> fell apart so unbelievably fast. That was amazing. They're using hockey in way too many things. <laughs> what about air hockey? There's yeah. hockey? Oh my god! Did you just say they're using hockey in too many things? Yeah. They need right. to change words. Okay. Now I'm going to ask a non-stars question first and see if I can stump Joey with my amazing hockey knowledge. Avalanche. Are you? <laughs> he knows the NHL teams. Are you familiar with the exploits of Kevin Lankinen? I am not. Oh, my God. Isn't he the guy who quit TCU basketball? That, no. Whatever the rest of that sentence is, the answer is no. Lankinen is a goalie for the Predators. Yesterday, the Predators lost 7-0. to mm. At the end of the tough, first man. period, they were losing 6-0. to that's because here is Lankinen's actual stat line. He faced a robust five shots and made one save. So they pulled him after he gave up four goals on the first five shots of the game to put the Predators in a five to nothing hole, which they would not recover from. So that's not good. No. Is what you're saying. That is very bad. Okay. Very, very but bad. But we don't like the Predators. That's true. So we support this. Ha. Yeah. I'm glad that they lost. Now, for the Dallas Stars, we played the cut of Jason Robertson scoring the game-winning goal, 6-5 to five over Calgary. The Stars are atop the Central, but as we've talked about, for most of the way, it is tight, 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 because you can make the argument, well, the Avalanche still have two extra games to play, two games in hand. They could jump the Stars, but you're one point ahead of Minnesota as you go into the last 12 games, and it's looking great in terms of finishing in that top three, but if you want to be the division champion, it looks like it's going to come down to the wire. So that's why that was such a huge win, because the Stars have had way too many games, and in one point, that you like, just statistically, we probably should have got two points a few more times along the way. From the 972, how many kids has Corey kicked in the face? And I think it's only the one. I No chance. I I'll don't, take the over. I don't, I think don't know I've, the answer, but I'll take the over. I don't think I've ever kicked another kid in the face. I kicked one in the chest once. I was a kid, that's too. that's better. We were both kids. <laughs> Oh, man, I was a high schooler, and I kicked another kid in the chest. So that's a different were story. Were they in high school? I was babysitting. Oh, my God. And we were play fighting, and I didn't mm -hmm. expect him to catch my foot with his chest. That was his fault. He turned mm -hmm. out to be a good kid, though. Mm -hmm. His sister actually used to work here with us for a while. Remember, I used to oh, babysit Oh, yeah. Her. No, now I know. Derek her. knows her. Yeah. Yes, I know who you're talking about now. All right, so some fun stuff about Jason Robertson thus far. He is now the first player. Think about this. This is crazy. He's the first player in franchise history to score 40 or more goals in back-to-back -back seasons. That's crazy. He has now tied his career high of 41 goals. You would like to think he will surpass that. He's on pace for 48 goals this season. That would be the second most since the team moved to Dallas. Behind only Mike Madano, might have heard of him, who had 50 in the 93-94 season. But Jason Robertson is also on pace for 103 points, which would be the most points in Dallas Stars history. Now, I know there's some Minnesota North Stars stuff, and, you know, we can get into Neil Broughton and Dino Cicerelli and all that at another point. But in Dallas, this would be the most, and it would beat out the best season from Mike Madonna by 10 points. Man, so he's Jason, already better than Madonna. I mean, saying. and he's 23. Wow. So incredible. It's not a guarantee mm -hmm. that he will get better, but you like to think that that progression will lead him to be significantly better uh, or even somewhat better. Joey, I'm not sure. Like, are you a, are you a pretty big historian about that 99 cup team? Um, a little bit. Okay. I mean, I was in my mom's stomach, but you but know, are you okay? All right. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out. I know about it. <laughs> when, on, on the level of talent, Kevin, like we just thought that that was the world because we didn't yeah. really know much uh, yeah. about hockey in the world yet. Sure. 
on the level of talent, how comparable is the rest of the squad around Robertson now to what we had then? So the only thing I would say, the biggest discrepancy that stands out to me is by the time you got to that cup run in 99 and the ensuing unsuccessful cup run in 2000, is it felt like we had a team full of guys that had seen some stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you had been through these just wars of playoff series with Detroit, with Colorado. That's the biggest thing is I, I don't view this team as no. at least as a unit. They haven't gone like through these epic battles where you're like, I can't effing believe we lost to those guys. Yeah, this team has much less experience in the terms of those playoff runs. I mean, you had New and Dyke who obviously did things before he's in Dallas and yeah. Balfour was or Balfour was obviously arguably the greatest goaltender during yeah. that era with him and Hashik that you know both went at sure. it in that finals so yeah I, I don't think you could compare the two okay. uh, I I mean Darren Hatcher's on the back end Sergey Zubov one of the best offensive defensemen all time <laughs> yeah it would be very hard to to compare and the games just played so much dif differently too. Okay, and that's so, that, that's another yeah. huge factor there for sure. I I guess when it comes to like trying to compare him and Madonna, you know, you you, you brought the numbers up yeah, to yeah, put yeah, him yeah. in that category, but the comparisons are very different, and the skills around him are too. Now, one other thing, since we always try to convince people to get invested in the stars, is I got another note for you about the Jason Robertson family. Is he has, I believe, four siblings. And one of them is a fighter. And she told The Athletic a couple years ago, she goes, whatever my brothers say, it's a lie. I can definitely kick their butts. And that would be Bree Robertson. So Bree Robertson is an expert at jujitsu. And even when she only fought in the 130 pound division, she won the 145 pound division. She's not a black belt yet but that is still a goal. So not even the toughest or perhaps even deadliest in the family. Cause so, you said his younger brother was selected by the Leafs in 19. Is that what yeah, you his younger, okay. he, one of his brothers is in the N, in the NHL and Maple now, Leafs. Yeah. yeah. And oh, so wow. he has another one that's winning jujitsu titles. It's a pretty dang impressive that family. Butt on everybody. Absolutely. But she can kick people, huh? Well, yeah, because that's, part of what she would do uh-huh well she practices kick yeah yeah and there would be more stuff that went into jujitsu i'm more concerned that you now told a story about how you kicked a kid that you were babysitting and now a kid on the water slide it wasn't intentional the second the, well the first was intentional but what it well okay all right the first time it was in a taekwondo tournament all right okay that was an intentional kick uh the second one was the babysitting situation and we were intentionally play fighting, right? Mm -hmm. And then he caught my foot with his chest. All right, so that's the mm -hmm. that's the way that fell. And then I think he had an asthma attack after that. But that's a different story uh, for a different time. Oh, and then no. this one was a complete accident. There, the kid actually should have even been on the float with us. All right, you know, and the, if if everything had gone the way I planned it, nobody nobody would have been sitting where he was to get kicked in the face, Kevin. So, honestly, it's the kid's fault. I don't care how old he was. He shouldn't have been there. That is a bold strategy to Mike's go on Mike's shaking his head offensive. like he agrees with me. Okay, does that make you feel better? Yes, absolutely. Mike being on your side about that makes uh -huh. you feel better. Yes. There's a way to not get kicked. Get out of the way of it. Block it. Yes. That feels like such a thing you Man, said. Man, block it sounds like an amazing. I really like that one. Block yeah. it next time. God, I could just envision you talking with your boys. And you're like, hey, you know what you can do next time? Move out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> or stop same. it from happening. Play better. Yeah. If you get a bad hop and it catches you on the chin, use your glove next time. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We're the KNC <laughs> Masterpiece, the show of sympathy and empathy on 105.3 The Fan. Said. Coming up, still don't know if you should be like ultra jazzed about that. Coming up next, let's talk with those fellas from the G-Bag Nation live from Rally House. They will be broadcasting today. We'll do it next right here on The Fan. At some point.
Cincy masterpiece right here on 105 through the fan and this is a great song I've just been getting beaten down by this most of the day walking in walking in man Right. When we were in Phoenix and we would sing Walking in Phoenix because we were walking around. Yes. We couldn't find the place. We were like, we oh, yeah, no clue where we're going. So we just say, just going to be walking in Memphis. Entertained. Watching the game. Yep. That is true. In case you missed it, no Luca tonight. We still have not heard definitive word on Kyrie, but these two jokers are insinuating he will play <laughs> because Luca's out <laughs> and then are telling us to look forward to Luca playing and Kyrie not. On Wednesday, as they're trying to get that narrative going right now, courtesy of DM leasing, it is time for a chit chat with the fellas from the G Bag Nation. Gentlemen, how is you and where is you today? We are most excellent. Uh, hey, you, thanks for asking. And we are at Rally House here in Dallas on Preston and Forest. How the hell are you? I am doing excellent, and I know you guys have been crushing it at the Rally Houses. I heard that perhaps. They're going to be giving away some Rangers jerseys today. Yes, three Rangers jerseys that they will be giving Ooh. away. So make sure you come on out the Preston and Forest location. Brian's in heaven over here for whatever reason. Oh, you're got, in the LSU part? Yes, we got set up in the LSU section. So he is just, I mean, he feels like he's right back in Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge, yeah. Uh, looking forward. Uh, Eliza, was that her name? Liza. Liza came yeah, we in. Had a big time Tolo. Come big by. time Tolo came in. She's buying a jersey for her son. She's like, "Hey, I listen to you guys every day." She was actually taunting me. Nice. She had better Mav seats than I she did. She dunked when, right on you. She did. Nice. She and I and I was pretty close to the floor that night. She's like, "Well, I had floor seats. I, had floor I was seats, on the floor." So yeah. So she's a big Tolo. So yeah, come on out, hang out with us. Uh, man, this is it's a home game for me. I drove a mile to get here. Did you? I drove literally awesome. a I'll be, mile. I'll be to shocked, get here. Brian, if your LSU Tigers don't win the baseball national championship. Hey, Mike, I want to thank you for being in the stands. Anytime you want to go back and watch. Now, were you there yesterday? I wasn't there. I was there Friday. Okay, you and Saturday. needed. Okay, you needed to go back because we gave up eight. Uh, we gave up four in the bottom. That's the of the only eight reason A and M won is because yeah, Mike wasn't yeah. there. That's what I'm saying, Mike. Anytime you want to go back and see them play uh, <laughs> SEC baseball, they play Arkansas at home next week. And man, I was looking at the schedule not to get off on LSU baseball but the the thing about it is every weekend every weekend is like these the Southeastern Conference just has yeah. so many good series that you can have Arkansas Tennessee Mississippi it's it's a some uh, there's college baseball I think is super 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 strong especially with the atmosphere in so many of those oh SEC Mike's schools. right yeah you guys asked uh you asked uh, Isaiah Isaiah Stanley, about yeah. about yeah and you know, and Mike described the, you know, ball five, you know, and they count pitches and all that. And you're like, okay, yeah, these are these are some tough environments that you got to play in. Now, I'm going to bring this up because it was a school that perhaps your daughter could have gone to, Mike, is Rick Patino is leaving Iona to go to St. John's. So, I think I it's Street John's. Wait, waitresses Jimmy of John's. the greater <laughs> New York area hey, be on the lookout. Hey, did he end up like... Staying with her for a while. St. John's lost my daughter. She sh they should have given more scholarship. <laughs> She's going to UT, Brian. Oh! She's hey! Whoa! There hey, go. there you go. So there she's going to be a Longhorn next year. There you go. Congratulations, Mike. Yep. You and I have something in common: sending checks to Austin every year. Yeah, she needs yeah. a scholarship for being a nerd. She needs to hold on. Yeah. <laughs> she needs to hold on to that. That uh, right now, the valedictorian. I'm like, please hold on to okay. that valedictorian. That's a lot of good money. Yeah. There's nobody showing up late, right? There's no kid that's doing some building like a rocket over there at, at her school. Or, no, you know, man, one that of those would suck that, if the rocket kid Brian, just swooped in and yeah, took the her rocket money. kid. You got to watch the rocket kid or the kid that it like uh, splits the atom or something yeah. like that. My daughter's getting yeah, a little bit of fair. senioritis with just a month to go, pretty much, and I'm like, just well, good hold, for her. Hold on to that that yeah. van, that uh that valedictorian for just a little longer, please. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Mike. That's good. What's she planning on studying there? Uh, I believe art history, Ooh, but she also okay. is like, she's like, I don't want to graduate super early. And I'm like, well, downtown. just go get master's <laughs> degrees or whatever. And yeah. I'm like, cause she's thinking about also like child psychology too. Ooh, I like that. So like get, Ooh. get two, get two degrees. She could practice on you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm a nutcase. <laughs> Did she ever want to be a doctor because no, of your she, wife? None of our kids so far want to be a doctor. Did she ever want to be a baseball player? No, we did softball for question. about two days. Mm. And yeah. she's like, I'm done. 
Like, sound right. like me and the and Cub Scouts. Yeah. When I figured out you had to actually do stuff to win the badges or get the badges. Oh, yeah, me too. I, I kind of I kind of quit. I'm like, oh, I have to build a fire out of two sticks? No, that ain't working. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Can't do that. <laughs> I'm surprised. Go I pick up you... trash on yeah. the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Got to go to play video games yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> No, no oh time. gosh! <laughs> <laughs> the amazing sense of generosity. Hey, that's ninety five percent of us. You know, it's yeah. only the tryhards that are like seventeen years old with their shirts tucked in with yeah. the Boy Scout outfit fully decorated. Yeah, my dad's an Eagle. Hey, many of them. Yeah, my dad's an Eagle Scout. Actually, I think that's what they did back in the fifties. You know, that yep. was kind of an honor thing. Oh yeah. yeah. He raised a son that was kind of a quitter. You know, <laughs> well, and I like how generation. Dawson is still digging at kids, giving effort. And he goes, look at that try hard. <laughs> Hard, trying to get his badge over God, there, he's such a sweat. It's realistic, you know. Hey, salute to those guys. You know, I'm sure they. I'm sure they got everything uh, uh, dotted and crossed. Okay. Next week, we're doing a remote at the Eagle Scout sub uh, building. <laughs> no, not anymore. Oh, not anymore. Yeah. Be the case. Yeah, I think they're you just guys called just picked, scouts. Yeah, you guys just picked that one up. Yeah. All right. Now we were talking about this earlier. Talk about some NCAA tournament stuff. Is there a game in particular that might have broken your bracket, or are you going to try to claim, like Corey, that your bracket is still perfect? I had TCU going all the way. Oh, Timmy dear. broke my heart. Yeah, I thought that TCU was tough. had a chance against at the least, Jags. At least a Richardson guy, at least a DFW guy gets to carry the torch. If you're gonna knock out if you're gonna knock out a, a DFW team, you better at least be from DFW. JJ, I kind of, I, yeah, I lost my way on Marquette. Me I too. Kinda, I felt I felt like Marquette was a team that was kind of battle tested. I like the enthusiasm of their coach. I've learned something in all these years. I've learned something about these brackets. I don't care whatever Tom Izzo's team is at Michigan State. It doesn't matter. You know why? Because he loses like twelve games to start the year, uh, and because he plays every big program, but it makes them better when yeah. they play this time of year. Tom Izzo could play Duke on a battleship somewhere on an aircraft carrier. You know, probably has. Things. Yeah, 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 and, probably and, did, yeah. And you know what I'm saying? And yes. they can, and they and they and they might lose by two. And then the next night you see them, they're playing like at Poly Pavilion at UCLA, yeah. battle testing in that time. And they might lose there. And then by the way, on the way home, we're gonna stop off in in Lawrence, Kansas, and get beat by Kansas. But this time of year, it makes his team better. No and if doubt. you're picking against Michigan State in any time. You know, you're forewarned by me. Jason Garrett makes speeches to his team about coaches as good as Tom Izzo. It's yeah. like, guys, I'm sorry I'm not as good as Tom Izzo, you're but right. let me tell you about what he did. Yeah. Once. yeah. He is not talking about a home plate. He's talking about actually winning games. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Arizona loss really did me in. I had them go into the championship. I also had Marquette making a deep run. We're going to have to figure something out, though, because we did a uh, little show bracket. Yeah. Okay. The loser was going to end up having to do a bet payoff. The problem is Gavin didn't get his bracket in. Yeah. So oh, it's just dear. the three of us, Brian, Eric, and I got myself. all chalk. That's how that works. <laughs> yeah? Because <laughs> Brian was selling pretty good on Friday. Well, Dawson's automatically doing a bet payoff. I would say I would say that's kind number, of... A... Number one, we did not agree that we were doing a bet payoff. When I brought mm. it up on the show, you guys were staring at your shoelaces like you were nervous uh, about another no. payoff because you weren't uh, mad enough. I don't know. I got so like it was not agreed to when I threw out the challenge. points right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting pretty good. I'm bleeped here. Yeah. No, I'm probably going to have to do the bet payoff. Yeah. Number two, I would have had to create an account to do that login, so oh. I I put down no, the I computer. Think it, I think Wolchuk created <laughs> I hear you, man. Well, I did, but I think, I I think I've you. given Gavin my login for ESPN, so he uses yeah. that. So oh. he'd have to make his own login. Okay. Yeah. What do you guys get coming up on the program? And then tell everyone again where you're at today. We are at Rally House, Preston and Forest here, and they have some great deals on all your favorite team's gear. Uh, got a Shaquille O'Neal jersey back here. Yes, it's outstanding. Some some great some Dallas Burn retro gear. You get an, a Zeke Elliott jersey if you want. Probably oh, look at probably that. probably That's a throwback knockdown. at yeah. this point. <laughs> a throwback for sure. Yeah, all kinds of great stuff for whatever team. And and right out of the gates here, our reactions to the Cowboys news over the weekend and where the maps go from here. All right, look That's forward right. Pure to gold it. Pure gold as always. Thanks for asking. Yes. <laughs> Woo! Mm. Got anything mm. you want to add, Mike? We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Go see the G-Bag Nation at Rally House or roll home with them. Come back with us tomorrow, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. right here on 105.3 The Fan. Say walking in Memphis, Kevin. Walking in Memphis. The latest from the star in Frisco.
Studio secured by DFWSecurity.com. You're rolling with the G Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan. Welcome to the Nation. Here we go, Hour One, G Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan. We are live at Rally House, Preston and Forrest. Come on by and get yourself some amazing gear. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. Cowboys get a wide receiver. That is first on the fan on this offseason Cowboys Monday. How the heck are you, General, at your service at ease? There's Brian Broadus. Zach Wolchuk is here at the house uh, with us. And Lucius Alexander is back home in Pimp Cup and Master Control. 75 and fits you. Has the G bag of the day coming up here at 2.30. Carter Freeman coordinates your video. And Ramon Cruz is back with us here on an afternoon drive show. Uh, remote engineering for us, keeping us, uh, keeping us on the air rocking and rolling. How you guys doing? Enjoy your weekend? Yeah, the weekend was wild. Uh, Friday night at Eagles Nest got crazy with the get right as Eric and I went out there. Then Saturday we had some fun fellowshipping uh, out at Twin Peaks. A couple of us got together, which was fun watching the tournament. I don't think I can uh, booze like that back-to-back days. You can't go back-to-back anymore? I don't know, man. I don't know. This is the first time it's really kind of set in to yeah. where it's a Monday and I'm still I'm dragging ass yeah. right now. And I'm, I'm well, hitting myself in the face. I'm trying to drink caffeine. It's, it's a good thing to realize now. You're, what, 31? Yeah. Okay, uh, truckwreck.com fan text. I, I think you're in the zone where you could seriously consider shutting down back-to-backs. Oh. But if you don't uh, want to shut them down yet, there are special occasions. There's wedding weekends still. I mean, you're, you're in your early 30s. You don't have to, but you have to prepare, Brian. You have to eat better. You have to drink more water. You have to give yourself more time for recovery in that morning before you start tearing it up again. But you don't have to give up, Bullchuck. I'm honestly embarrassed for him. Are okay. you? Yeah. Wait, here it is. I, I, I think here it is. I, here it is. I think that you're no. like, tee him up and let him let him go. Sign off, Brian. He's not a young man anymore, Brian. 31. He's pretty young. 31. This is pretty the young. first time this has 31. happened. 31. I know. I know. There, there are kids his age with teenagers, though, running around Last the house. time I'm honest and vulnerable with you. The only time. 31 is past your prime in basketball and football, bro. Okay? That's not a young man anymore. 31. Yeah. My man is like, he's like, he's struggling. Yeah. I'm struggling. I, I mean, really? We went hard. Did you tear it up last night? No, no. Last night was a uh, so, no. wow. Okay, this is this is like a forty-eight hour hangover. You're looking at. That. I don't know what's happening. He, yeah. he, all right, so he, I think hours? it's I think He's it's a lack of hydration. Okay, okay yeah, that makes sense. And I should probably go in and get a men's tea shot. Yeah, that would help. Oh, yeah. tell us more. Maybe that'll. You feel a little low T these days, Wolf. We'll Maybe it's a low T issue. Maybe well, I should get this looked into. Okay, is it the fact that you're now at your own apartment? That you've kind of just like become like just like an old give up guy. Maybe what your old give up guy already? Yeah, oh, this is this he's is old not, give up guy. Look, I'm not he changing. Is. I'm not changing you the damn so, thing. You 31, really? I was trying to run a damn draft. This then, is the you know? first I mean, time he's like giving up. That this has happened. Am I going to change going back to back ham days? Absolutely not. But I'm just being okay, honest. You're feeling it a little bit. You're feeling it a little Today's bit. Today's a day See, where, may, and maybe the weather has something to do with it. I don't know. Sure, it there's so, there's yeah. something it, going it, on. Okay, was it something when you actually got your bar tab? Did that kind of did that kind of mess you up a little was bit? It financial. Yeah. yeah. Was it was it one of those things we we, we kind of looked at like I felt physically oh, sick looking oh, at that. Yeah. Like <laughs> he was standing next to me and I, I looked down at it and I go, 
man, you really did that much damage here? Yeah, it was not a good, that was not a good sight. But shout out to Bobby Bell. Bobby did do a great job of taking care of us. He was like, Eric and I, 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 I got you too. So shout out to Bobby. He oh, took cool. the brunt of the majority of that. But I think, I, you know what it was? I think we did a lot of, and Sean Sharif can do this, where he's just drinking a bunch Sean, of different things. Sean, he doesn't drink the same yeah. drink. He stays he's, physically conditioned. He, right starts, too. Yeah. he starts with a dose Equis, and then he ends up with some type of tequila shot. By the way, Lucius drinks some damn good tequila. Lucius did. Lucius drinks some damn good Lucius tequila. Lucius has the best taste. So yeah. we, were, we yeah. were mixing in some of the tequila. Then Bobby's like, we got to do fireball shots. Then I was trying to stick with my vodka tonic, so I think it was just a, a, a hodgepodge mesh of a bunch of different That sounds terrific. That, that but it was fun. We had a blast. Terrific. But he's quitting. Uh, uh, 5 one okay, two. Go bleep yourself. Getting slim makes the booze hit harder. That's real, especially if you're not eating as much. That could that could be true. Okay. Uh, 31, I'm embarrassed for you, says the 817. Yeah, I'm, never, <laughs> I'm not ever going to say this ever again. Uh, I think that's just post-boozing regret a little bit. That's that's just the, the hangover talking, Brian. It's He'll embarrassing. He'll be back it's, in the Honestly, it's soon. embarrassing. Well, the Cowboys front office is not embarrassing. <laughs> whoa, uh, they, they whoa, have done it, whoa, okay? whoa, whoa, I, I am, I am whoa. Whoa. Opening, I am opening whoa. a new chapter, and I am giving these guys a fresh page, okay? Because this is nice, okay? After years of badgering the Joneses to finally get off their butts and do something about building a championship team, they got closer than they've been in a long time over the weekend. How about guys. this man, huh? About face... Forward march. Let's go. <laughs> Cowboy Gavin's ready to ride. I'm, I'm up on that steed. You know, I'm you, rallying the troops. You've been uh, going ahead and like, hey, Cowboys, NFC's champs, right? This is even before they made these yeah. moves. We were doing, Eric and I were doing Beck QL yesterday. And I love the odds. For the I love the odds for the Cowboys right now with the two moves that they've made. Mm -hmm. They're having a hell of an offseason. I'm, I'm super proud right now. I think they're still, I think they're still working on some things. I think they're working on some things. Another I, big yeah, name? I, we'll see if that's the case. I can't, man. I'm, you know, the closer you get to this thing, it's like, hey, keep alert. Keep alert kind of a thing. And so, you know, you keep alert. Yeah, what we'll about, see. What we'll about see. Hankins? I'd love to see them do Hankins. Me too. That's the one. That's the one I would. I mean, they got three guys in today uh, that they're visiting with. Let's see how maybe a workout visit, how that goes. Maybe somebody gets signed out of that. But I, I, I don't think they've stopped here. I don't think they've stopped. I think they're still – I think there's a list, Gavin and Zach, that they're trying to pick guys off one at a time. You know, it started with Donovan Wilson, Van Der Esch. Hey, let's make a trade. Let. I think they got a, like a little bit of a – well, a systematic plan of how they want to address this uh, team – before they go starting to put boards together in two weeks. Well, shoot, yeah, I'm fired up about what Brandon Cooks is going to do for this uh, offense. Uh, you know, just watching him over the years had a pretty good idea. Once they acquire him, I sat down and watched as much as I possibly could of different plays, and it's very clear he can give you the downfield threat. He's got a knack for finding the ball as it's coming into the catching area. Well, you area. got him right. Uh, but then on top of that, it's wide receiver screens and little stuff over the middle that's going to give you a yak player as well. I think it's perfect for what maybe Mike McCarthy wants to make a little bit more available for Dak. Yeah, and, and the other part of this is, is one, I mean, they're able to keep all their top 100 picks, so they're set up for the draft where they usually do most of their damage. They gave up next to nothing to get these guys when you look at the comp picks that they were awarded. So, and you got two guys that want to be here. Like, Stephon Gilmore wants to be here. Brandon Cooks clearly wanted to be here last year. He was upset when that trade yeah, didn't happen Texans during the GM, season. Yeah, the Texans GM got greedy there. So, you got two guys that were probably, I mean, you mentioned this last week, Brian, with Gilmore, maybe a little checked out. He was playing for a losing team there in Indianapolis. Now you got guys that they believe, hey, I'm on a team that can contend and that can go do something special. You're going to get the best out of these two guys. And Brandon Cooks quietly has been one of the most productive receivers in the NFL over the last six years. We'll do the 6 o'clock sound off, you know, in about uh, three hours and 51 minutes. It'll be your chance to call in. Uh, for now, the truckwreck.com fan the text hell are you is laughing open at, <laughs> at 877-881-1053. You know, does the front office earn respect? Does it signal a change in their philosophy? I'm not sure. You know, oh. one, one, one season is nice. Um, you know, two, two, three off seasons would become a trend. And what I'm, what I'm wondering is, did they decide, guys, we got to get better, we need more stars, or did their patience pay off and a couple of moves came to them? 
that is going to be unpredictable for that to happen next year. Whatever the case, I, I, I am at least optimistic about 2023, and I am shelving my cynicism for the rest of this offseason. I did not see the Gilmore trade coming, and I don't think anybody in the league really saw that one coming either. So that one, I'm, and the, and the, I think the bigger thing about the Gilmore trade, no new money. Yeah. No new money on that. Right. You know, no new money. Hey, we're not having to add. It's not like, hey, okay, we're going to make this trade. You got to rework a deal and all that. I bet there's other agents around the league that are like, what the bleep is this guy doing? See, and that's what makes me think that maybe it was just patience over these years. And the Cowboys are waiting for the perfect deals to fall in their lap. And we just got lucky that two happened in five days. I hope it's not that. I uh, hope it's them. We're going to make something happen. And and what we just witnessed is them picking up the phone and working their asses off to find deals that make sense for their cap management and their roster. I hope that's what we just saw, yeah. which is the opposite of them sitting on their yacht when free agency starts. Yeah, and kudos to Bobby. I mean, he told us this is basically what they wanted in a receiver. They wanted a guy uh, that Bobby kinda... wrote a great article um, up on yeah. the website about that. Nice. Actually, well in advance yep. of everything that went down Sunday. They didn't want to give up a premium pick. Yeah, exactly. And they didn't. So, I mean, you could pretty much have taken Hopkins out of this, the, the Denver receivers, assuming they're actually mm. really still on the block. But... Brandon Cooks worked out perfectly, and the fact that Houston's also picking up $6 million of that $18 million salary was a huge win for the Cowboys. Okay, uh, 877-881-1053. Love the Cooks move, says the 972 yeah. question, though. Are we worried about our top three receivers as it is now being smaller framed? Um, I'm not that worried about small frame guys. As, as long as you're shifty and you can take advantage of the turf, you know, um, I, I, I like receivers of all sizes. I just like production. If you look at production numbers, and Bobby and I were talking about this on the Love of the Star uh, yesterday. It's actually up right now. You can you could find that if you're interested. And listen after you listen to our show today. Uh, the thing that, that if you look at, there's, uh, there's these metrics that break down how these guys receive the ball, where they receive the ball, slants, goes, stuff like that. This guy's like a 78% slant catcher you know you know when you're talking about if you're talking about a smaller slider guy 78 percent of the time you know when you throw a ball inside to this guy he's going to catch it yeah so you know i mean his his best play is what they call the nine which is that vertical mm -hmm. route which he is really good at but if you're talking about a smaller guy that's able to take a route inside and almost catch 80 percent of the the balls you throw in there on him then I, mean, I tell you what, don't worry so much about that size. Here's my problem with a burner like Cook says the eight one seven. You need to be able to lead the receiver as a QB, and Dak cannot do that. He cannot throw with anticipation. They'll bring it back to Dak every uh, been time. Been a back if they defender can. for yeah. years, but I yeah. can't anymore. Yeah. No, I, I think he does a great job uh, throwing the deep ball. You know, um, that's a little bit different than like dropping balls between levels and throwing with anticipation and tight windows and stuff like that. I don't think Dak excels at that, but he does excel going down the field where he can lead a guy behind the defense. I think he's really good at that How part. many plays did we see T.Y. Hilton right. down the field? Yeah, exactly. Third and, all, and, 30. And, and all of a sudden it's like a, a pass interference or a, a dime pass. You know, I mean, hey, if you want to tell me that Dak has trouble in the middle of the field, intermediate and things like that, maybe on crossers and things, I'll 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 dance with you. Yeah, but the downfield ball, I I I'll have to disagree with. I, you on I that. understand question marks about the quarterback, but two years ago, according to Next Gen Stats, he was the best deep passer in all of football. So cool. I think the the thought that he can't throw the ball deep is is just not accurate. So much other stuff going on though. It's just a huge sports Monday again. We're live at Rally House. President Forrest Waltz in the house already. I don't think he's planning any haircuts today, but one could break out at any time. You never know. Okay. Salute to Mike Miles. Jr. in TCU. He had 24. Put on a show. Horn Frogs fall to Gonzaga last night. Final game before the Sweet 16. So that's set. Um, Lakers saying LeBron back this week. Mavs coming off Friday's win over those Woo! Lakers. Kyrie played and had 38 and, and Kleba with the buzzer beating three. That was so much fun. There was no doubt Kyrie was not going to play that game, right? Oh, absolutely not. He's like, okay, you and guys aren't interested in me? Exactly. In that's Is that what, what I heard? <laughs> like, I, think, I think on Tuesday, Wednesday, I heard, yeah, that whole uh, dynamic about the Lakers. No, we're not interested. Kyrie's like, I don't care. Give me my uniform. Put it in the locker. I'll be there Friday night. And we're he, feeling and he, all right now. Yeah, we feel it all right now. Now he's questionable for this game, though. <laughs> we got me. Got to, you know, got me. Got to, 
got to travel to Memphis. Uh, I don't know, man. This toe's kind of acting yeah. up a little Oops, bit right now. This one's hurting. Yeah, yeah exactly. Maybe, maybe the Mavs were tanking, and he's like, listen, I'll go along with your tank and yeah. pretend like this hurts a lot, but yeah. uh, I want to play this and, yeah. if you don't mind. That was a nice win, though. Oh, Friday my gosh, night, the man. final I, shot from Maxie. I don't care. It's still the Lakers, you know? Mavs are sixth right now. The Lakers are tenth and just a game and a half back. Lakers have won six of ten, yeah. and LeBron's coming back. They're still – we really want a, a deep, deep Lakers run if, if you want to hang on to Kyrie, which I really do right now. Rangers uh, host the Guardians in the spring training action. It is going to start in about 45 minutes. Uh, maybe Sands will join us a little bit later on. Uh, opening day is next Thursday at 3 o'clock right here on The Fan. Crazy scene at the World Baseball Classic. Cuban defectors in Miami protesting the game, booing Cuban players for participating. USA put a hurting on them. Uh, Trey Turner, who hit a tournament-saving grand slam to beat Venezuela in the quarters. Two more bombskis in yesterday's semi, and the U.S. will face the winner of Japan and Mexico, which uh, plays uh, at 6 o'clock tonight. This thing's a lot of fun. I tell you Just what, Just give man. it a shot for like 30 minutes, and you're going to be hooked. If you're a fan of international sports, which usually draws the best out of your competitors, yeah, it's when you put that flag, that name. I mean, it's his... There's players they're interviewing for the U.S. team. They're like, listen, played a lot of baseball in my life. This is the best atmosphere I've ever played in. And and that's that's the, and that's the, the best vibe. lineup ever. That's the yeah. vibe. There's just I mean, so many cool things about it. Yeah, it hopefully, really hopefully it can get some kind of a, a, a dream team vibe going along with yeah. it, and, and sports fans can jump in a little bit more. FC Dallas got the win against Kansas City thanks to uh, Ferreira and Velasco. They'll visit LAFC on Saturday. Stars mm. host the Kraken tomorrow, third in the West, just a few points behind uh, Vegas and, and the Kings, but still leading the division by one point mm. over Minnesota. So it's tight coming down the stretch. Okay, G Bag of the Day is coming up at 2 30. Uh, Woolchuck's going to get you caught up on everything in the association. A quick rim session next, right here on 1053 The Fan. The latest from the Star in Frisco, as well as inside information from around the league. It's DMW. Mm-hmm.
All right, thank you. Uh, it is the Jeep Ag Nation here on 105 Super Fan Live at Rally House. Preston and Forrest, join us. Get some gear. Your favorite team's gear is right here at Rally House. There's a Rally House near you. Jeep Ag Day is coming up in eight minutes. It's time now for Wolfchuck to do this cut up in everything in the NBA. Segment's brought to you by the Frankels. There's a reason you need a special license to drive a big truck. So companies that hire drivers and put them in a big truck should be held accountable for what happens when one hurts you. Frankly, you need Frankel and Frankel. Consultations always free. Truckbreak.com. Here he is, the Wooly Bully, Wolfchuck. Thank you, General. As we are partying here at the Rally House off Preston and Forest, let's go ahead and cut the lights out, put the kids to bed for that afternoon nap, and go all the way around the rim. Let it rain! Rain dance! A rain dance! I got a joint here, man. I've been saving for a special occasion. Mark Stein reporting the Mavs own Luka Doncic downgraded to out for tonight's game against the Memphis Grizzlies. Oh, jeez. Still got that left thigh strain. Tim Hardaway Jr. is dealing with a non-COVID related illness. Kyrie Irving with that right foot soreness. They both remain questionable as of right now, according to the Mavericks. Now, we know what's been going on with Ja Morant. His first game that he is eligible to return is actually tonight. Against our Dallas Mavericks, Sham Sharanya talking on his show earlier today about what he's hearing in regards to John Morant and when he could potentially return to the lineup. Yeah. Or not. Or not. Maybe we maybe we don't. Maybe we, maybe we don't have that ready to rock. That's not that's not a biggie. That's okay. But he thinks that Ja will definitely not be back tonight. Uh, and he is likely to return at the earliest later on this week as he has completed that eight-game suspension but the team's still trying to ease him back in because of the mental illness-related stuff. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Um, you know, I, I think they have a good enough playoff position. The important thing is to make sure this is, you know, every on everybody's schedule. I, You know, part of me wonders why the holdup because it's not like an injury. Right. Like, but, if he's available, get him hey, back out there as soon as possible. Seems like a sensitive situation, and there's stuff we're unaware hey, of. I get it. And uh, whenever he's ready to come back, I'm sure they're going to welcome him back with open arms because they're going to need it here as they're getting closer and closer to the postseason. But you're right. I mean, I think that they're okay in positioning right now uh, when it comes to the playoffs. They've done okay navigating without him, yeah. which has been a pleasant story. I mean, last year, that was a big talk about how well they performed without him. This year, it's not quite as, as positive. They still have a losing record without him on the floor, but I, I thought maybe they were going to completely tank, but they've been okay. Yeah, yeah, I was standing at the urinal when I heard my cue right there, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All good, all good. I love you dearly. I mean, I was shaking it vigorously, you Don't know. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. It's uh, okay. If you want the clip, I have it right here loaded up for you, ready, if you need it. Oh, fine. Let's hear from Shams. Take it away. Here's right. our guy. <laughs> So he's out tonight, even though his eight-game suspension is, is over. He's going to miss tonight. They're going to ramp him up. I'm told he could return to the lineup as soon as Wednesday at home against the Rockets. So it was overall an eight-game suspension for John Moran, unpaid. The NBA had its investigation. They concluded a, a few things in that video where he was waving the gun on camera on social media on March 4th, that the gun, they concluded, did not belong to Morant. The gun was not brought by him to the club. They concluded that he didn't display it for longer than he did in that social media video. They conclude, they did not conclude that he traveled with the gun. So uh, a few things that their investigation uh, showed, and, and that's where they landed on that eight-game suspension, conduct detrimental to the team. This is a Grizzlies team, though, that has played pretty solid without John Morant. They lost their first two without him after, after the initial suspension. But they went five and three overall in the eight games without him. Uh, they're nine and eight this year without John Morant. They have another game tonight um, against Dallas. So uh, this is a team, Memphis, that it, that looks like it's ready to get their player back. I think they're all trying to move on from this this saga. Sign of a good team, impressive. Uh, a, a team that can hold it down without, without their best player. They've yeah. certainly done that, and so have the Lakers. So maybe those are going to be viable opponents once you get to the playoffs. I think the worst thing with that video was that it was, it was kind of a baby gun. You know, oh, it's like a little calling him out or here. something. Well, if, you, if you're going to be showing off a gun, I wouldn't show off a gun personally. But if I was, it would it would at least it would probably be a 45. Okay, you know, maybe a 357, right. 44 Magnum, something like that. I'm not showing off a tiny little subcompact. Okay, that's to keep in your pocket concealed and in case of emergency. It's not a show off gun. 
We got some studs in the East that are doing some special things. Joel Embiid is making a last season, a late season push to end up taking over to win the MVP over Nikola Jokic. He's been absolutely tremendous over the last, the last week or so. But last night, Giannis Antetokounmpo, he made history. The 13th ever perfect triple-double in the history of the association. He had 22 points, 13 boards, 10 assists. What is a perfect triple-double? Well, he did not miss a shot from the field, which is how that ends up being scored. So Giannis is crushing it That's right insane. Now. Yeah, it, it, unbelievable. And there's been 18 others? 13. So so were they all by others. Wilt Chamberlain or something? Uh, the I think Wilt probably had a couple of those. I don't have the entire list in front of me of who wow. the players were, but only 13 in the high in the entire history of the sport. What well, Giannis has been able to do, but Joel Embiid as well. To me, I think, I think Joel Embiid, and you can probably get some good odds on this, he might be able to go ahead and end up winning MVP with the way that he's playing here late in the season. He's on a historic yeah. pace right now. Things are changing. Hey, Russell Westbrook has a perfect uh, a triple-double. Yeah. Okay. Russ also is playing a ridiculous amount for the L.A. Clippers. Like, I don't know if you've been paying attention to the Clippers. Oh, yeah. They right. tried to tease him. Like, oh, yeah, Ben, yeah. he's starting for them. Yeah. Uh, well, it's amazing what he's doing. Okay, Lakers expected to get star forward LeBron James back before the end of the season, according to head coach Darvin Ham. I also thought this was interesting. Tristan Thompson, who's been doing some work for ESPN, he's about to work out for the Lakers. They're going to work out Tristan Thompson and Tony Bradley. So Tristan Thompson may be trying to get himself back in the NBA with the L.A. Lakers. Is Good broadcaster, too. He's actually done a fantastic job. He has job. done a really nice job on that. Yeah. He really, really has. So we're still waiting to find out exactly who's in, who's out tonight for the Mavs. Uh, we know no Luka, as I told you about. But uh, I think that tonight's going to be a game that they get revenge on Memphis. They've lost two in a row for the Grizzly. The Mavs snapped that streak tonight. Oh, I, think, yeah. I think they get that done. They got momentum now. They got some good mojo going. Kyrie was talking about a players-only meeting where some guys got some things off their chest, and now I think they're playing a little bit more fun. Yeah. Memphis doesn't lose at home. Oh, That's you, you th bank, are they like Golden State where yeah, they're just they, amazing they, at home? Yeah, they, they, they do not lose at home. That That's something with Memphis. You can you, – they, they're – They've had some really good streaks this year where they've they've played where like you mentioned the opposite Golden State is the opposite of that. Yeah, Golden oh State gosh. Golden State can't win on, on can't win on the road and that might be the thing, Gavin. You know, we've talked about Golden State and, and if I could flip back, flip Mem back, just flip, do it, flip, flip back, it back, flip Get back on that trampoline, flip back on this Memphis trying to chase Sacramento for that two seat. You know, Sacramento has been a team that. Sacramento, yeah, won't I mean, go that's what I'm away. saying. Sacramento is a team that is not going to go away. So yeah, to have Ja Morant back and in the mix and stuff like that. I mean, you're talking about position. They both have the same record right now. Yeah, as we as we speak. Really quickly, this was an interesting article from Bleacher Report. They were going ahead and looking at who would be the worst first round matchup for every team. They're actually going with the Minnesota Timberwolves as the worst matchup for the Mavs, and a large portion of it is how terrible the Mavs have been inside when it comes to defending the rim, but also points in the paint. Rudy Gobert and Anthony Edwards, uh, oh, excuse me, Rudy Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns, plus you have Anthony Edwards, but those two bigs inside, they're just like the Mavs will not have an answer for, and you look at some of the other matchups they've had against Minnesota, they lost already, having added Kyrie uh, back in February. They think that that could be the worst possible matchup wow. for the Mavs in the postseason. That's exciting. I would not have thought about that. Yeah, that's kind of a contrarian view. I mean, I'd probably go with Denver. Um, but there's not a clear team that terrifies you. I think the Mavs could beat any of these teams if they get hot once they get to the playoffs. It's time now, live from the Rally House, to go back into the Pimp Cup, where Lucius Alexander has your G back today. Yeah. I thought I was going to keep going. I was liking that for a second, all right? <laughs> Uh, let's see. I heard you, Zach, talking about that alcohol is still on you a little bit there, fella. It's a little bit. Yeah, I can 100% guarantee you it is not that Azul Resposado we were drinking. No, I'll that's, tell you what. That that's, stuff was delicious. I yeah, learned, that's fire. I learned a very valuable lesson. Don't know much about tequila, but if you want to learn something, sit next to Lucius and watch him order it. Yes, some of this Azul. It is one of the prettiest drinks for tequila. Usually you think, oh, it's a shot and you know salt and all that. I learned something, too, about Lucius. Not a big salt fan. Not no. a big salt fan. No, 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 no. We were ringing Not that bell on Saturday, though. Yeah, we were. Jamming, we were. man. Maybe to the point where I was doing it all weekend. I stopped by the liquor store afterwards and brought <laughs> oh. me a few bottles. Hey, yeah. You know. yeah. <laughs> how did the? Uh, how did the, the? How did the? Did you? Did you take the wings home? Did that make a good appearance for you? It, it did. did every, everything was great. All right, there we go. Everything there was you. fantastic. I even stopped by and got me a cigar, so I had my feet up on the leather couch, <laughs> blowing that cigar, drinking some of that tequila, having a good weekend.
There you go. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. Watching all of the one seeds fall apart. <laughs> yeah, know. exactly. Everyone. Wow. Kansas, what the heck? Hey, good shout out to the muscle man. Wow. Yeah. Uh, let's get this one out the way here. Here's our winner and steel champ. WPVI TV Action News in Philly. We got a weather report in a proper pause. Wednesday, mild, some sunshine, 60. Thursday, partly sunny skies and 57. And to another woman who likes to be double fisted in a different way, I think, Jess. Mm. <laughs> what? <laughs> she means mm. beer. What? She means beer. Uh, guys, <laughs> she, means, she beer. means beer. Don't put me on YouTube. Too late, baby. Oh my God. What just oh. happened? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to take a pause. We're going to keep going. Yeah. 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 Uh, we're yeah. on the right now, yeah. guys. We're watching Route 202. Holy cow. Yeah. So good. I what a that... friend she has right there, right? What a buddy. Well, the yeah. anchor kind of tattled on both of them. She, I think she kind Ooh. of admitted she, she might be into a little something. Thursday, partly sunny skies and 57. And to another woman who likes to be double-fisted in a different way, <laughs> oh. I think, Jess. <laughs> Another Man, woman. I will not miss a broadcast if I was in my yeah. area. <laughs> <laughs> never miss it. Hello. Shout out to you, ladies. You got an OnlyFans yeah. or OnlyFans? Yeah. No. Only, only oh friends. Gosh, only friends. friends. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, well, let's see. All right, let's I like go. that better. Yeah, I like that one. You know, it's the PG version of yeah, exactly. it. Exactly. Uh, let's see. March Madness. Let's do some March Madness. Those kids were cursing on TV last night. You oh. repeat that? Yeah. Every kid that got on the mic had to drop a curse. Of some sorts. Let's go to, I believe, uh, Florida Atlantic's Janelle Davis. Janelle Davis on True TV. Don't ever count him out. Are you a player that plays in a moment like this with something to prove about yourself? Yeah, a lot. I've been, I've been trying to prove this since they want. Oh, that's all right. It's all right. It happens to all of us. We're on True TV, man. We on True TV, man. Yeah. Go ahead Nobody's watching. Out. It's, oh. hey, nobody's watching. Immediate. Oh, oh, <laughs> cable. That's why they call it's it legal. True TV. So you can speak true. your truth. Yeah. Good for him. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's go to Gonzaga. What's the name? Drew Time? Drew Timmy. Timmy. Drew Timmy? Timmy. Timmy. Okay, yeah. So he he started up, like, had a little stir up online because he said it was seven straight sweet 16s for Gonzaga. And everybody was trying really? to see how long this kid has been playing. I don't think they <laughs> caught what he was saying. Yeah. yeah. This is sixth year? <laughs> yeah, listen. <laughs> Twelve. Seven straight sweet 16s. I'm like, we could not be the team that this one up so just to get it done and not fall under that hypno toads genjutsu or whatever it is feels good man but they're a hell of a team and uh you know uh, a lot of my friends played on that team so i was just proud of them we competed and uh gave it all and you can't ask for much more in a game in an environment like this how many seven straight sweet 16s i'm like we could not be the team that this one up <laughs> yeah it's just that's a streak for the university not him yeah, personally yeah, it yeah. might be him personally as well though <laughs> he in the is COVID year. he has right. exactly yeah. yeah that was the only response though how many how many years he been playing man? I'm like, man, <laughs> we are doomed that's a texas kid though he's, he's kind of got that navy seal military voice yeah it's like i'm Drew jj Gira, pierce make threes uh, yesterday was a church day. You, you get fellas go get your blessing. We did. I did. Yes. Oh, good for you, man. Yeah, yes, sir. Good for you. Got uh, that 84 year old dad that has to go every week. Okay. So, good yeah, for I'm you. Son to take Love so, it. Yeah. I didn't go, but I did turn on some Reverend Ike and watch him talk about how I need to be getting some money in my life. Motivate me. Prosperity yeah. preachers. They motivate me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this right here. I believe that this pastor is talking about how God. His blessings can help the family make groceries last, you know, a little so to the next oh. payday type of situation. Okay. But it didn't come out like that. Look at your neighbor and say he's a meat stretcher. What? He'll stretch your meat. What? Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't ever look at me and say that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> ever look over at me talking about God as a meat stretcher. <laughs> I don't know, uh, Lucius, I bet you're a good neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and who wouldn't go out of their way to stretch their neighbor's meat for him, you know? Look at your neighbor and say he's a meat stretcher. Yeah. He'll stretch your meat. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> he is wild and he needs to stop. We all need good friends. Yeah. We need the organ, though, in the back, right? The yeah. organ for the oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic turn. <laughs> da -da -da, da -da -da. Yeah. Meat stretcher. Da -da -da. Last one right here. Last Meat one right here. Stretcher. Take you to church. Uh, yep. This man made a song. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. Hell no. <laughs> I don't want to go to hell. Oh, tambourine, yeah. Yeah, you're getting it. Hell is deep, hell is wide. Oh. Hell ain't gonna have me inside. I don't wanna go to hell, hell no. Let's go, let's go. Hell no, hell no. Hell no, hell no. Hell no, hell no. Hell no. Hey, Wilder. Gosh. Yeah, 
Josh says. Oh, also, wow. that is a Did vibe. You? Yeah. Is it wow. okay? Is that a five, boy? <laughs> <laughs> and right after that, he went to the highway he was to jamming. hell. <laughs> he was jamming. Uh, it's all gravy. All righty, right, let's is, get into it. Is it the WP uh, WPVI uh, TV possible weather moment? Unreal that that was said. March Madness kids were cursing on TV. You had the meat stretcher, and you also had the guy that does not want to go to hell. I'm going to vote for the champ. Well, well, Chuck, how about you? I think I'm going to go hell no, hell no. Uh oh. Okay, Broadus, how about you? I'm going to vote for the tambourine playing hell no guy. Uh oh. It's two to one, Lucius. Yeah, church combo for sure. Fine, the meat stretcher up. needs a little stretch out a little bit. I got to hear that for a few yeah. days. Absolutely. <laughs> By a score of three to one, your new G Bag of the Day champion. It's the church combo platter. Krusty's Corner's coming up next. Where are we going? Hey, at, are these five guys possibilities for the Cowboys to be drafted? We'll talk about that next. Okay, let me tell you about my friends. At
offers of discounts, more than just Silverados, there's Equinox, Tahoe, Traverse, Malibus, and all of your favorite Chevys. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Relax and enjoy the difference in fine new roads. Well, thank you, Lucius. It is the G-Back Nation. We're live at Rally House, Preston and Forrest. Come by, get some gear. It's time now for Krusty's Corner. Here he is, King of the Krusty's himself, brought us. Thank you very much, General. Appreciate that. Um, since we, since the uh, the signing of our wide receiver there, uh, or the actual for the trade of the wide receiver for Brandon Cooks, I don't think I gave you guys a scouting report. I asked, nice. asked one of my guys around the uh, this weekend. Uh, everybody seems to be pretty busy right now. They're getting ready for this draft and stuff and the pro days and stuff. But one of my guys was nice enough to get back to me, and he said this about Brandon Cooks. He said, this guy can really, really still play, really still play. And uh, he says, we viewed him as a really good vertical threat with playmaking ability. He will stretch the field and really like the way that he is able to go get the football. So, you know, this was one of those things where, I mean, this guy was like, positive about the trade. You know, sometimes you're like, ah, this guy didn't have anything left and all that. And this, uh, this is like the second time I've asked them about players, you know, trades for players. And the and the, the gang of seven has been positive. Usually it's like, ah, I don't know, man. That's that's one of those ones that, you know, they may be maybe not good enough. Maybe not, you know, he, he doesn't have anything left. I think that's a gamble. Mm. They were positive about both of these trades. You know, these are guys and gals around the league that watch this film every single day and, and have to compete against these guys. So they have I, an understanding of what they are. I love how the Cowboys front office figured out a way to add real talent. You know, you get Houston, throw in some money. You don't have to add new money to Gilmore. Yeah. And, and now you let, you can say, we added good players too. We just did it our way. And I hope that's a reliable way in the, in the future that they can continue to pursue. I love it. And, and I know a lot of people are still saying, hey, the Cowboys haven't added an outside free agent signing. But to me, that doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Right? We've always just, the, the knock has been, okay, all they do is focus on the draft. They don't really use the other avenues of team building, whether it is free agency or whether it's trades. This offseason, the better players were available via trade. And the Cowboys cashed in, and they definitely got the return that they wanted. They didn't give up much, but also the salaries matched exactly what they were looking for. You know, the supply and demand is so important here because for the longest time, you couldn't really make trades because... You know, teams were unwilling to give up draft capital for players. Well, now the economy has changed so much that for a team that's not in a championship window, they're trying to get players off their books. And there's so many of them that went for it and are now like, hey, you know, we spent a lot and now we have to bring it back to reality. There's more supply than demand. You get quality players for fifth, sixth round picks. It's what the Rams did. That's what the Eagles did to plug holes in a contender. I think this is exactly what we want to see, Cowboys fans. Yeah, I just, to me, it was, you know, there's times where I, I know we've been super, super critical of this front office. And, yeah. and Gavin, you asked the question, what do you think changed? And, uh, you know, and I, I, I kind of feel like that, that they've always had a plan, but maybe it wasn't on what our expectations were like, oh, they never do anything. They never try. They never, they do, you know, and the perception is that, you know, but maybe they're in a point where it's like, maybe it's not the right deal. Maybe, yeah. maybe it wasn't the right signing or the right trade or the right, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd like to believe that they, that to give them credit for that because I wanted them to give up a second round pick. Sure. To go get Hopkins. Same. Yeah. I'm like, I'm looking at the NFL draft, and I'm, I'm like, I'm looking at these wide receivers, Zach. I know you do the exact same thing. And I'm like, I don't see yeah. somebody at 26 that would just light me up, that I would say, can't miss, like you did with right. like a C.D. Lamb or with uh, Chase and those guys. And I know those guys, those guys were all picked like in the middle of the draft and you know, into the 20s. Well, even a Justin Jefferson. Yeah. Like the Vikings yeah, exactly. were able to get in the 20s. Exactly. I don't think there's anybody quite at that caliber either. See, that's what I'm saying. So I'm sitting there like, no, oh, be aggressive, do this, do that. And I think that they were being smart. And maybe I was being a little reckless with – I'm when you, gonna... when you give up a compensatory five yeah. Yeah. to go get somebody that they had a deal. They had a deal for Brandon Cooks last year at the trade deadline. They had a deal. They had a third-round pick going to – Houston and their general manager got greedy yeah. and said fine if you don't want our third round pick 
We're not going to give you two. Here's my problem with calling it smart, though, Brian. It's only come available once in a decade. If be if you have to wait every off season until somebody is willing to give you a Pro Bowl level player for a five, and yeah. you get to do it once a decade, it's not a sustainable team building strategy. I I think the thing about the, I guess what I'm trying to say is sustainable or they being smart, and that's I mean it, that to me maybe not forcing a deal. That's good. Right. Yeah, I that's like that. that's kind yeah. of where clearly, I'm at. Clearly, you the know, Cooks the one fact, looks really good. Yeah, right? the you fact, didn't do it, and you waited, and you got it at your price. The, the Cooks thing is like guaranteed money, eighteen million dollars. Mm-hmm. Listen, we'll give you a five, even though we were willing to give you a two sure. or yeah. a three last year. At this time, we were willing to, or during the season, we were willing to give you a three. No, now we're going to make you. We're going to give you a five. And by the way, to ta- to top it off. You gotta you gotta eat six million dollars of this salary. It's pretty damn yeah. nice. Yeah. See, so that's what I'm saying. I I know I, I know I'm super beat these guys up for stuff, but that's why I'm doing radio and they're this, they're doing maybe, what they're doing. Maybe twenty twenty well, I wouldn't give them too much credit on that, Brian. They have made a lot of mistakes over the last yeah. decade. But whatever the case, I think twenty twenty three has the chance to be the year for them now because whether they were more aggressive or it just fell in their lap doesn't really matter for this season. What matters is you have two more really good football players on a team that was already pretty loaded. Yeah. And now we can be excited about this upcoming season and hopefully what happens in January this time around. I don't think they're done. Nice. I don't think they're done. It's exciting. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, there. I, 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 I know in two weeks' time the pro days are going to be done and they're going to start sitting in rooms and putting boards together. So I think that there's st- I think they still got one or two more moves left in them, and so we'll just uh, keep it on the station Let's all go. day. We'll hopefully maybe get okay. Something. Okay, we might have breaking news then. Might break news. Okay, sounds good. This this comes from our folks at the Blog of the Boys, and this is kind of my draft way of tying in the Cowboys. There's five players that could be uh, surprise first round picks for the Cowboys, and and Zach, I'll use your help on this one too because okay. you've seen a lot of these guys. The first one is the Mozzie Smith from the defensive tackle from Michigan. Michigan. And what they're talking about is that the Cowboys with, with Mozzie Smith is that they've 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 only Russell Maryland was a first overall and then Kelvin Pritchard was a twentieth overall. Those are the last 91. last defensive tackles that were drafted in the first round. Again, that goes all the way back to nineteen ninety one, like Gavin was was topping, uh, talking about. Real quick on that, how would you feel about Mozzie Smith, defensive tackle, Michigan, in your eyes? You know, I wouldn't mind it. I don't love him at 26, but I, I like the player quite a bit. I think he can give you a little bit more wiggle in terms of pass rush than some others, but to me, he's a true one tech. If you're not able to bring back a Carlos Watkins and a Jonathan Hankins, this is a guy that you can plug in and play, and he's going to give you some of that same help in the interior as a big power bottom kind of anchor to your run defense. Yeah, I kind of feel like, to me, there's others that I would like a little bit better at that spot. But, I mean, at 6'3", at 323 pounds, he's a guy, though, that he could be a little bit of a hard guy to move he's, when you watch and him. And he takes play. on double teams. Yeah. I think he's got good lateral movement. I yeah. like him. I mean, they're a home run at defensive tackle away from being totally dominant. Yeah. I mean, I, it could really shut everything down. Could We've talked about Dalton Kincaid a lot, the tight end from uh, Utah. That seems to me like it, when you're starting to talk about going out and getting the best Ooh. maybe at that position – uh, I think that the you know we we've really, I mean we've gone into that we quite have. a bit. I mean that Dalton Kincaid, we all feel like that would be a really a really, absolutely he's, he's absolutely the best tight end in the draft for me. Solid if, solid pick. For if the Cooks Cowboys. and Kincaid are your additions, wow yeah yeah wow. How about this one, Keely Ringo, the corner from Georgia at hmm. twenty six? Does that do anything for you? I don't love Keely Ringo, and he's a guy that I think his stock is taking a big hit during this process. Early on, I think he was kind of rated as arguably the best corner, a top ten kind of guy. I think he's he gives up a lot of plays inside, underneath. He's susceptible to the double move. Uh, now he's a willing tacker, tackler, but. I don't know. For me, I, I didn't love Keely Ringo in a draft that's corner rich. Yeah. I'd rather go somewhere else. Yeah, I think Banks from Maryland, Forbes from Mississippi State, Cam Smith, Cam from Smith, South, Smith Carolina. South Carolina, I think are all better players. So if you told me that was the case, I would probably uh, m- move on and say Keely, uh, Keely Ringo. I wouldn't go for that one. How about this one? Steve Avia, 
the guard from TCU. Now, starting to hear a lot of whispers, a lot of buzz about him. If that's the case, then you draft Steve Avia, put him at left guard. That means Tyler uh, Tyler Smith is playing left tackle. And Tyron ends up being your backup swing tackle. I think this could end up being, as we get closer to the time, much like Tyler Smith all of a sudden draft day. Oh, the Cowboys love this lineman. They're going to take him in the first round. Steve Avia out of TCU might be that What's guy What's his best year. position? Guard. He's a guard. He's a guard. He's a guard. Nice. He is a big, powerful man inside right there, too. And, and he's I'm a tremendous, Steve, then. tremendous run blocker for me. Okay, we are at a tremendous store. Rally house here. Dallas, Preston, and Forrest Bryant. Anything else here in the corner? Yeah, Jamar Gibbs was the last guy from Alabama running back. We'll see if oh. they draft a running back Hell of a player. Well. Yeah. Okay, NFL news of the day coming up next. We'll check where are we headed with that. Got some Dalton Schultz news. Cowboys are looking at three free agents that are in today. And does Odell Beckham Jr. want? to go here next on the fan.
Command Studio, secured by DFWSecurity.com. You're rolling with the G-Bang Nation on 105.3 The Fan. Oh, yeah, buddy. It is a Rally House Monday as we open up hour number two with the G-Bag Nation here on 105.3 The Fan. Preston and Forest is our broadcast location. Maybe you want something to eat or to go shopping. It's uh, it's a heck of a shopping facility right here in the at the intersection. And uh, here we are at the Rally House going into hour number two as Zach Wolchuk has your NFL news of the day. Here he is, Wolchuk. We are in week two of NFL free agency. Cowboys have yet to sign a free agent. That is not one of their own. However, they've made a couple of big trades, and boy, is it getting juicy watching what they're doing this offseason. Today, they're hosting three free agents, including running back Ronald Jones. Rojo, former member of the Bucks, uh, played as well with the Kansas City Chiefs. They've got former TCU linebacker Traven Howard, who was with the L.A. Rams for a little while, and guard-slash-tackle Chuma Idoga. They're expected to undergo physicals and be evaluated inside the Ford Center at the start today. It'd be interesting to see if they come away and sign one of these guys today, especially Ronald Jones. You had another veteran running back. You have Tony Pollard. You just made the move to release Ezekiel Elliott a week ago. I mean, right now, I think if we're looking at what's the biggest need left on the team, might be running back. But if they fill that, then you're really going into free or the, the NFL draft with all possibilities are open. Yeah, I feel like all the possibilities are open right now. Uh, Ronald Jones would be the signing that I would be most interested on that because, to me, it would give you finality at that position. Um, the other kind of guys, I, I think those would be more like depth additions. Yeah, it will be interesting to see what happens at linebacker because that's not the, the the most depth at a position no. when you look at the draft. I mean, we've, we've talked about it a bunch. Corner, the edges, running back tight end those seem to be the ones that you could focus in on and maybe rounds one through five grab somebody out of that that group i would i I would like to believe that they signed jones it's also just to kind of protect themselves because you know in the draft i i I, man grabbing one of these running backs to me too yeah i'm I'm, you know and maybe and you know maybe move on i mean maybe it's uh yeah you know because both of those could just be one-year deals right right so then what are you going to do moving forward right so you really have an opportunity to draft one of these backs you don't you don't have to be pressured to play a ton if you've got those two guys but you're grooming him to be the heir apparent right the starter for the future uh the other moves that have been the Cowboys have been linked to, of course, Odell Beckham Jr. It does not seem like they're in on that anymore with the Brandon Cooks trade. So with that having happened, Odell Beckham Jr. reached out to Saquon Barkley over the weekend. He said, hey, tell your GM, Joe Shine, to, to, to give my agent a call. So I think we might have something brewing here where OBJ is like, hey. I think he's frustrated. I want to go back to New York. I think he's frustrated. I think now to go back to New York could potentially go back to the Jets too. If you know Aaron Rodgers is now crawfishing on, oh wait a minute, I you know they've talked to me about guys, but I've not given them any list. Huh. You know that kind of thing. This guys, I believe. So it, you know if, but the thing I think I think reality is setting in for a lot of these really good veteran players. Yeah, I think it's setting in for uh, for Dalton Schultz. Uh huh. You know, I, I think you're going to talk about Dalton Schultz yep. here in a minute. I, reality is like, listen, you are not wanted right now. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, I'm, I'm sorry. You're just I mean, not. How, how low was the offer for for OBJ? How have we heard any of them? Well, see, he was he was he. It's always it's I saw funny. a rumor that it was yeah. like under five. Well, that's what I'm saying. If yeah. it's if it's one of those cryptic, you know, he he always tweets or uh, on Instagram in a way, and you're kind of like, what's he saying? But he's talking about no, man. If you don't want to give me, I didn't. I didn't ask for twenty, mm. but I ain't playing for five. Yeah, kind of a thing. And I, I feel like though that it's like people are like, listen, all I could give you is five. Right. Hey, Dalton Schultz, all I could give you is three well, and a half. For you. or or you know these running be these guys now. It with with Beckham, he probably feels like listen, I ain't out here busting my ass trying to get ready and get healthy, and now you know, and then it go for not. Yeah, you know he's it's, fascinating though, right? Because I know you've always been, hey, you're you're kind of out on OBJ yeah. with the injuries. I wonder if if we're seeing the NFL is kind of in line in, in lockstep with your thinking here. Yeah, like dude, you've had two of these knee surgeries now, sure. and you're north of forty. Of 30. I mean, if you want three years, I got like fifteen million dollars or twenty yeah. million dollars at most, and it's tough for players to realize that they're getting older because you always feel young and vibrant, and it's hard to like. 
you know, realize that you're hurt and, and like, because now you feel great and athletic again and you're doing videos and you're like, but I'm not hurt. And it's like, you have an injury history and an age right now that really devalues you. Well, and if you want a multi-year deal, you're going to have to do a prove it year. That's the reality of people in that situation. It doesn't matter how big of a star you were eight years ago. Yeah, he effed himself. He effed himself last year when he <laughs> didn't rehab like he needed to rehab. You know? Yeah, I heard he's even months away still. Yeah. And that's probably yeah. The, yeah. The, the issue when you, you kind of surround yourself and, and things that I've kind of heard about him is you have a group that's always telling you what you want to hear. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, listen, you this guy, this guy has been a is. hell of a player for a long time. And he still could be good. And, he still yeah. could, and you know, if he would have just been on schedule – I kind of feel like that the Cowboys would have, Jerry would have kept pushing, pushing, pushing. Well, you know, whether it's Aaron Rodgers or OBJ, guys get to a point they're not willing to sacrifice their lifestyle. Aaron right. Rodgers wants to go on vacation all summer. OBJ wants to rehab on his own. It's like right. you've had so much success and made so much money, you don't need to sacrifice right. anymore to build your empire. It's built. Yeah. And now it's like, do you want to go play football? Do you want to play for a championship? Do you want to do everything in the offseason? And most players, I feel, like don't you know once you, once you get to that point it's rare that you find a Tom Brady who's like I'm just going to keep playing because I love trying to be the best and I'm going to do everything LeBron James I'm going to do everything every day million dollars a year on my trainer and diet to stay dialed in as I approach 40. Well you mentioned Dalton Schultz so Schultz gambled on himself right yeah. And apparently it's not paying off in free agency. Albert Breer reported that a team had offered, and I, I don't know who it is, and maybe it was the Cowboys. This could have been dating back to the beginning of the offseason or even last year, but Schultz had a three-year, $36 million contract offer at one point, which he declined. Now he remains unsigned after a week of free agency, and we've seen some of the other tight ends. You know, Mike Gusecki most recently with the Patriots, and I thought maybe the Patriots would be the team that would be interested in him. But now Schultz is just sitting out there, and it doesn't appear that there's a whole – that there's really a market for him. Yeah, I asked you guys last week – if he comes back hat in hand, are you interested? No, or, I'm not. Or, or we're gonna we're gonna draft. It really ticked me off last year when it seemed like he was making business decisions with with his availability. The Cowboys were expecting a Dalton Schultz to be ready in the middle of the season. He's like, nope, not ready. And I'm like, yeah, I guess that's player friendly and everything. But I, it felt to me like he was negotiating with his availability, and that was the last straw for me. If there was okay. even a last straw involved, then you go to he just he lacks toughness. He's he, it's not a tight end that's going to threaten the defense in any way. He's a possession tight end. You know, I, he's got a baseball body, Brian. It's yeah. not a football body. He's a smaller guy, so he's not going to beat you with power. He's not going to beat you with speed. We need to threaten the defense in some way. And you're fooling yourself if you look at all the catches and say that's production. It's not really production if you're not threatening to kick the defense's ass once you touch the football. It's taking what the defense gives you and then getting tackled six, seven yards at a time, and that's just not what gets the job done in pro football. Yeah. Uh, we also have C.J. Gardner-Johnson, who has signed as the Eagles have lost two more starters, one from the defense, one from the offense from a year ago. The Detroit Lions have agreed to a one-year deal with C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Mm -hmm. It's worth up to $8 million. The Lions are quietly having a pretty good offseason and uh, you look at what man Campbell's trying to do over there they've signed now Chauncey Gardner Johnson one of the better defensive backs available in free agency they bring in David Montgomery they brought in two corners Emmanuel Mosley from San Francisco and Cam Sutton and then you add a guard in Graham Glasgow I believe from Denver plus they've got pick 6 18 48 and 55 in the draft Detroit, there's a reason they're a sexy pick right now to be a sleeper in the NFC. Do you know enough about Gardner Johnson to think that it, it, you should have signed him instead of Donovan Wilson? They're two very different players. If you want, if you want coverage, yeah. Gardner Johnson's your guy. Yeah. I think the Cowboys like the physical presence that Donovan Wilson brings, and to to what we've discussed, I think he's becoming a better cover player. Same amount, same amount of money, right? Eight million dollars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, roughly. I think Dono might have gotten a little bit less. Okay. Garner Johnson is a guy that makes mistakes too. You know, he's mm -hmm. he's he's not perfect. I was shocked that number was that low. I'm surprised he got a yeah. one year deal too. Yeah. I figured he was going to be pretty coveted. The other player that uh, the Eagles ended up losing, Isaac Siamalu, the uh, guard. guard. Mm -hmm. He's going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
So there, there's more players that the Eagles have now lost from their NFC Championship team a year ago, plus their two starting linebackers because you're white, TJ Edwards, yeah. Jonathan Hargrave. These are all good things for the rest of the NFC East, including our Dallas Cowboys. So they're, they're linebackers, Sumalo, Gardner-Johnson, and Hargrave. And, and Hargrave. Yep. You know, so they've, they've lost five good players. The Cowboys, to me, have added two good ones and haven't lost any good players, no. right? I mean, unless and it's, signed back the guys that have played well for yeah, them. Right. I think the yeah. only guys that we're looking at, like, man, we'd really love them to bring back Hankins and maybe a Carlos Watkins. And Carlos Watkins was a guy that went unsigned yeah. for a while last year, and they brought him back for cheap. I think the Cowboys are crushing it. They've won the NFC East, in my opinion, so far to this point with their offseason moves. Absolutely. I would it's agree It's funny. That. I have a – it's – have these guys all around the league that listen to our show. Okay, what are they saying? And it, it, this guy's uh, this guy said he just happened to say he goes the agent screwed uh, Gardner Johnson on his deal. It seemed it seemed low really? to me. It yeah. did. Yeah, it's a buddy of mine from one of the other teams that's listening. They love you. <laughs> thank, thank you, you for, so much. Thank you for. But he said the agent messed that one up for him. It's it, there's been some interesting agent like plays this offseason. I still yeah. can't believe that Stephon Gilmore's not getting a new deal. But hell, yeah. it's good for the Cowboys. Speaking of Rodgers. We had Adam Schefter kind of open up about what happened behind the scenes with Aaron Rodgers. He was talking with Peter King. He said, Pumpkinhead. Yeah, and, and so Peter King asked him, like, I was curious about the, the Rodgers story and what happened. So he said, quote, I've had his number for a while. I've never once used it. Trey Wingo reported last week that he was hearing that Rodgers to the Jets was done. The day he did it, uh, he, he went out and... Schefter said, we were on the air for two hours. So he calls the Jets. He calls the Packers. I called Rodgers Advisors. No one's saying anything. So I'm sitting there on the set with Diana Rossini. I said, should I text Rodgers? She said, yeah. Text him. So at 3.35, I texted him. I say, basically, have you informed the Jets that you'd like to play there? I wanted to open it up to you. He didn't respond for maybe 10 minutes. So then I called the number. Got sent to voicemail. Then he texts me. Lose my number. Good try, though. That's all. He's the one who says the media is getting it wrong. I wanted to go to the source and get it right. I don't. I mean, he's just doing his job. You know, if you have, I mean, if if you got a guy's number and or a gal's number and it could help you with your story and I all that. I think he yeah. makes a point. Like yeah. Aaron Rodgers wants to. People don't know bleep, and and he's called out he, Schefter he, before. The only real media member he seems to get along with is Pat McAfee. Sure. Yeah. I mean, even I, I know guys that cover him up in Green Bay. They have to tiptoe around him and all that. Because you never know when you're going to get the horns from him. You, you know? know, I I just feel what like a pain in the ass. Great player, you know. Great player, pain in the ass person. Yeah, yeah, and he's he's getting more and more high high made. I, I I just feel like players that want to get mad at the media for not knowing the whole story. You create the situation. Yeah. Everybody knows the details of what's going on in your mind are worth its weight in gold in the media. We're all trying to figure it out and make one plus one equal two. We try to get two sources to verify these things because you're going to deny anything of substance. Yeah. And we ask you very direct questions about it. You're going to lie. You can't even give us good details about the game that just happened. You say, we got to go look at the film. And then when you're done looking at the film, you say, sorry, 24-hour rule. We're moving on. So we're trying to figure out all this stuff and be insiders and figure out your game plan without you giving us any reliable information. And then you want to jump on reporters for the times they're being wrong. Just screw you. Right. You know, just just if 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 you want to start helping at any time, share the truth. We're hey, well, here's our phone number. Preach. Please yeah, yeah, help preach. us get the story and right. So Schefter yeah. did that, and I yeah. applaud him for what he's like. Look, I don't. It's not like he's blowing up Aaron Rodgers mm. a bunch. Mm. I, I'm picking and choosing the times in which I'm going to reach out. He did, and Rodgers basically tells him go f himself. This is fascinating. We always thought Josh McDaniels would be the heir apparent to Bill Belichick in New England. Might be somebody else. Gerard Mayo, maybe. Gerard huh? Mayo. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. How about that? What What is Gerard Mayo thought of inside of the NFL circles? It seems very highly. Former very, player very, very highly for New England of, and yeah. now defensive coach. And yeah. he might be the guy that they're they're looking at. All right, Bill, whenever you're ready to go, yeah. Gerard Mayo's our guy to take over. Yeah, that's. Uh, I know talking to Mike Lombardi about him a bunch. You know, Mike knows that whole uh, New England dynamic very, very well. He lived it and stuff like that. He couldn't say enough nice things about Gerard Mayo as far as preparation, locker room presence, on the field teaching and stuff like that. Everything was top shelf when that was uh, discussed. I don't know how Jerry Jones feels about this, but it appears Roger Goodell and the NFL owners are expected to finalize a multi-year contract extension for the commissioner at next week's owners' meetings in Phoenix. 
So the NFL's co- uh, compensation committee, they're, slate, they're slated to be present there, and they're going to work on the extension with Roger Goodell. Um, and, and really the only owner that we know that's ever really pushed back on this is is Jerry. Like, what the belief is this guy making so much money? Well, it's, well it it's, is a lot of money. It's, uh, yeah. yeah, it's 40 or $50 million bucks a year. Yeah. And I, I feel like Jerry Jones just wants to have control of the league still be with the owners. And Roger Goodell has done a very good job of taking it away from the owners. And, you know, that bothers Jerry with the bureaucracy that the NFL league office has become. And they're sort of the power that they've assembled. You know, they're unchallengeable power in, in some parts of managing this league. And Jerry is always a guy that wants to manage all of the little details and control them because he's the smartest guy for making all the money. And he wants to make sure the commissioner is doing everything possible to make all the money. Commissioner has other ideas. Commissioner and his guys are northern liberal lawyers, you know, and that's not what Jerry is. So this actually runs pretty deep with his desire to control the objectives and the tone of what the league's business is on a daily, day-to-day basis. But he lost that, I, I think, in a, in a pretty significant I'm with way. You. Yeah. Uh, finally, just to wrap up NFL news of the day, the only other free agent buzz right now, Raiders working out O.J. Howard, former number one mm. pick, tight end. Uh, of Being the they traded away Waller, right? Could be the Waller replacement yeah. there. there you go. All righty. Thank you, Wolchuk. I love it. Hey, let's continue around the NFC East, and uh, I want to do some NFC power rankings. We'll take a look at what the other teams, the Commanders and the Giants, have going on. You just heard about the Eagles and C.J. Gardner-Johnson, one year, $8 million, but he's gone. He's, he's going to the Detroit Lions, so we'll do that. Uh, we'll take your truckwreck.com feedback at any time if you want to sound off about what this week feels like for the Cowboys for you. Last Monday, no Gilmore, now Cooks, now you have them both and it feels like we're moving a little bit. Does this change your expectations, your your optimism level? We'll take feedback on that all day long right here as we broadcast live from Rowley House, Preston and Forest, and we're back on 105.3 The Fan. I want to chat about Men's Tea Clinic before we do that, though. Oh, buddy, if you want to get back to being you, you got to take it from me because in 2022, I went back to Men's Tea Clinic for the first time in a couple of years, and I absolutely love it. You know, it gave me my edge back.
is get over to Terrell to see him right between I-20 and Highway 80. You can start the process online at PlatinumFord.com and drive a little further to save a lot more at Platinum Ford. The upcoming segment of The Fan is brought to you by BuyersBarricades.com. Buyers Barricades is a full-service provider taking care of your project from the evaluation and traffic control planning to setting up, maintaining, and taking down the equipment when the project is complete. They're service-driven and safety-inspired. The Texas Authority at Barricade Rental. BuyersBarricades.com. Welcome back, Nation. We are live at Rally House in Dallas, Preston and Forrest. If you'd like to come by, get some of your team's gear, and uh, and, and listen to the GVAC Nation. We'll be here all, all the way until 7 o'clock. Segment right here is brought to you by the Frankels. There's a reason you need a special license to drive a big truck, so companies that hire drivers and put them in a big truck should be held accountable for what happens when one hurts you. Frankly, you need Franklin. Franklin consultations always free at truckwreck.com. Yeah, uh, Chief's out all week long. He's enjoying that uh, good family time right there uh, with the babies and, and the wife and all that. Uh, so uh, wish Chia follow uh, a great week on social media and tell him uh, he is missed and uh, he will be back on Monday. Opening day for the Rangers is next Thursday. So that is very exciting for us here on the fan. Well, Chuck, you, you all over that beat for us as oh, always? Oh, man, I'm pretty pumped, ready to rock for uh, some Rangers baseball. I can't believe it's already here. Yeah, that we're gonna I know. Have opening yeah. day, KNC is going to be out there. Of course, we got it for you here on 105 through the fan and uh, Jacob Degrom making his Cactus League debut yesterday. It wasn't up to his standard. Uh, I think for us, it was awesome to see him out there. I thought he pitched pretty darn well from what I was able to see. Yeah, that's the thing about it. Just to have him out there on the hill, you know, with uh, opening day, just as you mentioned, Gavin, just right around the corner. You know, the whole thing is all it's going to be about. The, the, the buzzword about the Rangers is health. And so far you're good there, Nathan Avaldi, yeah. also yeah. ready to rock. So, yeah, this is as long as they can uh, can hold this thing together, I think you have the right pieces in place with, you know, the man- the front office, the manager, yeah. the pitching staff. Again, it's going to be about any, any type of health uh, with this staff. I, I was interested the other day when we're talking with Jared. I asked him, which do you think will come out of the gate the best first either the hitting or the pitching he said he thought it was the pitching Mm. he thought the rangers pitchers would be the ones that would lead this into a a, a good start of the season well we know simeon's going to hit about a buck 90 for the first two months or so right can we can (laughs) we pencil that in i I think he's going to come out and be a little bit better than he was a year ago and if he's not i'll take full responsibility for it it's my fault it's It's not not on you marcus it's on me with with no shifting either like seager was the guy that was hitting all these balls into shift he hit the most into the shift out of anybody in major league baseball so hopefully that that goes away for him. one thing i am excited though with with the depth that they added to the rotation now you've got guys like Glenn Otto, even Dane Dunning, who's pitching right now uh, against Cleveland. These are all guys that are now eyeing bullpen roles. So, I mean, to me, I don't think the bullpen's a strength for this team, but something I've talked about with Jared, that's always one of the easier areas to kind of navigate throughout a season and try and find guys, whether it's making a trade, an acquisition, if you're a contender. But some of these dudes, I'm interested to see how they play and perform in that bullpen or relief role going from starters like a Dane Dunning and a Glenn Otto. Well, we're ready, Rangers fans. There's so much going on with the Cowboys in the NFL right now and the Stars and the Mavs and, you know, a lot of sports stuff going on. But this, I believe, is going to take center stage this summer. Uh, I'm getting those 2010 type of vibes when it comes to a, a, a breakout type of a campaign and the Metroplex buzzing about baseball once again. It's been a while, really. You know, because 2015 and 2016, they kind of came out of nowhere and it was fun to overachieve and get the record in the one-score games they did to have the best record in the AL I believe in 15, but it, it really didn't feel like, hey, we're the kind of team that's going to go kick some ass and, you know, we've invested in this. It was it was great lightning in a bottle moment, but this is the kind of stuff that builds expectations and a little bit of nerves. The nerves is a good thing right now because it means you know this thing has serious potential and you're just hoping nothing breaks. Okay, NFC Power Rankings. Guys, where do you have the Cowboys if Chief was here? I challenge him to a fight about Cowboys and Eagles in the division and see if, see if he's still stubborn enough to be picking Philly. I'm going to have to wait a week for that fight. But, Chief, you got a fight coming to you. I got the Niners coming in at number one. I don't know who their quarterback is going to be, but I have a hard time believing they're not going to be great. Like, losing McGlinchey is tough. They're right tackle, but he wasn't an awesome tackle. You, you can replace him. I think adding Hargrave to the middle of an already awesome defense is, is going to keep them great, and I have a full belief in Shanahan. 
But I got the Cowboys coming in number two. They're better than last year. The Eagles are not as good as last year, and the Cowboys are right there with them. They almost beat them early in the year with Cooper Rush. Then I got the Lions coming in at fourth. Went at one eight of nine down the stretch. Wow. Then I have New Orleans coming in. You have a good roster. You add Derek Carr. You get Michael Thomas back healthy. I finished the playoff picture with the Seahawks and Giants. Gentlemen, you have the floor. I'm with you on putting the Niners one. You know, I get it. Hey, they've got some issues when it comes to the quarterback position. But what they were able to do last year, I think that they have just so much talent and a tremendous roster around the quarterback. It's, they're going to be fine. And I think Brock Purdy is going to play the majority of the season, so they'll be fine there. I think I'm with you. As of right now, I got the Cowboys at two. Let's go. I think they've passed the Eagles for me. The Eagles have lost a lot on the defensive side. I think offensively they'll be fine. You know, the loss of Miles Sanders I don't think is going to be huge. But I think the Cowboys, some of their biggest weaknesses, and if they can shore up this offensive line, maybe they do take a Steve Avila out of TCU in the first or second round. I like what the Cowboys are doing. I'll go Eagles at three. The Lions at four just sounds weird, doesn't it? Doesn't it just sound weird putting the Lions there? But this is a team that it, it, it's hard for me to put anybody ahead of them with how well Jared Goff played because I've got questions with Seattle. Like Geno Smith, I think, is going to regress. Uh, the Giants, I'm damn well not putting up there. You know who I might have at five right now? Minnesota? Give me the Chicago Bears. Oh, look at the, What are you doing, Wolchuk? I think the Chicago Bears are going to be the surprise team in the NFC this year. I love what they did at linebacker with T.J. Edwards and Tremaine Ed, uh, T Tremaine Edmonds and T.J. Edwards. Those two are kind of funny last names because of the Edwards and the Edmonds. But I think they're going to nail this draft, the way that they've been able to navigate it going from 1 to 9. You bring in D.J. Moore. I'm a big Justin Fields fan. I think the Bears are going to take a jump because I see the Vikings regressing. All right. All right. That's that's some nice power rankings there. Brought us. what would you like to pick a fight with? Or yeah, I, I would like to say San Francisco 1, Dallas 2. Philadelphia three, Detroit four, the Commanders at five. Okay, the Commanders. Who's quarterback in that team? You're going yeah, I, I think they're going to figure that thing out, though. I do. I think the Commanders. I think the roster. I think is where. It, I I I I think them getting moving on from Daniel Snyder. I think the direction of the draft could be a lot different for them. I think they've got a, a good defense. I like their offensive line. I like their skill people. I think they're going to figure out things at quarterback there. That's that's my my fifth my fifth team. The thing that I'm the thing that I'm kind of uh, the really bit interested in though with the Philadelphia and Dallas situation. The reason why I would have Dallas at two over Philadelphia is Philadelphia lost both coordinators. I'm interested to see how that transition would be. The most important coordinator, I think, in the in the NFC East for for us is for Dan Quinn. Right. And yeah. Dan Quinn's still here, you know. And so you have you saw what a different coordinators mean at the Giants. I think that uh, I think that's clearly going to that's helped them. But Huge I, coaching edge. Yeah. Sirianni's got to try to do yeah. all this stuff again. Yeah. That's Oof. that's where and. I, I, you know, it, they they lost the Eagles lost their secondary coach due to the fact he interviewed for the job, and then they said no, we're going to give it to an outside, uh, outside uh, coach, and then now they lose their defensive backs coach. It's one of the best. He doesn't want to be there. Doesn't want to be there. So I, I just feel like that all the coaching turnover plus roster turnover would put Dallas ahead of Philadelphia right now. Is the biggest wild card in this conference that we haven't named because of who the hell knows injury-wise how this team goes is the Rams. Mm -hmm. Like, the Rams had such a fallback this year, but they were just bruised and battered and didn't have anybody to play with. The question is Matthew Stafford. You know, Stafford, there's been rumors, is he going to retire? Were they putting him out there as a trade target? How healthy is Matthew Stafford? But this is the first losing season Sean McVay's ever had as a head coach. I just don't know that if, they, if they're healthy, their key parts are ready to rock. The Rams might not be a team that you want to just completely jump off that bandwagon. You know, I could I could see them being competitive, but they're making very little effort. They've they spent are. the fewest dollars. They're trying to get that cap the back, back yeah. to where it needs to be a little bit. Um, okay, truckwreck.com, fan text, 877-881-1053. Eagles, Niners, boys, says the 972. We've seen too many times the boys look good on paper and underperform. They have it the last two years. I mean, the regular season's been there. And I think Philadelphia in 19 and 20 took a big step back. 
You know, this is their their pattern, and I, Philadelphia has not shown the ability to like after a Super Bowl run continue to pepper the roster with money and talent. They're going to look back at not winning the Super Bowl this year as the best chance that they've had in the next five to get one. Yeah. They're going to look back that for them not to win that one against Kansas City, it was lined up. Now everything that, you know, the losing the coordinators, the losing the defenders, you know, I, I think, it, you know, now they, they've got some draft picks. They've got, you know, they've got two first-round picks. I'll be interested to see if Howie really makes that pick at 10. Yeah. Yeah. Eight one seven guys. Are we not wanting Bijan Robinson anymore? First round, if available. It's never. If, if you even mention draft, you're getting a Bijan Robinson text over here, Wolchuk. Yeah, with Bijan, I think Brian and I are both definitely in on that. Like to me, it's yeah. a no-brainer pick if he's there at twenty six. I think we just both don't believe he's going to be. I don't think he's going to be there either. But you know, to me, it's sometimes you we we we. I know me personally. I've been on the Bijan Robinson. I started watching tape December first. He's one of the first players I watched. From that point on, I'm I'm thinking, this guy is one of the best. And I've done about 160 players already now, and still more to go. Out of 160 players, he's one of the top three players that I've seen. And that goes all the way back to December 1st. Mm-hmm. This It hasn't changed with me. Yes, I'd absolutely love B. John Robinson here. I don't know if the Cowboys will do that, though. All righty, it is the G Bag Nation here on the fan. We'll be back in the Cowboys here in just a second. Wolchuk has best of the weekend coming up next. Are you guys looking forward to this show air about Jordan? Oh, I am pumped. Have you seen the previews for that? Yes, yeah. I am pumped for it. Anything, ben, anything to talk about the history of that, him, the team, all that, I think is always fascinating. Yeah, it is. And Abby's looking forward to it so much. She keeps asking me when it's coming out. I think it's early April. Uh, ben Affleck doing some media, some interviews for it, and some interesting takeaways. Ben says Viola Davis was vital in getting Jordan's approval. He says, I got the script, and I had the chance to talk to Jordan. For those of you who don't know, he's one of the most intimidating, impressive men you'll ever see in your life. He told me about his father, and then he talked about his mother, and it was the first time I saw a look cross his face. Yeah. Reverence of awe and of love, gratitude and innocence. He said, none of this would have ever happened without my mother. I said, who would you like to play your mom? And he said, well, it would have to be Viola Davis. Okay. Um, He added, that's like saying, can I play basketball on your court? Yeah, if you get Michael Jordan, Viola Davis is the best actor I've ever seen. This is a hard business. It's hard to know if you're successful. It's hard to know if you've accomplished something. But honest to God, I always felt that if I was a director one day and I had Viola Davis in a movie, that would really be something. That would mean the world to me. And it does. Uh, said uh, Ben. So, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to this show as well, and maybe learning a more background yeah. uh, on Jordan, yeah. learning you know what it was like. You know, some of these dramatic reenactments they can be a little bit unreliable, but I, I you know I maybe uh, maybe more reliable than the biography that was sold as the the documentary there a couple of years back. Okay, uh, the Astros have given an update on Jose Altuve. It did not sound great. He fractured right thumb, going to require surgery. No time timetable given for his return so the door swings open just a little bit if we want to get on top of this AL West get on top here we go big start quick start let's go boys best of the weekends coming up next Wooly Bully live from Rally House here Preston and Forrest where we heading sir cheerleader trash talk tequila drinkers I got some bad news and who and where did the origin of March Madness come from Next. The latest from the Star in Frisco, as well as inside information from around the league. It's DFW's top football podcast for a reason. Love of the Star.
BetQL.com. BetQL.com today to start your three-day free trial. Get the top stories, exclusive podcasts, video content, and much more 24-7 at 1053thefan.com. This segment of The Fan is brought to you by Classic Chevrolet. Welcome back, Nation. We are live at Rally House. Stars and Mavs playoffs coming up. You got the Final Four going on. NFL free agency. Get some gear and represent. This could be the year that a DFW team brings the title back. Okay, so let's uh, get excited about that. It is time now, though, for Woolchuck to look back onto the best of the weekend. Here he is, Wooly Bully. We had some fun this weekend. We had the NCAA tournament going on, and there was a lot of audio that came from this. We also had some bad beats I got to get to as well, but we're going to start with a FAMU cheerleader. She has gone viral this weekend. Florida A&M, she's a team member. She was mic'd up, and there's always good trash talk. I mean, LA earlier was playing for G-Bag of the Day, some of the interviews afterwards, but the cheerleaders heckling the opposing team and the officials, this is something special here. Here's a Florida A&M cheerleader doing her best trash talk. Messiah! Y'all can't say you suck! That's what's his word. Take him out of the game, coach! You getting a little bit old for this? Ref! Ref! You don't gotta take that, ref! You don't gotta take that, ref. You don't gotta take that. If, if I was you, I wouldn't let him talk to me like that. That was real aggressive. <laughs> like, he needs a touch. He's not a tutor. He's not a tutor either. 33 ain't made a shot all day. <laughs> Not she was from Florida, love- but what up, fam? Man, yes, <laughs> she was up. working it over there. I yeah. loved it. I, yeah, I love the engagement, the fun. Sure, uh, that that was great audio from her. Great, great work from that cheerleader. I think I would have voted her for G back of the day today. It was if, outstanding, if, and it was the star-studded roster. Uh, yeah, that's I. I you know, I, I can relate to that so much because if I'm involved in the game, I can't stop talking. I must annoy the hell out of people around me. You know, if you're if it's your team, you know, and it's got to happen, the the anxiety, the the extra energy, just I'm the same way, man. Oh, so good. Okay, Kenny and Quinlan. And shout out to him. He's like two months removed now from that hip surgery. I tease the tequila drinkers and and, and Lucius. I I don't know if this is going to get our tequila or not here. And and I call it ours because I've jumped on the bandwagon too. But tequila drinkers might need to brace yourselves. So where do you get tequila from? Like what is tequila made of? The agave stuff, right? It's a plant, right? Yeah. Yeah. So tequila has had a massive jump in sales. So Very popular from 2022, it's made an impressive 30, 34% jump. It's having a bacon-like run. It is. Yeah. And it's starting to now outsell vodka mm. in bars as well. And because of this now, you're starting to have – you're needing more of it produced. And it's not right now able to match up with the agave, agave or agava. Production, agave, yeah. whatever the hell it is. We don't have enough agave. According to the Post, Mexico is currently grappling with a drought that has impacted the regions where oh, the no. bulk of the agave used to produce tequila is grown. Get it's some dang irrigation. It's the lack of rainfall. That's the only part of the issue. So we need more rain. If we get more rain, then you're not going to have to worry about this. Otherwise, we might have a little bit of an issue getting. We got to tequila. figure this out. There, there they are can't smart... make synthetic agave yet. Yeah, there's going to be some smart people in the world that have to figure this out. But we, we can't the, let a drought what's slow What's the replacement down? for agave? I don't know. Is there Whiskey? a comparable fruit? Yeah, well, I'll just go ahead and get vodka or something instead. I don't know, but I was very nervous. Vodka's I was... made out of potatoes, right? It's got a potato base. That Am I right sense. about that? I yeah, think I that's think what... Potatoes? I think, I think yeah, I've heard potatoes, of that. Yeah, potatoes, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think I've heard of that. All right. You guys know where March Madness originated from? Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, I'm going to say... Yeah, Leitner. <laughs> That's a great song. That's a great call. I'm going to say uh, it. March Madness probably came from somebody at CBS Sports, other than Jim Nance, Billy Packard, yeah. Brent Musburger. Oh, there we go. Apparently, yeah. came up with the term March Madness. So he was talking with Susie Schuster, who was filling on the in, for Rich Eisen on the Rich Eisen show. She asked him about this. Here's Brent Musburger explaining how this came about. I had no idea that March Madness came from you, that the idea of March Madness came out of your mouth in 1982. Can you tell us that story, please? 
Well, actually, we have to give full credit. I'll tell you a cute anecdote about the story and how March Madness came to be. First of all, the first time it was used to the best of the NCAA and the network's knowledge was CBS took March Madness away from NBC. We, we outbid them for the tournament. NBC had regionalized it for, for several years. The executive who deserves a lot of credit is no longer with CBS. His name is uh, Kevin O'Malley, a young man who went to Boston College. And we were watching a Notre Dame game against a BYU, of all things. Danny Ainge was playing very well. And he looked over at me and he said, we're going to bid for this and we're going to get the tournament for next year, which CBS did. They had they had enough money to do it. I was the host. I was not the play-by-play man uh, when CBS got. Gary Bender was the original play-by-play man for uh, CBS. But I had a board physically where I actually put names of the teams up and everything. And it was a late one Thursday evening after the opening games. And I, I said, we had a couple of big upsets late that night out of the West Coast. And I said, folks, this is madness. This is, this is March Madness. Now, mm. where it came from, uh, I didn't just pull it out of thin air. But when I was a newspaper man and a broadcaster back in Chicago, back at, uh, when I started, there was a car dealer who was uh, always close to the state high school basketball tournament in the state of Illinois. It was a big, big deal. In fact, and he referred to it in an ad that ran in our paper, the Chicago's American, as March Madness, and he would print the games. But then, of course, underneath, he would have, uh, you know, his car sales. They wanted to copyright it. The NCAA wanted to copyright it. And the state of Illinois alerted them that they had used March Madness before they had. So obviously, the attorneys came to me and asked me, and I said, listen, I said, that definitely, definitely uh, was started by the uh, state of Illinois and their downstate high school basketball tournament. Well, a settlement was made, and now uh, the NCAA does own, they have the copyright to uh, to March Madness. But that's, that's how it began, and it, it stems from the Illinois State High School basketball tournament and a, and a car dealer in Chicago. The NCAA at one time uh, actually considered moving the tournament to April, and um, the fact that March Madness became a copyright and so many people refer to it uh, has impacted the NCAA to keep it, to keep it where it is in March. Crazy. Yeah. I had no idea the history of this. Brent giving us an education lesson. He also kind of went back at critics for the whole uh, AJ McCarron girlfriend issue, Catherine okay. Lab or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. He 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 blamed uh, woke media. alcohol. Woke media oh. is what he blamed for that. It's mm. like okay, hey, maybe he's like, look at her. Am I wrong? She's hot, huh? It's not. Yeah. It's not me being frisky. <laughs> it's not me being an old guy just pointing yeah. out we got a beautiful woman on TV. Yeah. I mean, come on, it's not my fault. Was I wrong? Yeah. No, you weren't. Uh, and I think he's going to put in an application for uh, XFL play-by-play rules uh, duties here soon because you have A.J. McCarron, who's playing for the St. Louis Battlehawks, and Catherine Webb's at every single game. There she goes. So you can oh, they're still together? Yeah. Oh, they're still together. They have yeah. kids oh, now. Oh, great. yeah. A.J. went ahead and locked that up in the back. Do you guys have any bad beats this week? Do you have any gambling? I didn't have any. The, like I said, the one, the Marquette one was the one that kind of put me out a little okay. bit. Okay. Last night. Yeah, but it, I, I mean, it wasn't a bad beat. I know you went with TCU. Yeah. I went with TCU to cover Ooh. against Gonzaga. Oh, I see oh. what you're doing, yeah. You got a little offshore activity going on? I had a, a big win, but this was a bad beat for a lot of people that took Gonzaga to cover, okay? So you had people were betting on Gonzaga as a four-and-a-half-point favorite. With .7 seconds left on the clock, TCU rolls the ball up the court and hit a meaningless three-pointer while down six to lose 84 to 81 so people are thinking yeah baby i got the zags to cover meanwhile i'm watching this thinking great i have just lost more money that i don't have Mm. lo and behold here come my horn frogs with a big three (laughs) your boys banking again I got the hot streak going. Yeah, man, it was a lot of fun watching TCU. I thought they were going to pull it off, and there's not a better feeling in the world than when that happens. When you know it's time to give it up is when you can't even watch. You're like, I'm just going to Google the score in two hours. And trust yeah. me, if I had blown that one again yesterday, yeah, I-, I don't think I'd have bet any more on this tournament because yeah. that was the only thing I hit on. Otherwise, this has been terrible, and we need to figure out what's going on with this bet payoff stuff. 
Yeah, I kind of, I don't know. I think Gavin's kind of trying to talk his way out of it. Like, Gavin is. Like, he, we brought it up as Gavin a possibility. Doesn't do this. Yeah, we brought it up as a possibility. Like, I was disappointed last week when you guys looked at me like I was speaking Greek when I said, as, Let, we, all do filled, a as we all filled in a bracket? Yeah. Yeah. I thought we were just doing that for bragging rights. No, oh. no. I think we yeah. got to do this. I think the loser of our bracket still does a bet payoff, and, and you just do one because you didn't put one in. I got all chalk. That's what happens if you don't put a, a bracket in. Right. It's like the auto all draft right. uh, at your fantasy draft. That's fair. right. I, I guess you that makes sense. can't put the underdogs on me. So we'll see how the chalk does. Okay. Do I have any one seeds alive still? Uh, yes. There's still Houston and Alabama. See? Yeah, I'm doing good. Otherwise, the KU's all the way. out and uh, our, uh, KU's out. And who was the P- Purdue. Purdue. Purdue got the massive yeah. upset. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Well, thanks, Wolchuk. That is the best of the weekend. We do it every Monday at 340. Now Brian's ticked off at me. Thinks I'm wilgin off the hook. Here. I think you I'll are. Tell you too. what, I, I just so just. I'm ready to fire. Let's fire. There's nobody that gets more fired up for the bet payoff when they're not involved than Gavin. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's nobody that gets more fired. Well, up I take it very that. seriously. I yeah. do too. And, yeah. and and I just that's why I was I so just, disappointed when you guys did not confirm that I we had a like, bet. I felt like we were in. This on. is I like kinda, you playing I, golf with your guy, the cowboy. Who was the cowboy that took you for three hundred bucks? Oh, it's that Ter- was Terrence, Terrence Newman. Newman. Yeah. I taught him how to play golf. See? Yeah. Yeah, and one day no he showed way. up and at the at the eighteenth he was like, Yeah, we are playing twenty bucks a hole and you owe me three. You're not supposed to remember that story. <laughs> That's not what you just did to me. People don't You're forget, like, hey, Brian. by the way, we got a bet payoff on the tournament. When did we establish that? No, but real I'm, talk. I'll I'll, you know, I'll listen to the tape if there's an MP three of this from our show. Oh, we but I don't back think to there the is. Tape again. I think I think on two different occasions you will hear me say, You guys, sound like Aaron Rodgers really go look at the tape. Yeah, go to the tape. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to take an Aaron Rodgers vacation right now. <laughs> Maybe get some more love in my heart after dealing with a crusty like you for oh, five hours a no. day. Such a disappointment. We're live at Rally House. They're never a disappointment They're not if you at need all. some sports gear, no matter what your team is. Brian, in the back of Brian's a video shot here at 105thefan.com, Twitch, and YouTube, you see all the LSU gear, FC Dallas, Cowboys, Rangers, Mavs. What do you want? And what do recent events tell us about the Cowboys' approach to team building? That is the topic of the day, and we're back into it next here on 105.3 The Fan. Got to chat Window Nation with you, though. Window Nation, the best way, the only way to get new windows here in North Texas. Doesn't matter, uh, you know.
Fan Studio, secured by DFWSecurity.com. You're rolling with the G Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan. Here we go, Nation. It is our number three of the broadcast. We are live at Rally House in Dallas, Preston, and Forest. We've already given away two Texas Rangers jerseys, and we're going to give away another one before this show is out a little bit later on. So come hang out. We'll do a little bit of trivia, and if you have the right answer, you'll get a Rangers jersey to celebrate opening day, which is next Thursday at 3 o'clock right here on The Fan, Brian. Yeah, I, I'm not going to make these questions easy, by no, the way. No, no. These, these two gentlemen that won the jerseys, they had to sit here a while. Yeah. I made them answer some questions, and they, they, they you know, finally. They loved finally it. Finally, they, yeah, they were able to, and, and they were Ranger fans. Yeah. They had Ranger gear on. They're geared up for the they season. They were geared up and ready, and Rally House has all your gear. They do. Whatever gear you need, but we're, we got one more jersey. Probably going to hold that for late in the day. Yep. Maybe okay. for the expressway. Maybe expressway. Something like, yeah, all right. something like I'm that. I'm about to peel off and maybe go get some Stars gear. I might go to the game Saturday night against Vancouver. Vancouver? Get some, get some fresh gear, get ready yeah. for the postseason run. Oh, absolutely. you got to get ready and, and, and feel it here. Uh, still first place in the division, uh, third place in the West, but just a couple of points back. So let's see where this finishes up. Now, today and since the weekend, really since last week with NFL free agency kicking off, the Cowboys have once again been the star of the show when it comes to DFW Sports Talk. The truckwreck.com fan text is open at 877-881-1053. What are, what are we seeing here? Uh, are you optimistic about this year? Do you think they're the best team in the, divi- in, the, in, the, in the division of the conference? Do you think they've been Super Bowl champs? And did the Cowboys finally learn their lesson that building just a playoff team isn't good enough? You have to build a team capable of, on paper, saying we're the best at the conference. Those are the teams that are better than the teams that just make the playoffs. You don't want to be with the Vikings and the Giants. You want to be clearly where the Niners, the Rams, uh, and maybe even the Eagles were uh, last year, as much as you hate to admit it about your division rival. Howie Roseman figured that out. He said, we can't just try to make the playoffs and get lucky every year. We're going to get stomped. The the teams that are winning the championship are building teams a, a, a cut above. And I don't know. The Cowboys have have talked so much about being convinced that their way is the right way, Brian. Yeah. I don't know if they've pivoted away from that, if we should enjoy this as a temporary reprieve from their conservative nature, or if maybe Steven's young man energy is starting to enter the equation to be more aggressive, or is this Jerry maybe saying, I don't have time to have a bad time. we got to get Gilmore this time. We're taking yeah. the best players we can get for trade and going into training camp like that, but we will have star players coming aboard. I kind of feel like, though, that if if it was the Jerry way of doing thing, they would have Odell Beckham here. That's kind of how I feel like that. I yeah. feel like that maybe this is a situation where, uh, you know, people in the organization, when Odell came in, there was a lot of buzz about that. And then once they got to know him and things like that, I, I kind of felt like that it was like, okay, maybe this isn't the best thing for the organization. You know, hey, Jerry, let's think about this. You know, and Jerry could be very persuasive. Heck, he owns the team, you yeah. know. And for Steven or Will or even Mike McCarthy to talk him out of that, I think that's the thing that I'm the I'm I'm leaning towards right now. It's like Jerry might want to do this, but there's others in the organization that are willing to stand up and say, No, wait a minute. We we have a chance to go get Brandon Cooks here. Yeah. You know, we have a That's chance. a good compromise if I'm Jerry. Yeah. Maybe I, mean, I yeah. want OBJ, yeah, no, but absolutely. Cooks makes more sense. He's three years younger. And, and by the way, by the way, our guy down there in Houston, the general manager, he is totally, totally walking anything back about what the Cowboys are saying. Nick Casario? Nick Casario is like, he's like, no, nah, no, nah, it's not happening. Because the we'll, fans are killing him now. Yeah, well, you've hopefully got, we'll, you got yeah. plenty of dysfunction. This is yeah, an argument. Yeah. I don't know if you can really we'll, trust we'll get what the audio. We'll get the audio on that, hopefully, and, and play that maybe tomorrow for you or later on. Something. But, but Nick's walking this thing back. But I think the Cowboys, I, I like what I like what Steven and Will and Mike are doing. If, if they can hold Jerry off to like, Okay, hey, we still want to draft, but we're going to add this piece or that piece, and you know, and and still do that work. I, I think is now now they're into something. You know, we feel like hey, they've had a good off season with the trades, the the signing of the guys, the you know, the Donovan Wilsons and Van Der Esch and all that. Now we're about to go into a phase where they're really good. 
Yeah. With that drafting. You know, and now you're sitting like, oh, hey, good moves. Like what they're doing. Amen. Now you're about to hit it where they're with their where their sweet spot. This is. is their bread and butter. Yeah. 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 They're they're a top five drafting team in the NFL. They've been that way for a while. Yeah. I I'd, I'd like to believe that they went into this offseason and said, Okay, we gotta get better. We need another good corner and another good wide receiver. How much is that gonna cost us? Oh, about thirty eight million bucks. Yeah. Twenty for the receiver, eighteen for the corner. Crap, can't do that. What else could we do? Well, let's get more aggressive trading for players now. And we get a wide receiver that's gonna count for twelve against the cap in a corner at eight are they in their prime no but this is how this Cowboys organization stays true to being more conservative with the cap and also adding real quality players and I hope it's an uptick in aggressiveness this might be the sweet spot for when it comes to acquiring talent because the market inefficiency right now is in the trade market yeah. it's it's not in drafting everybody's got that whooped good luck trying to find an edge and it's not in free agency everybody's getting overpaid it's it's this, it's this trade market where teams that went for it have an excess, and they got to get off these contracts so they can start rebuilding. And and maybe the Cowboys are actually going to be a little bit more of innovators than followers. Here. They play it, to me. They've played the compensatory game, mm-hmm. yeah. where they've allowed uh, you know the Randy Gregory's, Connor of the world, Williams, the Connor Williams, Cedric Wilson, the Cedric and Wilson. That capital buys you yeah, these players exactly. So you you've basically traded. Uh, Randy Gregory and Connor Williams for Gilmore and for Cooks sure. is what you've done. And, yeah. hey, we were frustrated a year ago. Uh, look, and, and this might be, hey, it's a one-year kind of thing. I don't think that every off season you're going to be able to get the deals fall into place like they've been able to, to, to have fall into place for if them this people, year. If people, if people mismanage their cap, this will be the way to add players. And hey, you know what I'm saying if you're yeah. a team, if you're a team that sucks at managing your cap, yeah. and all of a sudden you've got to unload guys because you don't feel like you're going to pay them, like a Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Maybe yeah. you don't suck, but you just went for you, it. You just went yeah. for it, and it didn't. I mean, it worked out for the Rams. They it got did. a Super Bowl title, but now they're now they're in a situation like we just got to take what we can for Ramsey. Sure. We'll take a three. Yeah. Like two, three years ago, you offer a third round pick for Jalen Ramsey. They'd laugh at you. They would say, What? Yeah. Jacksonville, what? What but, are you talking about? But now about? we're trying to unload that contract. We'll take back any kind of compensation I can get. Right. I look, maybe it doesn't end up working out in future years. All I care about is right now, right now, they're one of the teams that's winning the offseason. And yeah. that's without signing an outside free agent. Yeah. These two trades that they've made, these are what we applaud the other teams that we think are going all in for. These are all in moves. Yeah, they are, and and you get to keep a good amount of your future flexibility. Absolutely, because you yeah. haven't given fifty million dollars. You've kept all your top one hundred picks. Yeah, Houston's taking a portion of the contract from Brandon Cooks. That's clearly something that was important to them. Big win there, Stephon Gilmore. You're not having to give another contract right. to. Huge win there, and these are filling big needs. What yeah. was your biggest hole? Wide receiver opposite C.D. Lamb. Go ahead and bring in Brandon Cooks. Is this a better trio than you had with Amari, C.D. Lamb, and Michael Gallup? I think there's a debate to be had there. Brandon Cooks has been sensational over the last six years of his career with 1,000-yard seasons, five or more touchdowns. He's been an absolute stud. And Gilmore, all the reports we've gotten from the Gang of Seven, and if you go back and you study the All-22, still one of the better corners in all the NFL. You're putting him opposite Trayvon Diggs. Maybe... Jalen Ramsey and Xavier Howard are, are a better duo, but you've got the second best duo in all of the NFL now at corner. This team's put themselves in a very down conference. This is the time to go win now. We just went ahead and gave a top five power ranking in the NFC. We had the bleeping Lions and I had the Bears in there. I mean, yeah. we're, 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 this conference is down. It's there for the taking. You can doubt Dak Prescott, but you look ahead at the other quarterbacks in this conference – and you're not thinking Dax in the conversation for the best? Yeah. You're not watching the Yeah, sport. but he's got to play well enough to go win this conference. He does. For sure. I mean, and that's, and that's on him. And I'm not going to let and, him and off the on, hook there. It's, and it's on McCarthy, too. But they're Absolutely. doing a good job now of surrounding the roster, much like we applauded Howie, Roseman, and, yeah. and the Eagle. Right now, the Cowboys are doing that. And, yeah. and i got to give him praise, and i got to give him love for it. Okay, is it all right if I do some uh, off-season uh, uh, grades for the moves that were made in the first week? Give me week? some grades. Mm-hmm. Okay, we just had the Lions picking up the Eagle safety, uh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Mm-hmm. And of the two moves, that, uh, out of all the moves the Cowboys have made, I wondered at the time, was it the right thing to tag uh, the running back? 
we'll see. Was it the right thing to give Donovan Wilson $8 million a year? That seemed high. Well, uh, the Lions get C.J. Gardner-Johnson one year at that same number of $8 million. So that might be pretty close to the top of the safety market. I mean, the last time we had... Uh, huge safeties available. It was Earl Thomas and it was uh, Jamal Adams. And with both of these players, there was significant remorse from the Seahawks and the Ravens. And I think the value of the safety is declining more and more and more. And it seems like you have to be so good at coverage that if you're that good, you're just going to go play corner. Like right now, they're like, fast backup linebackers, Mm -hmm. you know, not not backup like second on the depth chart, but like we're behind the linebackers in case they miss the tackles. And certainly they do a lot of other stuff. We're blitzing the quarterback and we're asking to cover, but it's not covering in a way that's elite enough to be a corner. I don't know what the what the economy of the safety position looks like right now, but it is fascinating to see CJ Gardner Johnson go go for just eight million dollars on a one year deal. He's I definitely thought he was better than that, Uh, but they get an A for that move. Uh, so, uh, so and nice you got a B for re-signing. And I remember because we did this when they did Donovan Wilson. If you're looking at the ESPN grades, yeah, because they put it out yeah. immediately. Yeah, yeah, they put out the grade. I mean, it, that was a that was a B move for the Cowboys at that time. Okay, uh, you have uh, Brandon Cooks. Here we go. The trade. What what grade would you give the trade of a, a five and a six for Brandon Cooks? That would be a uh, a B for the Cowboys and a C minus for the uh, the Texans. I think it's an A move for the Cowboys. ESPN gives them an an A minus. Oh, okay. Okay, so you'll take that. In twenty and twenty one, he averaged two point three and two point one yards per route run. It dropped to 1.7 this last year with Davis Mills at quarterback, but his receiver tracking metrics overall score also dropped from 67 to 60 to 42 over those three seasons. Cooks, 29 years old, was unhappy in Houston and frustrated. So I think they're given a little bit of a, hey, he is 29 years old, still technically young, but maybe the reason you got him for so cheap was for some tangible reasons as far as his route crispness dropping off. You got him probably because a general manager down there doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. (laughs) How would you guys look at that? We'll talk draft a little bit later on, but I want to know what this, what this does to your draft perspective when it comes to the wide receiver position. Is this a, is this a bridge or more of a permanent guy? We'll talk about that a little bit later on. How about the bills agreeing to re-sign the safety Jordan Poyer? It's a huge win for Buffalo. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to get done after 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 hearing his wife or seeing her her words about Buffalo and having to pay over five hundred thousand dollars in tax. Yeah, I I had a feeling she was probably standing in the living room right now saying, "Hey, we need to take this somewhere else." Yeah, honey, can we get the move out of here? I, I think you could tell that Bills defense. And they had both of their their safeties dinged up last year as well. I think Micah Hyde was also out. But Poyer's loss was evident, and that's a big reason why Cincinnati was able to have so much success in the playoff game. In each of the past two seasons, no defensive back has cost opposing offenses more expected points added when targeted than Poyer uh, because of all of his takeaways. That was two years, 12.5, 14.5 max Mm. value if he hits all of the incentives. They give that signing an A-, minus, but there it is. Two and twelve and a half for Poyer, An unbelievable defensive That's back. Cheap man. The Patriots signing Mike Kosicki. Uh, that one gets a B. The Giants uh, agree to sign uh, wide receiver Darius Slayton, two years and twelve mil. That one's a uh, a B plus. And there you have it. Some grades as we broadcast live from Rally House, Preston and Forest. We do have one more Rangers jersey to give away. Your choice of which one you walk out with. Okay, Rangers fans, so this is a great opportunity, and we'll do that a little bit later on in the show. But coming up next, it's time for Woolchuck's Top 10 at 420. Where are we going with that, sir? I had a Tolo asking for it, so I am going to provide it. I got the Top 10 Burgers in Dallas. What are the Top 10 Burgers in Dallas? 877-881-1053. Do you have a place? Plus, who are the most traded players in the history of the sport? And why is Brandon Cooks on the list next? All right, let's talk about our
Man, and we are live at Rally House in Dallas, the Preston and Forest location. There's two on Preston, as I found out uh, this afternoon at about uh, one ten. Had to hightail it over here to this location. This is a uh, this is a home game for me. I'm wearing the home whites today. Oh. I literally live a mile from this store. Cool. So yeah, it's funny that, uh, and it's a beautiful. It's beautiful. It really is. They have everything. I, I, I guess you can see if you're watching on. The Twitch or the YouTube stuff. I mean, I'm an LSU guy. You know me. I always wear my LSU stuff every day. Yes. This is where I get it. The rally okay. houses. So, yeah. If Swing you're on by. Any one of these teams, fans, you know, Stars, Rangers, Mavs, college. It doesn't matter, man. They've got it all. This yeah. place is incredible. The North Texas section is booming. Fellas, we have a Dalton Schultz signing. Oh, we do. It's just gone down. What did he get? The Houston Texans are signing Dalton Schultz, former Cowboys tight end, to a one-year deal. Yep, there you go. Worth up to $9 million. <laughs> well done, Dalton. You continue that career, and you're going to get paid, and that sounds like a great situation for him. By the way, segment's brought to you by the Frankels. There's a reason you need a special license to drive a big truck. So companies that hire drivers and put them in a big truck should be held accountable for what happens when one hurts you. Frankly, you need Frankel and Frankel. Consultations always free. Truckwreck.com. Stats are not football. Dalton Schultz, the latest to learn about that, Zach. Yeah, it just, oof, that one was iffy there. Uh, but let's hit it. Let's hit the Wooly Bully Top 10, baby. And the fan text, truckwreck.com text line is already booming. 877-881-1053. Best burger in the Metroplex. I had a total reach out. I was like, bro, would you do a top 10 burger list? So scoured the web. I found one. But we're getting a lot of great feedback, a lot of great texts from this. You know, about 12 years ago, uh, Woolchuck, there's photographic evidence of me sitting about 230 pounds. Lucius and I uh, did a segment every night, with this back in the evenings, Another Day, Another Burger. Just was pounding called. burgers. And I, I toured these over about a 30-day period. So, okay, where did you come away with and be like, okay, this was the, was it Rodeo Goat? Were they really the goats? I don't know if Rodeo Goat was around. Uh, it might then. not have been. Yeah, because Rodeo Goat, Rodeo Goat is there was new. the uh, the Twisted deep. Root was really yeah. high. That yeah. was yeah. that was a top five. Yeah. There's a spot called the Grape on Lower Greenville that only serves burgers on Sunday. I think that scored really high. Uh, Hop Dotties, um, yeah, Hop Dotties delicious. W Wingfields and Oak Cliff, uh, that was a top. Five burger as well I, I think that's about the, the four or five then there was one at, at uh and i'm trying to come up with a name here in, in arlington that diners drive-ins and drive throughs or whatever they they Dives, did it there yeah, that, that, yeah. triple they, d yeah and 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 that place was incredible as well so that that'd probably be my personal top five. i went to a legendary one yesterday picked up food from my mom and dad uh, what was it keller's okay keller's is gonna be Keller, on here Kel is it on there keller's is delicious okay. yes we did keller's i love yep. that because you could you could get a beer right there in your car it, exactly i love the legendary. old school vibe of yeah. it keller's was so good man. that I, brings the burger score up two full points i got i got three burgers and three orders of tater tots for less than twenty bucks. That's where it's wow. three, at, man. three double meat cheeseburgers. That's my guy. Number fives. They're Dang. called number fives. There, yeah. And it's... oh, the original Chop House in Arlington. That's what it was. Salute to my guys oh, out yes. there. Yes, okay. That's a great burger. So, L.A. Maple uh, and Motor. As, Maple and as Motor. One of our bro. Other... That burger is incredible. Uh, okay, maple motor. Sorry, Wolchuk. Might, might end up making. I'm in my element here. Might end up making. I'm getting excited. I'm going to try to shut up. And it's been a little while since I've had a burger. Although I, I can dabble with no bun, which is not as fun. But LA, where are we going with uh, your favorite burger spot in the Metroplex? Uh, like Dawson said, Wingfields is fantastic. Yeah, good call. It's the size of a hubcap, and make sure you don't have <laughs> anything planned afterwards because you will need a nap. It's a burger for four. Yeah, Love it's that. fantastic, bro. <laughs> yeah, Trucker's Cafe. Burger. You ever heard of ooh, Trucker's Cafe? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, oh, they I got have a fantastic that. burger yeah. out there, bro. Okay. Uh, Keller's, like my man said, that's fantastic, of course. And there's a spot called Black Jack Pizza. They have really good pizza, what? but they have a big menu of all types of stuff in their burger. It's fire! Okay, there's going to be something here. The pizza spot is going to make an appearance in this top really? ten that is supposedly has an outstanding burger. So, Lucius... You're, you're not wrong. That's it's good fire. advice. That's good advice. Like I get it. You go to a Lucia's, pizza spot. Where would you put Jake's on the burger chain for you? 
In my top ten, how about that? Okay, good in my yeah. top ten, yeah, I like that burger. Yeah, good burger. Yeah, yeah Jake's is good. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the buns are the same at Keller's as they are at Jake's. I think I they, they poppy seeds. seeds. Yes, poppy I think, seeds. I think they might be owned yeah. by similar people, but they use I think the buns for sure with the black poppy seeds on top. Yep, yep. those are the ones. Okay, we're getting a lot of love for Wells Burger in Rockwall. Hmm. That's getting some love. Uh, Joe Willie in Rockwall as well. Olive Burger, which my parents love. They order from the one in Plano all the time. Solid Burger. No doubt about it. Hooker's Burgers in the Stockyards. Hooker's. Sounds promising. For it does work. sound promising. Okay. Meteor Burger in Wiley. Griff's is getting a ton of oh, love. Yeah, Griff's Griff's. Oh, yeah. Griff's. Oh, yeah. Griff's got a good burger. Yeah, yeah Griff's does. Mm. Is Griff's a bar or a burger place? I mean, it's not like Griff's sounds like a place. Burger place? Go in. It's a burger. It's yeah, a burger, right. Okay. Like, I think it's a drive-through, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a yeah. It's a burger place, old school kind of. Okay. Type of vibes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Maple and Motor, which we've talked about. Angry Dog in Deep yeah. Ellum. Yeah, that's another yeah. good one. It's yeah. And how about Chips Burgers? I've been Chips, to the one. Chips, yes, off the toll road. Yeah, it's right they, there. They got by one in Frisco SMU now kinda. too. Yeah, that place is. That's good. That's excellent, man. Shout out to uh, Burger Time Machine in Denton from the nine four zero. I'd also love to throw some. Uh, some some joy towards Frosties in Denton, okay. which I've talked about on the show. I do love me some Frosties. Where okay. are you guys? Have you ever had a Liberty Burger? Liberty Burger is going to be on this okay, list. Now, it's okay, now it's an honorable mention. Oh, is it? So it didn't make the top okay. ten, but it's an honorable mention. It's a gourmet burger, so I don't know if it really is one of those. You know, you're kind of like, for me, a burger. If it's over twenty bucks, I'm like, why? You know, yeah. but okay. but Liberty has a good burger. Yes, but it is a gourmet. Price it just six fifty. The classic Liberty Burger okay. boasts an all-American combo of lettuce, tomato, onions, and pickles. Yeah. Fries come in skinny or sweet potato. Yeah. And uh, they say don't skip out on those decadent shakes. Okay. The shake can set it off. You know? It really That'll can. That'll be a total game changer if you're enjoying the shake. It'll with set it. it off. But you need good fries, too. You do. And that's one thing I have always loved about Five Guys. We did the TikTok hack with the bacon last week, but Five Guys loads it up with the fries, man. I think they charge you for those fries that fall out of the bag. No. Yeah, they do. No. I think they do. If they're large fries, they're probably a little pricey. You think too much? I think they're a little pricey, yeah. I think, right, and, they, and, they're, gonna... and they're like, okay, let's spill some in the bag to act like we've kind of helped you out here. All right, so here are the honorable mentions, and some of these have been texted in, so I just want to give them love. Yeah. Oh, they're overflowing. Skyrocket right. Burger. Wait, real quick. Can I ask something? Hell no, you real, can't. No, real quick, real quick, real quick. Yeah, yeah. Don't even ask. Do you ever, like, if you go to a place like McDonald's who has really good fries. Yeah. Do you order an extra bag of fries just to have some travel fries? Oh, that's no. actually really smart. You're never no, going to eat a bag. that. Lucius, no. are you a travel fry guy? Like, you're going to order an extra fry just to jump in the bag while you're driving? No. I don't eat while I drive. I don't eat in the car. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I take I it mean, home it's... to the air fryer. Let it rejuvenate and everything. <laughs> That brings it back to life. Yeah. Yeah. See, but that, I yeah, even might wait when I get that. to the house for a little bit, you know, just to get ready for the food. That's weed. That's weed. <laughs> <laughs> I might put it in the air fryer. You, you know, know I get <laughs> eaten unless I smoke. Yeah. <laughs> Skyrocket <laughs> Burger coming in as an honorable mention. Stackhouse Burger as well, which is off Ooh. Gaston downtown. Downtown's got Nine dollar is their classic cheeseburger. God, sounds good. It's a good uh, price on a burger these it days. Is. Yeah. Hero off Olive Street is getting uh, some love. Is That's downtown mention. too, right? Yep, it Olive is. Street? Okay. And Rodeo Goat, which now has several different locations, Burger. is also getting uh, some love as an honorable mention. We already talked about Liberty Burger as well. Okay, number 10 is Maple and Motor. It's long offered one of Dallas's favorite burgers, landing on nearly every burger enthusiast best of list. And this was the one that Guy Fieri uh, went to. Okay. So Maple Off, uh, and Motor. Cedar Springs or whatever. Maple there. Avenue. Maple, Maple Avenue, Avenue there okay. in Dallas. Uh, and Maple now. The Maple and Motor. Yeah. God, idiot. Number nine. It's all yeah. good. Uh, number nine is. Assist. And I, I just, <laughs> This place sounded familiar. Have you guys been to Dairy Et? Dairy oh. Queen, Hunger Bus. Dairy Et off Ferguson Road in Dallas. It's a thin patty burger that they griddle, and they recommend the onion rings, and then you can get a frosty mug of house made root beer. That sounds pretty damn delicious, doesn't it? Sounds real. I, I don't know about the thin burger though. I, I don't. I, you want a thick patty? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. You don't want the thin one. So like, no. doesn't steak and I'll shake. I'll go with the thinner the thin? patty. I'll, I prefer the thinner. Yeah, like kind of smash burger. I kind of like it. I kind of like it where the grease gets into the bun. Okay. I kind of like that. See, yeah. I think you have to have a thicker oh, patty okay. to do that. Yeah. I like when the grease is on the bag. You know that burger's Boom, about to be fire. Boom, yes. yes. It oh. happened at Keller's starts, yesterday. It starts rolling down the your melted, wrist. The melted cheese with the grease in the back. Yeah. Yes. Yes. There we go. Now we're cooking, baby. <laughs> All right, we're going to go off Garland Road here in Dallas. It's called Lounge Here. 
and they, they do their burgers, burgers. You can either get the traditional, or you can also get veggie or turkey or a Beyond Why? Burger upon request. Why? Just for, you know, some of us out there that might not, might, might not dabble on that. Okay. Sorry. A lounge burger. Number seven, and I was talking to Atolo, who's out here with us at Rally House off Preston and Forest as we party with you. Still got one more Rangers jersey we're going to give away if you can answer Brian's Rangers right. trivia questions. Not easy. Burger House off Mockingbird. Yeah. Yep. DFW staple for more yeah. than 60 years. Yeah. yeah, my guy. That's my guy, Chris Canellis, the Greek. I went yep. to school with him at WT White. No kidding. Yeah, the Greek. Good family, man. The one over there, like right across the street from SMU, you can kind of see it's like you walk in there, man. The, the menu, it's like the food, the atmosphere, the people, everything about it Good is vibes. great vibe. And they put a little, they got a garlic salt or something they put on their fries Ooh. that makes it like, it's just really, the fries just pop. Okay. So yeah, yeah Chris Canellis, the Greek. I, like I think that. he might be listening. The Greek listens hey, to us shout every out day. to the Greek. Greek. Yeah, the Greek. Burger House coming in at number seven. Number six Man, is Case. I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. bro. This is no, a no, tough good. segment f to go through, dog. I've had oatmeal. <laughs> I know. Us, so hey. This is tough, bro. <laughs> Trust me, bro. It's, it's not easy for me, but Dang. I kind of I kind of like the, uh, I, the, I know the Lucy's, temptation. Lucius on the way home is pulling over to Burger Place. <laughs> yeah, we're going burgers There's tonight. no question he's getting a burger tonight. Monday Jeez. night burgers. <laughs> All right, number six, we got Haystack Burgers in Barley. This is also off Mockingbird in Dallas. Damn. And they, it's they a say, hot street for burgers. That's they kind of have like some fancy Big Mac stylings that you can do with this. Like I'm looking at some onion strings, thick cuts of bacon that they'll put on this yeah, sucker, man. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Looks absolutely delicious. Okay, here's the top five. Number five, we got Hillside Tavern, also off Mockingbird. I think Mockingbird's doing like burger wars. Like all of these places are kind of at a similar location, but it says when you go it's to the Hill epicenter of burgers we in need, America, we need, we need to go hit it really these is. Places. When you go yeah. to Hillside Tavern, it's it's the traditional double cheeseburger is what you got to get. They say, and it's okay. divine. Lucius, I'm getting ideas for Fridays. Oh, there oh, we go. Yeah, yeah, I'll send you yeah. this list. Yeah, number four, we have Good Friend Beer Bargain, uh, Good Friend Beer Garden, and Burger House. Comes in here at number seven. Classic American cheese, shredded lettuce, tomato, onion, ranch, mayo, and dill pickles mm. are the ideal burger there. Uh, that's off PV Road in Dallas. So good. I'm going now to we get into that. the top three. Number three. Here you go, Brian. Keller's Drive-In. Yeah. Went there yesterday. Make sure wow. if you go to Keller's, there's one over off Northwest Highway. The one that also at Harry Hines is really good. Make sure you take cash. They yeah. don't take credit cards there. And like Gavin said, while you're waiting for your food, you can enjoy a, a cold beverage there as well. Now, this was a, a burger joint that's getting texted in quite a bit, and it's not on the list, but it's it's in Fort Worth, so maybe that's why. But Kincaid's? Oh, yeah, it's, yes. it's awesome. Yeah, By TCU. Kincaid's I have it done. unbelievably good. I wanted to go because the rally house in Fort Worth we went to. Right. There was one, one right, right across, across the street. street. Right. Because I'm on soda, it's like, man, I can't do that. But. Right. I think I'm going to have to make a trip to Kincaid's because this is getting texted in a ton. Kincaid's is excellent. It really is. A lot is. of love for yeah. Kincaid's, yeah. no doubt. And, yes, if you missed it, we did mention at the top of the segment, the Texans have signed former Cowboy tight end Dalton Schultz one year, $9 million deal. I'm getting a lot of texts about the Dalton yeah. Schultz stuff. We got you covered. Yeah. Don't you worry here on your home of the Cowboys. All right, number two. This is off Midway number Road in Addison. <laughs> this is the New York pizza place. It's Zoli's. New York pizza. Oh, really? yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good burger over there, well? bro. Yes, good burger over there. Yes. Fantastic. It's called the OBD. Apparently, it's the unsung hero of the menu. It's the obligatory Dallas burger. It's a double patted wonder topped with plenty of American cheese and pickles. Wow. And that's it. Hold the pickles, and we're good. That's <laughs> it. That's all they put on that thing. <laughs> hey, for real, that's how you like your burgers, though, right? Just yeah. meat and ketchup and, and a meat, nice cheese, little yeah. bun. Yeah. Yep. Bacon's, bacon's optional. Yep. Yep. But yep. Number one right now currently, top burger in Dallas. You got to go to one of our favorite spots. It's Knife Burger. The Knife Burger at Knife. Wow. Never really? Yep. Okay. Yep, it's moved up to number one, and that's, of course, off park in that Willow Bend, Willow Bend Shopping Center. Next right, to Mexican right Bar? Right next to Mexican yeah. Bar Company. They got the but best go burger there. in America right there. You don't have to necessarily go fancy with the steaks. Just what? get Knife Burger right now. Okay. Best burger in okay. Dallas, according okay. to Eater. Remember that next time we're there. We'll, we'll okay. take four burgers. Was Twisted Root on the, on the 
the list? Twisted Root was an honorable mention. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I love when they but go. See Roger Rabbit, your order is ready. Roger <laughs> Rabbit. They make it fun. <laughs> yeah. They do make it fun. Uh, that's crazy, though. So many good burgers have come. Like, Twisted Root used to be a winner of these yeah. or top five, and I think they still could be. You know, there's about 25 good burger spots to choose, and they got to pick their, their top ten or whatever. But, crazy. Uh, I drive by that place on Thursday coming up to the station. Yeah. Might have to make a stop. There you sure. go. We would yeah. love that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When we come back, G-Bag Nation. Mavericks, what to watch for? They're back in action this evening. And what Kyrie says contributed to this recent success they've been having. It's coming up next in the G Bag Nation 105.3 The Fan. Can we talk?
to support the 2023 Tex Gala presented by Choctaw Casinos and Resort. Walk the red carpet, have dinner on the field at Globe Life Field, followed by an intimate performance by Kenny Chesney. For tickets, TexasRangers.com slash Tex Gala. The upcoming segment of The Fan is brought to you by Classic Chevrolet. Thank you, Lucius. We're going to have Brandon Cook's audio coming up at 5 o'clock. Just heard from the office ace, the cubicle QB himself, Tim Collins. And uh, we, got some, we got some cuts coming up here. Brandon Cook on uh, his trade to the Cowboys. You know he wanted that last offseason, our last trade deadline. Yeah. He was ticked off and, and took a couple of weeks leaves of absence because uh, Houston would not trade him to the Cowboys for what they were offering, right? That was the he story missed the, the game time. against the Cowboys, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, so we'll, we'll talk more about the Cowboys and, and play that Brandon Cooks audio for you coming up at 5 o'clock right here on The Fan. Uh, we're excited for opening day for the Rangers, which is next Thursday. But right here, Mavs and Grizzlies tonight. What Kyrie Irving says is the key to the Mavericks playing better of late, Brian. Yeah, no, I, I was going to say something real quick about next week. Hey, we encourage you to listen to the Rangers, especially when they're on during our spots. Yep. <laughs> yeah, feel free. Yep. Feel free to just hang in there. These games are, hey, they're two hours and 15 minutes now. Yes. Feel free. Listen all Action two hours. Action packed. Of, yeah. Feel this free. This team, uh, they play their best ball during the day anyway. Yeah, you exactly. Know, so they have a better chance of winning Good through shot. the hours. Good shot. Listen, listen to the games. Kind of, you know, enjoy. Not so enjoy. Enjoy. We've got the best crew. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can't, I mean, Hicksie's amazing. Jared's mm-hmm. amazing. And you know about the Hall of Famer, Eric Nadell. It's a very easy baseball listen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, Kyrie is questionable tonight. And so is Tim Hardaway Jr., and Luca is out for sure there with the with the quad contusion. There's no way they really are tanking, are they? Like this, they sure didn't play like they were tanking this, the other night. Th- this seems to be like Luca could play through that, and Kyrie could play through that. I think if this is a final series, they're missing zero time. If I, this I is agree. a playoff series, they're missing zero time. And the lack of urgency about where they are, I, I think, does speak volumes about how confident they are making a run. Well, if they lose that game against the Lakers the other night. They're down there in the playoff, the play-in area, and stuff yeah. like that. That was the fact that the, the reaction of the team after that shot went in the, that it was almost like a it was almost like a, a March Madness reaction yeah. Yeah. with you know Jason Kidd in the pile with the player. You know yeah. he wasn't like walking across and shaking hands with with Ham and you know hey or hugging up. It's guys. weird to get that excited. Yeah. It was fun though. Yeah. It was it was, yeah. it was really fun. It was fun, and I. I that game to me, and, and talked to some folks afterwards. Literally after the game, they're like, "We needed that one. That was yeah. big. We had to have that one." So, um, you know, I, I I don't feel like they're tanking, but they're also probably are in a situation where, like, they're really worried about Luke and how banged up he gets. And if he gets banged up again on the thigh, is it something that are we going to miss more time going in? To the playoffs and we stuff. We need him hundred percent. I could see an injury like that being lingering. You know, yeah, lingering kind of, yeah. Or, or getting worse. They're getting worse. You know, yeah. you aggravated trying to come back a little bit early. So maybe they're trying to be trying to be patient on that one. Now Luca is out for sure tonight. Kyrie questionable again. Just to reset that, as the Mavs visit the Grizz, it is a uh, NBA TV game. By the way, six thirty. I think it's seven o'clock. Tip seven o'clock. Six thirty airtime for okay. the pregame show yeah. and everything. Callie Kaplan, morning news with the story about the players only. Only meeting, mm. and not many details were given on this, but Kyrie said we had some real conversations, grown-up conversations, and mature conversations. We needed to get some things out. And uh, since that, they have won two in a row. I mean, it was against the tanking Spurs they almost lost to. You need a last-second shot to beat the Lakers. So I don't think it's opened them up to playing insanely great basketball. But apparently the tone is different, and you know, guys are competing and playing for each other a little bit more. Okay, if you had to guess what the main conversation or the main topic of the conversation, speculate. We got to move the ball more on offense, and we got to play on defense. Pace and defense, right? Yeah, yeah. Pace and defense. The Luca things, you know, maybe the Christian Wood thing as far as defensive awareness and effort. Uh, but yeah, I think a lot of it. And if you're a player, you can't help but notice how much more fun it is when you're playing the Kyrie Irving pace compared to the Luca pace. And those guys are more productive like that. It's true. I mean, the last thing that I want to do though is create. There's like some kind of which one's the better one. The, the bottom line is both of these styles are effective. 
You look at Luka and the offensive rating when he's on the floor, the Mavericks during the course of his career have been one of the best offensive teams in basketball. There's no question, though, as well with Kyrie. And to your point, I think guys like Tim Hardaway Jr. do benefit from the up-tempo. We're going to be a little bit faster. We want to play with pace. Kyrie certainly might be able to rub a little bit of that off onto Luka. Do you yeah. feel like that maybe that they called a players-only meeting because you feel like that Christian Wood and others might be a little bit – uh, starting to kind of feel it's towards the end of the season. Hmm. Are we? We got to get focused. Yeah, yeah, but but in a way of like, like okay, like maybe Kyrie's. You know, he gets on the bus. And he sees Christian Wood sitting there, and he's all like, you know, down, and he's got his headphones on, and maybe Kyrie plops down next to him and goes, "What's up, man?" And he's like, and then it turns into B fest. You know I mean, B like the B word. You know, and, yeah, complaining. And, yeah, complaining, and now. Do you think Kyrie saw it as a fact that, like, okay, I want to call this meeting and let everybody get off their chest Mm -hmm. what's bothering them right now? Yeah, yeah, and I I think that could, you know, be veteran leadership. You're coming down the stretch. we got to clear the air and and have a clean slate going into the postseason. I could absolutely see that, Brian. Are you reporting that? Well, you know what? I, I, You know, every once in a while I run across things. You never know. And, you know, and that's (laughs) that's one of those things where you, you wonder is, you know, as you're getting closer to trying to get a spot in the playoffs, yeah. do you go ahead and say, listen, we are not carrying any grudges going forward here? Yeah. If you, okay, you have a problem, Christian Wood, let's hear it. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, Hardaway, you got a problem right now with what's going on, let's hear it. We, we're, everybody, everybody's going to stand up here and, gonna, and if you have an issue, we're going to talk about it now. But it's know, going to take insiders to spill those details because they did ask Kyrie for details of the meeting. He's not going to say. No, no, no player is. It's, you know, part of the trust that the players have amongst themselves. But, yeah, yeah I could absolutely see that being the reason. And, you know, they do need to get healthy. If you combine the health of Luka and Kyrie with good vibes, yeah. now there's a recipe that we could play with such good energy and rhythm offensively that we blow teams out and maybe steal a series or against this West, maybe even win a couple of series. I think they could beat anybody they're going to match up with in the playoffs. Offensively, they're going to be really, really hard to contain. You know, my biggest question mark is the defense, and I wonder if even at, you know, effort does go a long way. We saw that last year with the way we were there. I just don't think they're very good at defense. Me either. Like, I think, I, I think the, the personnel I think, is I more think the, the effort's fine. I see guy. I mean, I, I could see, you know, I see Hardaway, like, he's moving, but then the guy goes by him. You know, I, I could see Green trying, the guy goes by him. I just don't think they're good enough defensively. I, yeah. I don't think I think the effort is fine. I just don't think they are they are, they that they're good defensive players. I think there's definitely times where we've seen a Christian Wood, for instance. I'm not pay, trying down down the floor on this possession. But you're right. I mean, I think that the personnel is probably the biggest issue. Personnel is a problem, but they played embarrassing at times. You know, they're giving up way too many points in the paint. I see Christian right? Wood. I see Christian Wood getting lost. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and, and you talk to people in the organization, they will tell you that, like, hey, C. Wood, nice job. Uh, five pick-and-roll misses the other day. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And, I, you know, my, ba- my basketball eye is not trained for that. Yeah. You know, I'm not trained for that. And it's the slide over from the corner as yeah. well. If Luca like or the, Kyrie's man gets beat, you have to very quickly, and he's yeah. not going to get those. I you just know, think there's, there's some a, awareness. They lack awareness. And, like, you see the teams that play really good defense, they do, they fill in for each other. Yeah, you know, and and I think that this team gets lost in certain. There's ways. your there's your physical tools. Can I stay in front of a guy? Yeah. And then there's your team awareness. Do I need to help a guy or stay with my guy? Yeah. I think their level of focus and competitiveness allows them to be somewhere resembling not horrible on defense. But if they're not focused or not giving an effort, then they're the worst defensive team in the league, and that's what they need to avoid if they want to win a playoff. I series. just man, to me, I. I, I appreciate what you guys are saying about the effort. Because you're right. There's times where Christian Wood, it looks like, yeah. what, what are you doing? Maybe and if I'm on a little the, bit, I don't know. But like, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm also, I'm also seeing like, like cutters and yeah. backdoor. And then I see guys trying to close out. I see guys trying to get over. I see when the ball rotates. 
I just don't think they're very good at it. And yeah. if I'm the coaching staff, that's what I'm telling Mark Cuban. Yeah. Like, listen, we can't defend like this. We're yeah. just trying to not be horrible yeah. every night that we go yeah. out. Okay, uh, we got to run. We're live at Rally House here, Preston and Forest. Mavs fans, that game is on NBA TV tonight. So if you've been wanting to watch, this is a good opportunity here because you don't need the Bally's. Brandon Cook's audio is coming up in a primetime edition of an NFL Draft Big Board Report. Ooh. What do the Cowboys' needs Let's look go. like for draft night? How would these guys rank them, and what players m- make uh, the most sense for them? That's coming up next. It's the G Back Nation on 105.3 The Fan. I want to chat Frankels, though.
Secured by DFWSecurity.com, you're rolling with the G Bag Nation on 1053, the fan. Welcome to the Nation. Nation. It is hour four of the G Bag Nation on 1053, the fan. We are live at Rally House. Coming up at 6.15, we're going to give away our final Rangers jersey. you got to be present to win. Broadus is going to host a trivia game, and it'll be your opportunity to get uh, this Rangers season started off properly here with opening day coming up on Thursday. What team's gear would you like to purchase, though? The rally house nearest you is the ideal location. And right now we have some Brandon Cooks audio. So we really got it going on here yeah. for you. As the latest Cowboy has talked with Cowboys reporters via a conference call, and uh, look at all these cuts. Looks like we got 14 of them. Let's see how many we can get through. What do you say? I'm down. Okay. Uh, the expressway starting in about 20 minutes. Bobby Belt's coming up at 5:30. Then LA Live at 5:40. That is your hour on deck here for you on your home of the Cowboys and Rangers. Cut one. Brandon Cooks on on finally being traded to the Cowboys. Here we go. Um, you know, before the deadline, obviously there was talks didn't happen, but. You know, great things, better late than never. And I, I'm extremely excited, man. I really am. I think it's a great fit. Uh, you talk about a world-class organization. Um, I, look for, I look forward to being a part of, and um, I think it's going to be a special place. I mean, I, I just think it's a great fit with their need for speed, Brian, and the need for guys to catch the ball closer to the line of scrimmage and then go make plays with their legs. I think yeah. he, along with Lamb and Pollard, could make this offense a nightmare to get No, absolutely. With. That's the thing about it is, and if you look, if you're one of those guys, and Bobby and I were talking about this on the Love of the Star, Bobby's got this site that, that talks about routes and how – different receivers function in these routes. And one of the ones that surprised me was he was near an 80% reception uh, on receptions of numbers of, of the routes that are run are slants. Mm -hmm. And you think for a smaller guy, he's just a vertical player. He's just a screen player. He's, you know, things like that. No, you could throw the ball to this guy inside. He's going to make plays. He's going to run after catch and stuff like that. So if you're talking about Mike McCarthy, the, the, the slants, the flats, those routes, these are routes that, that that Brandon Cook excels in, not only with the vertical nine, but also those other routes that we were just talking about. The balls don't bounce off his chest plate to no, the other team. No, on those exactly. Close he's, not a, he's not a turnover machine when it comes to that stuff. Well, I know it's got to be incredibly exciting for him. He wanted to be traded to the Cowboys last year, and at 28, 29 years old, you don't know how many opportunities you're going to have to be on the playoffs anymore yeah. to have some team success, and that's exactly what this team now represents for Brandon Cook. So you can hear the enthusiasm in his voice. It's yeah, great. I, I think you got two guys in Gilmore and Cooks that just really wanted to be here, and and I think that that's a big win. The pro, the production speaks for, it, speaks for itself. I think another misnomer on Brandon Cooks, because people probably remember Remember, well, he had the concussion issue in the Super Bowl that cost him, and he has had some concussions throughout his career, but he's available. He's a guy that doesn't miss a lot of games. I know last year it probably was because of how upset he got after not being traded, so Houston decided basically we're going to shut you down. If it wasn't for that, this is a guy you look at over the last three to four years, he's been healthy, and he's been available. So those are questions. If they had a son in Odell Beckham Jr., we'd have wondered about it. Brandon Cooks, you don't have to worry about that. No, you don't. Uh, um, and and now as a third player, I I don't know. This this group might be every bit as productive, maybe more than the Cooper Gallup Lamb trio that had injuries that sort of, you know. But you had those three guys. I don't know the last time before that we had three players this good. It's difficult for the Cowboys because they don't want to pay more than one guy premium money. But with Lamb still technically on the rookie deal. You got Gallup at 12 or 13. You have Cooks here coming in at 12. You basically have between those two guys a premium wide receiver salary slotted and then a guy on his rookie deal going into year four. I don't know if they can sustain this long term, so hopefully they can strike while the iron is hot where they have an embarrassment of riches and create the kind of offense that can go match up with number one defenses in the playoffs and still manage to score 30 points. That's all we want. 
Okay, thoughts on being traded four different times in your career at age 29, Brandon Cooks. Does that upset you at all? No, actually, you know, I, I, I've really never gotten upset uh, because obviously that means someone out there wants me to be a part of their group, um, you know, fortunate enough to go, you know, uh, for some great jazz picks. I think I'm just fortunate enough to be able to play with so many great organizations um, and, you know, make an impact in this league, you know, everywhere I've been. So um, it excites me. Um, I, I think it's special because that means I didn't get the free agency. So, you know, people jump in the gun to get to me before I get there. So that's the way that I look at it. I look at it in a positive light. Yeah, you know, when he got to Houston in 2020, Deshaun Watson is ascending. They're like, hey, we're contending. Let's go get a, a good player. He gives him 1,150 yards and six touchdowns. Before that, it's like, hey, we're the Rams. We want to contend. Boom, he goes to the Rams. Before that, it was the Patriots. Hey, you know, it's it's time for us to add a weapon. It was Brandon Cooks that they thought of. And it's like he's a tear down from that elite number one dominant wide receiver that you could not dream of moving. He's like the perfect guy that a team team wanting to contend that needs to add speed and a weapon is going to be looking at and then before that he spent three years with the Saints playing at a, a, a very high level with with Drew Brees so it's not like he's been parted out like Porzingis teams that want the championship ain't trading for him I'm going to a jobber team and now it's like oh look I get to be the focal point and I'm having the best season of my career teams that want to win have been getting Brandon Cooks it would be offensive if teams that were rebuilding but needed something resembling a star to sell tickets if you're that guy it's a bad sign but with Brandon Cooks it's it's been all about hey we need this guy to take our team to the next level and the Cowboys are just the latest team that fits that bill for him. It's perfect for that West Coast in my opinion with his quickness uh, his, his suddenness and route running but really his ability to just be a playmaker right get the ball in space and then go ahead and get yards after the catch and that's really what I think this offense when you look at kind of the route combinations they're probably going to want to excel at he's had a thousand yards and a minimum of five touchdowns everywhere he's been he's worked in a variety of different offenses, and has succeeded with a litany of different quarterbacks, especially at his time in Houston. These are all great selling points for Brandon Cooks. So with all that being said, how have you never made a Pro Bowl, and have you ever felt unappreciated? Here's Brandon Cooks. No, you know, honestly, uh, I, I really, you know, the accolades as far as Pro Bowls and those things, man, I don't I do not do this for the fame. I, uh, I, I truly do it to be able to, you know, uh, you know, win games and compete at a high level. I let my plan talk for itself and um, all those other things, you know, it comes with it. If you don't, uh, you know, so be it. But, um, you know, I like to think you put my num- you put my numbers up with anyone else, um, you know, and they're right there with them. Yeah, right there with him. What do you think about him never making a Pro Bowl? I mean, it's, it's easier it's than ever to shocking. make these things. Isn't that weird? Yeah, very surprising. Yeah, he's one of those guys that, you know, you – when you start to talk about the, the, the Pro Bowls and stuff like that, he it's just, you know, there, he's had games where he's been just so outstanding and then others where, you know, it's two, three games and you don't hear anything from him. And then, you know, injuries and stuff like that. I think it's, I think that's one of the reasons why he's always kind of been available too. You know, that people have, people have, uh, they, they, you know, he's traded, he's been traded for a lot of, you know, for first round picks and stuff like that. And, you're kind of like thinking, and everybody's like thinking, man, we're going to get this guy. We're going to get this guy. We're going to, and they have him at such a, I always have had him at such a high level as a player. And then you get him, and you're like, man, he's good, but maybe we over evaluated him a little much. Yeah. But, but I think that's that, why he's not an all pro. That's right. But I think pro bowler should be in the bag. No, sure. that, that's the thing, though. I mean, is that he, he needs to, he need, you know, to me, it's going to be about there's always been that inconsistency with him. Okay. You know, and, and I think that's the reason why people haven't looked at him at that level that, you know, that like yeah. that, that Pro Bowl level. And you're right. And, and to your point, I think he, there's always kind of been a number one ahead of him everywhere he's been. There's always been. been a question about him, but it, the super talented player. Right. The, the, the guy that you're like, man, I'm glad he's on it. And then you have him and he's like, he's making plays. And then you're sitting there thinking, though. Is but you know like you said there's other right like there was that, Michael Thomas yeah, in New Orleans yeah he's then, always then been the second Cooper guy. Cup yeah. emerged as an absolute star with the Rams and even here he's going to probably be the number two guy to C D Lamb yeah. but it seems like that doesn't bother him no. no. 
No, because. this is great. I mean, getting to know him a little bit, his personality, seems like a very grounded guy. I love when he talks about just wanting to compete, doesn't want the accolades, just let his, his work speak for himself. This is uh, uh, Brandon Cooks, who uh, did a teleconference with reporters. We're going to jump to cut six here as we broadcast live from Rally House. Here's cut six from Brandon Cooks. What can you bring to this Cowboys offense? Yeah, I mean, you know, from afar, you know, looking at the Cowboys, you talk about a dynamic team, uh, a bunch of guys that, uh, you know, play at a high level uh, since the moment that they stepped into this league. Uh, you look at the defense, those guys playing um, out of out of this world, and you look at, you know, from an offensive standpoint, CD, Gallup, um, and the guys just making plays week in and week out. I just look forward to adding to the group. Like I told the guys, uh, you know, I'm going to push them. They're going to push me. And we're going to feed off of one another. And the whole goal is to win. Um, and that's what it's all about. Is there any doubt in your mind, Brian? You know, he he's talking there about what he brings to the offense. But something Wolchuk said about a minute ago, I want to circle back on. There's no doubt he's the number two wide receiver, right? Maybe co-number two with Michael Gallup. Or could he be so Dak friendly with the slants and the underneath stuff and the wide receiver screens that he actually ends up producing a lot? Maybe get some of them Dalton Schultz targets. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, there's there's this, I think there's a big possibility. We'll see with with Mike McCarthy. The one thing is that uh, the play calling and all, how will that different, how will the routes be, you know, different uh, for him? You know, what are they going to ask him to do? You mentioned the routes, the slants, the flats, the things like that he can do. I, I think that right now you have to look at him as the second wide receiver. Because I think there's questions about Michael Gallup. I mean, Michael Gallup needs to answer those questions about, you know, the health of his knee. And, I mean, I, I think as it, as it came along through the season, you know, it was getting better. I think there was things off the field, I've said this a bunch, that he was dealing with along the way that he, you know, can get behind him. But, you know, that's kind of where it's at. Okay, so one lamb, two cooks, Gallup three, four. Now, cut seven from cooks. Who else have you had contact with in this organization? That contact has been awesome. You know, as soon as, obviously, Dak, uh, you know, found out, uh, you know, he reached out to me. Uh, you know, you know, I met, I was able to meet uh, most of the offensive staff uh, uh, today. Uh, I was fortunate enough to speak with uh, Stephen Jones. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, that's been my, and then obviously meeting all the player personnel, uh, people, uh, throughout the biz, uh, building, got to see our receiver coach, RP, got to talk with coach McCarthy today as well. Uh, so it's, it's been a welcoming group. Uh, and like I tell them, I just look forward to getting started. Right on. And, and what did Dak Prescott have to say to you, Brandon? I don't know. He was excited. Um, you can, uh, can't wait to get to work. I uh, got a lot of respect for my game. Um, and you look forward to having me, uh, you know, a part of the group. I, I guess next stop would be the Dak Yard then, right? Heck, heck of an opportunity. And yeah. thankfully, I saw the weather report tomorrow. This should be the last cold day, maybe, maybe of, of the year. Oh. In, until like November. That'd be nice. 52, I think, today. We're going 72 tomorrow. And let's just let's just keep kicking that right into the 80s and hold that for a while. Just keep 80 right. forever. We don't get that 106 degree summer. That was that was that was just that was uncalled for over the weekend. You know, here I am in 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 late March getting out of the vehicle at 12 in the afternoon at UTD on their beautiful soccer fields. Had to put a damn stocking cap on on a parka. Unreal. And, and, okay, next cut here from uh, your guy Brandon Cooks. Uh, everyone talks about your speed. How else have you improved your game each year? Yeah, no, you know, every day, uh, I mean, every year I've been able to get better. Obviously, uh, been fortunate enough and blessed to be able to take the top off, but just being able to run routes, uh, you know, and be able to separate and win those one-on-ones on the outside, also on the slot. I think uh, just the ability to be dynamic and being used, um, you know, every way in the offense, um, I think I've been able to just really uh, maximize that and continue to get better uh, every year. You know what's crazy is, Brian, and I don't scout it like you do, so tell me the right words to put it in or if I'm off on this. But it's like he is a good catcher in traffic. He'll get it down the sideline, but he's bringing that thing more into his body than high-pointing it yeah. or going out to attack the football. Yeah. And it's it's cool how he's got a knack for using his body as the shield right. so the ball can just drop into him. Yeah. And it's a, it's a rare way to make really big plays deep down the field. Yeah, that's the thing about it is, you know, he's one of those guys that for being a little bit of a body catcher, he does make plays. 
You know, sometimes when you get tagged as a body catcher, you have those problems. Terrence Williams. Terrence Williams made some incredible plays for the Dallas Cowboys, but he was a body catcher. And so at times, you know, if you're a body catcher, you have to be accurate throwing the ball to those body catchers because of what exactly what you just said happened, Gavin. That ball is not there, and all of a sudden they're trying to contort, and then the ball bounces off their shoulder pads or the, the crux of their arm, and yeah. then you're going to have some problems there. He, he does so much work getting his body ready before it arrives. You know, in the seconds leading up to that ball arriving, he's finding his spot and leveraging the defender a- away from the opportunity to even catch it. And I thought that that was uh, really promising, you know, for his link up with Dak. Okay, what's the most important thing? Let's jump to 12. What's the most important thing you can bring to the locker room as a new teammate? Here's a little bit more Brandon Cooks. Biggest thing is just be who you are. Uh, you know, be what's gotten you to this position. Uh, but also at the same time, you know, uh, being able to show that work ethic and leading by example and bringing things that you learn from uh, other organizations, um, you know, into the locker room in a positive way so we can all, you know, kind of head towards the right direction. All righty. Uh, thank you, uh, Tim, for getting that cut up and, and uh, everybody involved in the operation. Lucius Alexander getting that pulled up as uh, we turned that around very quickly and got you the very latest right here on your home of the Cowboys. Brandon Cook's introductory telepress conference. It's time for the Expressway. We will tell you about all the developing stories here throughout the world of sports, but also we have to address these draft needs. And Bobby Belt's going to join the conversation at 530. What does your need board look like right now? following the two big trades the Cowboys have made over the last week. A discussion on that is coming up next here in the GBAC Nation. I want to chat Window Nation.